invaluable support that they have shown us throughout the conclave. Times Now Summit is powered by Perno Ricard India, driven by Maruti Suzuki, co-powered by Dream Sports, knowledge partner Amrita Vishwa Vidya Peetham, associate partner LIC, international partner Deakin University, associate partner Fiana Advisory, and banquet partner Brand Buzz Ventures. Yes, so what should we be doing next? I think to get this big day kick-started, without wasting more time, let's, in fact, invite on the stage the MD and the CEO for Times Network, MK Anand, to address the audience maker. A big round of applause, please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to welcome you to day two of Times Now Summit. Yesterday, the day one of the summit saw a very inspiring exchange of ideas and opinions on unstoppable India. From its defense doctrine, the state's story, the growth story, trends in mobility, the creative economy, to topics as big as our economic achievements, ambitions in space, technology, changing education landscape, and inspiring stories from India's heartland, there were several goosebump moments throughout the day. With our respected finance minister amidst us, there was a more focused business and economic analysis of unstoppable India. It is not often that one particular nation's growth is lauded or e so eagerly awaited by the entire world. Fortunately for us in this room, we bear witness to such an occurrence. Along with our stature as the fifth largest economy, our prowess as a superpower is also on the rise. Our military preparedness and a futuristic plan for geopolitical prominence is receiving fanfare from leaderships across the world. I'm sure Sri Rajnath Singh, our Honorable Defense Minister, will wow us with anecdotes from the strategy room in his speech a little later today. Today, on day two of Times Now Summit, we will critically explore on how, as the fastest growing large economy thriving amidst global headwinds with increasing significance in geopolitics, what lies ahead for India in its unstoppable journey. With the country being steered by stalwarts who have ensured growth, stability at home, and respect the world over, we have everything to gain. I take this opportunity to once again extend a warm welcome to the prominent dignitaries of today's edition of Times Now Summit for gracing us with their valuable time, presence, and words of wisdom. Let the action begin. Thank you. Thank you so much, M.K. Anand, for setting the context of this uh, August gathering today as we kickstart the second day of the Times Now Summit. Let's remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that it is very important that all of you connect with us, not just the ones who are here in audience. You must share your thoughts with us, even those who are joining us on your television set through our Times Network channels. Do remember to share your views, suggestions, photographs, of course, on social media as well. You can use the hashtags of hashtag TN Summit 2024 as well as hashtag Summit 2024. Well, uh, with that, let's delve into today's topic, Deepti. Yes, so we are focusing on India's economy. What a better subject to begin the day with. And we'll actually push that a little further. This is, remember, one of the Prime Minister's key vision because he speaks about Vixit Bharat by 2047. So Meghna, an action plan to turn India into a developed nation 100 years from the independence now. Then. Well, absolutely. In fact, while the government is actively working on making this a reality, our next speaker is going to be shedding more light on the economic aspect as well of India at 2047, envisioning tomorrow's economic powerhouse. So please welcome the former chief economic advisor to the prime minister and the present executive director with the International Monetary Fund, Dr. Krishnamurti V. Subramaniam. He is going to be in conversation with managing editor for Times Network, as well as the business head of Times Influence, Mihir Bhatt. Over to you, Mihir. Thank you, Meghna. Morning, everyone. Uh, we have a very interesting uh, conversation coming up. Uh, Dr. Krishnamurti is joining us. Uh, 
Dr. Krishnamurthy, thank you so much for joining us and uh, a very good morning to you. Uh, you know, this topic is actually very close to our heart because uh, at Times Network we keep uh, trying to create content which delves into future and uh, sort of uh, we do crystal ball gazing about uh, what is India's growth trajectory. Uh, I believe uh, you have a surprise in store for us. There is a new book uh, that you are coming up with and it is titled very aptly India at 100, Envisioning Tomorrow's uh, Economic Powerhouse. So first of all, congratulations for that. Uh, if you can just give us a sort of a preview about one, why you believe India will be economic powerhouse and second, what is your vision about India at 100? Thank you very much, Mihir. A very good morning to you and to all our viewers. Um, thanks for uh, providing me the opportunity to talk about this book, India at 100. It should be forthcoming uh, in a couple of months. Um, so the basic uh, idea is that with the kind of growth that India has registered now in the last uh, 10 years, if we can redouble uh, the good policies that we've implemented over the uh, last 10 years and uh, accelerate the reforms, then India can grow at 8% um, from here on till 2047. And if India grows at 8%, India can be a $55 trillion economy. Now, that will sound quite audacious, um, especially if you take into account uh, the fact that ENY predicts India to be a $26 uh, economy by 2047. So that's about, you know, less than half. Um, so viewers would wonder, you know, where are the differences? So let me explain for our viewers. So if we assume 7% growth in real terms, 5% inflation, which is what has been there ever since the inflation targeting framework has been implemented, and 3% depreciation of the rupee, uh, that translates into 9% uh, growth in dollar terms, 7 plus 5 minus 3. Why minus 3? Because depreciation of the rupee actually subtracts from, from uh, you know, growth in dollar terms. So at 9%, using the rule of 70, which is typically what we all use for uh, calculating the number of years it takes to double our money, at 9%, you know, uh, 9 times 8 is 72. So approximately in 8 years, you know, the GDP will double. Now, if you start from 2023 onwards, that's 24 years. In 24 years, you know, doubling every 8 years means 3 times doubling. That's 8 times essentially the GDP multiplying. So if we take the GDP number for, um, you know, 2023, approximately 3.25 trillion, um, and I'm using approximate numbers so that our viewers can see the, 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 the ballpark numbers. So, you know, uh, eight times uh, multiplication will mean from 3.25 to 6.5, from 6.5 to 13, and from 13 to 26. So you can see how the 26 trillion, uh, you know, uh, GDP prediction by ENY rests on what I believe is, a, you know, an important but uh, incorrect assumption uh, of, of depreciation at 3%, which is what has historically been the case. But in my assessment, there are two key trends that are, are you know, uh, on in the economy, which we need to recognize, which will lead to much lower depreciation. One, as I mentioned, the inflation targeting framework has been implemented, as a result of which inflation has to be between 2 to 6 percent, with 4 percent as the, as the median. Historically, if you look at, you know, in the last few years, uh, you know, inflation has been 5 percent. Um, so now when you look at the inflation that prevailed from 1990 onwards, or even, you know, earlier period, inflation in India has been 7 percent plus historically. That's the average. So, you know, going forward, we can actually say, therefore, inflation will be at least 2 percent lower compared to what has been historically the case. And we, you know, we know economists, you know, understand this very well, that when inflation is higher, then the depreciation of the currency is also higher. So compared to the 3% inflation, it's likely that inflation going forward will be lower. Compared to the 3% depreciation, it will be about 1%. Now let's do the numbers again, actually. You know, if we take 8% growth, uh, you know, which I said is possible, 5% inflation, 8 plus 5 is 13, subtract 1% depreciation, which is what is likely to prevail because of the lower inflation, then that, le that means 12% growth. Now, again, using the rule of 70, 12% is actually doubling every six years. 12 times 6 is 72. 
So in a 24-year period, that means four doublings. That's 16 times as much. Um, so as you can see from 26, we'll add one more doubling, that becomes 52 trillion. So as you can see, with 8% growth and with uh, you know 5% inflation and 1% depreciation because of the lower inflation, one more aspect which I would want to touch upon, if you look at the Penn World tables, which look at the you know, uh, drivers of growth, the productivity growth uh, you know, in, in India from 2014 onwards has been 2.7%. Um, in contrast, productivity growth from 2002 to 2013 was 1.3%. In other words, productivity growth has been more than double, and this is not you know, uh, um, any government data. Some critics might actually you know, argue this is pen world tables, which means productivity has increased, which will also lead to real appreciation of the currency. So I do believe that 3% depreciation, which has prevailed, will not be the case. It will be 1%, and thereby you know, we can look at a $55 trillion economy if we can grow at 8%. Right, that's very interesting because uh, actually most of the estimates are in the range of 25 to 30 trillion dollar and uh, you did give uh, a very good reasoning for that. Uh, uh, but Dr. Subramaniam, what will it take to sustain this kind of growth momentum? Because, uh, you know, even today, and yesterday I was in conversation with uh, uh, Mr. Arvind Pangadia and he also made a very uh, important point that today we are not on a very small base. It's, you know, 3.6 trillion dollar economy and to continue to grow at more than 7 or 8 percent for a very long time takes a uh, lot of efforts by all quarters. So what will it take to sustain that growth momentum for us to hit that number? I think that's a very good question. Um, if you look at historically, you know, India has grown from 1990 onwards, average growth has been 7%, you know, slightly more than 7%. So clearly 8% is ambitious um, because India has not grown consistently at 8% before, uh, but it is achievable. Now it is achievable, you know, through good policies. If we look at, you know, where this growth will manifest, and here we have to account for the fact that, that there are three primary sources through which the you know uh, um, eight percent growth can manifest. One is the you know uh, reforms that uh, you know that can be done, f leading to the formalization of the economy. We know very well that formal sector firms are far more productive than informal sector firms. So formalization in the economy will lead to you know uh, um, higher uh, higher productivity. Second, even if we take our formal sector firms, they themselves are actually not at the cutting edge when compared to some of the global firms. So even our formal sector firms also will grow their productivity as we do more reform. So these are two key sources and we know very well when the formal sector itself actually starts, informal st sector starts becoming formal, that also leads to higher GDP because you know, what is not counted in GDP will also add up. So, you know, Unlike for some of the uh, other economies that we used to benchmark, that advanced economies where the economies were primarily formal and therefore all the productivity growth had to come you know, from what we economists call the intrinsic margin. In other words, formal sector firms growing their productivity. In the Indian case, the you know, growth can come from both the intrinsic and the extrinsic margin. The extrinsic margin is basically formalization of a large part of the economy as well. Now, I, mean, I think it is important to recognize, as I said, at the outset, set. 8% is ambitious but achievable. India has grown at 7%. You know, we can grow at 8%, but for that, I think continuation of the good policies that we've had over the last decade is important. We cannot afford a lost decade like we had from 2004 to 2014. And we also need to double down on reforms. And I think Dr. Panagaria might have mentioned, for instance, the labor reforms. You know, the bill has been passed. I think it would, be, it would behoove the new government when it comes in to pass subordinate legislation so that labor can, you know, the labor laws can, are made more amenable for manufacturing growth and overall growth itself. Right. Uh, 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 Mr. Krishnamurti, I also want to understand, you know, when you speak about reforms, uh, one is obviously labor reforms and uh, uh, definitely uh, I think the next uh, government or the next administration will have to focus on it. Uh, we did see a bit of a slowdown in reforms, especially uh, in the agriculture sector. We saw what happened to farm laws. Uh, there are reforms which are still expected and required uh, in land acquisition because that is, uh, I think, going to form the launch pad uh, for the next wave of growth which we refer to as uh, India's Amrit Kal. So what is your recommendation for that? 
So, um, in, in the book, uh, you know, I cover a wide swath of areas where reforms are required. Um, you know, if we look at, you know, the need for manufacturing sector to be encouraged so that job creation happens, that means we basically need, you know, reforms in land, labor, capital, logistics. There's, I think there's been a lot of good work already that's been done through the infrastructure creation, power sector, you know, and scale as well, you know, uh, because uh, economies of scale reduce the cost for firms. So these are actually reforms that are required in the manufacturing sector. But at the same time, we also need reforms, you know, in our banking and, you know, uh, um, especially the banking sector needs to provide credit for manufacturing for overall the firms to uh, you know, uh, to be able to grow by, by taking on credit and by investing. We also need, you know, importantly, reforms in the judiciary and in the bureaucracy as well. Uh, apart from that, of course, agriculture, education, healthcare, these are very important. On agriculture, what I would mention is that, you know, the reforms are required so that the small farmer can really be, you know, empowered. Uh, if you look at over the last uh, 10 years, the, you know, uh, concept of labhati, the uh, Honorable Prime Minister has introduced that and thereby actually has shown that good, econo good economics can be good politics as well by making those that have hitherto not benefited from reforms as the labhati of reforms. In my opinion, in agriculture, it is really critical that the small farmer is made the labhati of reforms. You know, and I'll explain this using, a, uh, using an anecdote. Many of us, when we were young, I think we would have traveled in, you know, third class compartments in railway, in, in railway trains. Now, if you take, for instance, let's say, you know, take the Kalka Mail, uh, you know, from, from, let's say, Delhi. But in Delhi itself, the third class compartment gets filled up. By the time, you know, one would want to board the third class compartment in Kan Kanpur, maybe Allahabad or Mughal Sarai, nobody can get in, right? Um, and, and that's the way in which if you look at, you know, reforms, I think, those that have benef are benefiting from status quo are the ones that are, you know, often blocking reforms. And this is where it is important to actually for the narrative to be created where, you know, there are others, uh, you know, who want to actually get into the third class compartment so that they can reach their destination as well. And in the case of agriculture, it is a small farmer. So the small farmer needs to be made as the real labharthi because current, you know, status quo does not benefit the small farmer at all. Right. Uh, I want to touch upon one more very important aspect, which is uh, the digital infrastructure. And, uh, you know, India has been praised uh, for the excellent work and progress that has happened in creating the digital ecosystem, the digital infrastructure. Uh, now, obviously, there are the talks about, you know, AI and its impact. But I want to touch upon this digital infrastructure part because uh, that is going to play a role of a major catalyst uh, in propelling India. Uh, to whatever uh, its target is. Yes, um, you know, when, uh, from the vantage point that I um, am able to occupy now in the board of the International Monetary Fund, this is one uh, area where, you know, my heart swells with pride whenever, um, you know, uh, uh, digital infrastructure is talked about because the kind of digital infrastructure that India has created today is now, you know, as, as is, is basically, as they say, owner's pride, neighbor's envy. Um, and, and, you know, th this is really critical because India has created this digital infrastructure as a public good. Um, you know, whenever it is created actually by private parties, you know, digital infrastructure or any infrastructure that often leads to monopolies and thereby monopoly pricing, which can then lead to, you know, large sections of the population not getting access to the, you know, to the infrastructure. In contrast, by creating, you know, the, the public digital infrastructure, take for instance the Jandhan, you know, accounts, uh, 500 million plus accounts, and, you know, in the board, for instance, I mentioned, this is 1.5 times the US population. Um, so that's how much we've actually created. So we've provided access to everybody, you know, on the public digital infrastructure. So that can lead to inclusive growth. So let me give you a, a, a small anecdote to actually show not only is it, you know, it, will it lead to inclusivity, but also will lead to productivity improvement. So uh, the anecdote that I want to share is, you know, when I used to be working at the Indian School of Business before um, I, I, I came to the North Block, um, I used to actually step out of the ISB campus and go to, you know, drink coffee or tree from a small vendor. You know, we would pay him cash at that time. This is I'm talking about before, you know, 2018. 
Uh, once I came back after, you know, for a short period when I was again, you know, at ISB, I happened to go and visit that person again. Now, he was actually taking digital payments. Um, so earlier what used to happen is that he would take about maybe a couple of minutes to make coffee or tea, but he would also have to spend equal amount of time ferreting out change. If I gave him a 50 rupee note or a, or a 100 rupee note, he would have to actually pick out 50, you know, 43 on, or 93 rupees because the coffee costed 7 rupees. That costed him as much time as to make uh, coffee. Now what happens is actually he only makes coffee and we just pull out our phones and pay, so his productivity has increased. Not only that, and I was actually talking to him because I speak in Telugu, so you know, the native, native language, he was telling me that earlier the supplier of milk who used to come, now remember these are basically cash and carry kind of models, every day, you know, so the milk supplier would come and deliver the milk in the morning and would come in the evening to come and collect cash again, you know, this was when the cash was the mode of payment. Now what happens is because this uh, vendor itself gets paid using, you know, digital payments, he just makes a digital payment to the milk supplier as well. So productivity down the supply chain for the milk supplier has also increased and this kind of, you know, uh, uh, improvement can happen across the supply chain. Last example, if you take, for instance, you go to Sarojini Nagar, you know, in, in Delhi, those people who are actually vending on the streets, even they take digital payments. Now, suppose one of these uh, vendors goes to a bank and says, you know, Saab, I earn 50,000 rupees. Earlier with cash payment, the bank officer would have said, I don't believe you. But now he can actually pull out his phone and say, Saab, I actually actually record. So he can say, look at my record, actually, you know, I indeed earn 50,000 rupees. And using that, the bank can indeed actually give him a loan. So these are all the kind of opportunities, unprecedented opportunities that today India has, which India must tap into for 8% growth and thereby a $55 trillion economy by 2047. Absolutely. Uh, uh, sir, I also want to understand, you know, because there is a lot of thrust on uh, the manufacturing and uh, we, we all talk about Atma Nirbhar Bharat and Make in India and in fact there is a lot of focus on strategic sectors as well like uh, for example semiconductors or making India self-reliant uh, in space of defense. In fact, immediately after this we'll be joined by Honorable Defense Minister Sri Rajnath Singh who is going to talk about it. Uh, but I want to understand, in your opinion, in your view, between now and 2047, which are the sectors which will predominantly drive India's growth within manufacturing? I'm just focusing on manufacturing right now within that. And to do that, you know, what are the steps or reforms that we uh, need to take? So, um, you know, on this we had actually written about it in the um, 2019-20 economic survey. If you look at China, the way China grew, it utilized its demographic dividend. Uh, in the next 25 years, India also actually has this opportunity to utilize its demographic dividend. So India needs to actually not only do value-added, you know, manufacturing, which of course uh, will, will happen later, but also do, you know, manufacturing like assembling. Um, you know, many critics, for instance, will say, oh, we should be only doing value-added stuff. But I've actually firmly believed that you cannot, you know, start running without having learned to walk. Um, and in the case of manufacturing, first assembling is the walking and higher value added stuff is the, you know, is, is the running. Let's take a few examples. Let's take, you know, uh, the automobile sector in India. In the 1980s, when Maruti was, you know, was, was uh, uh, created, started operations, we were importing almost entire and it just the assembling of the car was Maruti car was being done in India. But over time, you see the, the ancillary sector, the entire you know, supply chain developed as well. And the same thing is now happening with electronics as well. So it is really critical in order to provide good jobs for our youth to utilize the demographic dividend that we do not just you know, focus on the higher value added stuff. I think we should be doing both. We should be actually letting the organic growth happen, which is start you know, assembling you know, in many of these areas. Electronics, it's happening. And then naturally, the, the, the supply chain will expand. So I think we should not be too, you know, uh, uh, sort of uh, stubborn saying that, oh, we should be only doing the high, high value added stuff. That is important, but at the same time, assembling is also critical. Now, when you ask me about the, uh, about the reforms, I, I touched upon it, you know, in I answered, you know, answering an earlier question of yours, which is, you know, I think if you look at the cost of manufacturing, that is driven by factors, you know, which is land, labor, capital, logistics, um, power, 
and scale. And I think each one of these, the reason actually our manufacturing has not developed well is not because of our entrepreneurs, it is because of, you know, policy failures. You know, after 1991, while we liberalized the product markets, we never liberalized these factor markets. Only recently, you know, in the last 10 years, through the Make in India, has, you know, efforts have been done. But there's more work that needs to be done. So I will actually say if these policies, are, you know, policy failures are addressed on land, on labor, you know, on capital, on logistics, I think a good amount of work has already been done. For instance, if you see the time on ports, for instance, it has reduced. Travel time is also reduced. Power sector, I think this is also, you know, one that requires reforms and scale. Many of our legislations actually perversely encourage firms to remain dwarfs. And when firms are very small, they cannot reap economies of scale, thereby reduce their average costs. So I think each one of these six categories of, you know, of, of basically factors that go into manufacturing, if we do the reforms, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind why manufacturing cannot pick up. You know, again, I will say manufacturing sector in India has not picked up because of policy failures. And if you address these policy failures, I think, you know, growth will happen as it is already happening. We are seeing some, you know, uh, uh, good, good traction. If you look at the recent uh, data, manufacturing sector growth has been, has been good, which actually suggests that this works. It's not rocket science. If we take care of these six factors, I think manufacturing growth will definitely happen. Right. One last question to you, uh, Dr. Krishnamurti. Our theme for today's summit is uh, India Unstoppable. And uh, obviously, in a lot of ways, the world believes that India is unstoppable. Uh, you also hold a position at uh, International Monetary Fund, and even their commentary has been highly optimistic about India. Uh, so in your own words, what makes India unstoppable at this moment? Um, I, I also want to respond quickly to actually the second part of your previous question I uh, forgot to, on defense, I'll just shortly mention, I think the Honorable Minister will of course uh, talk more about it, uh, but I think in defense, overall defense, you know, manufacturing is very critical because across the world, if you look at a lot of the innovations that have happened, and especially if you look, look you know, post the Second World War, you know, most of the innovations that started in defense actually then went on, you know, to the commercial sector. So I think the opening up of defense manufacturing which was done is really critical. This will be a key sector as India moves ahead. Now, as far you know, the in India being unstoppable, I think you know, as I said, I am very optimistic, but at the same time, cautiously optimistic. I always say this, which is you know, we certainly can grow at eight percent, but we cannot take it for granted. 8% growth will happen if we can dub, redouble the reforms that we've, do, that we've done, the good policies that we've implemented over the last 10 years, good economic policies. We cannot afford, and I repeat again, we cannot afford the kind of lost decade. You know, if you, if you recall and you just use the numbers, when China was growing at 12% plus, in the first half of, you know, this is before the global financial crisis, we were actually celebrating by growing at 7% odd. That, and, and we did not do anything on policy at that time. I think it is really critical that we do not have a repeat of that kind of episode. So reforms actually is really critical, redoubling of policies. If we do that, then I think we can grow at 8%. As I said earlier, we can grow by formalizing the economy, which will increase our productivity. We can also, you know, increase the productivity in our formal sector first and just the formalization itself will add GDP as well because, you know, th that's not being counted at this point in time. So, you know, cautiously optimistic, I think, you know, it is important to, to make sure that we do not take 8% growth for granted. We have to focus on reforms and implementing good policies. In that case, India is unstoppable. Right. One last question, uh, uh, Dr. Krishnamurti. Uh, you know, we are in a very uh, unique, evolving scenario as far as uh, the global economy is concerned. So we have a complete uh, shape shifting as far as uh, the, I would say, the globalization is concerned. We have a conflict which is going on in Europe, and it's every day, uh, you know, it threatens to expand from its current limited scope. Uh, we have conflict in Middle East, uh, and we have the so-called uh, almost imminent uh, phase two of U.S.-China trade war. Uh, what would be your uh, concerns or red flags uh, on global growth uh, considering, um, you know, the current geopolitical environment that we are in? 
I think uh, the concerns that you have highlighted are quite germane. Um, if you look at the you know global pro growth projections that are being done by the fund, these are at a you know at at. A, two decade lows. Um, so clearly global growth is getting affected by not only the trend against globalization, but also some of the conflicts that are that have erupted in different parts of the world. So global growth will be, you know, even going forward, I think we will have to actually take into account the fact that global growth may not be very supportive. If we get tailwinds, tailwinds from global growth, that's great, but we cannot, you know, uh, bank on it. Therefore, India needs to really strengthen its domestic economy, uh, you know, make sure, for instance, if you look at, you know, if you sort of do an accounting uh, classification, about 58% of our GDP comes from our own domestic consumption. And therefore, you know, we do have the potential. If we can create enough jobs, you know, uh, um, that will lead to much higher consumption. So we need to make sure that our reforms actually strengthen, you know, the, 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 our domestic economy. And for that, I think social uh, and economic inclusion, you know, inclusive growth is really critical. So, so, you know, summary, I think global growth in the next 20 odd years may not be very high, and that may be a, that will be a risk for, for this factor. So domestic policy will have to actually, you know, overcome some of this. I think if you see in the last few years, you know, at a time when the global growth has been quite anemic, India has, 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 has uh, successfully grown at 7% plus, and possibly this year, you know, I expect growth to be closer to 8%. So I think we've demonstrated we can grow at those rates provided we do good policy. I will repeat that again. We cannot take 8% growth for granted. It is possible, it is optimistic, but actually requires, you know, reforms and redoubling of good economic policy that we've had over the last 10 years. Absolutely. So my key takeaway is that contrary to popular estimates, India can actually become a $50 trillion plus economy by 2047, provided we don't take our growth for granted, provided we don't take the solid base that we have for granted, continue on the path of reforms, and continue to uh, deliver uh, year on year uh, on our promises. Thank you so much, Dr. Krishna Subramaniam, and congratulations. We'll be keenly awaiting the release of this book. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you, uh, Dr. Subramaniam and Mihir. It's been an exciting conversation. And uh, the house is getting full now, Meghna, because our next speaker is even more critical. And uh, why don't you tell us what is coming next? Well, absolutely. And this is one of the biggest newsmakers that we are going to be getting for you here mm -hmm. at the Times Now Summit. But before we go ahead and introduce our next speaker, hmm. let's also uh, request hmm. the managing director for the Times Group, Vineet Jain, to join us on the stage as well. We'll just ask him to join us so that we can felicitate. But let's give you a bit of a teaser as to what you can expect now. Well, we uh, are going to be getting one of the senior most political leaders of the country here on the stage under his tenure. India's defense has gotten stronger than ever before. And this owing to, amongst other things, of course, Atman Nirbhata, which has been brought about in defense manufacturing in the country. And no guess is there, Deepthi, for whom we are speaking about. Oh, absolutely. The Raksha Mantri is a man of few words, but extremely, extremely sincere when it comes to the initiatives that, you know, this government has taken. And before he is actually in the house, Meghna, we'll take this opportunity to quickly remind uh, all our esteemed guests who are here in the hall watching this uh, live right now on the Times Network, do use the hashtag TN Summit. 2024, because it's exactly how we are spreading the word about what's happening here, who really are the newsmakers, the conversation starters, uh, and that's also a request going out. Please ensure that your mobile phones remain muted right now, as we'll be having this conversation any moment now, Meghna. And let's not forget, just yesterday on the first day of the Times Now Summit, we had none other than the Army Chief here, General Manoj Pandey. He, and he spoke, Deepthi, about Atma Nirbharta in defense and why it's so very significant to ensure that the borders are safe, but then all of it is also made in India. He's also spoken about the Chinese threat, 
the steps that have been taken at the borders as well by the Jawans to ensure that at least we can stay safe and secure. And of course, he's spoken about the Arunachal problems as well and the kind of claims which have been made by China on it. Several such issues have been of center stage when it comes to news, but it is going to be very important for us to watch out as to what the defense minister, the Raksha Mantri himself, remember who had gone to Siachen just last week, is going to be speaking about the kind of aggression that we have seen from some of our neighbors, which is why, without much ado, we are going to be inviting uh, the managing director, Vinny Jain, to come and felicitate the Raksha Mantri, Rajnath Singh. A big round of applause, please. Mr. Jain, we request you to please felicitate uh, the Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh Ji with a small token of our appreciation. Yes, a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Times Now has always proved to be the place where the newsmakers are making the news. Thank you so much, Mr. Jain. Honorable Minister, we request you to please take a, a seat on the stage. And Mr. Jain, if you could please give us an address as well to the gathering here at the Times Now Summit. Union Defense Minister, Sri Rajanath Singh, leaders from industry, economy, and the socio-political landscape, ladies and gentlemen. May I welcome you all to the day two of the Times Now Summit 2024. Yesterday, we had insightful sessions with cabinet ministers, Mrs. Nirmala Sitaraman and Mrs. Smriti Rani, amongst others, and we look forward to riveting discussions today as well. The Times Now Summit which has been the most impactful summit in Indian news television, has always helped set the agenda for our nation's socio-political pathways. Going by the deliberations so far and what is expected in the day ahead, I'm confident that this year's edition will do even better. As I had mentioned yesterday, PM Modi had first articulated his vision for a Naya Bharat when he spoke at our ET Now GBS last month. I had also said that it would be interesting to hear views from Prime Minister's cabinet colleagues and advisors about the vision and the roadmap for Naya Bharat, a new India here as well. Let me pick up some strands. Let us first look at national security. When it comes to military prowess, India stands tall as a formidable force ensuring the safety and security of its citizens and its interests. With one of the largest and most capable armed forces in the world, India defends not only its own sovereignty, but also upholds peace and stability in the region. For instance, over the last three months, the Indian Navy has safely escorted about 150 lakh tons of critical commodities such as crude oil and fertilizer to Indian shores from the Red Sea and the west of the Gulf of Aden. <coughs> the Navy has also been able to save over 110 lives, including 45 Indian seafarers, by responding effectively to a series of attacks. In this regard, Rajnath Ji's steady hand at the wheel under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi has been acknowledged by all. And so has the balancing role played by India in ongoing conflicts across the world. <coughs> there has also been a sea change when it comes to industry and the economy as well. The National Quantum Mission India AI mission and the India Semiconductor mission will create numerous opportunities for innovators, industry, and investors. 
the startup Indian movement has created 1,25,000 startups, 114 unicorns, employment for more than 1.2 million youth, and about 12,000 patents. Today, startups are present in about 670 out of 700 plus districts in the country. Over half of such startups are from tier two and tier three cities. This has led to the creation of the third largest startup ecosystem in the world. In fact, Mr. Piyush Goel, who has helmed a wide array of path-breaking initiatives from Vande Bharat trains to free food for 81 crore people, would be best placed to talk about how job seekers have become job creators across the country and what more needs to be done. As per estimates, our current workforce is 495 million. By around 2050, this is expected to grow up to 1.1 billion. That means India will contribute 40% of the global workforce 25 years from now. India is also the world's leading source of STEM graduates with over 1.5 million STEM graduates each year. As the country aims to be a developed nation by 2047, India with the largest population of IT professionals has the opportunity to lead the world with AI capabilities. Research reports indicate that generative AI has the potential to add a total 1.2 to 1.5 trillion dollars to India's GDP over the next seven years. The recently approved India AI mission outlines plans to build a strong and comprehensive AI ecosystem in the country. In this effort, our higher education sector has to keep pace. And Times Group's Bennett University is already taking the lead here. Bennett University will be the first Indian university to launch an interdisciplinary undergraduate program in AI, where students get to major in AI, but will also have a specialization in one of the 10 plus minors like FinTech, Legal Tech, Smart Healthcare, Robotics, etc. Moreover, the new AI school at Bennett University will offer an AI program to all students, which means that every student passing out of BU will have the fundamental knowledge to apply AI skills. Hence, in conclusion, be it national security, industry and commerce, economy, science, technology or space, India has picked up an unstoppable momentum which has the potential to shape the world's future. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you all who were here at the Times Now Summit yesterday and those who will be attending and speaking today. Enjoy your time here and let us criticize inputs for a Naya Bharat. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Jain, for that inspiring address that really sets the tone for today, doesn't it? May we now invite the group editor-in-chief for Times Network and editor-in-chief for Times Now, Navbharat, as well as Times Now, Navika Kumar, for this fireside chat with the Honorable Minister on the theme of this year's Times Now Summit, India Unstoppable. Over to you, Navika. Thank you, Meghna. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Huge round of applause uh, for the steady hand on the wheel, as stated by MD of Times Group, uh, Vinit Jain, Hamare Saath, Aad Desh Ke Raksha Mantri Hain. Aur inke baare mein kaha jata hai, ke kahi bhi kuch bhi ho jaye, ye cool rehte hain, kaam rehte hain, aur kabhi bhi apna jo even tempered inka nature hai, wo nahi khote hain. मैं पूछना चाहती हूँ राजनाथ जी आप रक्षा मंत्री हैं इससे पहले भी 
मुझे लगता है लगभग 45 साल की आपकी राजनीति का करियर रह चुका है डिफेंस मिनिस्टर होते हुए जब आप देश के सुरक्षा कर्मियों के को लीड करते हैं जब देश की सुरक्षा सिचुएशंस को देखते हैं तो कभी भी आपके मन में थोड़ी सी दुविधा नहीं होती कि नॉर्दर्न बॉर्डर्स में क्या हो रहा है विपक्ष सवाल पूछ रहा है कभी गुस्सा आता है मैंने विपक्ष के सवालों को लेकर कभी भी अपने को अनकंफर्टेबल फील नहीं किया है और जितना कंट्री के इंटरेस्ट को ध्यान में रखते हुए उनको बताया जा सकता है वो मैं बताता भी हूं लेकिन डिफेंस में बहुत सारी ऐसी चीज होती हैं जिनका कि स्ट्रेटेजिक इंपॉर्टेंस होता है हम पब्लिकली उसे नहीं बतला सकते तो उसे बताने से हम बचने की कोशिश करते हैं तो आज चाहे वो चाहे वो नॉर्दर्न सेक्टर हो वेस्टर्न सेक्टर हो अथवा ईस्टर्न सेक्टर हो तो आज अगर और मुझे और मुझे अपनी सेना के जवानों को पांच वर्षों में बहुत ही नजदीक से देखने का मिला है हमारी तीनों सर्विसेज चाहे वो आर्मी हो नेवी हो अथवा एयरफोर्स हो और यहां तक कि पैरामिलिट्री फोर्सेस के लोगों को भी करिश्मेटिक काम करते हुए मैंने प्रत्यक्ष अपनी आंखों से देखा है क्योंकि होम मिनिस्टर के रूप में भी, भी मैंने अपनी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी निभाई है मैं कह सकता हूं कि अपने सेना और सुरक्षा के जवानों के ऊपर हमें नाज है आज अगर आपसे देश की जनता पूछे और देश की जनता में शायद विपक्ष भी शामिल है अगर ये पूछें कि हमारा देश हमारे बॉर्डर महफूज हैं हमारी तैयारी पूरी है क्योंकि कई बार ये कटाक्ष भी होता है कि हमने अपनी जमीन चीन को दे दी और राहुल गांधी ये सवाल अक्सर पूछा करते हैं तो आप आज क्या जवाब देंगे मैं देश की जनता को आश्वस्त करना चाहता हूं कि हमारे सेना और सुरक्षा के जवानों पर उनका पूरा भरोसा और विश्वास होना चाहिए और पांच वर्षों तक डिफेंस मिनिस्टर के रूप में काम करते हुए उसके पहले होम मिनिस्टर के रूप में काम करते हुए जो कुछ भी मैंने देखा है समझा है एसेस किया है उस आधार पर मैं देशवासियों को आश्वस्त करना चाहता हूं कि हमारी सीमाएं और यह देश पूरी तरह से सुरक्षित है सवाल अग्निवीर स्कीम पर भी उठते हैं अग्निवीर स्कीम पर कुछ विपक्षी दलों का कहना है कि शॉर्ट चेंज किया जा रहा है नए युवाओं को जो भर्ती होते हैं क्योंकि उन्हें आ, वो सारी सुविधाएं उपलब्ध नहीं है और ये शॉर्ट ट्रेनिंग कोर्स है शायद टेम्प्ररी तौर पर हम सैनिक इकट्ठे कर रहे हैं ये तमाम डिबेट आ, बहुत सी मिसगिविंग्स के साथ शुरू हुई लेकिन आज भी ये सवाल उठता रहता है नहीं मैं समझता हूं कि इस सवाल का अपने में कोई औचित नहीं है इस सच्चाई को सभी स्वीकार करेंगे कि सेना में यूथफुलनेस होनी चाहिए सामान्यतः एज 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 हमारी सेना के जवानों की रही है लेकिन जब हमारे 18 साल और 20 साल के जवान जाएंगे वहां पर अग्निवीर के माध्यम से तो मैं समझता हूं कि जोखिम उठाने का रिस्क उठाने का जो एक जज्बा होता है जवानों के अंदर कहीं कुछ अधिक होता है वो जज्बा भी उठाएंगे वैसे हमारे इनकी एज भी अधिक हो गई है हमारे जवान पूरे जज्बे के साथ अपनी रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी का निर्वाह कर रहे हैं इसमें कहीं दो राय नहीं है लेकिन आज टेक्नोलॉजी का युग है हमारे नौजवान टेक से भी, भी होने चाहिए टेक्नोलॉजी के संबंध में भी उनको जानकारी होनी चाहिए ऐसे नौजवानों की भर्ती हम अग्निवीर के माध्यम से कर रहे हैं और उनके फ्यूचर के साथ भी हम किसी भी सूरत में खिलवाड़ नहीं होने देंगे इस बात की पक्की गारंटी है उसके लिए जो कुछ भी सिस्टम में चेंज लाया जा सकता है अथवा फर्दर उनके फ्यूचर को देखते हुए सर्विसेज में जो रिजर्वेशन वगैरह का प्रोविजन है यह सब हम लोगों ने इंश्योर किया है और कहीं पर यदि कोई ड्रॉबैक इसमें हमको दिखाई देगा तो उसमें सुधार करने के लिए भी हम पूरी तरह से तैयार हैं 
बहुत बड़ी बात कही आपने कि आप ओपन है चेंजेस लाने में भी जिस तरह की जरूरत होगी यदि आवश्यक हुआ तो बहुत बहुत आ, मुझे लगता है कि बड़ी हेडलाइन है ये कि आवश्यकता पड़ने पर सुधार और चेंजेस होते रहेंगे आ, और और जवानों की जवानों की बेटरमेंट का पूरी गारंटी सरकार लेगी मैं पूछना चाहती हूँ राजनाथ जी आत्मनिर्भरता और टेक सैवी जो आपने कहा आत्मनिर्भरता करते हुए क्या हम टेक्नोलॉजी में आगे पूरी तरह से बढ़ पा रहे हैं हमारे देश में कई ऐसे डिफेंस की चीजें हैं जो हम खुद नहीं बना सकते हम बाहर के देशों पर डिपेंडेंट होते हैं आपके हिसाब से आपके टेन्योर में ऐसा सबसे बड़ा गेम चेंजिंग स्टेप आत्मनिर्भरता की तरफ भारत ने कौन सा लिया भारत डिफेंस के मामले में भी आत्मनिर्भर बन रहा है अब जैसे मैं आपको जानकारी दूं कि लगभग कई ऐसे आइटम्स हैं नंबर यदि देखा जाए उनका तो अप्रोक्सीमेटली फाइव एग्जैक्ट फिगर तो मैं नहीं बतला पाऊंगा लेकिन अप्रोक्सीमेटली फाइव थाउजेंड ऐसे आइटम्स होंगे जिसमें कि लोकल रिप्लेसमेंट यूनिट्स भी शामिल हैं जिन्हें कि बोलचाल की भाषा में एल कहते हैं इनको मिलाकर देखा जाए तो लगभग फाइव ऐसे आइटम्स के को हम की एक पॉजिटिव इंडिजनाइजेशन लिस्ट हमने जारी की है पॉजिटिव इंडाइजेशन लिस्ट का मतलब यह होता है किसी भी सूरत में यह आइटम्स हम बाहर से इंपोर्ट नहीं करेंगे यह सारे आइटम्स बनेंगे तो भारत की धरती पर बनेंगे और भारतीयों के हाथों से बनेंगे यह हम लोगों ने फैसला किया है और यह काम तेजी के साथ आगे बढ़ रहा है यह काम तेजी के साथ आगे बढ़ रहा है और मैं यह भी जानकारी आपको देना चाहता हूं अब तो इंजिन बनाने की दिशा में भी हम हमारे कदम तेजी से आगे बढ़े हैं फाइटर प्लेन के इंजन फाइटर प्लेन अब जनरल इलेक्ट्रिक का नाम आपने सुना होगा जनरल जनरल इलेक्ट्रिक 414 ये अमेरिका का यूएस का है इंजन अब उसने अपनी 80 परसेंट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग आईपीआर भारत को ट्रांसफर करने पर राजी हो गया है और यह समझौता हमारा हो गया है अंडर प्रोसेस नहीं है यह समझौता हमारा हो गया है और इंजन भारत में बनेंगे और अधिकतर भारतवासियों के हाथों से बनेंगे बहुत बड़ी बात और एक बात और मैं बताना चाहता हूं डीआरडीओ को मैंने यह भी कहा है कि डीआरडीओ इन सब सारी पॉसिबिलिटीज को भी एक्सप्लोर करे सैफ्रॉन वो भी इंजन बनाता है यूके इन सब सारी कंट्रीज में भी जो इंजन बन रहे हैं कौन से ऐसे इंजन है जो कि वह भारत में बनाए जा सकते हैं कौन कंट्री टेक्नोलॉजी ट्रांसफर करने के लिए तैयार है यह सब सारी हमारी बात, बातें चल रही हैं और सारी पॉसिबिलिटीज को हम एक्सप्लोर कर रहे हैं क्योंकि इंजन तो हम भारत में ही बनाना चाहते हैं बहुत हो गया इंजन का इंपोर्ट करते हुए बहुत बड़ा हेडलाइन हम एक्सपोर्टर इंजन में भी भारत को एक्सपोर्टर कंट्री बनाना चाहते हैं राजनाथ जी भारत ने सपने बड़े बड़े देखे हैं और सपने जो इतने बड़े हमने देखे हैं दो की बात कर रहे हैं तो उसमें एक डेमोक्रेटिक चीज आती है कि चुनाव जीतने जरूरी होते हैं चुनाव जीतने जरूरी होते हैं इस बार 400 पार मैं आपके राजनीतिक एक्सपीरियंस से पूछना चाहती हूं आप 1977 से है पॉलिटिक्स में ट्वेंटी 25 इयर्स की एज से ही मैं हूं 25 साल की उम्र से आप पॉलिटिक्स में हैं, जेल गए आप 25 साल की उम्र में मैं एमएलए बन गया था 25 साल की उम्र में आप एमएलए बन गए थे आजकल और, उस, और उसके पहले मुझे पार्लियामेंट का टिकट मिला था लेकिन वह कट गया था इस कारण मुझे मिला क्यों कट गया था आपका पार्लियामेंट का टिकट आज ये कहानी जरूर दर्शकों को बताइए लंबी कहानी है ज्यादा समय लगेगा लेकिन आप कहेंगे तो मैं ब्रीफली उसको बतलाने की कोशिश करूंगा ऐसा हुआ कि मैं 18 महीने तक इमरजेंसी में लगभग 18 महीने मैं जेल में था पहली गिरफ्तारी मैं मिर्जापुर में पोस्ट कॉलेज में फिजिक्स का लेक्चर था तो हमारी जो पहली गिरफ्तारी हुई क्योंकि जेपी मूवमेंट का मैं उस जिले का कन्वीनर था 
तो मुझे और हमारे साथ दो और मित्र रहे इनको मिर्जापुर जेल रात को 11 बारह बजे ले जाया गया और मुझे वहां तनहाई दी गई इसे सॉल्यूटरी सेल बोलते हैं हमको और हमारे दो लोग जो थे उनको उसी में अलग सेल बने हुए थे उनको रखा गया और हमारे लगभग 200 हंड्रेड या टू ऐसे जो सारे आंदोलनकारी थे वो एक स्थान पर थे और हमको अलग रखा गया था और मैं वहीं से नारेबाजी करता था नारे लगाता था उसको रिपीट करते थे लोग दूसरे बैरक में जो हमारे ढाई लोग बैठे हुए थे फिर उसके बाद दो ढाई महीने के बाद सॉल्यूटी सेल से मुझे ट्रांसफर कर दिया गया सेंट्रल जेल नैनी तो सेंट्रल जेल नैनी में लगभग मैं समझता हूं कि सोलह महीने के आसपास मैं हो सकता है कि पंद्रह दिन बीस दिन पच्चीस दिन मैं भूल रहा हूं के आसपास मैं सेंट्रल जेल नैनी में था उसके बाद मैं छूटा था तो वहां से रिलीज होने के बाद जो मैं घर पर आया था तो ऐसे ही घर पड़ा हुआ था छोटा सा कमरा मरा था रेक्सा जी ने आके सूचना दी कि मैसेज आया है क्योंकि टेलीफोन भी सबके यहां नहीं होते थे उसमें मोबाइल भी नहीं होती थी आगे सूचना दिया कि तब मैसेज आया है दिल्ली से वाराणसी और वाराणसी से मेरे टेलीफोन पर आया है कि आपको कैंडिडेट घोषित किया गया है और आपको चुनाव लड़ना है पार्लियामेंट का और दो दिन के बाद का समय उन्होंने बतलाया कि आपको नॉमिनेशन फाइल करना है लेकिन खैर लंबा प्रोसेस है नॉमिनेशन फाइल हुआ सब कुछ हुआ अथॉरिटी लेटर भी दिल्ली बुलाकर मुझे दे दिया गया था जिसके आधार पर सिंबल मिलता है लेकिन एट द एलेवेंथ आवर जो ही मजिस्ट्रेट ने अंतिम दिन जो होता है सिंबल देने का जो मुझे बुलाया तो हमारे अथॉरिटी लेटर का कैंसिलेशन ऑर्डर बाय टेलीग्राम या बाय फैक्स शायद यही सिस्टम होता था तो उसके सामने लाकर उस अर्दली ने जब रखा तो उसने कहा मिस्टर सिंह सॉरी कलेक्टर साहब से मैं मिलकर आता हूं डीएम से मिलने गया और डीएम से मिलकर आया उसने कहा सारी आपकी अथॉरिटी लेटर का कैंसिलेशन ऑर्डर आ गया और मिस्टर फकीर अली अंसारी भदोही के कारपेट के व्यवसायी थे अच्छे व्यक्ति हैं उनका अथॉरिटी लेटर आ गया सिंबल उनको मिल गया आक्रोश था सारे एडवोकेट्स वाराणसी के शहरी वगैरह में सब उसमें थे लेकिन परमात्मा ने उस समय भी मुझे पेशेंस दिया था और मैंने माइक लेकर वहां से कहा था कि अब तो मैं विड्रा भी नहीं कर सकता क्योंकि तीन बजे का समय क्रॉस कर चुका था तो मैंने कहा था कि दुर्भाग्यवश मेरा नाम अब तो बैलेट पेपर पर रहेगा ही क्योंकि विड्रा नहीं कर सकता था सिंबल मैंने मांगा नहीं लेकिन इंडिपेंडेंट कैंडिडेट का सिंबल उन्होंने दे दिया था तो दुर्भाग्यवश मेरा नाम मतदान पत्र पर तो रहेगा लेकिन किसी ने मेरे नाम के आगे मोहर लगाई तो मैं समझूंगा कि वो मेरे मस्तक पर कलंक का टीका लगा रहा है तो उसका इतना जबरदस्त मैसेज गया कि नेक्स्ट डे चौधरी चरण सिंह आने वाले थे वो बेहद इससे इंप्रेस हुए और हमारे उसमें जनसंघ के लोगों से कहा उन्होंने कि भाई विधानसभा के चुनाव में एक हम टिकट हमारी तरफ से राजनाथ को दिया जाना चाहिए और लेकिन फिर भी चार महीने के बाद जब चुनाव और असेंबली का हुआ तो नाम प्रपोज हुआ था हमारे ही मित्र थे उनके लिए हमने काम किया था मैं उनका इलेक्शन एजेंट था सिटिंग कैंडिडेट थे श्री आशाराम जी यादव उनका नाम प्रपोज हुआ था जब वहां गया तो चौधरी साहब ने कहा भाई एक टिकट मैं मांग रहा हूं नहीं हो सकता तो उनका बेचारे का टिकट काट कर मुझे टिकट दिया गया था दिया था यही है इस तो इसी तरह शुरू हुई आपकी राजनीतिक बारी और इतने सालों में 1977 से लेकर आज तक आपने क्या क्या एक्सपीरियंस किया सबसे बड़ा तो मैं पूछूंगी राजनीति कितनी बदली है 77 की राजनीति और आज में कितना फर्क है जनता पार्टी से भारतीय जनता पार्टी का सफर कैसे रहा ये कहना कि बदली कितनी है ये बड़ा कठिन काम है कितनी बदली है कि, कितनी डिग्री इसमें जो है वो चेंजेज आए हैं ये काम कठिन है लीडरशिप बदलती है लीडरशिप पर बहुत कुछ भी निर्भर करता है लेकिन राजनीति कुछ वैल्यूज होती हैं पॉलिटिक्स की भी मैं समझता हूं कि उसके बारे में कमिटमेंट होना चाहिए और उस कमिटमेंट से किसी भी सूरत में डेविएट करने की कोशिश नहीं करनी चाहिए मैंने मेरा मानना है उस समय भी लोग थे और आज भी 
लोग हैं उस समय भी जो लोग थे बहुत सारे लोग थे जो जिनका डेविएशन होता था वैल्यूज से और आज भी लोग हैं भविष्य में भी लोग रहेंगे और मैं समझता हूं कि राम राज्य में भी कुछ लोग ऐसे थे राम के राज्य में भी जो कि जिनका कि वैल्यूज से डेविएशन हो जाता था कोई बहुत बड़ा चेंज मुझे यह बतलाना कठिन काम है हमारे लिए तो तो ये इतना तो बता दीजिए कि ये कौन सी कोर वैल्यूज हैं पॉलिटिक्स में जो आप चाहते हैं कि इस पर कभी कॉम्प्रोमाइज नहीं होना चाहिए आपके हिसाब से ये कौन सी वैल्यूज मैं यह मानता हूं कि सबसे बड़ी चीज पॉलिटिक्स में काम करने वाले लीडर्स की क्रेडिबिलिटी विश्वसनीयता उस पर किसी भी सूरत में साइन ऑफ इंटोगेशन नहीं लगना चाहिए प्रश्न चिन्ह नहीं लगना चाहिए जो कहे वो करे और मैं दावे के साथ कह सकता हूं कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी में हमारे इलेक्शन मैनिफेस्टो को उठाकर आप देख लीजिए जो कुछ भी हम लोगों ने कहा है अक्षर सह उसका पालन किया है जितने भी हमारे कमिटमेंट्स रहे और मुझे याद है कि क्योंकि 2014 में मैं ही पार्टी का नेशनल प्रेसिडेंट था और मोदी जी प्राइम मिनिस्टर कैंडिडेट थे मोदी जी मुझसे कहते कहते थे कि राजनाथ जी देख लीजिएगा कि हमारे इलेक्शन मैनिफेस्टो में कहीं कुछ ऐसा न हो कि हम लोग उसे न कर पाए तो मैंने कहा नहीं इसमें जो प्रिकॉशन लेंगे और 2019 में भी इलेक्शन मैनिफेस्टो की जिम्मेदारी उन्होंने मुझे ही दी थी 2019 में मैं पार्टी प्रेसिडेंट नहीं था इसका प्रिकॉशन लिया है तो जो कहा हम लोगों ने चाहे आर्टिकल 370 के बारे में कहा हो चाहे इस सिटीजनशिप बिल के बारे में कहा हो चाहे राम मंदिर के बारे में कहा हो चाहे तीन तलाक के बारे में कहा हो जो भी कहा है अक्सर से पूरा किया है और देश को आगे ले जाएंगे ये भी हमारा कमिटमेंट था और दावे के साथ कह सकता हूं इस कमिटमेंट को भी निभाने में हम पूरी तरह से कामयाब रहे हैं क्योंकि इस सच्चाई को क्योंकि इस सच्चाई को कोई नकार नहीं सकता है कि इंटरनेशनल कम्युनिटी में अंतर्राष्ट्रीय जगत में भारत का स्ट्रेचर बढ़ा है और मैं तो पहले भी मैंने देखा है आज भी मैं देखता हूं और हमारे जो ऑडियंस यहां बैठी हुई है इसमें फॉरेन जाने वाले बड़ी संख्या में लोग यहां पर बैठे हैं पहले यदि किसी इंटरनेशनल फोरम पर इन लोगों को अपना कोई विचार व्यक्त करने का अवसर मिला होगा तो उस समय की स्थिति देखी होगी और आज किसी इंटरनेशनल फोरम पर यदि आप अपने व्यूज अपने विचार एक्सप्रेस करते हैं उस समय किस प्रकार का रिस्पॉन्स अथा किस प्रकार का फॉरेन कंट्रीज के जो डेलीगेट्स होते हैं उनका फेशियल एक्सप्रेशन होता है उसमें आपको अंतर दिखाई देगा पहले हम लोगों की बातों को जिस गंभीरता पूर्वक सुना जाना चाहिए लोग नहीं सुनते थे लेकिन आज यदि भारत इंटरनेशनल फोरम पर कुछ बोलता है तो दुनिया कान खोलकर सुनती है कि भारत बोल के आ रहा है यह भारत की हैसियत है लेकिन आज के दौर में बाहर के देशों ने यूएस जर्मनी चिंता जताई है जिस तरह से विपक्षी नेताओं को जेल में डाला जा रहा है मैं पूछना चाह रही हूं इमरजेंसी उन्नीस में जो थी और कुछ लोग कहते हैं एक इमरजेंसी आज है जिस तरह से ईडी सीबीआई का इस्तेमाल हो रहा है आप इसे कैसे देखते हैं नाविका जी मैं आपसे पूछना चाहता हूं करप्शन को बढ़ने देना चाहिए बिल्कुल पॉलिटिकल सिस्टम में करप्शन को करप्शन फ्री तो मैं नहीं कहता हूं क्योंकि बहुत बड़ी चीज हो जाएगी आइडियल स्टेज होती है करप्शन मिनिमाइज किया जाना चाहिए कम से कम मिनिमाइज हो जितना कर सकते हो करने की कोशिश करनी चाहिए यदि करप्शन फ्री हो जाए तो इससे बड़ा मेजर अचीवमेंट कुछ नहीं हो सकता और दूसरी चीज यदि आप कोई यह कहता है कि इसको हमारी गवर्नमेंट ने करा दिया तो कोर्ट क्या कोर्ट के ऊपर भी हमारा दबाव है कोर्ट ही उनको जेल भेज रही है ना कि हम भेज रहे हैं कोर्ट ही उनको रिलीफ नहीं दे रही है यह रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी हमारे ऊपर क्यों फिक्स की जानी चाहिए हमारी गवर्नमेंट के ऊपर क्यों फिक्स की जानी चाहिए 
रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इसीलिए लोग पूछते हैं सवाल कि जो आदमी विपक्ष में है उसकी करप्शन आपको नजर आती है जो आपकी वॉशिंग मशीन में धुल कर आपके साथ मिल जाए उसकी करप्शन गायब हो जाती है एकदम पाक साफ सफेद नहीं नहीं पाक साफ सफेद का प्रश्न नहीं है वैसे भारतीय जनता पार्टी के बराबर ही कोशिश रहती है कि करप्शन जो है ए, जितना मैंने मैंने रूट आउट करना वैसे हमारे कमिटमेंट में है ये अब किस सीमा तक रूट आउट रूट आउट हो पाता है एक, एक लंबा प्रोसीजर है इसलिए उसके बारे में मैं बहुत कुछ नहीं कहूंगा लेकिन अब ईडी है सीबीआई है ये सब लोग अपना काम करती रहती हैं उनको लगेगा कि नहीं रूलिंग पार्टी का भी कोई है तो उनको पकड़ेंगे बिहाइंड बार करेंगे मैं आपसे सवाल ये भी पूछना चाहती हूं कि विपक्ष और सत्ता पक्ष के बीच में आज लेकिन एक चीज मैं बता दूं आपको कि मान लीजिए ईडी सीबीआई किसी के ऊपर कोई जांच चल रही है मान लीजिए कि वह बीजेपी का वर्कर बन जाता है कुछ बन जाता है तो ऐसा नहीं है कि सब बिल्कुल सारी चीजें माफ हो जाएंगी उसके खिलाफ कोई केस ही नहीं चलेगा यह कोई मिसाल आपको नहीं मिलेगी लो, लोग ये भी सवाल पूछते हैं कि विपक्ष और सत्ता पक्ष के बीच में डायलॉग का मौका बहुत कम है कॉन्फ्रेंटेशन की राजनीति ज्यादा है मैं आपसे पूछना चाहती हूं कि अटल बिहारी और एल के अडवाणी जी की भारतीय जनता पार्टी और मोदी जी के समय की भारतीय जनता पार्टी में आप क्या फर्क देखते हैं पहले चीज तो मैं ये बता दूं कि कटुता की बात जो आपने कही यदि मान लीजिए विपक्ष अपशब्दों का प्रयोग करता है गाली देता है प्राइम मिनिस्टर के बारे में एक से एक चोर शब्द का प्रयोग करे या अन्य भी बहुत सारी चीजें जिस प्रकार की अपशब्दों का प्रयोग किया जाता है तो उसे कटुता नहीं बढ़ेगी तो क्या होगा इस प्रकार के अपशब्दों का प्रयोग मैं समझता हूं हमारी किसी सीनियर लीडरशिप ने कभी नहीं किया होगा राजनीति में मर्यादाओं का पालन किया जाना चाहिए एक दूसरे का सम्मान होना चाहिए और मर्यादा विहीन यदि राजनीति यदि होती है तो ऐसी राजनीति का कोई औचित नहीं है राजनीति यह शब्द ही दो शब्दों को मिलाकर बना हुआ है पता नहीं यहां कितने लोग संस्कृत के बारे में जानते होंगे राजनीति यह दो शब्दों को मिलाकर बना हुआ दो वर्ड है इसमें राज और नीति और नीति या संस्कृत की नया धातु से बना है जिसका अर्थ होता है ले जाना टू कैरी आउट ऐसा पॉलिटिकल सिस्टम जो समाज को सनमार्ग की ओर ले जाने का काम करे उसे ही हम राजनीति कहते हैं लेकिन विडंबना यह है कि यह राजनीति शब्द अपना अर्थ भी खो चुका है अपना भाव भी खो चुका है और यह भारतीय जनता पार्टी और हम सब सारे लोगों की चुनौती है कि राजनीति शब्द का के इस खोए हुए अर्थ एवं भाव को पुनः भारत की राजनीति में हम स्थापित करें आपकी पार्टी का एक बहुत बड़ा मुद्दा है परिवारवाद के खिलाफ लड़ना और जब परिवारवाद की बात होती है तो विपक्ष कई बार और ये पर्सनल सवाल है मैं आपको पॉलिटिशियन और एक पिता दोनों के रूप में पूछना चाहती हूँ आपके बेटे पर कटाक्ष किया जाता है करना भी चाहिए <laughs> पंकज सिंह जी और मैंने हाल ही में आपका एक इंटरव्यू देखा जिसमें आपने कहा कि आपने स्वयं अध्यक्ष होते हुए उनका टिकट काटा हाँ, काटा था तो पत्नी के सामने कैसे गए बेटे को कैसे फेस किया और मन में क्या भाव आए क्या ये एक ऐसा ऐसी दुविधा वाली स्थिति होती है देखिए पुत्र तो पुत्र ही होता है स्वाभाविक है सबकी ममता होती है अपने पुत्र के प्रति मेरी भी अपने पुत्रों के प्रति ममता है प्यार है हाँ उस समय ऐसा हुआ 2007 में भी मैं पार्टी का प्रेसिडेंट था और उसमें इलेक्शन कमेटी की बैठक थी एक तरफ हमारे अटल जी बैठे थे दूसरी तरफ अडवाणी जी बैठे थे उत्तर प्रदेश से श्री कल्याण सिंह जी अब नहीं रहे हमारे बीच कल्याण सिंह जी थे श्री कल्ला जी मिश्र जो आजकल गवर्नर हैं राजस्थान के 
ये लोग उन लोगों ने नाम लेकर उनका आया था वाराणसी के किसी क्षेत्र से चुनाव लड़ने का मेरे बड़े बेटे का पंकज का तो मैंने उसमें कहा कि मैं इसको अपनी कंसेंट नहीं देता हूं ये इसे मैं नहीं मानूंगा तो अटल जी ने कहा कि इलेक्शन कमेटी के सामने हमारा डिशेंट नोट कर दिया जाए अटल जी की जो स्टाइल थी उस स्टाइल से हम लोग नहीं बोल पाएंगे तब तक अडवाणी जी ने भी कह दिया कि नहीं भाई देना चाहिए सब लोगों ने बोल दिया फिर उन्होंने कहा फिर अनंत कुमार जी की डेथ हो गई वो सेक्रेटरी थे उनको जाकर घोषित करो घोषित किया फिर उसके बाद मैं जब घर गया तो मैं थोड़ा दुखी था वो जब पैर छूने के लिए आए मेरा तो मैंने आशीर्वाद नहीं दिया घर में जाकर अपनी माँ से कहा उन्होंने माँ आई तो घर में आप जानती हैं आप भी रुतबा कभी ऐसे ही दिखाती होंगी उन्होंने मेरे ऊपर रुतबा आपके साथ भी ऐसे होता है <laughs> आप अपनी पत्नी से डरते हैं कि पहले तो ये बता दीजिए <laughs> तो उन्होंने कहा कि क्यों नहीं आशीर्वाद दिया क्या हुआ कैसे हुआ तो मैंने कहा कि मैं पार्टी का राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष रहते हुए अपनी पेन से अपने बेटे को सिंबल नहीं दे सकता हूं तो फिर पंकज ने भी बहुत संयम का परिचय दिया वो आए फिर हमारा पैर छुआ दोबारा भी कहा पापा आप नहीं चाहेंगे तो मैं चुनाव नहीं लड़ूंगा तो मैंने कहा बेटा जाओ अटल जी से क्षमा मांगो उनका पैर छुओ आशीर्वाद लो कह तो हमारे पापा नहीं चाहते इस कारण मैं नहीं लड़ पाऊंगा गए अटल जी तो अटल जी की जो स्टाइल थी अरे छोड़ो तुम्हारे पापा लेकिन फिर अटल जी ने कहा जाओ पिता कहते हैं तो बात माननी चाहिए फिर बात आई गई हो गई फिर नहीं मिला फिर बाद में आकर जब अमित शाह जी जब पार्टी के अध्यक्ष थे तब उसमें उन्होंने दिया था उनको आज वो सेवेंटीन में आज वो एम एल ए है दूसरी बार हो गए लोकसभा का चुनाव लड़ने की उनमें कहीं ना कहीं तो इच्छा होगी होगी किसी के अंदर भी हो सकता है हो लेकिन आज तक उन्होंने मेरे सामने एक्सप्रेस नहीं किया कभी या लेकिन मैं समझता हूं जो पॉलिटिक्स में उसकी रहती ही है कोई एक्सप्रेस करे अथवा ना करे तो परिवारवाद का जब कटाक्ष होता है ये कहा जाता है तो आपके दिल पर आपके दिमाग में कुछ तरह के विचार मेरे ऊपर कोई असर नहीं होता है जो गिल्टी कॉन्सस होता है जो अपराध बोध से ग्रसित होता है उस, उसको तकलीफ होती है मुझे नहीं होती है मैं दावे के साथ कह सकता हूं आंख से आंख मिलाकर कोई बात नहीं कर सकता कहीं गड़बड़ नहीं किया मैं पूछना चाहती हूं कि गांधी परिवार पर आपकी पार्टी ने डायनेस्टिक रूल का जो एक आरोप लगाया है कहां तक आपको लगता है कि ये जायज है क्योंकि परिवार की परिवारवाद की बात होती है तो वो भी कहते हैं कि बीजेपी में ऐसे कई परिवार हैं नंबर एक और राहुल गांधी जी और उनकी राजनीति को आप कैसे देखें देखिए परिवारवाद उसको कहते हैं कोई पार्टी है पार्टी का मान लीजिए हम चेयरमैन हैं अध्यक्ष हैं पार्टी के और जब मैं हटूं तो फिर हमारा बेटा ही हो बेटा हटे तो बेटे के बेटा ही है उसको परिवारवाद कहते हैं इसको हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जी मोदी जी ने हाउस में भी क्लैरिफाई किया है और मोदी जी ने कहा कि एक परिवार में यदि आठ नौ लोग हैं पोलिटिकली एक्टिव हैं तो उसे परिवारवाद नहीं कहा जाएगा पार्टी के ऊपर कंट्रोल एक ही परिवार का सदैव रहे दूसरा नहीं आ सकता जिसका मतलब उस पार्टी में डेमोक्रेसी नहीं है कम से कम इंटरनल डेमोक्रेसी तो हर पॉलिटिकल पार्टी में होनी चाहिए ताकि वो अपनी बात कह ले आज भी हम लोग बैठते हैं कहीं कैबिनेट में भी बैठते हैं तो जो बात कहनी होती है वो कहते हैं यानी कि जो लोग कहते हैं कि डिक्टेटरशिप चलती है नहीं? आपकी सरकार में डिक्टेटर है मोदी जी बिल्कुल नहीं है मोस्ट डेमोक्रेटिक हमारे प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी जी है मैं कह सकता हूं मोस्ट डेमोक्रेटिक आप लोगों को यकीन नहीं होगा बहुत सारी चीजें हम लोग भी वहां कहते हैं लेकिन कभी उन्होंने यह नहीं कहा होगा कि उसको उसको लेकर नाराजगी व्यक्त की हो अथवा कोई नाइ तफाकी की हो व्यक्त की हो ऐसा कभी नहीं हुआ है कोई ऐसा वाक्य याद हो एक भी नहीं है मुझे आज एक भी याद नहीं मैं ईमानदारी से बताना चाहता हूं नाविका जी एक भी याद होता तो मैं बतला देता भाई मेरे साथ तो बिल्कुल नहीं हुआ 
और जिस फोरम पर मैं बैठता हूं उस फोरम पर मेरे रहते हुए भी हमको देखने को नहीं मिला है तो मैं कैसे कह दू तो ये जो आ, हिटलर शाही पुतिन जैसा देश हो जाएगा तीसरी बार मोदी जी जीतेंगे आ, ये ये जो आरोप लगते हैं आ, आप क्या जवाब देंगे विपक्ष को जो ये आरोप लगा देखिए वो भी बेचारे क्या करें ये कह नहीं सकते कि चोरी करते हैं डकैती करते हैं झूठ बोलते हैं काम नहीं करते हैं देश को डुबो दिया ये सब कुछ कह नहीं सकते हैं तो यही सब कहते हैं कुछ ना कुछ तो चाहिए ना कहने के लिए आप उनको माफ करिए उनके ऊपर दया करिए आप जो ऐसे आरोप लगाते हैं आप नाराज मत होइए उनसे आपने माफ कर दिया <laughs> <laughs> राहुल गांधी के बारे में आप क्या कहेंगे सोच में पड़ गए आप नहीं नहीं आप जानती हैं राहुल को क्या बोलते हैं जैसा होना चाहिए हैं जैसे होने चाहिए अरे तो सारे लोग देख रहे हैं कैसे हम लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन नहीं नहीं परमात्मा की उनके ऊपर कृपा हो परमात्मा परमात्मा उन्हें आशीर्वाद दे मैं बड़ा हूं इसलिए यही आशीर्वाद दे सकता हूं उनको और कुछ नहीं और परमात्मा उनके अंदर ऐसी शक्ति दे सामर्थ्य दे ऐसी सोच दे ऐसा आचरण और व्यवहार दे ताकि भारत को एक श्रेष्ठ भारत बनाने में वो भी अपना योगदान कर सके लोग तो कहते हैं वो सबसे बड़े आपके एसेट हैं क्योंकि जब तक वो हैं आप सत्ता में हैं वो आपके सबसे बड़े कैंपेनर हैं नहीं अब वो बहुत छोटे मैं किसी को डिबिन नहीं करना चाहता अपने आगे बस मैं ईश्वर से मैं प्रार्थना ही कर सकता हूं और कुछ नहीं लखनऊ से आप चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं आपकी चुनाव में हमेशा मार्जिन देखा जाता है इस बार का मार्जिन कितना अब वहां की जनता बतला सकती है ना हम तो बताएंगे नहीं हम नहीं जानते आपके कॉलीग नितिन गडकरी कहते हैं ना मैं पोस्टर छपवाऊंगा ना मैं कुछ इस तरह का कैंपेनिंग करूंगा क्योंकि काम है तो बोलता है मैंने बहुत आप... काम किया है नितिन जी ने बहुत काम किया है अपने क्षेत्र के लिए भी और अच्छा डेवलपमेंट उन्होंने किया है बहुत अच्छा किया तो आपका लखनऊ की जनता को आज क्या तो मैं अपने जा? बारे में कैसे कह दू कि मैंने बहुत काम किया है <laughs> <laughs> अभी लखनऊ की जनता से पूछिए क्या हुआ है कैसे हुआ वो तो बतलाएंगे या मेरे व्यवहार को लेकर मेरे आचरण को लेकर हमारा व्यवहार आचरण कोई दस पंद्रह बीस वर्षों का तो है नहीं उत्तर प्रदेश ने तो लगभग 40 वर्षों से मेरे आचरण मेरे व्यवहार को वाणी को सब देखा है तो वो अपना एसेस करें वो मेरा मूल्यांकन करें मैं, मैं क्या करूंगा अब की बार 400 पार का जो नारा है आपको लगता है अचीवेबल है हाँ मुझे लगता है कि इसको अचीव करेंगे हम लोग लगता है मुझे और उत्तर प्रदेश में अस्सी सीटें हाँ बिल्कुल कोशिश तो यही है रियलिस्टिकली आप पार्टी के अध्यक्ष रह चुके आ, हैं आप मुख्यमंत्री रह चुके हैं आ, आप इतने सालों से मिनिस्टर रह चुके हैं आपका एक्सपीरियंस क्या कहता है नहीं मिलेगी मुझे लगता है कि अस्सी मिल सकती है अब अस्सी का मतलब अस्सी भी आ सकती है सेवेंटी एट भी हो सकती है सेवेंटी नाइन भी हो सकती है लेकिन इतना मानकर चलिए कि हो भी सकता है यति अब नीचे मुझे मत ले जाइए अठहत्तर से अस्सी के बीच ये होता है कॉन्फिडेंस और लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन ओल्ड स्कूल पॉलिटिशियन आज भी जिंदा हैं जो कटाक्ष नहीं करते अपनी भाषा में आ, कोई इस तरह का लफ्ज नहीं इस्तेमाल करते वो हैं राजनाथ सिंह जी देश के रक्षा मंत्री जो लक्ष्मण रेखा कभी नहीं क्रॉस करते और जो बस सोचते हैं तो जनता का और देश को आगे ले जाने का आप हमारे साथ जुड़े और आपने वाक्य बताए पर एक सवाल का जवाब आपने नहीं दिया 
पॉलिटिशियन मंत्री इतना एक्सपीरियंस राजनेता घर में बॉस कौन होता है घर में बॉस कौन होता है बहुत घर का बॉस कौन होता है आप होते हैं या आपकी पत्नी होती है नहीं नहीं हमारी श्रीमती जी रहती है <laughs> नहीं मैं उनको पूरा तवज्जो देता हूं और मैं दिल से कहना चाहता हूं उनका मैं सम्मान भी करता हूं अपनी पत्नी का बहुत बड़ी बहुत बड़ी बात कही आपने नारी शक्ति नहीं नहीं आपसे लेकर यहां जितने बैठे सभी के लिए मैसेज है सभी के लिए मैसेज है कि नारी शक्ति का सम्मान होना चाहिए और राजनाथ जी आपने इतने दिल से ये कहा मैं उम्मीद करती हूं आपकी पत्नी ये इंटरव्यू जरूर देख रही होंगी क्योंकि मुझे लगता है जितने साल का आपका साथ रहा होगा ये एक शब्द ये एक वाक्य कितना मायने रखता है किसी के लिए भी ये शायद वो महिला ही समझ सकती है थैंक यू वेरी मच डिफेंस मिनिस्टर राजनाथ सिंह जी ऑन टाइम्स नाउ समिट इंडिया विल ट्रूली बी अनस्टॉपेबल अंडर योर गाइडेंस थैंक यू वेरी मच Thank you so much, Navika, as well as Rajnath Ji. Of course, he is one of the most experienced politician, one of the senior most union uh, cabinet ministers as well. It was a pleasure to have him here on the Times uh, Network Summit. Uh, go ahead, Deepi. Absolutely. What's up next? So he's spoken about uh, the defence sector. He's also spoken about politics. He's also decided not to speak about Rahul Gandhi. So a lot of interesting nuggets, I think, in that conversation that just concluded. As I request all of you. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, to continue to remain seated, let's get uh, moving. And uh, India's entrepreneurial star, remember, is on the rise, and that star now is in the hall. Never before, Meghna, has it been so profitable and easy to become an entrepreneur here in the country. The possibilities, like they say, are endless. Well, absolutely, Deepthi, and the need of entrepreneurship, of course, has been immense. Not just India. but across the world but especially in india with the kind of vision that we have because it is only when the middle economy grows will it lead to exponential growth for the country in fact our next speaker is someone who is the poster boy of india's entrepreneurship potential what india has to offer yes and his story has been told has been retold will continue to be discussed it's used across the country and the world today ladies and gentlemen as a source of inspiration to all those who are very very curious to don the entrepreneur's hat he's here today and to talk to us about unleashing india's entrepreneurial spirit please welcome ladies and gentlemen put your hands together to welcome the founder and group ceo oyo ritesh agarwal he's going to be in conversation with mihir bhat A louder round of applause for sure. Over to you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Meghna and Dipti and Ritesh. Uh, welcome to the Times Now Summit. Uh, India is indeed unstoppable. आपने सुना होगा आपसे पहले रक्षा मंत्री थे और उन्होंने पूरा भरोसा दिलाया है दैट इंडियन बॉर्डर्स आर ऑल सेफ एंड सिक्योर्ड सो नाउ वी विल टॉक अबाउट यू नो द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ व्हाई इंडिया इज अनस्टॉपेबल इकोनॉमी इस पे आज सुबह भी हमारी काफी बात हुई इस पे एंड uh, uh, एक चीज है देयर इज लॉट ऑफ ऑप्टिमिज्म अबाउट इंडिया एंड इट्स ग्रोथ प्रोस्पेक्ट्स बट यू नो यू आर अ यंग एंटरप्रेनर आपने बहुत छोटे uh, बेस uh, से शुरुआत की uh, मैं आपसे जानना चाहूंगा दैट व्हाट इंडिया अनस्टॉपेबल मींस फॉर यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच फॉर हैविंग मी हियर और आप लोग को बहुत बधाई फॉर इंडिया अनस्टॉपेबल आई बीन मैंने आपको बताया कि मैं कल से फॉलो कर रहा हूं कई सारे डिस्कशंस को ऑफ कोर्स अभी तो रक्षा मंत्री जी को लाइव देखने का मौका मिला हमारी वाइफ लखनऊ से है तो बहुत जिक्र भी करती है साहब के बारे में so i think uh, ek mai uh, before i respond to your question mai ek interesting aap logo ko context batana chahta hu aapne bataya ki aaj subah uh, former ca saab the aur unhone bataya ki 2047 tak kaise uh, bharat ka opportunity hai ki hum log jo hai duniya ke top 3 nahi 
टॉप टू इकोनॉमीज में से भी एक बन के। ट्रिलियन डॉलर हो सकता है अब फिफ्टी फाइव ट्रिलियन सुन करके ऐसा लगता है कि आज तो हम साढ़े तीन ट्रिलियन में कितने दूर जाएंगे पर मैं इसका रिवर्स लॉजिक बताता हूं आपको इफ यू सी कंपनी जैसे एमेजोन है आज एमेजोन इज अ मल्टी ट्रिलियन डॉलर कंपनी आप में से कितने लोगों ने एमेजोन के बारे में सुना है सब नहीं सुना है राइट तो कोई सवाल ही नहीं मैं आप लोग को बताऊंगा कि अगर आपको लगता है कि एमेजोन पिछले 20 साल से एमेजोन आज के दिन 20-25 साल की कंपनी है पिछले 20-25 साल से एमेजोन का ग्रोथ एवरेज में 15-20 परसेंट ही रहा है एमेजोन इज नॉट ग्रोन बाय 50 परसेंट फोर्टी परसेंट हंड्रेड परसेंट पंद्रह बीस परसेंट बिकॉज ऑफ वॉट इज कॉल्ड लॉ ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग यानी आप पंद्रह बीस परसेंट कंसिस्टेंटली लंबे समय तक ग्रो करें यू कैन क्रिएट ड्रामेटिक आउटकम्स तो वही भारत के लिए भी ट्रू है हमारे लिए ये जरूरी नहीं कि हम लोग 15 परसेंट ग्रोथ कर लें 12 परसेंट ग्रोथ कर लें हमारे लिए ये जरूरी है कि हम लोग वो 7 से 10 परसेंट ग्रोथ कंसिस्टेंटली हर साल वी कम बैक एंड डू बेटर देन प्रीवियस ईयर अगर हम वो करते रहे आई हैव नो क्वेश्चन दैट हम लोग 2047 के 55 को ब्रीच कर जाएंगे वी विल डू बेटर देन दैट दैट्स माई नंबर वन कन्विक्शन अभी इसको लेट सी फ्रॉम द आईज ऑफ इंडिया 1983 I was not even born then. 1983 आप में से कई लोगों ने फॉलो किया होगा पहली बार भारत वर्ल्ड कप जीत करके आया उस समय कहा जाता था कि भारत की क्रिकेट का ब्रॉडर लीडरशिप संभाला जाता था बॉम्बे दिल्ली, कोलकाता वहां के क्रिकेटर्स के साथ भारत की इकोनॉमी छोटी थी मैं पढ़ता हूँ कई बार कि भारत की टीम को अप्रिशिएट करने के लिए भी आ, लोगों से पैसे कलेक्ट करने पड़े थे आज ये तो क्लियर है कि भारत दुनिया का सबसे डोमिनेंट क्रिकेटिंग कम्युनिटी है उसमें कोई सवाल नहीं है द होल ग्रुप विल एग्री बट आज जो भारत के मोस्ट पॉपुलर नए क्रिकेटर्स हैं वो छोटे गांव और शहरों से आते हैं ऐसे गांव और शहर जिनका नाम आप में से किसी ने नहीं सुना होगा आजकल सब लोग कहते हैं भारत का बेस्ट फिनिशर अब इसमें डिबेट हो सकता है पर मेरा मानना है रिंकू सिंह है अब वो ऐसी जगह से आते हैं जिसका नाम शायद आप में से कई लोगों ने सुना नहीं होगा कल शाम को ऑफ कोर्स हैदराबाद ने आईपीएल का हाईएस्ट स्कोर बनाया उसमें अभिषेक नाम के एक प्लेयर ने बड़ा रोल निभाया सेम इज ट्रू फॉर आंटरप्रिनशिप पहले आंटरप्रिनशिप में आप देखते थे लोग जो बंबई दिल्ली बड़े शहरों से आते थे आज मैं आता हूं एक शहर रायगढ़ा नाम की आप में से कितने लोगों ने रायगढ़ा का नाम सुना था पहले बहुत कम शायद दो तीन लोगों ने ऐसे ही देश में लाखों और शहर हैं जहां पे मेरे जैसे युवा निकल करके आ रहे हैं और उनका बड़ा सिंपल पर्सपेक्टिव है उन्हें अपने गांव में बड़ा नहीं बनना उनको अपने राज्यों में बड़ा नहीं बनना उनको दुनिया का सबसे डोमिनेंट एंटरप्राइज बनाना है दैट्स द न्यू इंडिया दैट यूर सींग एंड दैट इज इन माय व्यू इंडिया अनस्टॉपेबल फॉर मी सो रितेश कैन वी से दैट टूडे इज यूथ एंड इंडिया इज आई मीन इट स्टिल रिमेन्स अ यंग कंट्री कि उनके जो एस्पिरेशंस हैं दे हैव चेंज्ड एंड यू नो फ्रॉम लेट्स से एस्पिरेशंस ऑफ समबडी फ्रॉम टू जनरेशंस बैक वेयर दे यूज्ड टू थिंक अबाउट हैविंग अ सेफ सिक्योर्ड गवर्नमेंट और अ बैंक जॉब और फाइंडिंग अ सिक्योर्ड जॉब बाइंग अ हाउस द एस्पिरेशंस हैव चेंज्ड इज दैट व्हाट यू आर सेइंग आई थिंक द एस्पिरेशंस हैव चेंज्ड बट वैल्यूज आर द सेम this is what i think is the uh, you know new young india today so every year uh, you know diwali new year christmas these are times jab sab log chutti manate hain hum log hospitality industry mein kaam karte hain to tab hum koshish karte hain ki apne teams ke sath bhi samay bitaye to ab main we pichle... understand your pain because we also work on Haan. holidays chalo hum dono ki industry similar ho gayi to diwali ke din kya hua ki main apne call center ke kuch colleagues ke sath mil raha tha तो कॉल सेंटर एजेंट था ही वॉज प्रोबली जस्ट टू ईयर एक्सपीरियंस या डेढ़ साल एक्सपीरियंस थे हरियाणा से थे तो मैंने उन्हें पूछा कि आपका आगे चल करके सपना क्या व्हाट्स योर एम्बिशन व्हाट डू यू वांट टू ग्रो अप टू बिकम तो उन्होंने कहा कि रितेश भाई आपने जो कंपनी बनाई है ना उससे थोड़ी बड़ी और कंपनी बनानी है मुझे दिस इज अ कॉल सेंटर एजेंट एंड आई थिंक दैट इज अ स्टैंडर्ड एम्बिशन दैट द यंग इंडिया टूडे हैज जहां पर सबके मन में यह सपना है कि हम भी डोमिनेंट बने हम भी अपने लाइफ में सरवाइव ना करें थ्राइव करें और वो भारत के लिए भी वही सपना देखते हैं देर व्यू फॉर भारत इज दैट हाउ डज इंडिया गो फ्रॉम बींग गुड लाइक टेन इयर्स बैक मे बी गुड लास्ट टेन इयर्स मे बी इंडिया अनस्टॉपेबल टू इंडिया डोमिनेंट 
इन द नेक्स्ट टेन ईयर्स कि इंडिया कैसे हर जगह पे नंबर वन पहुंचे कोई भी क्षेत्र हो तो मुझे लगता है दैट्स द ड्रीम दैट द यंग इंडिया सीज इन माई व्यू एज थिंग स्टैंड बट द थिंग इज दे आर नॉट जस्ट विलिंग टू ड्रीम दे आर विलिंग टू वर्क हार्ड फॉर इट आई नो दे आर दीज कंप्लेन्ट्स दैट पीपल मेक सेंग कि आजकल के जनरेशन में तो वो बात कहाँ जो पिछले जनरेशन में था बट आज की जनरेशन में भी आप जनरलाइज ना करें कई ऐसे नौजवान लड़के लड़कियां हैं जो बहुत मेहनत करते हैं और भारत को आगे ले जाने के लिए बहुत सिग्निफिकेंट कंट्रीब्यूशन दे रहे हैं और मुझे लगता है कि जब हम 2047 में भारत को एक डेवलप्ड नेशन देखना चाहते हैं भारत को तो द यंगस्टर्स ऑफ टूडे विल मेक अज डिफरेंस इन दैट एंड दे नॉट ओनली वर्क टूवर्ड्स इट दे ट्रूली बिलीव इट कैन बी पॉसिबल दस पंद्रह साल पहले आप यही कहते तो लोग कहते कि हाँ कह तो रहे पर पता नहीं क्या आज के दिन में जेन्यनली लोगों का मानना है कि इट विल हैपन एंड वी विल मेक इट हैपन तो वो एक बहुत ही बड़ा एक कन्विक्शन है यंग लोगों में और आई एम थैंकफुल कि मैं इस जनरेशन में पैदा हुआ क्योंकि मैंने जो भारत देखा है शायद मतलब कई लोगों ने नहीं देखा है कि मैंने जो भारत देखा है वो ऐसा भारत है जहां पे आज आप यूएस में जाएं तो लोग कहते हैं कि भारतीय इन्वेस्टमेंट यूएस में कैसे और आ सकती है मैं ऐसे भारत से आता हूँ जहां से मैं अभी इस वीकेंड डेनमार्क जा रहा हूँ अपनी टीम से मिलने तो वहां पर मुझे जितने की प्रोविंस के लीडर्स हैं जितने की काउंसिल्स के लीडर्स हैं वो कहते हैं कि आपके जैसे और दूसरे भारतीय स्टार्टअप्स हैं क्या जो डेनमार्क में आ सकते हैं सो देर इज अ रेड कार्पेट फॉर इंडियन कंपनीज टू गो ग्लोबल विच वॉज नेवर द केस अर्लियर एंड आई थिंक आई एम लकी टू बी अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस जनरेशन दैट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग रितेश इनफैक्ट आई वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड You know, एक it has become almost a fancy uh, trend कि you know startup के बारे में I mean everybody wants to launch a startup uh, it's not so easy and and everybody knows your story लेकिन uh, uh, from employment point of view uh, और देश को अगर आगे बढ़ाना है तो we need to create enough jobs उसके लिए it is very critical that we create a, a very conducive environment for entrepreneurship और उसमें startups का एक बहुत बड़ा role है Uh, so what is your take are we doing enough so i'll tell you this uh, 2013 is when i started oyo 2013 and 2014 early so i was 19 years old barely out of high school with a dream that i will build a company everybody around me jitne log the dost ke aur rishtedar to of course padosi to matlab koi sawal hi nahi hai sab ne mujhe convince kiya ki क्यों ये 100 परसेंट फेल होने वाला है और क्यों जो दूसरे पड़ोसी हैं उनके बच्चे आपसे आगे निकल जाएंगे बड़ी स्टैंडर्ड ऐसा होता ही था अब मैं आपको 10 साल में बताता हूं तस्वीर कैसे बदली इन 10 इयर्स आप किसी यूनिवर्सिटी चले जाएं इंडिया में आई हैव नॉट गॉन इन टू अगल एंड आई गो टू अकेडमी वेरी ऑफन यू विल इट इज इम्पॉसिबल टू नॉट फाइंड एन एक्सेलरेटर और एन इंक्यूबेटर इन वन ऑफ दो प्लेसेस सेकेंड आप देश में किसी भी कंपटीशन देख लें कॉलेज फेस्ट जो होते हैं उसमें आंटरप्रिनरशिप फेस्ट पहले कुछ कॉलेजेस में होता था जनरली तो होता नहीं था आजकल सबसे पहला फेस्ट होता है पहले जो टॉपर होता था आई में उसे आप पूछें कि आपका क्या सपना है वो कहते थे पीएचडी करने यूएस जाएंगे और एक अच्छी जॉब मिलेगी आजकल वन से लेकर के फिफ्टी ए तक आप बात कर लीजिए सब आंटरप्रनर बनना चाहते हैं वन से फिफ्टी इन लाइन देर इज नो मतलब कॉम्प्रोमाइज नहीं उसमें कि ट्वेंटी वाले का मन अलग वन से फिफ्टी साल तो मुझे लगता है उसमें ड्रामेटिक चेंज आया है इन द लास्ट टेन इयर्स एंड आई थिंक इट इज नेसेसरी मैं थोड़ा एक्सप्लेन करना चाहता हूं क्यों आप लोग में से आ, आ, काफी लोगों ने सुना होगा कि यूएस में एक समय सिविल वॉर था मैं हिस्ट्री का बड़ा इंटरेस्ट रखता हूं हिस्ट्री में तो एक समय यूएस सिविल वॉर ड्रिवन था देश में बड़ी तंगी थी वहां पर और यूरोप दुनिया का सबसे डोमिनेट इकोनॉमी हुआ करता था अब उसके बाद में बदला कैसे क्योंकि आज तो ये क्लियर है दुनिया का सबसे डोमिनेट इकोनॉमी यूएस है वो बदला कैसे तो 25-30 साल यूएस के समय में शायद 60s से 90s के रेंज में या 50s से लेके 80s के समय में एग्जैक्ट समय मिस कर रहा हूं मैं उस समय इनक्रेडिबल आंटरप्रन्योर्स जैसे कि हेनरी फोर्ड वैंडे बिल्ड जेपी मॉर्गन उन लोगों ने एंटरप्राइजेस बनाए और ऐसे एंटरप्राइजेस बनाए जिन्होंने यूएस के अंदर में उनकी करंट अकाउंट को स्ट्रॉन्ग बनाया उनके यहां पे जॉब्स को क्रिएट किया और ओवर द लास्ट 50 टू 100 इयर्स आज के दिन में जो इस जनरेशन में बच्चे पैदा हुए उन्हें पता वो सोच भी नहीं सकते कि यूरोप डोमिनेंट इकोनॉमी होता था उन्हें लगता है यूएस ही हमेशा से रहा है डोमिनेंट इकोनॉमी तो आंटरप्रनोर्स का इतना बड़ा कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन होता है किसी भी देश के इम्पैक्ट के लिए तो मुझे लगता है कि आज जो 
बच्चे विथ नो फैमिली बैकग्राउंड मतलब जिनका कोई फैमिली में वेल्थ नहीं है ना उनके घर में पैसा है आज सिर्फ वो एक अच्छे आइडिया एक बड़ा सपना और एक मेहनत करने की हिम्मत आइडिया ड्रीम एंड एबिलिटी टू वर्क हार्ड दीज आर द ओनली थ्री थिंग्स रिक्वायर्ड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू क्रिएट अ बिलियन डॉलर कंपनी टूडे मनी एज अ रिक्वायरमेंट डजन एग्जिस्ट बिकॉज द पीपल विलिंग टू फाइनेंस यू देर इज कैपिटल अवेलेबल फॉर द इंडिया ऑफ टूमोरो सो माई परस्पेक्टिव इज मैं इस साल शार्क टैंक में रहा हूँ शो में वहां पर आप देखेंगे एक अभी मैं बच्चे से मिला सहरसा गांव से बिहार से आया वो उसके फादर जो हैं फादर साहब बिहार रोडवेज में काम करते थे वो खुद चपरासी थे एक ऑफिस में जहां पे कुछ सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर्स काम करते थे उन्होंने कंपनी क्योंकि लोग रोडवेज को वहां पे रोड बेज करके बुलाते हैं उन्होंने कंपनी का नाम बना दिया रोड बेज नाउ ही इज रनिंग अ मल्टी मिलियन डॉलर कंपनी उसने वो जिस कंपनी में चपरासी था वहां पर देखा कि बाकी लोग इंजीनियर और इंजीनियर होने में इज्जत ज्यादा है तो उसने सॉफ्टवेयर कोडिंग उनसे सेल्फ लर्न कर ली और उस पर कंपनी बना ली ये मैं मतलब सपने की बात नहीं कहा कह रहा मैं मोटिवेट करने के लिए नहीं कह रहा दिस इज अ रियलिटी दैट इज हैपेंड टुडे और उस कंपनी में हमने इन्वेस्ट किया हुआ है आई होप दैट इट विल बिकम इवन बिगर इन टाइम्स टू कम बट दैट्स द ट्रू ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन सो शॉर्ट आंसर इज आई फील दर इज अ लॉट है बिकॉज फंडामेंटली आप देखिए सच्चाई मैं आपको बताना चाहता हूं यहां पर हम लोग इकोनॉमी स्केल मार्केट साइज सबकी बात कर लें बट जब बारहवीं कक्षा या फिर कॉलेज के बाद बच्चा घर से बाहर निकलता है तो पेरेंट्स दस साल पहले यही कहते मुझे भी यही कहते थे पहले एक नौकरी ले लो शादी कर लो घर ले लो फिर एंटरप्रनरशिप के बारे में सोचना जितना भी मैक्रो अच्छा हो दीज प्रॉब्लम्स आर स्टिल वेरी वेरी एक्यूट आई थिंक दैट हैज इम्प्रूव इन द लास्ट टेन ईयर्स जहां पर आज इस कमरे में शायद ऐसा कोई नहीं होगा जिसके दोस्त या रिश्तेदार में कोई ऐसा नहीं है जो एंटरप्रनोर या तो बन नहीं गया है एंटरप्रनोर बनने की सोच नहीं रहा दैट्स अ चेंज इन द लास्ट टेन ईयर सो आई थिंक दैट्स अज ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन एंड दैट हैपन्स वेन पीपल टॉक अबाउट स्टार्टअप ऑन स्टेजेस लाइक दिस ऑन नेशनल टेलीविजन एंड सो ऑन अभी और क्या करना बाकी है मुझे लगता है कि आई सेट इनिशियली मेरा व्यू है कि किसी भी कंपनी में कंसिस्टेंसी इज द नेम ऑफ द गेम तो ये जो हमने कंसिस्टेंटली स्टार्टअप को बढ़ावा दिया है उस पर आप बढ़ावा देते रहे चाहे वो मैक्रो भारत देश के लेवल से हो चाहे आप अपने दोष रिश्तेदार भाई बहन जितने हैं अगर कोई भी स्टार्टअप कुछ करने की कोशिश कर रहा है उन्हें कंस्ट्रक्टिव फीडबैक दीजिए बट उन्हें प्रमोट करिए उन्हें मोटिवेट करिए उनके प्रोडक्ट्स के बारे में बात करिए अगर आप अपने घर परिवार में एक जने की मदद करेंगे जितने लोग यहाँ पे बैठे हुए हैं तो मुझे और या जितने लोग सुन रहे हैं तो मुझे लगता है कि दैट विल हेल्प ग्रोथ अ लॉट मोर देन वॉट माइक्रो थिंग्स कैन डू एक इलॉनमस ने कहा था कि जैसे आज के दिन में लोग जो है बेबी शावर में इवेंट uh, मतलब बेबी को सेलिब्रेट करते हैं वैसे अगर एंटरप्रेन्योर्स को सेलिब्रेट किया जाए जब वो नया कंपनी शुरू करें और उनके दोस्त सब लोग आए जुड़े और कहें कि हम आपको हेल्प करेंगे ग्रो करने के लिए तब एंटरप्रेन्योरियल ग्रोथ विल बिकम टेन एक्स इवन हायर देन वॉट इट इज टूडे दैट्स वेरी ट्रू सो रितेश देन आई वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज यू नो जब कभी हम इंडिया अनस्टॉपेबल की बात करते हैं देर इज ऑलवेज डिस्कशन अबाउट आत्मनिर्भर भारत मैन्युफैक्चरिंग पर काफी फोकस होता है द फैक्ट रिमेन्स दैट services are the largest contributor to the gdp and uh, tourism is a very integral part of services aap jis industry ko dominate kar rahe hain so uh, services ko grow karne ke liye uh, aur tourism ko khas taur pe bada karne ke liye are we doing enough i mean considering that we are a country with uh, you know 1.4 billion population and with so many places to visit tourism itself can be a great uh, force multiplier jahan tak gdp ka sawal hai आपने बड़ी अच्छी बात का जिक्र किया कि सर्विसेज कंट्रीब्यूट ग्रेटर टू जीडीपी देन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इस रूम में कितनों को पता था ये कि सर्विसेज कंट्रीब्यूट्स मोर टू जीडीपी देन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इन इंडिया देखिए छोटा ग्रुप है द स्टिल अ बिग ग्रुप दैट वाज नॉट अवेयर ये बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट चीज है कि वाइल मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एज अ सेक्टर नीड्स टू ग्रो एंड बिकम सिग्निफिकेंट और मुझे लगता है कि उसमें मेरे कोई सवाल नहीं है कि भारत में वी विल क्रिएट अ डोमिनेंट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर इन नेक्स्ट टेन ईयर्स उसके लिए सारा मोमेंटम है आई थिंक यू नो प्रोडक्शन लिंक बेनिफिट इज अ ग्रेट डायरेक्शन बट ये याद रखना जरूरी है कि भारत में सर्विसेज इज अ ग्रेट कंट्रीब्यूटर ऑलरेडी इफ यू सी इफ आई वेर टू रिप्लेस दिस क्वेश्चन जो मैंने आपको पूछा कि uh, भारत में सर्विसेज uh, क्या uh, बड़े जीडीपी हैं कि नहीं और मैं ये पूछूं कि आपके रिलेटिव और फ्रेंड्स एंड फैमिली में क्या कोई ना कोई आई सेक्टर में काम करता है शायद इस कमरे में हर इंसान हाथ उठाता 
आईटी सेक्टर तो सर्विसेस ही है मेरा व्यू ये है कि वाइल मैन्युफैक्चरिंग विल क्रिएट एडिशनल वैल्यू द आईटी एंड टेक्नोलॉजी सेक्टर हैज ह्यूज जूस लेफ्ट आई थिंक दे कैन जनरेट इन द नेक्स्ट टेन फिफ्टीन ईयर्स टू टू थ्री टाइम्स द जॉब्स दैट दे हैव क्रिएटेड सो फार उसके दो बड़े कारण हैं इंडिया वॉज अनस्टॉपेबल कंटिन्यूसली फॉर द लास्ट मेनी ईयर्स आई थिंक नाउ देर इज अ रीस्टार्ट और देर इज अ स्टार्ट ऑफ भारत अनस्टॉपेबल where there are small towns where there is a service economy that is growing quicker than ever before aap indore kabhi jaye aur airport se nikal kar ke shehar mein sarafa kahin pe bhi jo main to khane ka shaukeen hu to main aisi jagahon ki naam ka zikr kar raha hu you will find names of companies which are large technology enterprises in japan us latin america wo indore mein baith kar ke apna engineering show chala rahe मतलब आजकल बात होती है टोक्यो में कि भाई अगर इंजीनियरिंग स्टोर शॉप शुरू करना है ना तो इंदौर में कर लो वहां पे इंजीनियर अच्छे मिल जाएंगे दिस इन माय व्यू इज द स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट ऑफ अ लॉन्ग टर्म जर्नी फॉर द सर्विसेज इंडस्ट्री और मुझे लगता है कि उसमें भारत एक बहुत बड़ा कंज्यूमर बेस है बट इंडिया फॉर द वर्ल्ड इज एन इवन बिगर बेस आई बिलीव दैट फंडामेंटली जैसे चीन ने मैन्युफैक्चरिंग पे एक लीडरशिप कमाई इंडिया ने उस सर्विस में ऑलरेडी कर लिया बट उसमें मार्केट शेयर में भारत के पास में शायद पांच दस गुना का अपॉर्चुनिटी और अगले दस साल में कम से कम तीन से पांच गुना का टूरिज्म में देखिए सबसे आसान चीज मुझे तो मैं अभी बाहर में दो लोगों से मिल लिया उन्होंने कहा कि देखिए होटल का रेट आजकल इतना बढ़ा हुआ है मतलब आप थोड़ा इसको कम करने में कंट्रीब्यूट कीजिए तो इट जस्ट शोज आप लोग सब ऐसा फील करते हो कि फ्लाइट्स के रेट बढ़े हुए हैं होटल के रेट बढ़े हुए हैं दट प्योरली सप्लाई डिमांड की बहुत सिग्निफिकेंट डिमांड है टूरिज्म के लिए इट इज अट वंस यू हैव अ ट्रेवल बग इट्स हार्ड टू गो बैक और भारत एज एन इकोनॉमी भी देखिए कि इज चेंजिंग फ्रॉम अ सेविंग बेस्ड इकोनॉमी टू अ कंजम्पन बेस्ड इकोनॉमी तो उसके अंदर में ट्रैवल एंड टूरिज्म विल प्ले अ बिग रोल मैकेजी कहता है भारत दुनिया का टॉप फोर ट्रैवल स्पेंडर्स में से एक बन रहा है आप छोटे छोटे शहर में अभी हमारे एक दोस्त से बात करें जो आयल ऑफ द स्काई जा रहे थे यूनाइटेड किंगडम में उन्होंने कहा कि मैं छह साल पहले गया था फ्लाइट में सत्तर प्रतिशत लोग चाइनीज थे मैं अभी रिसेंटली गया फ्लाइट में सत्तर पिछहत्तर प्रतिशत लोग भारतीय थे राइट तो देर इज अ रैपिड ग्रोइंग फोर्स ऑफ इंडियन ट्रेवलिंग अब्रॉड विद इन इंडिया इज ह्यूज और उस पर टेक्नोलॉजी का इंपैक्ट अगर आप देखें तो मैं अभी रिसेंटली गया था बैप्स मंदिर जो हिंदू मंदिर अबुधाबी में अभी प्राण प्रतिष्ठा हुई वहां पे तो वहां पर इतनी सुंदर कलाकृति है उसकी कहानी जानने के लिए वो छोटी छोटी क्यू आर कोड लगा रहे हैं कि आप उसको अगर लगा लें तो आपको वीडियो दिख जाए कि उस, उस कला के पीछे कहानी क्या है उसकी कॉन्टेक्स uh, क्या है सिमिलरली नए जगह पहले लोग कहते थे कि हिमाचल जाना है तो शिमला चले जाओ मनाली चले जाओ मेरा आप लोग से एक रिक्वेस्ट होगा जो भी ट्रैवल के शौकीन है एक जगह आप लोग जरूर जाइएगा मेरा आजकल इंक्रीजिंगली फेवरेट है हिमाचल में जीभी नाम का इट्स वन ऑफ द प्रिटीएस्ट प्लेस आई है छोटे छोटे गाँव है जो शायद लोगों ने नहीं सुना होगा बट टेक्नोलॉजी के माध्यम से और लोगों का ट्रैवल और टूरिज्म के इंटरेस्ट के कारण मैं देखता हूं कि ये सारे छोटे जगह पॉपुलर होंगे अब उससे क्या हुआ है जिबी में जॉब्स आ गए जिबी की इकोनॉमी बेहतर हो रही है वहां पे जब मैं पहले जाता था छह सात साल पहले लोग कहते थे कि किसी तरीके से जिंदगी कट जाए आजकल लोग कहते हैं कि जी ये तो ठीक हमारा घर ठीक हो गया क्यों ना हम लोग अभी ग्रीन एनर्जी का इस्तेमाल करें हमारे घर में क्योंकि उनके पैसे अभी निवेश करने के लिए और ये सिर्फ हिमाचल की बात नहीं है मैं जम्मू कश्मीर में देख रहा हूँ नॉर्थ ईस्ट में जो बॉर्डर विलेज प्रोग्राम माननीय गृह मंत्री जी ने शुरू किया है उसका बड़ा इंपैक्ट पॉजिटिव इंपैक्ट आ रहा है वहां के विलेजर्स में तो मुझे लगता है ट्रैवल और टूरिज्म विल ड्राइव इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ लोगों के लिए एक्सपीरियंसिस और सीखने का मौका बढ़ेगा बट जो वो छोटे गाँव और शहरों की जहां पर टूरिज्म बढ़ेगा उनकी इकोनॉमी में इम्पैक्ट आने वाला है वो सबसे बड़ा फोर्स मल्टीप्लायर है ऐसा मुझे लगता है रितेश ऑल्सो ये जो स्टार्टअप का पूरा इकोसिस्टम है एंड ऑब्वियसली आई मीन देर हैव बीन डिस्कशन फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम नाउ अबाउट फंडिंग विंटर एंड ऑल आई डोंट वांट टू गेट इनटू दैट लेकिन पूरे स्टार्टअप इकोसिस्टम को uh, एक सोर्स ऑफ एफडीआई के तौर पे uh, ज्यादा और स्ट्रक्चर्ड तरीके से फॉर्मली एनर्जाइज uh, किया जा सकता है वॉट इज योटेक देखिए मैं पहले फंडिंग विंटर को एड्रेस करता हूं सबसे पहला तो कॉन्टेक्स्ट यह है कि कैपिटल मार्केट्स कभी बढ़ती हैं कभी कम होती है तो कभी कैपिटल ज्यादा आता है कभी कम आता है बट अगर आप एक सस्टेन्ड इम्पैक्ट देखें तो आज भी मतलब मैं शायद पिछले क्वार्टर का देख रहा था कि लगभग 40 पचास हजार करोड़ का एफ आया है प्राइवेट टेक कंपनीज के अंदर में तो ऐसा कोई 
डिस्प्रोपोर्शनल ड्रॉप नहीं है हाँ ये बात है कि वो पचास हजार करोड़ शायद पिछहत्तर हो सकता था अस्सी हो सकता था और उसको हम बेहतरी करने का इम्पैक्ट लेके आएंगे पर मुझे लगता है कि कठिन समय इज ऑल्सो एन अपॉर्चुनिटी ओयो के लिए मैं आपको बताता हूँ कोविड का समय बहुत कठिन था सा मतलब ट्रैवल का सेक्टर सबके लिए कठिन था हमारे लिए भी कठिन था बट मैंने देखा है कि वो कठिन वक्त हमारे ग्रोथ का और प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी का सबसे बड़ा फाउंडेशन बना आज हम लोग प्रॉफिटेबल हो पा रहे हैं कैश फ्लो जनरेट कर पा रहे हैं ग्रो कर पा रहे हैं क्योंकि हमने जब वो कठिन वक्त देखा तो हमें समझ में आया कि कहाँ स्पेंड करना चाहिए कहाँ नहीं स्पेंड करना चाहिए कहाँ फोकस करना चाहिए कहाँ नहीं फोकस करना चाहिए तो मुझे लगता है वैसे ही दूसरे स्टार्टअप के लिए एक तरीके से पिछला साल एक तरीके से फंडिंग विंटर था तो उन्होंने वो समय इस्तेमाल किया अपने आप को ट्रांसफॉर्म करने के लिए पर आप न्यूज देखें तो आज के दिन में मैं अभी न्यूज जो पढ़ रहा हूं पिछले एक दो महीने से कि जितने बड़े फंड्स हैं सब इन्वेस्ट करने के लिए वापस आ रहे हैं मैंने अभी पढ़ा कि सॉफ्ट बैंक एक नया इन्वेस्टमेंट आ रहा है मैंने पढ़ा कि टाइगर एक इन्वेस्टमेंट कराई ये सब फर्स्ट हैंड इन्फॉर्मेशन से नहीं बता रहा मैं न्यूज से बता रहा हूँ बट आई थिंक द कॉन्टेक्स इज इट कैपिटल इज कमिंग बैक वेरी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्गली स्टार्टअप्स भारत में दो बड़ी चीजों के लिए इम्पैक्ट क्रिएट करेंगे एक मैंने आपको जॉब्स के लिए बताया ऑलरेडी पहले दूसरा जो एफ है उसमें अगर आप देखें तो दुनिया में आज अगर आप न्यूयॉर्क में बैठे हैं लंदन में बैठे हैं और आप कह रहे हैं कि मुझे भारत में इन्वेस्ट करना है आप क्यों करेंगे भारत में इन्वेस्ट ग्रोथ के लिए क्योंकि जितनी आज भारत में ग्रोथ है उतनी आज दुनिया में कहीं पे भी नहीं है और भारत के अंदर में ग्रोथ सबसे ज्यादा कौन सी कंपनीज में वो नए स्टार्टअप्स में है जो यंग बच्चे कॉलेजेस से निकल करके आ रहे हैं कंपनी से काम करके निकल करके आ रहे हैं और उनमें एक सपना है कि हम भी अपनी कंपनी बनाए उनमें है तो उस कारण से देर इज अ रैपिड ग्रोइंग एफ मुझे लगता है कि अगले अगर आप देखें तो पिछले पांच साल में एफ उसके पहले के पांच साल से स्टार्टअप्स के थ्रू लगभग तीन से चार गुना बढ़ा है मेरा व्यू है कि अगला पांच साल अगर आप देखेंगे वो मल्टीप्लीकेशन सिमिलर होगा तीन से चार गुना आप और देखेंगे इसमें आप उतार चढ़ाव देखेंगे कि किसी साल थोड़ा कम किसी साल थोड़ा ज्यादा बट आप पांच साल वैसे कहते हैं ना मतलब आ, ट्रेडर और इन्वेस्टमेंट में डिफरेंस होता है वैसे ही आप इसे एक इन्वेस्टर की तरह अगर देखेंगे तो देर इज अस्टेन्ड ग्रोथ अपॉर्चुनिटी ट्रेडर की तरह देखेंगे तो हो सकता है हाँ दो क्वार्टर ऊपर नीचे रहेगा बट आई थिंक द इंडियन स्टार्टअप स्टोरी इज सिंगुलर डायरेक्शन और इसमें मैं आपको जोमेटो का एक इंटरेस्टिंग एग्जाम्पल देता हूँ कि पब्लिक कंपनी वहां पर जोमेटो वेंट थ्रू अ बिग हाई देन हैड सम ड्रॉप एंड पीपल से देखो चैलेंज दो क्वार्टर के लिए था एंड नाउ इट इज बैक टू इट्स बिगेस्ट स्टोरी ऑफ जोमेटो दट स्टोरी ऑफ जोमेटो दट स्टोरी ऑफ हमारा इन इबेडा या अर्निंग्स जो कोविड में था वो नीचे गया सबने कहा कि कोविड में ओयो पक्का नहीं बचेगी इट्स अ टफ टाइम बट नाउ वी आर बैक नाउ पीपल से दैट मतलब एंड नाउ द डिस्कशन इज सींग दैट वेदर ओयोज रेवेन्यू विल बी एट थाउजेंड करोड़ और टेन थाउजेंड करोड़ तो मुझे लगता है कि वो बदलाव बहुत जल्दी आता है आप भरोसा रखें कि भारत के नौजवान अच्छी कंपनीज बनाएंगे और ड्रामेटिक इंपैक्ट लेके आएंगे कंपनी इकोनॉमी में अगर वो करेंगे तो एफडीआई डी जम के आएगा भारत में सो so, रितेश हमने काफी बात की कि पोटेंशियल कितना है और uh, कितना तेजी से देश बढ़ सकता है uh, लेकिन बिकॉज वी आर कनेक्टेड विद ग्लोबल इकोनॉमी और हम ग्लोबल इकोनॉमी की बात करते हैं सो so, अगले पांच दस साल में क्या भारत एल्फाबेट एप्पल माइक्रोसॉफ्ट एमेजोन इस साइज की इस कद की कोई कंपनी प्रोड्यूस कर सकता है उतना इनोवेशन कर सकता है उस स्केल पे ऑपरेट कर सकता है बिकॉज दैट इज वॉट इज गोइंग टू मैटर गोइंग फॉरवर्ड द साइज एंड स्केल देखिए ये बहुत अच्छा सवाल आपने पूछा अगर आप देखें तो पिछले दस साल में फर्स्ट ऑफ आई थिंक द शॉर्ट आंसर इज मोस्ट सर्टेनली इंडिया विल क्रिएट कंपनी इक्वल और बिगर देन गूगल फेसबुक एमेजॉन जितनी आपने कंपनीज का नाम बताया मुझे उसमें कोई सवाल नहीं है बट मे, मेरा प्रॉब्लम क्या है कि लोग कहते हैं कि यार आप ऑन्टरप्रन्योर हैं तो ऑप्टिमिस्ट होना तो आपका मतलब जॉब डिस्क्रिप्शन है तो मैं क्या करूं पर थोड़ा मैं आपको उसलिए एक्सप्लेनेशन या प्रूफ पॉइंट बताता हूं आप दस साल पहले सोचिए आप, आप में से कितने लोगों ने म्यूचुअल फंड एस या स्टॉक मार्केट से कुछ भी इन्वेस्ट कर रखा है राइट right? लगभग लगभग कहिए 50 प्रतिशत से ज्यादा लोगों ने इस कमरे में कर रखा है 10 साल पहले आप भारत की स्टॉक मार्केट को देखिए भारत की सबसे बड़ी कंपनीज को देखिए वो आज से शायद आधा गुना के होते थे राइट पहले लोग कहते थे कि इंडियन स्टॉक मार्केट में लिस्ट करें कि नहीं करें क्योंकि लिक्विडिटी इतनी है कि नहीं मार्केट में क्या पता आज भारत मेरी अंडरस्टैंडिंग है रिसेंटली लंडन स्टॉक एक्सचेंज से आगे निकल गया As being the world's top three stock exchanges, right? 
पहले लोगों का सपना होता था कि भारत में नहीं लंदन में जाके लिस्ट करेंगे आज के दिन में भारत ने उस स्टॉक एक्सचेंज को पीछे छोड़ दिया और ये आज की बात है जब हम ये कह रहे हैं कि हम टॉप फाइव से टॉप थ्री इकोनॉमी में जाएंगे और उसके बाद टॉप टू इकोनॉमीज में जाएंगे तो मुझे लगता है कि मैक्रो हमारे साथ है दूसरा है माइक्रो आज के दिन में क्या आप जानते हैं कि एमेजॉन एप्पल जितनी कंपनियां आपने बताई उनका सबसे बड़ा इंजीनियरिंग सेंटर आफ्टर यूनाइटेड स्टेट कहां पर हर कंपनी का भारत में इंडिया होस्ट द लार्जेस्ट नंबर ऑफ इंटेलेक्चुअल वर्कर्स नॉट फिजिकल वर्कर्स इंटेलेक्चुअल जो दिमाग लगा रहे हैं ब्रेनी लोग जो दुनिया के उनके सबसे बेस्ट इंजीनियर है वो हैदराबाद बैंगलोर डेली गुड़गांव नोएडा यहां पे बैठे हुए मेरे हिसाब से क्योंकि टैलेंट हमारे पास में पिछले दस साल में भारत के स्टार्टअप्स में क्या हुआ टैलेंटेड इंडिविजुअल एंटरप्रीनोर सेट दैट वी विल नॉट परस्यू जॉब वी विल नॉट परस्यू गोइंग टू ओवरसीज कंट्रीज विल बिल्ड आर ओन कंपनी That will happen to the broader talent as well. On the other hand, customer consumption is rapidly growing. बहुत rapidly भारत का अपना consumption grow कर रहा है. और तीसरा, मेरे I think मेरे क्या सब लोग बहुत दिलचस्पी से हमारे external affairs minister साहब जयशंकर साहब को सुनते हैं. उन्होंने भारत का जो एक reputation बनाया है विदेशों में, उसके कारण हर देश में लोग भारत के साथ business करना चाहते हैं. अगर आप देखें ये सारी companies हैं दो strength हैं. वो अपनी डोमेस्टिक इकोनॉमीज में अपने सेगमेंट पे डोमिनेट करते हैं या लीड करते हैं और विदेशों में लीड करते हैं और उस पर यूएस का सॉफ्ट पावर का बहुत बड़ा हिस्सा है जैसे भारत का सॉफ्ट पावर बढ़ रहा है बहुत सारे देश भारत से बिजनेस करना चाह रहे हैं उससे इंडियन कॉरपोरेशन आर एबल टू ग्रो दर बिजनेस अराउंड द वर्ल्ड एंड वी डू इट वेरी प्राउडली यू शुड नो दैट जब हम डेनमार्क में हमारे स्टोर लगाते हैं या फिर हमारे ऑफिस uh, खोलते हैं उसके बाहर में हम लोग भारत का झंडा भी उतने ही इज्जत से लहराते हैं जितने इज्जत से शायद Uh, uh, जब फॉर्ड जाकर के अपना यूएस का फ्लैग लहराता है और मुझे लगता है कि वो इसलिए पॉसिबल है क्योंकि लोग चाहते हैं कि भारतीय कंपनीज के साथ वो बिजनेस करें राइट वन लास्ट क्वेश्चन टू यू रितेश इलेक्शंस भी आने वाले हैं एंड यू आर अ यूथ आइकन इनफैक्ट आई वॉज क्वाइट सरप्राइज वेन यू टोल्ड मी दैट दिस इज ओनली द सेकेंड टाइम जब आप किसी जनरल इलेक्शन के लिए वोट करने वाले हैं सो वन इज वाई इज दैट एंड सेकेंड इज वॉट इज योर मैसेज फॉर द यूथ of the nation dekhi uh, the reason it's a second general election is just my age it's a function of uh, the years i have lived but uh, but i am of course mera do mai jab bharat ke yuva se baat karta hu hamare jo dost hain colleagues hain communities mein mai baat karta hu un sab jo mere umr ke hain ya fir mere se chote hain to mai do cheeze dekhta hu sabse pehla ye ki we discussed about indian youth wanting to thrive not सरवाइव भारतीय यूथ जो है आगे चल करके जीतना चाहता है और फ्लरिशिंग भारत को देखना चाहता है और उसको लेकर के उनका मानना है कि जो भी तरीके से हम लोग हमारे वॉइस से भारत को एक लीडिंग फोर्स बना सके दुनिया में भारत जो एक पॉजिटिव मोमेंटम है उसके मोमेंटम को और एनर्जी दे सके तो वो उस पर एंगेज करना चाहते हैं मेरा एक ही रिक्वेस्ट है कि द पॉजिटिव फीलिंग कि आपने वोट किया और उस वोट का डिफरेंस हुआ वो एक अनपैरल एक्सपीरियंस है मैं समझता हूं कि आप लोग युवा कहीं ट्रैवल कर रहे होंगे कहीं और जॉब करते हैं कुछ काम पे होंगे पर प्लीज मेरा रिक्वेस्ट होगा कि प्लीज समय निकाल करके वोट करने जरूर जाएं मुझे लगता है कि आपको उसके बाद में पांच साल तक हमारी भाषा में फोमो होता रहेगा फियर ऑफ मिसिंग आउट उसके अगले इलेक्शन में तो उससे अच्छा इंस्टेड ऑफ मिसिंग आउट आप इसका एडवांटेज लीजिए प्लीज एक्सरसाइज योर फ्रेंचाइज एक तो बड़ा कैंपेन भी चल रहा है फर्स्ट टाइम वोटर जिसको मैंने आ, 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 उसके बारे में कंटेंट शेयर भी किया है तो मेरा रिक्वेस्ट होगा कि अगर आप पहले टाइम के वोटर हैं या दूसरे टाइम के वोटर हैं तो प्लीज इंश्योर करें कि आप जाकर के वोट करें भारत दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा डेमोक्रेसी है प्राउडली सो और आप अपना एक्सरसाइज फ्रेंचाइज करेंगे तो भारत की ग्रोथ के लिए बड़ा डिफरेंस क्रिएट करेगा All right thank you so much Ritesh for joining us on uh, Times Now summit aur bahut bahut shukriya aapka thank you thank you thank you so much all the very best Well thank you so much Meher as well as Ritesh and
It's lovely that this shark is a very grounded one, if we can say outside water, isn't it, Deepti? Great advice that he's given to the next generation of entrepreneurs as well. Absolutely. So I'm sure all of us can take a tip or two from uh, him. He's just walked out of the hall. But as always, Ritesh has been a rock star. Now, the next guest is no less a rock star. Many years ago, remember, we, and we were talking of boardrooms here. Round the world would have very detailed conversations about, quote unquote, the factory of the world that many said is China. Then these conversations moved on to quote unquote China plus a one strategy. And now in some quarters there is a conversation about a quote unquote Euro plus one strategy as well. Well, absolutely. And India is well placed to be one of the top contenders for these strategies. And our next speaker is also well placed to share the government's take on how India would be leading the new age of globalization. Of course, we are going to be bringing up our next big speaker. And all of you must have guessed it by now. It's going to be the Minister of Commerce and Industry Textiles. Consumer Affairs, Food as well as Public Distribution to the Government of India, Shri Piyush Goyal. And given that entire portfolio, as all of you can imagine, he is a busy, busy man and of course he wears several hats. Which is why it's very critical at this juncture to have someone who has been at the forefront of pushing for Atma Nirbharta when it comes to the Indian policies that the government policies have been looking into. But let's also remind our viewers uh, and all the audience who are seated here that you all must connect with us directly on social media as well. You must post your videos as well as photographs. Tell us what you think about all the panels that you've been attending, the sessions that you've seen, which are the favorites and which are the ones that you would like to see in future as well. Your feedback, of course, is going to be highly appreciated. You can just use the hashtag of Times, hashtag Times Now Summit 2024. Alternatively, you can also use the hashtag of TN Summit 2024. Oh, yes. And talking about Piyush Goyal, this time, remember, he's fighting a Lok Sabha election. So there's clearly a lot of interest, you know, because I'm also a student of politics. That's the, you know, first thing that I'll be looking at once we'll have Piyush Goyal in the hall. Uh, he said to be very affable, very popular with the masses there. There's a lot of ground connect that, you know, Netas really bring in today's day and time, you know, Meghna. The point is there is social media, there is access to so much of information. Mm -hmm. So if the Neta, if your candidate does not work, he does not have that connect. Voters always have a choice. Uh, you know, just quoting from what Rajnath Singh Ji earlier said, the choice when it comes to the INDI alliance, where would that battle really shape up? You're talking of Maharashtra, we are talking of the prestigious seats in Mumbai. So Piyush Goel there, uh, it's, you know, been a significant busy time for him through the campaigns and stuff, and he's taken out the time to be with us here in this Times Now Summit, it's an absolute honor. And any moment now, in fact, he'll be in the hall and it'll be very, very interesting to hear what Piyush Koel Meghna has to say also on this interesting journey that he's taking now from the Rajya Sabha to the Lok Sabha. And Deepthi, you just mentioned that he's from the state of Maharashtra. That's very critical, of course, because that's where we have the financial capital of mm -hmm. India, the investment hub. So one of the things that Piyush Goyal has been working very closely and actively towards is mm -hmm. Make in India. That has been a part of the larger Atma Nirbhar Bharat as well, the vision that has been scripted by the government. And this is not just going to be a vision for the next 10 years. It's all the way up to 1947, where we are hoping that India will become one of the top three uh, top economies. That is a promise till uh, 2029, and hopefully we are going to be on track for that, which is why it's very important for us to hear this minister, because he is one of the people who's at the mm. forefront of leading this vision of where India wants to be, not just in Tisri Bar, as it has been said by Prime Minister Modi earlier. He says that in his Tisri Bar, he'll ensure that India's the top top three, within the top three economies of India, but also how to realize this dream. Uh, someone like Piyush Goel is, of course, uh, he is the Minister of Commerce, Industry, Textile, Consumer Affairs. All of this is going to be very critical to ensure that we get invest in India as well, something that he himself has championed, Preeti, very oh, yes. actively as well. Absolutely. But Piyush Goel, ladies and gentlemen, is just not the only special guest. As we'll bring up the day, you'll also have Hardeep Singh Puri. He is also a guest speaker here, along with Anurag Thakur. And do remember all these, uh, you know, leaders right now, all these uh, politicians are right in the middle of this battle. And because our summit is right 
so close to the upcoming Lok Sabha elections, you cannot just miss the fact that uh, there is clearly that entire narrative that the BJP has built up ki baar char so par. You've seen Netas right from Asmati Rani yesterday to Kangna, who now is in the electoral yes. foray, saying yes. that bilkul hoga ab ki baar char so par hoga. Will that happen or not is something time will tell, but we are at Times Network. Continue with our focus on conversations, on leaders who not just speak about what's happening today, but we are also looking at the future. And uh, till we'll have Piyush Goel in the hall, if we can just take a moment to play out a quick synopsis of what the Times Now Summit till now has been like, the highlights, if we can have the AV, please. When journalism is led by integrity and when experience meets passion, there is no scope for half-truths. When the noise drowns out the truth and many lose sight of what is the real issue. I ask the legitimate question and uncover the whole truth. Don't tax the poor people who are using petrol, diesel to go to work or to send their children to school. I give you the complete picture in black and white. Not a colored opinion, facts that help you form your opinion. The News on at 9. Weeknights at 9, only on Times Now. Truth isn't very... Well, a warm uh, welcome to uh, the Minister, the Union Minister of Commerce and Industry as well as Textiles, Consumer Affairs, Food, Public Distribution to the Government of India, Shri Piyush Goyalji, and may we request Navika Kumar to uh, felicitate and welcome the Honourable Minister. Please do come up here on the stage. A bigger round of applause, please. We'd like to present you with a token of our appreciation. Navika, right behind you. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate <laughs> it, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Union Minister Piyush Goel with us uh, this morning. And uh, Piyush Goel ji, zindagi badal gayi hai. From cabinet uh, to being a candidate uh, contestant in this election, fighting from Mumbai North, how much has life changed for you? What do you mean by from cabinet to candidate? I continue to be in the cabinet. Cabinet, of course, you've been uh, for many, many years in the cabinet. I'm saying now you are in the heat and dust of elections and a contestant yourself. Nothing. Is that a change of role, mm -hmm. a change of uh, uh, lifestyle, a change in the kind of work that you're doing? Certainly, certainly a change in the type of work, but no, nothing new for me. I've been uh, helping others fight elections for almost 35 years now. So it's just great fun that uh, you're doing it for yourself. And uh, remembering all the great times you've had campaigning, going around, uh, let's say, running um, Adwani Ji's campaign in 1989 in New Delhi when he contested uh, for the first time in his life. And uh, I remember we used to mount a gun, somewhat similar to this boom there, and we made a toy gun which was a replica of a Beaufort's uh, tank. And we used to go to truck in every place, and we used to go to the truck, So it's remember, I'm reminded of all those good old days. We used to go to every home in Bappa Nagar, Kaka Nagar, campaigning for Advani Ji, and I'm doing the same now for myself. You've been a Mumbaiker for uh, all your life, so... Uh... Mumbaikar, seat in North Mumbai, uh, how is the challenge and uh, uh, has electioneering, you have said about 1989, how much difference between the campaigning and the styles of the campaign? I think with the advent of television in a big way, social media playing an increasingly important role and there's the animal in the room which we have yet to experience artificial intelligence and deep fakes 
which uh, would also be a matter of concern and I do hope friends in the media are going to be very conscious and cautious about uh, this concern. Clearly there is a huge change from the past till now. In 89 we used to write voter slips, they are all computerized now. 89 the method was more based on pamphlets, now it's political wars are fought on social media. However, there's a lot of similarity also. The people-to-people -people connect remains unchanged. The door-to-door -door campaign is the most effective way to reach out to your constituents. The confidence that you can generate amongst your voters that you are fighting for a party, for a cause, and a leader who will bring good governance, public welfare, and a better future for India is very important. This being a Lok Sabha election, I think it's uh, clearly an election where national issues and India's future becomes center stage and not the local issues of, uh, you know, of the MLAs or of the corporators. So it's that uh, recognition that you have to get amongst the voters. And I think then you are home and through. You're home and through? Sirf Never Modi be ka overconfident in an election. Every election has to be fought with the front foot, uh, full gusto. Keep your uh, team under a little bit of pressure. Never be overconfident. Surprises can happen. But with Prime Minister Narendra Modi, and the leadership that he's given to the country over the last 10 years, with the popularity that he enjoys today across the country, including in North Mumbai. I don't think I have much to fear. I'll give you a small example. I was out there playing Holi after many, many years, literally playing Holi with the kids and uh, youngsters in my area. And uh, everywhere I was asked to say a few words I used to give a little bit of a spin about uh, India, the growth story, blah, blah. Not much resonance. And then I would just say, Modi hai to, and there the whole crowd would burst out, Monke ne. I would say, ab ki bar, the whole youngsters would be screaming, uh, char so bar. If I would say, Jai Shri Ram, the whole crowd was doubly in gusto, arms on the air. All youngsters, Jai Shri Ram. So there, there are a lot of similarities, a lot of newness. So, so the question here is uh, that you don't really have to give an account of your work. If you just say, Modi, people believe work has been done. But uh, that's, that's really not what uh, the opposition says. The opposition says, Aap dare hue hain. Isliye roz... Uh, नए नए लीडर्स को आप दूसरी पार्टियों से तोड़कर ला रहे हैं और नए नए अलायंस पार्टनर बना रहे हैं जो आज तक आपने जिनकी तरफ ध्यान नहीं दिया मुझे लगता है कि प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में इस सरकार ने 10 साल काम किया तो हम सब का काम उनके साथ जुड़ा हुआ है उनके नेतृत्व में उनके मार्गदर्शन में हुआ तो स्वाभाविक रूप से देश को ध्यान में आता है कि देश की जो उन्नति हुई है जिस प्रकार से हम फ्रेजाइल फाइव से टॉप फाइव इकोनॉमी में आए जो आज मोदी जी ने कहा वो करके दिखाया इतने वर्षों में चाहे अर्थव्यवस्था को मजबूत बनाना आधारभूत सुविधाएं इन टर्म्स ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर में वृद्धि करना और मॉडर्न अच्छा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर जिस प्रकार से गरीब कल्याण और सुशासन प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी का कॉलिंग कार्ड रहा है विशेषता रही है कि उन्होंने गरीबों के लिए बिना भेदभाव देश भर में एक जीवन को जीवन के स्तर को सुधारने का ईज ऑफ लिविंग का काम किया स्वाभाविक है कि उनकी लोकप्रियता चरम सीमा पर है ऐसे में हम अपना रिपोर्ट कार्ड जरूर देते हैं हम बताते हैं कि किन किन विषयों में कैसे देश आगे बढ़ाए और कैसे अब देश की दृष्टिकोण दो तक विकसित भारत बनने के साथ ही साथ दूसरा पहलू को भी भूल नहीं सकते कि लोगों का जो विश्वास है मोदी जी के ऊपर लोगों की जो प्रतिबद्धता है कि मोदी जी है तो अवश्य देश आगे जाएगा मोदी 
कि गारंटी पे जो उनको विश्वास है कि वो गारंटी पूरी होने की गारंटी है ये स्वाभाविक रूप से आज प्रभाव कर रहे हैं देश पर में और इसी के कारण शायद आपके भी सर्वे ने 400 से ज्यादा 411 सौ ग्यारह या कुछ सीटें दिखाई थी और अब तो चुनाव शुरू भी नहीं हुआ है तो आप कल्पना करिए आगे जाके कहा रुकेगी गाड़ी लेकिन फिर विपक्ष आप पे क्यों कहता है कि आप डरे हुए हैं क्योंकि आप दूसरी पार्टियां तो, तोड़ रहे हैं पहले विपक्ष तय कर ले कि विपक्ष कौन है विपक्ष का नेता कौन है विपक्ष को कौन रिप्रेजेंट कर रहे हैं अभी तो हमें यही नहीं समझ में आ रहा है कि जनता के सामने मोदी बनाम प्रश्न चिन्ह ही बना हुआ है हम जानना चाहते हैं कि राहुल गांधी जी को अनाउंस तो करिए कैंडिडेट हम तो वेट कर रहे हैं कि अपना लीडर तो चिन्हित करें वो लोग दे हैव टू अनाउंस द लीडर नेशन वांट्स टू नो के हु विल बी द पर्सन हु इज एन अल्टरनेट टू मिस्टर मोदी हु कैन डू हाफ और क्वार्टर और टेन परसेंट ऑफ द वर्क मिस्टर मोदी एज कैन हु कैन इंस्पायर कॉन्फिडेंस इन हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी करोड़ इंडियंस तो पहले तो वो तय कर लें कि नेता कौन है फिर तय कर लें कि केरल में गाली देंगे और वेस्ट बंगाल में मित्रता करेंगे मुंबई में एक इंडी अलायंस पता नहीं इंडी है उन, अंडा है क्या है समझ नहीं आ रहा है मुझे है तो अंडा ही वो अलायंस क्योंकि मुंबई में उनकी सभा होती है तृणमूल कांग्रेस की नेत्री जो नेता है वो वहां पे आती है ममता जी लेकिन पश्चिम बंगाल में कांग्रेस को एक सीट देने को तैयार नहीं है तो वहां भी अलायंस टूट जाता है पंजाब में बोलते हैं कि हमारा अलायंस नहीं है एक दूसरे को रोज गाली दे रहे हैं और दिल्ली में एक या दो सीट कुछ अलायंस की है तो ये बड़ा विचित्र सी स्थिति है जिसमें समझ नहीं आ रहा है कि पार्टनरशिप है या नहीं है आप ऐसा तो नहीं कह सकते ना कि सरदार पटेल मार्ग में हम मित्र हैं जब तक न्याय मार्ग में आएंगे तो दुश्मनी करेंगे जब तक शांति मार्ग पे पहुंचेंगे तो झगड़ा करेंगे और फिर तीन मूर्ति मार्ग पे पहुंचते पहुंचते थक जाएंगे मुझे लगता है कि एक कुछ निर्णय करें वास्तव में वो हमारे को टकरा देना चाहते हैं कि नहीं आ, हमें तो थोड़ी चिंता हो रही है कि अगर कोई रहेगा ही नहीं हमारे सामने तो हम लड़ेंगे किसके सामने हु विल बी आर ओपोनेंट्स और रही बात लोग छोड़ के उनकी पार्टी आ रहे हैं अब अभी अभी उनका आम आदमी पार्टी का एक एम पी चूज हुआ था जलंधर के बाई इलेक्शन में कितने छह आठ महीने पहले छह आठ महीने पहले उनका कैंडिडेट जो एमपी चुनाव जीतता है अगर उसको भी फ्रस्ट्रेशन आ जाती है छह महीने में ही उसको समझ में उनको समझ में आ जाता है कि भाई ये पार्टी भ्रष्टाचारी है ये पार्टी में पता नहीं कितने घोटाले चल रहे हैं कभी लिकर स्कैम कभी हेल्थ का स्कैम मोहल्ला क्लिनिक स्कैम कभी स्कूलों का स्कैम अब इतने सारे स्कैम देख के छह महीने में अगर व्यक्ति फ्रस्ट्रेट होकर छोड़ देता है और मैं समझता हूं ये तो उनको अपने आप में आत्मचिंतन करने की आवश्यकता है कि ये स्थिति क्यों निर्माण हुई लेकिन विपक्ष ये कहता है कि आप डरे हैं विपक्ष मतलब कौन बताइए तो सही अच्छा आम आदमी पार्टी ये कहते हैं तो स्पेसिफिक बोलो ना ओके आम आदमी एक आध पार्टी का नाम हो तो समझ में आता है क्योंकि विपक्ष समझ नहीं आता है एक एक करके लेती हूँ कौन दो कौन विपक्ष में राहुल गांधी भारत जोड़ो न्याय यात्रा उनके बारे में आप क्या कहेंगे अगर उन्होंने वास्तव में भारत जोड़ने की बात की होती तो हम तहे दिल से उनका स्वागत करते दुर्भाग्य यह है कि उनकी पार्टी तय नहीं कर पा रही है पा रही है कि वो भारत जोड़ना चाहते हैं या तोड़ना चाहते हैं अब न्याय यात्रा में वो क्या बात करते हैं आप याद करिए न्याय यात्रा में बात करते हैं कास्ट सेंसस होना चाहिए अब कास्ट सेंसस से मित्रों आप लोग बताइए देश जुड़ेगा या देश टूटेगा क्या होगा कास्ट सेंसस से आखिर हम समाज को जोड़ के बिना भेदभाव के देश को आगे लेके जाना चाहते हैं या देश में खलबली मचाना चाहते हैं वो कहते हैं जितनी जनसंख्या उतना आधार उतना अधिकार तो यानी फिर तो सब रिसोर्सेज अधिकांश उत्तर प्रदेश बिहार में जाने चाहिए दूसरी तरफ उनके एक उप मुख्यमंत्री डेप्यूटी चीफ मिनिस्टर का भाई जो स्वयं मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट है वो एक बयान देता है कि भाई दक्षिणी प्रदेश से जितना टैक्स आते हैं वो पूरा हमारे पास आना चाहिए और नहीं आएगा 
तो हम दक्षिणी राज्यों को सोचना पड़ेगा कि हम भारत से अलग हो जाए ये नॉर्थ साउथ डिवाइड कौन क्रिएट कर रहे हैं राहुल गांधी जी के चुने हुए चाहिए नेता तो अब उनको वक्तव्य देने से भारत जोड़ो नहीं होता है अपने व्यवहार में अपने काम में और अपनी सोच में जब तक वो भारत जोड़ने के बात नहीं करेंगे और काम नहीं करेंगे जब तक वो पहले अपने अलायंस को नहीं जोड़ेंगे अभी महाराष्ट्र में अलायंस बन रहा था एक तो पार्टी निकल के चली गई बहुजन क्या है वो प्रकाश अंबेडकर जी की पार्टी उसने तो छोड़ ही दिया उनका दामन आज सुबह मैं टाइम्स नाउ में देख रहा था बड़े झगड़े चल रहे हैं आपस में आप लोग भी इंटरव्यू कर रहे थे उनके नेताओं के संजय निरुपम जी कह रहे हैं कि अलायंस तोड़ देना चाहिए कुछ लोग उम्मीद में बैठे हैं अभी भी अलायंस हो जाएगा तो इतने बुरे हाल में है हमारा हमें देखो अलायंस होता है हमारी शर्तों पे सौगातपूर्ण तरीके से होता है तो होता है नहीं होता है तो हम स्पष्टीकरण कर देते हैं हम महीनों महीनों दिनों तक कोई लल्लो चप्पो नहीं करते हैं किसी की और ऐसा नहीं करते हैं कि दिल्ली में अलायंस और पंजाब में टूटा हमारी मित्रता है तो देश भर की है राष्ट्र हित में अगर आपको हमारी मित्रता नहीं चाहिए सो बी इट वी आर नॉट वरिड अबाउट इट देन वाई आर यू यूजिंग योर रियल अलायंस पार्टनर्स ईडी एंड सी बी आई अगेंस्ट दिशन लीडर्स आपके रियल अलायंस तो uh, देखिए नाविका जी देश को हमें भ्रष्टाचार मुक्त बनाना है उनको भ्रष्टाचार को बचाना है हमको भ्रष्टाचार को मिटाना है अब वो लोग तय कर ले कि वो जो भी गलत कारनामे किए हैं उसका भुगतान तो करना ही पड़ेगा ना एंड द लॉ कैचेज अप विद यू एंड लॉ इज कैचिंग अप विद पीपल हुरेगुलरिटीज तो मुझे लगता है ये बार बार बोलने से कोई भारत की जनता इनके बहकावे में नहीं आएगी मैंने सब कोलगेट की फाइल्स देखी है जब मैं कोल मिनिस्टर था रात को नींद नहीं आए ऐसे निर्णय कांग्रेस की सरकार ने लिए और पार्टनर्स तो वही थे तब भी वही थे आज भी वही हैं उल्टे तब ज्यादा को सिर्फ थे आज तो आधे अधूरे हैं लेकिन वो फाइलें अगर आप देखो आप आरटीआई करके निकालिए स्टीयरिंग कमेटी थर्टी फाइव थर्टी सिक्स थर्टी सेवन कोल ब्लॉक एलोकेशन की आप हैरान होंगे एक एप्लीकेंट है कोयले के ब्लॉक का वो एप्लीकेंट सब झूठे दस्तावेज देता है झूठी जानकारियां लिखते हैं एप्लीकेशन में अपने आप को एलिजिबल बनाने को वो राज्य सरकार के पास जाती है राज्य सरकार बोलती है इनको नहीं दीजिए कोल ब्लॉक और किसी को ज्यादा अच्छा कैंडिडेट या ज्यादा अच्छा पावर प्लांट है जिसको मिलना चाहिए कोल ब्लॉक लाइन मिनिस्ट्री के पास जाती है बोलती है नहीं ये तीसरे को देना चाहिए और स्टीयरिंग कमेटी में कोई चर्चा नहीं है कोई रिकॉर्डेड इंस्ट्रक्ट डायरेक्ट डिस्कशन नहीं है कोई स्पीकिंग ऑर्डर नहीं है कि कारण नहीं है क्यों किसी को सिलेक्ट किया जो एप्लीकेंट था उसको भी नहीं मिला जो स्टेट ने रेकमेंड किया उसको भी नहीं मिला जो लाइन मिनिस्ट्री ने सुझाव दिया उसको भी नहीं मिला किसी चौथे आदमी को मिला जो टोटल इरेग्युलरिटी से लिप्त था लेकिन कोई नेता जेल कारनामे करेंगे लेकिन कोई कांग्रेस का नेता जेल नहीं नाविका जी ऐसे कारनामे करेंगे देखिए कानून की व्यवस्था भारत में समय लगता ही हम सब जानते हैं आप अगली बार जब मान्य चीफ जस्टिस जी आएंगे तो उनसे आप इस विषय में भी चर्चा कर लेना पर उस विषय में हम तो कोई दखल अंदाजी कर नहीं सकते तो कानून तेज गति से हो खासतौर पर एम पी के केसेस तेजी से हो ये तो देश की देश के निर्णय था और शायद सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने भी ऑर्डर दिया था तो अगर ईडी सीबीआई अपना काम कर रहे हैं तो स्वतंत्र ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है और अपने मैंडेट को फुलफिल कर रहे हैं अगर ये लोग डर रहे हैं कोई तो दिल में जरूर कोई चोट है जिसकी वजह से डर रहे हैं चोट और खोट दोनों ही है सो लेट मी लेट मी आस्क यू दिस द चार्ज अगेंस्ट योर गवर्नमेंट इज दैट यू रन अ वॉशिंग मशीन anybody who has any cases against them can join your party my question to you is not the washing machine question my question to you is if mr kejriwal wants to join bjp <laughs> what will you do will his cases go away nahi pehli baat to ye charge bebuniyad hai it's totally uh, irresponsible and uncalled for all the cases on anybody 
are going through their due course and there will be nobody who will be spared from the due process of law. The courts will decide, the investigative agencies will do their work. There's no question of any pardon for anybody who has done wrong, point one. Point two, clearly people who have looted the country, who have on the one hand made tall claims and promises to the people of Delhi and let down the mandate of the people will never be welcome in the BJP. Ashok Chavan, welcomed by the BJP. Well, Ashok, Chavan's, Ashok Chavan's cases continue to go on. If he is found guilty and he has said it himself, he will have to face the consequences. And uh, Arvind Kejriwal, if he joins you, bail to mil jayegi? No, we join karne ke liye humko tay karna padta hai. We decide who join and who will not join. But you are all welcome. Because in the BJP, people say that it is so important. You take it from the party, you take it from the Congress. There is no doubt. In fact, people say that there will not be a candidate in any other party. It is like that, Navika Ji. Some years ago, I had a question. One time, our great worst leader, उनसे पूछा था कई वर्ष पहले तब भी हमने कुछ बाहर के लोग लिए थे और उस समय मैं भी उम्र में कम था तो मैंने थोड़ा उसपे टिप्पणी की थी तब मुझे ये बताया गया था और डेट रिंग्स इन माय माइंड इवन टुडे कि हमें सारे समाज को साथ में लेके चलना है समाज के हर वर्ग को वेलकम करना है समाज के अलग अलग लो जुड़े जिससे पार्टी का भी विस्तार हो पार्टी की एक्सेप्टेबिलिटी विनेबिलिटी भी बढ़े तब जाके हम देश की सेवा कर पाएंगे देश के लिए कुछ अच्छा करने में सफल होंगे हो सकता है अलोंग द वे पार्टी 100 परसेंट कोई कोर आइडियोलॉजी जो हमने 1950 में शुरू की थी भारतीय जनसंघ के समय से एग्जैक्ट आइडियोलॉजी में से रूटेड हर एक व्यक्ति ना हो लेकिन नए लोगों को जोड़ेंगे नए आइडियाज आएंगे नए समाज में प्रभाव बढ़ेगा और उसमें अगर कोई गलत काम करेगा तो उस पर पार्टी कार्रवाई करेगी व्यवस्थाएं उन पर कार्रवाई करेगी हम सर्टिफिकेट देने नहीं बैठे हैं किसी को गुड और बैड एक बेसिक स्क्रीनिंग जरूर करते हैं और बेसिक स्क्रीनिंग में अगर लगता है कि द पर्सन कैन बी टेकन एंड वी एक्सेप्ट पीपल बट Clearly with the understanding that there are no assurances. If at all any case is pending, anything is in process, the law will take its own course. Basic screening up karte hai, to pending CBI cases do not show up and blip in your basic screening. So everything is screened and finally a decision is taken uh, based on the data that is put up. But these are us. people you, your party has said have uh, you know done corruption have taken away the rights and when they land up in your party tell me isn't it ironical why should people of india believe that you are really out to clean corruption because these people find their way chunav ke samay aap inko criticize karte hain baad mein ye aapke saath baithe hue hote hain let us just clarify between two things one is the past and one is the future we are clearing out cleaning out corruption and that is evident from a 10 year scam free government that the BJP has run and India has run. As regards the old cases, as I said, there is no let up. Whoever it may be, whichever party the person may be, the law will take its own course. So I see absolutely no connection between the. But they're welcome two. to join your party. Depending on each case, we categorically decide basis, individual case, and what they bring to the table. So, so the question really goes from here to the alliances that you are trying to make, uh, BJD, Akali Dal. Pehle to aap in se dur ho jate hain, chunav ka vakt aata hai, aap in ke saath ho jate hain. The point I'm making is, what happens to ideology? What happens to the uh, platform on which you fight elections? 2013, you said something, those people are now part of the BJP bandwagon. Are we diluting ideology? 
I think uh, the basic ideology of the BJP is so strong that, or, or of the Jan Sangh originally and our larger family is so strong that nobody can ever dilute it. It is, we are rooted in that. The uh, main leadership is completely rooted in our ideology. People like me have grown up from childhood steeped in that ideology. So that ideology is very, very powerful. And it can absorb a lot of uh, people coming from outside the ideology. Hum unko hamare rang mein dal denge, hume unka rang kabhi nahi chal sakta. So Rahul Gandhi join kar sakta? We are looking for people of substance. We are looking for... At, <laughs> we are looking for people who bring value to the party, who add winnability to the party who come with ideas, who come with a vision for the country, who talk about the unity and integrity of the country, I suspect uh, he will not fit this bill. Kejriwal? Probably a tad less than uh, the first name. So, you are selective. In we don't want divisive forces or forces who are really not looking at the best interests of India in our party. But that certification you do. We assess each individual and take that. Let me ask you, Mr. Piyush Goel, 370 seats is the target stated by the Prime Minister for the BJP alone. Do you think, do you think this is achievable given the fact that 2019 was a peak uh, for Prime Minister Modi, 303 seats. From there on to 370 is another big jump. Uh, as a BJP karyakarta, a minister, a contestant this time, are you confident that 370 is achievable? Modi I think uh, in life, and I, I see a lot of youngsters in the room today and a lot of your viewers, youngsters would be viewing your channel. In life, one must never say die. One must always have the can-do spirit. And one must always aspire high. When you aspire high, you will achieve high. That Shah Rukh Khan ka dialogue is not? Om Shanti Om Me. When you have a lot of love, you will do a lot of love. 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 I think it's Paul Coelho's quote. If you desire something with great uh, passion, the entire universe conspires to help you achieve that. And I think that's been the way of working of this government for the last 10 years. Who had imagined, most people in this room are not voters in 2014, but for those who were, you all were all thinking and vacillating, kitni seats aayengi BJP ki, they'll need allies, support, this, that. We were confident. We'll cross 272. We went public with that number and we got 282. When the 2019 election was happening, I remember probably in the same hall in another program, I had said in October, if I'm not mistaken, October 2018, that BJP will get between 297 and 303 seats. And then I repeated it at the ET Awards in Mumbai. In November 2018, you can Google one of you, can Google it. In October, November 2018, my memory can be, dates can be here and there, figure is not. Figure was 297 to 303, we got 303. We are working to get 370 this time. We will cross 400 as the NDA and I would recommend to all of you that in anything you do in life, there is never a peak. Navika ji may have found 19 as a peak. And I certainly hope the Times Now channel doesn't work with uh, such low ambition peaks. Uh, always aspire big Navika ji. Your channel should aspire much, much higher than where you are. Just like we aspire for India. A developed and prosperous India by 2047. And we want you to be a part of that journey for your own prosperity. Also. Aspire to Rahul Gandhi bhi kar rahe hain. Unki aspiration ko aap kam haak rahe hain. Kyunki shamta honi chahiye. 
एस्पिरेशन पे विश्वसनीयता होनी चाहिए एस्पिरेशन करने के लिए दूरदृष्टता चाहिए अब दुर्भाग्य से ना तो क्षमता है ना आत्मविश्वास है ना लोगों के बीच में विश्वास है विश्वसनीयता है और ना दूरदृष्टि या विजन है ऐसी परिस्थिति में उनकी एस्पिरेशन पहले मैंने कहा ना वो अपना तय तो कर ले नेता तो घोषित होने की हिम्मत करें वो तो अमेठी से भी भाग गए एक सेफ सीट ढूंढने के लिए इस बार स्मृति जी ने शायद आपके सामने ही चुनौती दी थी कि उन्होंने आना चाहिए अमेठी पर आए नहीं प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के सामने हम सुन रहे थे प्रियंका गांधी जी खड़ी होंगी फिर वही पुराना कैंडिडेट जो कई वर्षों से मुंह की हार खा रहे वहां पे वही कांग्रेस ने अनाउंस किया हिम्मत होनी चाहिए लड़ने के लिए दैट इज टोटली मिसिंग इन द कांग्रेस वेल आई मस्ट आई मस्ट मेक एन ऑब्जर्वेशन आप हमारे सारे इंटरव्यूज देख रहे हैं तो आप जानते हैं कि टाइम्स नाउ एस्पायर भी करता है पीक्स अपने ही पीक्स को क्रॉस भी करता है और आपके जहन में भी रहता है देखो कितना सेल्फ रहते हैं कितना सेल्फ कॉन्ट्रोडिक्ट्री है हमें तो बोल दिया हमने 2019 में पीक किया और आप एस्पिरेशन ज्यादा पीक एट दैट टाइम आई सेड बट नेवर माइंड एवरी बाय द वे एक्सक्यूज मी व्हेन यू क्रॉस अ माउंटेन इन लाइफ व्हेन एंड आई आई से दिस टू ऑल द यंगस्टर्स इन द रूम पर्टिकुलरली एंड टू विनीत जैन एंड इज कलीग्स आल्सो व्हेन एवर यू क्रॉस अ माउंटेन इन योर लाइफ रिमेंबर देर आर मेनी मेनी मोर माउंटेन्स अहेड ऑफ यू टू क्रॉस never be satisfied always have the desire to do more achieve more keep this mantra all your life i i can't uh, contradict that and that really must be uh, the passion of everybody's life but uh, again coming back to elections and seats south of india last time in 2019 130 seats you got about 29 uh, in the south of india and at that time you had karnataka as a state under the bjp this time you have no government in the south of india do you think it will be a challenge well uh, we have taken massive strides in terms of development and outreach in uh, the southern parts of india the bjp after many years has a very strong leader in tamil nadu andamalai i have myself participated in many of his programs his n man n makkal yatra was a resounding success what a response across tamil nadu prime minister narendra modi's popularity is growing day by day in tamil nadu keral is fed up of governments of the left or the congress led udf because alternately they come into power and have done nothing for the development of kerala god's own country so much potential but just dependent on remittances they have not been able to really create the culture of growth and development in that state uh, in andhra pradesh chandra babu naidu ji realized that he had made a mistake he's come back with us we are fighting an alliance and we'll sweep the poll over there karnataka in seven in less than a year the people are frustrated with a divisive government with a government which is absolutely not fulfilled any of their promises so i see a resurgence in south india for the bjp in the coming election northeast is going to be a full complete sweep for bjp and nda uh, up we won 64 out of 80 seats last time 80 64 out of 80, 80. this time around we will be not less than 78 some people tell me you may actually cross go right up to 80 so the aspirations and our effort is really strong across the country we will all collectively wait for the 4th of june and you'll see the results which will really satisfy and gladden the hearts of 140 crore indians bengal bengal nishit pramanik our senior leader and minister from bengal and i were chatting yesterday and he said we were 18 last time this time at the very least at the very least 
we will go somewhere between 25 and 30. But given the mood on the ground there and the sentiment of the people, the kind of anger against a corrupt, insensitive government, also a government which uh, over the last few years has been totally anti-development of that state. He said we won't be surprised if we can go even above up to 35. So I think Bengal is going to be a big surprise. Uh, the Honorable Prime Minister spoke to our candidate from the constituency where Sandesh, Sandesh Kali is. And I tell you the, the mood of the nation, the mood of the West Bengal people, particularly the women, is such that ek tarfa BJP ke taraf chukhaav hone wale. And for that matter, wherever I go, the youth and the women are completely standing stoically and solidly behind Mr. Modi. Wherever I've gone, mailao mein aur yuvao mein, Pradhan Bhanti Narendra Modi ji ke liye jo sne hai, jo vishwas hai, this prakar ka unke andar <coughs> desire hai, ek aspiration hai, achche bhavishya ke liye. Unko pata hai ke Modi hi unke bhavishya ko savar sakta hai. Electoral bonds. You think uh, the decision of the courts has uh, put the BJP on Kal the back foot? You have talked about it on that day. What do you want to add to it? Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause because the Times Now Summit uh, has been followed in detail by Minister Piyush Goel. But honestly, you've been the treasurer of the party. And I am not, Mr. Rajesh Agarwalis. I said you've been. In the past. In the past. I, I want to ask you, money power in elections, is it, is it still a force that requires uh, debate? Because yesterday the finance minister, and you must have uh, seen that interview, she said she still, after being the finance minister, does not have enough funds to contest a Lok Sabha election. Money power really doesn't play any role in elections. We have fought elections uh, with nothing, no resources at all also, and we have won. Uh, unfortunately, the, the state of Tamil Nadu and the state of Andhra Pradesh, they have over the years seen a lot of irregularities in electoral politics. We are keen that we get an opportunity to come into government in these states and uh, change the way of fighting an election, make it more driven by policy, driven by performance, and possibly that is what uh, was being alluded to. I personally think money power doesn't determine either the success or failure of a party or a candidate. It will always be uh, good governance. It will always be public welfare. It will always be the hope and aspiration of in the people of India, which will determine success. And today, that aspiration of 140 crore Bharat Vasis is behind Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So let me, let me get on to a rapid fire uh, round with you. And let me ask you, who amongst the current day politicians do you admire the most? Kya rapid fire mein sawal to nahi uthao koi. Other than questions. Prime Minister Modi. Same questions again and again. Other than Prime Ye Minister Modi. Ye prashtha to aap me kal bhi poochhe te. Kuch aaj ke liye nahi rapid fire Achha, questions lai. Aap ye batai ye opposition leader mein aapko sab se achha koon lagta hai. Good question. Ab Thank is, God I passed. It is like asking. Ke jab aap Ramayan dekhte ho. To aapko uh, Ravan jada bura lagta hai. या आपको शुभ न कहा ज़्यादा बुरी लगती है ये तो उस प्रकार का क्वेश्चन हो गया रावण कौन शुभ न कहा कौन नहीं मुझे नहीं मालूम आई डोंट नो आई डोंट नो कौन क्या मैं तो एक एनालॉजी ले रहा हूँ कि जब हम रामायण देखते हैं तो बुरा बुराई होता है गलत गलती होता है अच्छा अच्छा ही होता है तो हमारे सामने � 
अभी अभी होली मनाई है हम सब ने होली क्या है होली तो सच्चाई की विजय बुराई के ऊपर है होली का दहन करते हैं यू आर अवेयर ना होली के प्रीवियस नाइट हम होली जलाते हैं और उसमें सब बुराई को सब गलत चीजों को जला के राख कर देते हैं और अगले दिन रंगों से खेलते हैं आपस में हर्ष और उल्लास से भविष्य की तरफ देखते हैं हम तो उस सोच के लोग हैं और आज इतना शुभ दिन है शिव जयंती है छत्रपति जी शिवा छत्रपति शिवाजी महाराज जी की आज जयंती है वो व्यक्ति थे जिन्होंने देश को पहली बार एक भारतवर्ष के रूप में पूरा लड़ाई लड़के जीता था और भारत की स्थापना की थी वो व्यक्ति है जिसने भारत की सुरक्षा को प्राथमिकता दी थी फोर्ट्स बनाए थे आपको ध्यान हो लोहागढ़ रायगढ़ सब फोर्ट्स बनाए पहली बार नेवी की कल्पना छत्रपति जी शिवाजी ने की थी तो आज इतने शुभ दिन पे देश की सुरक्षा अच्छी हो देश में गरीबों का कल्याण हो देश में युवा युवतियों को अच्छे अवसर मिले देश में महिलाओं का सम्मान हो इन चीजों की चिंता चल रही है वो प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी एड्रेस करने में लगे हुए हैं आपको पढ़ी है कुछ विपक्ष के कौन है क्या है हाउ डज इट मैटर डर वो तो इस देश के सिटीजन है आप सत्ता में हैं पर आप सत्ता में सबको रिप्रेजेंट कर रहे हैं एक और विषय है कि कभी भी अच्छाई और बुराई को मुझे लगता है वेन यू आर टॉलरेटिंग समथिंग रॉन्ग ये नहीं सोचना चाहिए दस परसेंट खराब है इससे चलेगा ये सौ परसेंट खराब है नहीं चलेगा मेरे ख्याल से जो गलत काम हो रहे हैं मोदी जी ने बीड़ा उठाया तो मुझे इसको समाप्त करना है आई वॉन्ट टू मेक श्योर दैट ऑल ऑफ दिस नेगेटिविटी एंड इन द कंट्री देश एक को आपने वो पांच प्रंट सुने होंगे ना ऑन फिफ्टीन ऑगस्ट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू वेन द कंट्री वॉज सेलिब्रेटिंग सेवेंटी फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस वॉट इज द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफर टू वन हंड्रेड फोर्टी करोड़ इंडियंस पांच प्रंट और पांच प्रंट में क्या कहा देश को विकसित भारत बनाने है दो हजार सैतालीस तक वो मार्ग प्रशस्त करने के लिए हमें अपनी गुलामी की मानसिकता को खत्म करना है एंड द कॉलोनियल माइंड सेट ऑफ द पीपल लर्न लेसन फ्रॉम हिस्ट्री हमारी इतिहास में हमारी परंपराओं में हमारे अतीत में बहुत कुछ है हमें सीखने के लिए उसके आधार पर देश बनाएंगे देश की एकता और एकजुटता को हम कब संभाल के रखना है यूनिटी एंड इंटेग्रिटी ऑफ इंडिया और 140 करोड़ लोगों को कर्तव्य भावना से सबको मिलके एक कड़ी में हम सब जब मिल जाएंगे तब भारत को विश्व शक्ति बनाने से कोई दुनिया की ताकत रोक नहीं पाएगी और उसमें दो एग्जाम्स भी दिए थे एक भ्रष्टाचार मुक्त करना है भारत को दूसरा नारी शक्ति का सम्मान करना है ये दो जोड़ दो और पांच प्रण देशवासी एक्सेप्ट कर लें तो ये जो अमृत काल है इसमें भारत अवश्य विकसित बनेगा इंडिया विल बी अ डेवलप्ड एंड प्रॉस्परस नेशन इंडिया इज अनस्टॉपेबल थैंक यू ये रैपिड फायर आपने मेरे ऊपर कर दिया बट बिफोर आई लेट यू गो ऐसा कोई अनफिनिश्ड एजेंडा जो अगर आपकी पार्टी पावर में आती है और हमेशा लोकतंत्र में आ, ये एक ऑप्शन लोगों के ऊपर होता है लोग चुनेंगे अगर आप वापस आते हैं एक अनफिनिश टास्क जो आप करना चाहेंगे आगे अगले पांच साल मैं मतलब व्यक्तिगत में या पीयूष को है मुझे लगता है कि बहुत कुछ सीखा बहुत कुछ करने को मिला दस साल तक माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी ने अलग अलग विभाग में कुछ ना कुछ सेवा करने का मौका दिया अगर पांच साल और मौका मिलेगा तो मैं समझता हूं कि हर एक जो दस साल में काम किया उसमें और स्पीड कैसे ला सकता हूं बड़े स्केल पे कैसे कर सकता हूं कैसे और स्किलफुली और टैक्टफुली कर सकता हूं कैसे देश को जो विकसित भारत बनाने का हम सब ने बीड़ा उठाए इट्स अ कलेक्टिव विजन ऑफ 140 करोड़ इंडियंस कैसे उसमें 
और गति ला सकते हैं अनस्टॉपेबल तो है ही भारत पर भारत को और तेज गति से कैसे आगे बढ़ाना भारत को अगर हमें 35 ट्रिलियन डॉलर की इकोनॉमी यानी आज से 10 गुनी बड़ी अर्थव्यवस्था बनाना है उसके लिए जो करना पड़ेगा जान हथेली पर है जान हाजिर है आई विल डू वट एवर इज इन माई पावर सो दैट इस देश से गरीबी भी मिट जाए और हर व्यक्ति को सस्टेनेबल और इंक्लूसिव ग्रोथ देश में पूरे देश में लोगों को उसका लाभ मिले और मेरा मानना है उस उस मार्ग में हमें दो चीजों के ऊपर एज अ नेशन हम सब में काम करना पड़ेगा आई एम एटलीस्ट आई एम कमिटेड टू इट जो बात प्रधानमंत्री जी ने पहले साल में ही करी थी दैट इज जेड जीरो इफेक्ट जीरो डिफेक्ट एज अ नेशन हमने हमारे हर काम में हमारे हर कंजम्पन पैटर्न में हमारे हर जो भी चीज हम दिन भर करते हैं उसमें देखना है कि हमारे काम से अच्छी क्वालिटी को कैसे प्रोत्साहन मिलेगा और हमारे काम से हम पर्यावरण को कैसे मिनिमाइज करें उसका प्रभाव खराब ना हो पर्यावरण के लिए यह हमारे सामने देश के सामने चुनौती है आई एम टोटली कमिटेड के देश की क्वालिटी और फिर क्वालिटी में सुशासन भी आ जाता है गुड गवर्नेंस ईज ऑफ लिविंग भी आ जाता है ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस इट्स अ वेरी ऑल एन कंपासिंग फिलोसॉफिकल थॉट विच प्राइम मिनिस्टर एड गिवेन आई पर्सनली बिलीव जिस दिन 140 करोड़ लोगों ने ये एक्सेप्ट कर लिया कि मैं कमरे से बाहर निकलू तो लाइट के बटन बंद करूं फैन बंद करूं ए सी ऑफ करूं अगर मैं अपने ऑफिस में जा रहा हूं तो गाड़ी सिग्नल पे है या स्कूटर मोटरसाइकिल सिग्नल पे है तो ऑफ करूं मैं अगर नई गाड़ी खरीदने जा रहा हूं तो इलेक्ट्रिक कार खरीद सकता हूं क्या इलेक्ट्रिक मोटरसाइकिल ले सकता हूं क्या हमारे हर एक की अगर ये जहन में घुस जाए कि हमको पर्यावरण भी संभालना है और गरीब से गरीब व्यक्ति तक एक अच्छा जीवन देने के लिए हमारी सेवा देनी है दिस कंट्री इज नॉट ओनली अनस्टॉपेबल वी विल बी द वर्ल्ड सुपर पावर well on that note thank you very much uh, Pr- minister piyush goyal and we wish you the very best for your own election and for your party uh, to make a mark and we'd also like to say keep watching times now Thank you so much to Piyush Goel ji and Navika ma'am uh, for that very very interesting session and his West Bengal numbers are something that we'll keep on top of our mind as we'll build up to the big elections all the best to you sir for your uh, Lok Sabha election too ladies and gentlemen please continue to remain seated as the minister exits uh, from the hall but do remember we have a lot of interesting stuff lined up for you and i request you to please remain seated now Ladies and gentlemen we are talking of leaps and bounds that are attracting global limelight now this is because of the very innovative policy framework that has been envisioned by our leaders that is garnering the attention right now so to speak to us on india's atmanirbhar mantra please do welcome and put your hands together for the ceo of pan africa india mr dian torbol in conversation with the national editor times now Meghna Dekha on the dais please big round of applause please well warm welcome uh, jean because uh, it's lovely to have you here you come with such extensive uh, experience and it's not just in india you of course are french but you have extensive uh, experience across in eastern europe you've worked in taiwan then you've been in korea you've been in india for the last one year so uh, it's interesting because you are a person who is ushered in and you've been in the news for that as well a 200 million euro investment in india over the next 10 years why is india such an attractive investment hub for you well hello meghna hello everyone and uh, let me say i'm very honored to be uh, here with such a great lineup and hopefully uh, with our fun industry i can bring a bit of uh, conviviality uh, uh, today and uh, as we like uh, to say uh, we always work in uh, unlocking the magic of human connections so um, india 
India is a massive opportunity for uh, Pernod Ricard. There's no doubt uh, about that. I just have to uh, choose a few numbers. Our industry is going to grow to $64 billion in the next five years. So it's very sizable, that's uh, uh, for sure. And uh, if you look at uh, further uh, than that, uh, the tailwinds uh, are, are many. We uh, have the demographic dividend in, uh, in India, which is uh, obvious. India is a young country, actually uh, a decade uh, younger, more or less, uh, than the uh, US or uh, uh, China. It's very dynamic. And for our industry, it means that uh, we have every year 25 million new uh, potential consumers uh, which are reaching the uh, legal drinking age. That's a, a massive tailwind. Um, you can look at it from the angle of uh, growth as well. And uh, uh, obviously, the economic development of India is massive, very favorable to one thing that Panorica really bets on, which is premiumization. And when we see consumer having more purchasing power, they definitely uh, can go to higher quality spirits. And uh, uh, we see that as a big benefit, and, uh, which is a strategy we have applied across uh, the world, and uh, India is no, uh, no exception. Then, for us, the investment that uh, uh, you mentioned is uh, a natural consequence of our 30 years uh, of presence uh, uh, in India. We've been uh, here since 1993, and uh, uh, we see uh, this 200 million uh, uh, euro investment as uh, uh, doubling up of uh, uh, our presence, our commitment to the make and innovate in India, which uh, uh, we have applied since uh, uh, the very early days of uh, Panorica in India, actually Sigram India at uh, uh, that time. And uh, this is uh, for us the way to build uh, the, one of the largest uh, malt distillery uh, in uh, uh, Asia, which will be in uh, Nagpur in Maharashtra and uh, diversify our offer to the discerning consumers uh, in India. We really want to bring more and more um, even luxury products to the uh, Indian consumer who are really ready for that. And it's very interesting because one of the cornerstone uh, for Perno Ricard is going to be global, global and local. And I believe already you have um, 95 to 96 percent of your manufacturing, which is already happening in India. You have uh, 24 facilities. You have innovation centers which have come up. How do you take this vision forward? And what really is the essence of global? Well, yes, innovation is super important for us and uh, has been uh, at the heart of our uh, business model uh, for forever. Uh, we operate, as you say, with 24 uh, uh, manufacturing uh, sites uh, here in India. And uh, this is something that really helps us uh, continuously uh, innovate. Um, I'm not sure, uh, I could not name all the innovation we have been uh, uh, doing, but uh, more, one of the most recent one uh, is our Longitude 77, an Indian single malt. We uh, were not the first to launch an Indian single malt, but uh, we tried to elevate the category. We uh, uh, launched at uh, price point, which is the highest in the, in the category, uh, at parity with uh, uh, some of uh, our uh, uh, Scotch single malt. So uh, we are very, very proud to bring a quality uh, product to India with the pride that the consumer can have with this uh, uh, product. So that's one uh, example. Other example would be uh, diversifying the offer. Uh, we launched uh, more or less two years ago uh, Oaken Glow, which is uh, a local produce brand again, which uh, uh, is more on the peaty, smoky uh, side of uh, taste. So uh, we cater to new uh, consumption patterns in, uh, uh, in the country. Uh, and. Uh, uh, the consumer becomes more and more knowledgeable, wants to explore a different repertoire, so we are there. But we could name uh, many other innovations uh, in the production uh, uh, front, uh, like uh, the fact that we were the first uh, to uh, put anti-refill cap on our bottle to fight against counterfeiting, or uh, the, the fact that uh, uh, we have been uh, um, also uh, uh, looking into removing uh, the outer box, outer carton of uh, uh, our uh, bottles to uh, really uh, make an impact on environment and uh, lighten the carbon footprint of our business. We'll just uh, circle back to the environmental and sustainability accent. But you talked about uh, bringing in variety in the products, the EIPs that you've been offering. What about those who, let's say, don't drink? Well, that's also something that uh, uh, we monitor, and uh, uh, there is uh, an offer for that. Well, 
for uh, people who choose not to drink uh, that, that their choice. And uh, uh, of course, uh, we are uh, uh, here to primarily cater uh, the needs of the, the one who choose to drink. But we develop more and more an offer of uh, non-alcoholic uh, uh, products. We have uh, with Jacob's Creek, uh, Jacob's Creek and Vine, that uh, we have uh, uh, brought to this country. So it's a non-alcoholic uh, wine that uh, is uh, excellent. And if you have the chance uh, to try it, uh, you will understand what I mean. Uh, and, uh, Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> well, worldwide, uh, we, we do have also a, game, uh, um, uh, um, a range of uh, non-alcoholic uh, uh, gene, non-alcoholic uh, other uh, product, so, uh, which we are observing and we might uh, bring to uh, uh, India next. And of course, today's theme is uh, Unstoppable India. As you can see, this is Time Style's uh, summit theme as well, which is why it's important for us to understand which is your biggest market? It's not India so far, but then a few days back, you made an interesting statement that U.S. may be your biggest market, but India may just be overtaking U.S. Do we see that happening soon? Well, I see that happening. I cannot commit on the timeline, uh, but no, that's, that's a natural consequence. Uh, last year, actually, uh, India uh, for Panerica overtook uh, uh, China, and we are now the second market uh, worldwide by uh, net sales. Uh, that's a, a significant uh, achievement. And when you look at the tailwind, as well, I was mentioning uh, uh, before, the growth we're going to experience uh, in India will be massive. And we will over, overtake uh, uh, the U.S. Um, I wish the later possible. It's probably because my colleagues in the U.S. will do a great job and will continue to grow uh, fast, which will be beneficial for, for the group. But it will happen eventually. Uh, What's the, the difference right now between the India market and the U.S. market? Which is what, sorry? Between the Indian market yeah. and the U.S. market, consumption-wise, what is going to be the difference currently as we stand? Um, the U.S. is the biggest uh, market worldwide for uh, the spirits, and the repertoire that is consumed there is much larger. So this is actually a big opportunity for uh, India, because you can expect that in the future years, uh, India and Indian consumer will become more and more discerning with also the increasing uh, purchasing power that will come uh, into the pockets of the uh, Indian with the great uh, job that is done to develop the economy. Uh, they will elevate their consumption, premiumization, and consumers are expected to explore more and more categories. So uh, uh, if you look back, uh, probably whiskey, rum were really dominating uh, the market. You can expect a lot of other categories to come into play in the next uh, uh, years. So that's going to be an interesting one. But to ramp up any business, any sector, it's important to bring in technology. So what has been the digital transformation that we've seen, not just in uh, Perno Record, but also in your industry? How do we ramp it up with technology? It, it's extremely important and relevant for any uh, uh, business. So we are no exception. We really, really look at technology uh, in many fronts, back office, front office. So we, have, uh, we are the first company to have an end-to-end -end logistic, which is totally digitized. Uh, so it helps us being more efficient and, uh, uh, well, in the production, but also reducing the carbon footprint, which is extremely uh, important and part of our uh, commitment. We are also using technology uh, in the front office. So we empower our uh, sales force with uh, a tool we call DSTAR, which actually is based on uh, AI and which helps uh, the sales force make decision in the uh, retail when they visit. So AI is capable of uh, managing so many parameters that the human brain cannot. So we empower the sales force so that they are focusing on uh, the human relationship and the human touch in uh, selling the products and uh, the AI uh, is doing the brain work. Well, it's interesting that AI is helping in your sector as well to such a great extent. But you mentioned uh, trying to reduce your carbon footprint. How have you been doing that? Well, so far so good, but our ambition is uh, uh, higher. We want to uh, uh, drive a, a reduction of uh, our uh, carbon footprint per uh, unit by one third. In the, next, uh, in the next years. That's really something we are committed to. And if we talk about this uh, sustainability uh, uh, angle, um, we really have many, many uh, uh, um, activation, uh, activities around, the, uh, around that, uh, directly from Panerica uh, India or through our uh, foundation, Panerica India uh, Foundation. Um, maybe uh, two uh, uh, that I can name uh, uh, under our water, agriculture, and uh, livelihood uh, uh, program. Uh, we are in operation a water-positive company. We replenish more water 
than uh, what we uh, consume, actually, 1.2 times. Uh, that's something we are very proud of because uh, uh, it's, we know, a problem that will grow, so uh, it's important for us to participate to the solution. And uh, we are also working uh, uh, very closely with uh, farmers, farmers uh, whom we help to uh, get more uh, regenerative and restorative uh, type of uh, uh, practices in their day-to-day uh, -day job. So uh, uh, more than 10,000 farmers benefit from uh, our uh, uh, advices and support uh, there. So that's very interesting because that's where a lot of revenue is also being generated because there is creation of employment. Now you have this... Uh, uh, grain to glass. I believe that's what Pino Record really believes in. Grain to grass. Can you explain that in the context of how it is also going to help generate revenue, not just in the urban centers, but especially in the rural sectors as well? Yes, it does. And uh, um, I like it that we look at the global scope of uh, uh, what uh, uh, we are doing. So if I take the in investment we were discussing uh, that we will make in uh, Nagpur, these uh, new big malt distilleries, there will be direct uh, employment up to uh, 700 or 800 uh, uh, jobs that uh, are created directly. But the impact will go much uh, uh, bigger than that. Uh, all the uh, uh, ancillary services we will benefit. We will need to source grain to uh, uh, produce uh, uh, our malt, uh, uh, to produce our malt whiskey. And uh, uh, this is something where a local uh, industry can benefit. Local farmers can uh, uh, develop uh, uh, the uh, culture, and uh, uh, this would be very beneficial for them. You could imagine uh, that uh, cask could start being produced. We need cask to age uh, the whiskey. So cask could be produced uh, in India, and uh, uh, that would be beneficial to uh, the local economy. So we are looking at how our investment can generate uh, this rippling effect so that uh, uh, it's on not only our direct investment that uh, is benefiting, but an overall ecosystem that is uh, generated. You mentioned about the demographic dividend of India. One of the biggest challenges in the coming days is not just about learning, unlearning, but skilling and upskilling, that is something that everyone has been looking towards, including the government, of course. Skill India is one of the most ambitious projects which has been launched as well. How is uh, your company, and also as a sector, how are you going to ensure that you are providing these skills to so far, perhaps, untrained? And how are you going to be creating this pool of people? We are acting, I think, at two uh, levels. Uh, one is internally, of course, and uh, when we have uh, uh, our own people, it's, uh, it's a never-ending journey. So uh, training, uh, everyone, we are all a student for life, so we need to learn new things all the time. So we have all this uh, internal training, training on the job, training through uh, international programs, local programs, leveraging, again, uh, online courses when we need, physical session when necessary. So uh, that's uh, very active, and we invest uh, a lot on our employees, which are uh, the, the people who we need to drive the business. So that's uh, uh, obvious. And we go beyond that, because through uh, our foundation, we also invest into uh, education uh, programs, again, to uh, educate a larger uh, workforce. And uh, uh, this is something we are very proud of, uh, which can benefit to us directly or indirectly. When I say uh, directly, it could be also to upskill local population that we need on our bottling plant and uh, teaching them the good practices on how to be more efficient uh, uh, there. So it's uh, something we look at many front and across the line. And also this one has to come in because there are two ways when it comes to entrepreneurship in India. There are those who said that this is the destination. This is where you need to be to make in India. Then there are the others who have said it's not a bed of roses, that there are challenges. Blue tapeism, red tapeism, that's one of the biggest challenges many have talked about. Several other issues have come up in the past. Where do you stand when it comes to this divine and why? Well, I definitely stand with the people who say that India is a huge opportunity and is unstoppable. That's uh, uh, for sure. My mind is clear on that. Um, so we got the right theme for sure. We have the right team, we have the right positioning. We've been again in the country for 30 years. So I think our position as a leader really helps us to benefit fully from the opportunities uh, uh, in India. Well, is there any challenge? Yes, there are, obviously. Uh, and we are uh, working on them. Um, getting in particular in our industry, uh, it's a very complex market that is uh, dealt with state by state. So 
the ease of doing business that we want to uh, uh, see coming, we are partnering with the authorities to try and uh, uh, bring more and more of this uh, ease of uh, doing business. Two uh, examples on that. Uh, one, for instance, is getting a bit more leeway in reasonable price increase. We are facing, like uh, all businesses, inflation, and uh, uh, we need to uh, compensate this inflation uh, through uh, uh, price uh, increase. That's uh, extremely important. And then uh, on the taxation, we are very proud. We, we pay significant taxes, and we are very proud to contribute this way uh, to the nation. But looking at uh, more reasonable taxation, in particular of the upper end uh, of the spectrum, could help uh, actually bring a more uh, win-win-win situation. Again, premiumizing the consumption of uh, spirits uh, in India, leading to uh, a consumer drinking less but drinking better, and at the end of the day, bringing more revenue also for uh, uh, the exchequer. Now, you've been here in India for what, about a year now, and I believe you're Gurgaon based? Yes, I'm based in Gurgaon, but traveling extensively in the country as, uh, as I should. <laughs> That's great. What are the kind of patterns that you have seen? What are the challenges you've seen and also where do you think India's headed because you've been here but you've traveled in several of the areas including some of the rural areas the IT hub you've been to manufacturing hubs the financial capital what are the larger trends that you see here well the um, it's definitely a, a, a country that has massive potential and uh, uh, which uh, still needs to continue to develop when you are uh, in Delhi, Gogaon, Mumbai, you could be anywhere in the world. It's uh, modern cities and uh, uh, you really uh, are in uh, modern India. You have all this rural India that needs to continue to uh, uh, develop. Uh, again, we participate into that because uh, we have uh, these 24 uh, uh, sites, uh, manufacturing sites that uh, we have uh, uh, nationwide and which are uh, uh, very often in uh, rural uh, India. We are very happy that uh, the money we bring there uh, helps developing infrastructures, helps, uh, again, upskilling uh, people. And this is a massive opportunity for uh, all industries because the elevation uh, we will see in the revenue per capita will be even faster in this part of India than uh, in the more developed one. And how important is it for you to create consumer awareness, especially in your market? Because when we talk about malls, the understanding so far in India may be a bit, well, limited, more than what, would you, uh, what you would have expected. But the fact that now you've signed an MOU, which you had just mentioned with the Maharashtra government, you're setting up the, perhaps one of the largest single mall distilleries in not just India, but in Asia. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? And how do you put that message across? It means... Indian consumers are already discerning and we expect them to become more and more uh, discerning. Um, whiskey is a big category in the, in the country and uh, India knows, uh, know about whiskey for sure. Uh, it's our role to continue to educate them, to elevate their consumption, to offer uh, a larger uh, repertoire, but we are starting from uh, an excellent uh, base. Um, there is also this uh, uh, craftsmanship and uh, uh, element of luxury that becomes uh, uh, even more and more sought after by uh, uh, the discerning uh, uh, Indian consumer, together with the pride to consume local products. That's something that is very natural and uh, uh, which will continue to grow. Uh, Indians are proud of their country and they are right to be. Has the consumer base, and this is something I must ask as a woman, has the consumer base amongst women now also increased? What are the trends there? Yes, uh, it's uh, increasing. Uh, the acceptance of uh, alcohol is growing in uh, a society of moderate consumption, and we are in all... In whiskey? Uh, in whiskey, yes, of course, in whiskey in all categories. We are uh, big supporters of moderate consumption, responsible consumption. That's uh, uh, inherent in, uh, in to our business. We really want to push for that. And uh, uh, we see uh, a growing uh, consumption of uh, uh, female drinkers uh, with probably uh, even more discerning taste uh, than their male counterparts, uh, on average, uh, I would say. And this is uh, an evolution that we, we welcome. We have seen that emerging before COVID. I would say that uh, COVID has probably accelerated uh, this uh, uh, pace, and we are uh, welcoming all consumers uh, who want to uh, uh, consume responsibly. Uh, as you just heard, uh, the Honorable Minister a short while back, uh, Mr. Piyush Goyal, he had said that you must do more, you must achieve more, you must aspire more. You should never be satisfied. Are you at that level right now, at the stage right now, that you're not going to be satisfied? What next? 
I fully agree. Uh, we will never be satisfied, and uh, especially facing the, the, the great opportunities we have. So we are already the second in India, the second biggest business for uh, uh, Panerica. We definitely, with my team, we want to be the first, and we will work uh, on that. We have planned to uh, triple our net sales over the next decade, so uh, we are very ambitious, and uh, we believe that we can uh, uh, achieve that. That's uh, uh, really the type of uh, fast growth that we want to uh, uh, achieve, so fully agree. Never be satisfied. Go for the higher mountain that is next to the one you just crossed. Well, you've been here for 30 years. That's a long time to be in, in India. There are several other players because somehow it seems that you have been one of the pioneers. Not other, not too many other brands, international players have entered. But they are eyeing India now as the next big investment hub. What would you like to share with them? If they were to come to you for advice, what would you say to them? It's an interesting question. And Actually, with my uh, hat of the, as the president of uh, Indo-French Chamber of Commerce, I, I get this question sometimes from uh, different uh, 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 people. What do you tell them? I'm uh, sure a lot of people must be asking you. Robert. Yes, they are. Um, I hope uh, I have a bit of uh, wise advice I can, I can share. Now, looking at what made our success, first I would say in India, it's very important to create shared value. So, uh, of course, companies want to uh, make profit, but we must look at India as a country where we create shared value. Uh, and that's the first uh, mindset that all the uh, companies coming here need uh, uh, to have. The, the second element is to look at India is one nation, but the market is complex and diverse. So uh, it's very important to uh, uh, really focus at first on where you want to be, target the consumers that, that uh, you want to attract, and it's not the same in North India, South India, West, West or East India. So a bit of focus to start with is important. Then innovation will uh, bring the possibility to uh, uh, expand. So starting from a strong base where uh, uh, any company can uh, start attracting a type of consumer, enlarging the business will come through innovation and uh, uh, catering through innovation the uh, uh, taste, uh, the different appetites of the different consumers throughout India. How important is it to innovate in the same country that you are going to be manufacturing in? You've already said India is the second biggest market for you, but you have innovation centers in India. It's important for us to understand, and I ask you this question because it will be a lesson for the other foreign brands as well. Many of them who may be innovating abroad, but if they want to push their product, how important is it to innovate in India? The strong base we have always had of local manufacturing has been the pillar of our success. So being able to understand Indian consumer, to be innovating with local product has been the base of uh, uh, our success. So yes, it is extremely important to have this understanding of the consumer, the consumer insight, and uh, uh, bring at a fast pace the innovation that uh, uh, will make uh, a success. So yes, when uh, any company wants to look at India, it could be with local manufacturing, which is the, the, the preferred route which we have uh, uh, adopted. But even if you don't do local manufacturing, look at India as a market where you have to bring specific products that will uh, uh, really cater the needs, uh, the specific need of Indian consumers. So what next in your sector, even if it means uh, the kind of uh, collaboration that you intend to have with both the masses, but also the government of India. How do you take that journey together? Well, we are a big contributor, our industry and uh, Panerica uh, in particular, we are a big contributor to uh, uh, the, the, the taxes of the state, the tax uh, exchequer, and uh, uh, we continue to have a daily conversation uh, uh, to uh, try and foster the uh, ease of doing business. Uh, they are very open. Honestly, we see uh, improvement uh, uh, every day. So I'm, uh, Policy changes required? This can happen, but uh, it's uh, really about uh, a global element. Again, uh, it's difficult to comment uh, globally because it depends state uh, by state. But yes, uh, improving the, the ease of doing business, allowing us a bit more flexibility in the price increase, as I was mentioning, uh, making sure that uh, uh, we can uh, um, uh, satisfy consumer needs uh, of elevating their consumption is something that is very important for us. Well, thank you so much, Jean Tobol. It has been a pleasure to understand this rising market which has been coming in in 
uh, not just alcoholic, but beverage industry, if I must say right now. And of course, thrilled to have you here and hope you uh, enjoy your stay in Delhi and continue to grow and keep going local. Thank you so much. Thank you, Meghna. Thank you. Thank you, Jean and uh, Meghna, for this uh, insightful conversation. Every conversation, you remember, it leaves you with a thought or two and clearly something that you can imbibe in your lives. This is a quick reminder, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be breaking for lunch after our next session, so I request all of you to remain seated and be patient. Remember, we're just running a little late, but it's important to hear speakers as they continue to make important points. So let's not waste more time. Let's also talk about the education sector. Now, did you know that Nelson Mandela once said, and I quote, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world, unquote. So aptly now, we move from discussions on the power of weapons to the power of the brain. If India must keep the growth engine going, it needs fuel in the form of skilled and educated workforce. Remember, there is so much of stress, emphasis on education, what skills can do, how they can change your lives, and also then lead to job creation, to economy and everything. But how does India's infamous road learning model need to evolve and adapt with the changing times? Remember, times are changing. We need to change our models. So to shed more light on the topic of educating India, we'll be joined on the guest with a very special guest. But like I said, I'm just requesting all our guests to continue to remain seated, be patient, and also we will be having this enriching conversation on education. Remember, we are looking at a holistic development when it comes to the country as a whole. And don't remember, we have a young, young workforce. We have children who are growing up very fast with a lot of methods of education today that are available to them. So how do you change that model? How do you adapt that model to ensure that education is not just about what we read from textbooks, what we learn from our teachers, what we also learn from our life, and much more. So let's put our hands together to welcome the CMO of Amrita Hospital, Faridabad, Ram Ganpati, and the Dean Engineering, Amrita Vishwavidya Peetam, Dr. Balakrishnan Shankar, and he's, in fact, they'll be in conversation with the executive editor for Times Now, Madhav Das, on the stage. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Balakrishnan Shankar, Dean of the School of Engineering, Amrita Vishwavidya Peetam, and Mr. Ram Ganapati, who is the CMO of Amrita Hospital, Faridabad, for joining us. Uh, the subject matter that uh, we are discussing today is advancing India's engineering and medical prowess. I want to start with you, Mr. Balakrishnan, and let me start by asking you, you know, some of the hot topics on discussion are IoT, AI, machine learning, robotics, cloud computing, big data. How is this really impacting on the entire startup creation here in India? Can you explain to us, because, you know, we see all this talk about unicorns, startups, so on and so forth. How do you, you know, sitting as the dean of this uh, uh, engineering department, look at all of this impacting upon our education and also in terms of opportunities here in India? Thank you. <coughs> uh, so well, thank you for um, inviting us over here uh, to give us this opportunity. Uh, that's a very important question. And AI and, I mean, big data, cloud computing, and especially AI has, uh, what shall I say, invaded practically in every field that we know, whether it is in health, in automation, in technologies, in uh, materials, and everything that we know. So what, so definitely that has changed the startup scene. So India has several startups, you know, like Qtrim, like uh, uh, FinTech, like, uh, uh, like Cure AI, etc. But then at the same time, the fact that uh, AI tools and technologies are now available for students, we have a variety of programs like uh, we have in computer science and AI, we have uh, a new program, robotics and AI, several programs that we offer. That skill set has greatly enabled the startup scene. We have students coming up now, uh, even in first year and second year, with ideas to start new companies. And so that has really changed the scene. And I think that as the years go by, we are going to see a lot of new startups in India in different domains, uh, right from um, 
For example, I'll give you, a, I had a first year student who came to me with an idea to start a company uh, using AI to generate new food recipes, to uh, mix recipes from North India and South India and other countries and to make new food recipes. I had students come and start AI and health companies uh, to develop uh, AI to, for predictive analytical health. And we have programs and research centers that do the same thing. So definitely, the, to answer your question, it is uh, it's a coming in a big way, and you're going to see a lot of startups in India coming for from the AI sector. But can and AI ensure that the food tastes good if you're mixing north and south? That's a big question. Pardon me? I said, can AI ensure that the food tastes good if you're mixing north Actually, and south? Actually, uh, you'll be surprised, <laughs> yes, because there's a lot of data behind that. There's a lot of data and survey that goes in behind that, and uh, let's hope so. He has not yet uh, gone public, but uh, let us hope so, yes. Right. If I can come across to uh, Mr. Ram Ganapati, uh, take us through the steps that you're taking to ensure, A, healthcare education, and also in terms of, you know, empowering future Indian professionals in the healthcare industry is concerned. What are the efforts that are being taken? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, so, Amrita Hospitals, the one that's uh, here in Faridabad that's been in operation for the past a year and a half, and the one that's in Kochi, Kerala, that's been in operation for more than 25 years, have always been focused on innovation. And because we have educational institutions associated with the uh, hospitals, we also can facilitate cross-departmental research on an ongoing basis, right? Let me give you an example, uh, uh, Madhav. So during COVID, if you can remember, it was probably, it was very difficult to access good quality masks. Uh, the best mask that was effective was supposedly the N95 that was available only in the US, and it was very expensive. So our nanotechnology uh, department worked together with the clinical department at the hospital to develop a mask that was significantly more effective than the N95 at a very, very reduced cost. So this is the hallmark of our research projects that we do at Amrita, where the net result is going to be beneficial for the society, but at very economical levels. Now, having said that, with respect to the doctors on an ongoing basis, we always have what is known as a CME, a continuing medical education uh, conferences where they participate in to keep abreast of what's happening in their fields, where international faculty are invited to share their experience and knowledge, and that's one way to do, uh, they keep uh, innovating in their field as well. As far as students are concerned, uh, we give them a well-rounded education that is value-based, so that they can become good clinicians. Now, what is value-based education? Uh, just like Amma, uh, my guru Sri Mata Amritananda Mai Devi says, there are two way educations in life. One is education for a living, and the other one is education for life. The first one is when you get a degree certificate, you get a job, that's your education for a living. But what is education for life? Where you get, are taught values, things like compassion, which you can then use to become a better citizen in the society. So this is what we do as part of our overall innovation and curriculum and educate, um, for innovation and uh, foster that as both for our faculty and for the students. Right. Uh, you know, one of the questions or one of the things that's spoken about a lot is skill development. Of course, the Indian education system, there's many things that many would say, you know, a it, there are many scopes or areas of improvement. But, you know, the skill development is one area where you look at how the requirements are there in, in a society, in a particular given economy, and then you train, you know, the students according to those requirements. How do you see this actually uh, panning out or even picking up in coming years? And how far have we actually achieved, uh, you know, in this particular department, would you say? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Skill development is something huge. And to go beyond the curriculum, it is no longer enough to, you know, sit in a classroom, learn from a textbook, and pass the exam. Okay? Uh, you need to have skills. So the, the kind of skills that an engineer needed, 10 years ago, you could predict it. 
But now in this changing, rapidly changing landscape, it's much more difficult to predict what kind of skills a person really needs. But with, a with disruptive technologies like in AI, robotics, IoT, cloud computing, big data, coding, these are the skills that are going to be needed. And this skill development is what we focus on in Amrita. So what we do is we have project-based courses. We have flipped classrooms. Classrooms where, I mean, uh, where students tackle real-life problems. That helps in the skill development. For example, a mechanical engineering student who has AI skills will be hugely employable because what he's going to be able to do is translate his uh, expertise in a different, in, in a huge variety of tasks. So in this uh, context, when you talk about skill development, there are two types. One is technical skills. The other is soft skills. So both are very important. So in Amrita, we have something called Live In Labs. Uh, it is a humongously popular program which uh, recently started with Amma's vision. We have adopted around 100 villages across the country. Our students actually, they take this as an elective. They go to the uh, village and they identify what is the main problem in that village and come back and work on a cost-effective solution for that. So I have had stu students who have actually, you know, you know, there was a village in North Kerala which didn't have any electricity from time immemorial. Our students went there, set up school, solar, microgrid. Now that village has electricity, those kids in that village now can study at home, things like that. So that is one kind of skill development. The other thing that this does is it shows the students uh, ground reality. It helps them in compassion. It helps them in having a holistic vision towards society. So that's the other kind of skills that we need. But yes, skill development is huge. And uh, what I would say fundamental skills now, like mathematics, okay, are more important than ever before because of AI, because of the coding required, because of simulation. Uh, I would say these are the skills that we need. Disruptive technologies, I would say AI, simulation, uh, some of robotics, IoT, these are the skills that you require in the technical area. Yes. Uh, Mr. Ganpati, you spoke about, of course, the spiritual side of things and values. But, you know, we're also talking about a situation where there is much talk about Industry 4.0. How do you prepare students for future unforeseen situations, for instance, is something uh, that is spoken about a lot. Can you take us through your own experience? Sure. Uh, it's probably going to be a continuation to what Dr. Bala said. Uh, you need the doctors and the medical students to be aware of the technological innovations that are happening and the need to be uh, in a position where they need to use them. So let me take AI as an example, right? We have started a program where we are giving training to the doctors at Amrita Hospital and the students on AI and medicine, right? Where they need to be aware of what is happening in the uh, uh, technolog technological side. If I can take an example, right? Let's say I'm a patient that I'm going to see a doctor, right? And I know about chat GPT, right? So I'm at home, I know what my symptoms are, I look up what the potential diagnosis needs to be, and I go to the doctor, and I tell the doctor what my symptoms are, and then I tell the doctor what his or her diagnosis should be to me because of what I looked up. So we don't want the doctor to be in a situation where they are flummoxed by the uh, what is happening. So they need to be aware of where the patient is coming up with such knowledge. I think you're giving a lot of people a lot of ideas right now. <laughs> Please don't do that. Let the doctors do their work. Um, so that, but they need to be aware of that. So we are training them, right? The second one is, again, Dr. Bala talked about simulation. At Amrita, uh, Amrita Hospital Faridabad, we have a very large simulator uh, set up for students, right? Why do we have that? When, you, when you have 100, 150 students in a class, it becomes rather difficult for them to access resources where they can do hands-on training because we may not have cadavers available to us to uh, serve all the students. So then they are able to use a simulator, very similar to pilots using flight simulators to learn how to fly. They use a simulator, work on dummies, and get the hands-on experience that they need for pursuing their education. In addition to that, we are in the process of setting up a 3D printing facility where we can print the 
scanned organ of a patient in a 3D model and the doctor sees that and then makes a decision on how to operate if a surgery is needed and make it much more precise because they are able to see a 360 degree view of the organ that is in question. So this is how we expose our students and ensure that our faculty are up to speed with uh, technological innovations. Right. Dr. Balakrishnan is also, you know, you deal with the subject of engineering and therefore there is this question that is often asked. We need engineers at uh, one basic level to build our country, to build our economy, whether it's railroads, whether it is construction, whether it's electronics, so on and so forth. There are, of course, multifarious areas where the basic role of engineers are there, but there's also the perspective of what technology does and, uh, you know, how that impacts on uh, A, the way in which the engineers function and B, the opportunities that are open for them as well. How do you see this playing out? Because uh, there's a lot of talk about, uh, you know, engineers, A, uh, of course, uh, studying here in India, going abroad, there's all sorts of arguments back and forth uh, regarding that. How do you look at this problem? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> The, the way to go is to go interdisciplinary. Previously, when uh, people came to engineering, they thought of uh, themselves in silos. I'm a mechanical engineer, I'm a chemical engineer, I'm an you know, electronics engineer, I'm a computer scientist. That is no longer going to work. What is going forward, you have a lot of overlap. I'll give you an example. Uh, for example, when, when nature provides you a problem, it's not going to tell you, uh, it's a problem. It's not going to tell you if it's a mechanical engineering pro problem or an electrical engineering problem. Simple. The flow of blood through my, the blood vessels, right? It's the flow of a liquid through a pipe. So it's a mechanical engineering problem, okay? It's controlled uh, by uh, electrical impulses that are coming through the brain. So you have an electrical problem there. You have a neural network problem there. It's finally again controlled by your, the pulses of your heart, which is an electronics problem, which is a... Uh, so you have all these disciplines, and of course it's a health problem. So now you tell me, so if a particular engineer wants to make himself relevant to the problems of society, what he should do is think interdisciplinary. Gone are the days when you can say and say, I am in this, and that is not my field. That's not possible anymore. So the, the divisions between departments or disciplines are kind of crumbling. So especially, again, with AI and with, uh, you know, uh, uh, big data, and the large language models and the other models that are coming up, which can be applied across disciplines, these uh, divisions between departments are crumbling. So what an engineer needs to do is think interdisciplinary. He needs to uh, create, uh, I mean, uh, develop skills that like in AI, in robotics, in IoT, in big data, in mathematics, in simulation, so that he can do predictive analytics. He can do prediction, he can predict a new material, for example or predict the new progress of a disease, or predict the new progress of a problem. So actually, so for example, I have engineering students who are working with doctors in Ames on engineering solutions to medical problems, whether it's designing a new MRI machine or doing image processing of neonatal conditions. They do process, image processing and big data, data taken from uh, babies, and they predict what the future health conditions would be for those kids, neonatal processing. So what happens is that AI and health, AI and engineering, engineering and health, they've all started talking together. Now we are looking at, in Amrita, we are developing variable sensors, for example that reads your body parameters and transmits the signal to the doctor. So you could be a farmer working in a field and you could be having a heart attack and then the ECG is transmitted to the doctor. So how to do all this and the most important thing in Indian context is how to keep it low cost. And that is something that India has a tremendous advantage. See recently, uh, you know, we, uh, Chandrayaan that went to the moon. The movie made on Chandrayaan cost more than the actual Chandrayaan itself. So the, the, uh, we are making now in India, there is a humongous possibility for cost, uh, for cost effective sensors, for cost effective solutions uh, in different areas. And that is where we have to think. So the engineers should look at expanding their skills, uh, you know, horizontally and vertically and not in silos. So that is very important. And that is what I think the new education should seek to do.
Right. Uh, Mr. Ram Gaurathvi, recently, you know, some of your doctors have also, you know, entered the coveted list in Stanford University of being in the top 2%. Now, that's, of course, uh, global acclaim. Are there lessons to be learned here for other uh, uh, medical facilities as well in terms of actually, you know, making a, making a name, not just here in India, but also globally? Yeah, so across the eight different uh, campuses that Amrita has in the country, there are more than 20 faculty members who are part of this esteemed list. And uh, three of them happen to be here at Amrita Hospital in Faridabad. Uh, one of the reasons that they are here is because as part of the recruit recruitment process itself, when we look at doctors to hire, we just don't look at the, uh, obviously we look at the proficiency, the training, the uh, educational qualifications, the experience, et cetera. But to have a good cultural fit with the organization, we look for something a little bit more. And that is an intent to give and serve with compassion, provide compassionate care, if you will. So we look for that. And we encourage these doctors, obviously they're from very esteemed institutions across the country and even from abroad. We have doctors who are part of our faculty right now who have come back from the US, from the UK, from Australia. So that's a good thing for us as in India where we are getting these uh, trained doctors coming back home, if you will. And they are encouraged to provide and mentor to the young students uh, the, the, their experience both from a uh, uh, practical perspective and also from a uh, scientific perspective, from uh, a resource perspective. Because the intent is to create a future where their experience can then be carried forward by the younger generation who is coming on board. So that's what we look for and hopefully uh, it can be a standard template for everybody else to follow if they want to create educational institutions where you create people who can come out of it and be of value to the society through their contributions, through their research, uh, and what they provide. And you're also the largest uh, private uh, medical facility, I believe, in the country. At Farida, that is correct. It? So, so Amrita Hospital it's not just quantity, it's also the quality that you have to maintain. That is correct, yes. The Amrita Hospital Faridabad is the largest private multi-specialty hospital uh, in the country, also going to be in Asia. It's a 2,600-bed facility. So if you get a chance, the audience, you should come to and see the hospital. I know it's, it's always a bad thing to say that come to see a hospital, but in this case, you should come and see the hospital. It doesn't feel like a hospital, so you should come and see for yourself. All right, Dr. Barkrishan, last question to you. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of debate around NEP itself. In your subject area, what is the impact that you've seen of the national education policy? Okay, uh, there are several wonderful features about NEP. And uh, the interdisciplinary aspect, which they are emphasizing. The fact that a student can go from one discipline to another, carry an academic bank of credit and move around disciplines. I think that's very important. And I think that's a wonderful feature. So in Amrita, in, uh, as early as 2019, we started these interdisciplinary programs. We have, for example, CAC and AI. Uh, then we followed it up with robotics and AI. Now we have a new school of AI and data science. So we have uh, <clears throat> a structure where a student can take electives across departments and they can move between uh, sometimes between one school and another and, uh, and increase their employability humongously and their research potential humongously. So, and then we also introduced a system called minors. So the person, so in NEP, that is another, uh, another very important thing in NEP. A person can, even if you're in one department, you can take a set number of credits in another department, get a minor degree in the other field. I could be in mechanical, but I could get a minor degree in electronics or in AI or AI and DS and things like that with specializations and minors. So that is a very, very good thing. And the capacity, the, uh, the ability to um, 
study across disciplines and take different careers from different departments and to have a path that is not necessarily uh, just stuck in one silo, that's a very important feature of NEP. Not only for NEP, but it's also very important for research. So since I am from Amrita, I have to tell you a little bit about research. We're very strong in research. In fact, one of our, um, uh, one of our, our trademark is compassion-based research under Amma's uh, guidance. We want to find cost-effective solutions for the common man's problems. So whenever we do that, we find that we require expertise from different skills. So for example, from skill sets. For example, we need medical and engineering together to form a solution in healthcare for a new material that can be used in the human body. You need a material science, you need a, sometimes a chemical engineer, you need physics, you need chemistry, you need medicine, etc. So in this matter, NEP is very helpful because what happens is a student will get different skill sets. And so um, the university curriculum should be structured such a way freedom is given, flexibility is given. So that is what we are trying to do. And that is very important uh, in the way forward. And that is going to have a huge impact on education. And that is going to have a huge impact on employability and that is going to have a huge impact on research and India has to you won't believe you you, you may not believe this but uh, in Amrita there are more than um, there are several hundred papers that come out from undergrad students research papers every year because we involve students in project and research right from the very beginning so what happens is NEP becomes a big factor there because they can take uh, courses and skills in different disciplines. So the, the, you are widening the horizons in a big way. So I think uh, I, I think that's the answer to your question. Yes, it has a big impact. It's useful. Absolutely, yes. Dr. Balakrishnan, Mr. Ram. Thank you so much for joining us on the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time and this insightful conversation. Thank you to Madhav. And uh, with so much food for thought, remember, since morning, I know you've been waiting, so we are taking a break for lunch now, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, we're requesting you to be back in your seats uh, in the next half hour. Next half an hour, because then our half hour continues at the Times Now Summit after lunch. Lunch, remember, is going to be served at the delegate dining area in the Shah Jahan Hall. And uh, before we also break for lunch, we would like to take this opportunity to thank our partners for their invaluable support for making this possible. Times Now Summit is powered by Pawn All Record India, driven by Maruti Suzuki, co-powered by Dream Sports, knowledge partner Amrita Vishwa Vidya Peetham, associate partner LIC, international partner, the Deakin University, associate partner, the Fianna Advisory, banquet partner, Brand Buzz Ventures. And as all of you move out for lunch, do not, you know, forget to keep this conversation going. Like we said, do use the hashtag TN Summit 2024 and Times Now Summit 2024. And we look forward to having you back soon here inside the hall.
very reduced cost. So this is the hallmark of our research projects that we do at Amrita, where the net result is going to be beneficial for the society, but at very economical levels. Now, having said that, with respect to the doctors on an ongoing basis, we always have what is known as a CME, a continuing medical education uh, conferences, where they participate and to keep abreast of what's happening in their fields, where international faculty are invited to share their experience and knowledge, and that's one way to do, uh, they keep uh, innovating in their field as well. As far as students are concerned, uh, we give them a well-rounded education that is value-based so that they can become good clinicians.
summit where we are looking at India unstoppable. Yes, that is the theme, India unstoppable. Absolutely. We'd also like to uh, use this opportunity to thank our partners for their invaluable support. Times Now Summit is powered by Fernod Ricard India, driven by Maruti Suzuki, co-powered by Dream Sports, knowledge partner Amrita Vishwavidya Peetam, associate partner LIC, international partner Deakin University, associate partner Fiana Advisory and banquet partner Brandbers Ventures. So please do keep the conversation going by posting your thoughts. It's very important that you connect with us directly. Tell us what your suggestions are, what you thought about the sessions that you have seen. Post your pictures, your videos, anything that you want to say about the summit. You can do, use two different hashtags that we are using. One is TN Summit 2024. You can also use the hashtag of hashtag Times Now Summit 2024. Well, let's move on now and talk about the upcoming session, uh, a, a topic that all of us are interested in that brings the entire nation together. Across the globe, various sports organizations are not only keenly exploring but are realizing the invaluable advantages of having a robust fan engagement. Absolutely, Swati. In fact, they understand that this helps in cultivating a loyal fan base, attracting new fans, creating a sense of belonging within the sports community as well. As far as India is concerned, we take our sports very seriously. And a recent survey shows that 41% of Indian sports fans prefer online live video streaming and other digital means to engage with sports content, Meghna. In fact, to talk to us about evolving landscape of sports fan engagement in India, we are joined by a panel of experts. So please help us join. Uh, first, we are going to be inviting up our moderator for the session, Senior News Editor for Times Network, Sumit Lakotia. We'd also like to invite uh, the panelists. The CMO, Dream Sports, Vikrant Mudaliar is with us. We also have founder and CEO, Dream Set Go, Munish Shah and co-founder for FanCord, Yannick Kulak. A big round of applause. Of course, we've all had a very delightful lunch. Let's see that in the applause as well. Over to you, Sumit. Thank you so much, uh, Meghna and Swati. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Now, the panel or the session after lunch is always the most tricky because everybody's had a lovely lunch and we're all enjoying ourselves now. But the best part about our panel, I think, is because it's about sports. But today we're going to be talking, ladies and gentlemen, about sports. We're going to be busting some myths about sports because the first thing that when in India, unfortunately, when you say sports, it's usually cricket. So here to get everybody's attention, let's start with a little cricket. Yesterday, IPL, highest score made by Sunrisers, uh, Hyderabad, highest cumulative score made by both uh, SRH and Mumbai Indians. But Vikrant, talking to you first, sports is no longer just cricket in India. And I know that at uh, Dream Sports, you're doing a lot of stuff to build the ecosystem. So, Two things. One is when you talk sports, sports ecosystem for the athletes. That's being done really well. The government is doing, there are a lot of organizations in it. Our panel is looking at the fan. Let's put the fan in the spotlight. So, uh, Vikrant, to kick off, you can, if you can tell me a little bit more about what's happening under the Dream Sports umbrella for the, fan, for the sports fan ecosystem. Sure. Uh, thanks so much, Sumit. Uh, great to be here. Congratulations on hosting a great summit. Uh, the very fact that we are discussing sports uh, at a summit of this sort uh, means that it's becoming more mainstream in terms of just not just area of interest but also a topic of discussion. To your point about uh, sports fan engagement in particular, I think a lot has changed over the last few years. Uh, while the IPL is topical and it's currently on, you referred to the match yesterday which broke some records. But I think what we've seen in the sports landscape over the last few years is one, uh, is the emergence of the digital sports fan. You know, uh, the digital sports fan is, uh, is consuming more content, is con consuming it online, uh, has various platforms, formats, uh, whether it's live scores, content, streaming, uh, highlights, uh, uh, and is, is able to do that on the go. Uh, this digital sports consumption has also been enabled by a lot of changes in the ecosystem, uh, thanks to m mobile connectivity and uh, better, uh, you know, internet speeds, things of that sort. So I think that's one thing which has changed. Uh, from the other bit we have noticed is a lot of these uh, sports fans have turned from 
passive sports fans into active sports fans. Yeah. yeah? Uh, they, they no longer want to just passively consume sports, but have a point of view in terms of either fan following, either at a team level, club level, league level, or even at the national level. Yeah? Uh, and that provides a lot of brands uh, uh, and uh, different avenues in terms of how they can engage with these sports fans. Uh, the third big trend that we've noticed is the emergence of what we call uh, the Bharat sports fans, you know, tier three, tier four yes. sports fans. Yes which are increasingly now uh, seeing greater consumption. Mm. Uh, their likes, uh, dislikes, and the way they consume sports fans, uh, sports uh, content is a little different from what tier one, tier two fans have done in the past. Uh, and the last healthy uh, and optimistic sort of uh, trend that we're seeing is there are more women sports fans. Yeah, yeah? Uh, we've seen year on year consumption by women grow. Uh, from, let's say, single digits to healthy double digits, which is happening. Yeah. Uh, case in point is uh, the recently concluded Women's Premier League, actually, uh, where Dream 11 is a sponsor, and we've seen that data come in where it's almost doubled in terms of interest and engagement. So I think uh, these three or four areas are the ones that, uh, from a Dream Sports perspective, we've been uh, witness to in terms of change. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them we have played an active role, and some of them actually we are enabling. So there's so much that uh, sports fans can now look out for. Uh, Munish, I'll bring you in. Now, Dream Set Go, as just for everyone's uh, knowledge, is actually a, a premium sports travel and experience platform, and it helps users get access to worldwide sports events. The biggest worldwide sports event is coming up this year, the Olympics in Paris. Um, because what I'm seeing now is there was a time when as a sports fan, any sports, I would be have, have been able to watch it on TV. As the internet came around, I would have been able to read about it. But now, with, like, like with Dream Set Go, you're allowing, you're helping that fan travel from here to Paris, for example, with the Olympics. So tell us a little bit more about the partnership with uh, the IOA, the International Olympic Association, specifically for Olympics. Yeah, so uh, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you know, for the Paris Olympics, uh, you know, we're exclusive in India uh, to ensure that fans across the country can get uh, access to top hospitality uh, for the Olympics and then get a sports experience overall. Um, you know, we want to make sports better. We want to ensure yeah. that uh, each fan gets uh, an experience which goes beyond watching the sport. Um, and we're doing multiple things around that. So uh, we want to ensure that, you know, when our athletes are, are performing live and and contending for yeah. the medal, uh, hopefully a lot of goals. Uh, you know, we can get as many Indian fans to Paris. It's a great destination. It's the first time a lot of different things are happening from an Olympic standpoint. Uh, the opening ceremony is going to be for the first time outside the stadium mm -hmm. on the River Seine. Um, and we want to ensure that across all the disciplines, we can get as many Indian fans out there to support them live and then have uh, great meet and greet experiences after that. So one of the events that we're doing um, post Neera Chopra's uh, yeah. finals, hopefully, and hopefully he wins as well. We're all supporting him. Uh, we want to ensure that our clients can get a meet and greet mm -hmm. with Neeraj mm -hmm. in Paris, mm -hmm. hopefully wow. at the India House. Wow. And uh, that gives an amazing, incredible experience to be able to interact with him first uh, and understand firsthand in terms of what his overall thought process was, mind, mindset was, right. and experience was. So, with Dream Set Go, we are helping the sports fan experience sports. Yeah. With uh, everything at Dream Sports, you're building the ecosystem for the sports fan. Yannick, now coming to you. So with Fancode, I know it's a, it's a, it's a premier destination for sports and uh, every, a lot of things around sports f for consumption of sports. So uh, case in point, Formula One, I'm a big fan. This year, the minute I got to know that Formula One is available on Fancode, immediately signed up because last year I wasn't able to see it. So how are you seeing these niche sports or different sports evolve, grow? How are you seeing consumers adopt that? And maybe to, uh, you know what uh, uh, Vikrant's point earlier was, not just in the urban centers, all across India. If you could talk to us, how are you seeing consumers, your, these sports fans, how are they evolving? Sure. Um, so I think, you know, the the... The premise of what we started fan code was essentially the changing environment in India, as Vikran spoke about, this increasing culture of young children actually taking up sport, where sports is actually permeated into culture right now. 
The interesting thing was in the last 10, 15 years where there's more and more investment and more and more access to, let's call it tier one sports events like the IPLs on 25 different channels, uh, the World Cups are on different events. Everything else wasn't getting enough of attention. So we set up FanCode really to solve that problem of access. And what we did was said that we're going to unlock the potential of digital which doesn't have to re rely on you know, traditional business models of linear television, to be able to cater to these fans across the length and breadth of this country. So when you talk about, whether you talk about Formula One, whether you talk about under-19 cricket, when you talk about Women's Football World Cup, we have the ability to aggregate all these fans across. And the premise has always been that instead of trying to go after and feature an event which gives us 100 million users, we'd rather do uh, 100 events which have a million users each and kind of aggregate that together. And that's how we've kind of built already an audience base of 100 million fans on FanCode. And we do across, uh, I think, we do about 12 to 13 sports every year. Last year, we did about 1,500 live matches. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're going to continue investing to try and grant, create access of all these sports to fans across the country, like yourself in Formula One, I mean, even things like Formula 2, for example, right, which is also part of motorsport, and uh, we have a, you know, an Indian, Kushmani, participating yes. in it. There's so much potential, but it requires a lot of investment. It all starts, all sport, start with the ability to access it. Heroes, kids play because they have access, they have the ability to follow, and that's something that we're trying to do through FanCode. Fantastic. And uh, Vikrant, I just want to take, I want you to take this one step ahead because what, like with hearing Yannick out, is also we're talking about, you could say, customization. So in today's world where everything is customized, a fan can have a customized experience and a fan can also be a customized fan by kind of saying that if Yannick is following Kush, when he, I might not be, I might be following another driver in uh, Formula 2, but now I know more about that. Sure. How is a uh, 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 dream sports, you know, how much of your marketing initiatives revolve around the collaboration with organizations so that fans, fans, sports fans can get closer to those athletes to get to know more about them, to uh, get to the, uh, know more and meet them maybe or find out about them. Yeah, sure. Thanks. So there are two parts to, uh, you know, the question that you sort of spoke about. One is this whole personalization bit, which is based on a lot of data ins and user insights that we have. You know, Dream11, for example, which is the flagship brand that we have within the Dream Sports portfolio, has over 220 million users. All of them don't behave the same way. All of them could have different likes or dislikes, uh, could show an affinity to for a particular sport. In addition to cricket, for example, Dream11 offers, you know, another 11 sports as well, you know. Yes. So this whole bit of personalization, uh, we've also, by the way, based on data insights, uh, done our bit around uh, offering content in vernacular for those, so the Dream 11 app, for example, is also available in Hindi and Marathi and Kandara. Now, uh, making sure that the best available product, in this case a contest, is available for a particular cohort, as we like to call, and is personalized, is based on extensive amount of data mining and insights that we do. The second part of your question, which is more around um, bringing the fan closer to the experience in terms of consuming that content uh, and how this interoperability within the Dream Sports portfolio, for example, there's Dream 11, uh, Yannick spoke about the, the fan code experience, and then uh, Monish spoke about Dream Set Go. Now, interestingly, even within Dream 11, uh, we have uh, integrated the fan code feed uh, where when somebody's part watching or consuming uh, a particular content, uh, in this case, let's say a, a particular uh, contest that is entered on, uh, you could have the, the streaming feed integrated within uh, the Dream11 app. Uh, you could possibly win uh, a chance to get some personalized travel and hospitality experiences from Dream Set Go. So I think there are those levels of uh, uh, finding unique cohorts which show certain affinity for a particular behavior and th then try and see how we can marry those and serve a best customized and personalized service to those users uh, is what we try and do. Uh, so there's some examples that I gave that we have already launched, and I think there are more that uh, we probably want to work on in the future. Fantastic. And I'll come back to you on this because I do want to know what else is in the pipeline for the way ahead. Uh, but Monish, you know, one other, what you, your company, so Dream Set Go is... I've, 
could be in this kind of a sweet spot because on one hand, the sports industry uh, and fans are burgeoning. The travel industry, tourism is burgeoning. You're pretty much in the middle of both sports and tourism. So how are you seeing consumer trends? How have they evolved over the years? What insights can you bring to us? Um, so for us, uh, you know, we are seeing that there's a, there's a great uh, outbound tourism that's increasing from, from an India perspective. In fact, it's, uh, uh, we're uh, now in our history uh, as, as India, uh, even surpassing China, South Korea, uh, Japan, in terms of the number of Indians that are traveling and the scale of the outbound market. Uh, within that, we're seeing sports experiences and tourism uh, being the highest uh, in terms of the annual CAGR growth. So we're seeing more and more percentage of the tourism uh, segment being captured by sports tourism. Uh, and this is directly factored by the sales that we're doing and the demand that we're getting. Uh, you know, we had more than 4,000 people that traveled for India for the T20 World Cup that happened in Australia. Uh, we worked with some of the partners and got uh, a lot of Indians to Qatar for the FIFA World Cup. Uh, we saw massive demand in India, of course, for the Cricket World Cup. And we see... Uh, a lot of demand for Indians wanting to go for French Open, Wimbledon, Formula One. Yeah. Uh, so there's, as our disposable income is also rising, people are wanting to uh, capture more and more experiences in life, and we're seeing sports mm -hmm. leading that way. So the demand for sports experiences and outbound travel is, is significantly increasing, and it's, yeah. uh, there's a hunger for for going beyond the game and getting an experience. So you think we're going to be seeing a lot of more entrepreneurs, startups coming up in this space? Uh, I think so for sure, yeah. because experiences is something which is uh, mm. uh, definitely, uh, you know, there is, there is a great return on investment and there's Super. a great appetite from the end consumer. Mm. And sports being at the helm of it, we hope that we capture most of it. Fantastic. Uh, Yannick, a, a little bit more about uh, fan code. What are some kind of innovations that you've been that have been put in place based on maybe some feedback that you've got from consumers or some changes that you see that are coming about that you've put into place at Fancode? Can you share that with us? Yeah, I think you know one of the things that we've been as an organization we're very focused is essentially our users, right? Which is the consumer as a direct to consumer company. So we get a lot of live feedback in terms of what works, what doesn't. And we've been able to essentially deliver a lot of uh, elevation and experiences for users unlocking digital. So, for example, one of the things that we always heard back from consumers was, why do I as a consumer uh, have to come on a, on a platform and play for the entire year if I want to watch one game? So we kind of uh, innovated around there and we started doing sachet pricing where consumers could come and buy a single game or like you, they could come and buy just Formula One and not the rest of the content on the platform. That really helped us, I think, grow the pie of users who are willing to pay for sport content on, on digital. Uh, another couple of things, right, you know, when we are doing a lot of our streaming and just general feedback on social media was people complained about too many ads, especially in cricket games. So we actually launched a premium feed where users could pay a premium and have an ad-free feed where they could actually continue watching wide shots, players interacting, and a lot of fans appreciated that and you know, took up to that. I think the amazing ability of digital is that you are able to get, feed, uh, you get feedback live and you're also able to experiment. You're able to test stuff out, push stuff out, and as an organization, we're very focused on doing, experimenting with things, but also being very clear, if things work, scale up, if things don't, move on from it. And I think that's something that we've tried to do a lot more uh, in fan code also. But this is great because FMCG's companies have been famous for, as what they call, I think it's called sachet. Sachet pricing, yeah. I don't know, I'm not pronouncing yeah. it right, but giving stuff in sachets, so with shampoos, oil, everything. So this is great to provide this experience in a sachet. Uh, this question, I'll come one by one to all three. The future. So starting with you, Vikrant, what does the future for the fan look like, for the sports fan? What does the future look like here in India? So I think uh, they'll be spoiled for choice in terms of the kind of content they can consume and uh, the ease and the convenience in which that they can consume. So I think that's probably uh, a trend that's going to continue. You know, um, uh, organizations like Dream Sports will do their bits to try and see how we can 
promote and support the sports ecosystem uh, you know in the country uh, dream sports vision is uh, you know make sport better you know so what's good for sports is good for dream sports you know in that sense uh, so i think a lot of work will uh, at least from our side will happen on uh, trying to even promote sport at the grassroots levels you know these could be sports that we may not even uh, let's say for example feature on dream 11 as a product uh, but but generally i think for example the dream sports foundation does a lot of work in promoting sporting talent a lot of them are olympic hopefuls uh, uh, hopefully they'll do extremely well in the coming olympics as well so i think this larger uh, goal and objective that we have of promoting the uh, sports ecosystem will continue to happen uh, the second bit i think really will be around uh, uh, the synergy that uh, we have as a platform and as a group entity with multiple uh, individual companies to see how we can at different touch points try and address different customer needs uh, when it comes to sports consumption uh, that probably will be the second sort of uh, big thing that we'll focus on in times to come Fantastic. Monish, same question for you. Where do you see the f uh, future for DreamSet Go and the industry? So I'll actually take a step back and, and, and tell you my own story. So uh, I used to travel a lot to England in my Deutsche Bank days and uh, uh, I love watching Chelsea Football Club and watch them play. And every time I'd travel, I'd, uh, I'd struggle to get tickets. Last minute I tried to find, I didn't know where, I didn't have access to it. And that's where I think the first thought came in saying we need to solve for this problem. Uh, today, where we stand, I think, across sports, uh, there's a trusted platform being a part of the whole dream sports universe uh, to be able to deliver not only access to the clients, but also ensure that, you know, you go beyond that and give them, like for Manchester United, we've got an official partnership. They can watch the first team train. Wow. They can have a legend that can give them a tour, personalized mm. tour mm. Uh, of Old Trafford. And it's about putting, piecing in these kind of experiences, which right now now gives access to mm. very various uh, money can't buy kind of experiences yeah. as we move forward uh, you know i think there's tremendous potential in terms of what we can create even within india in terms of the hospitality experiences for our fans more and more sports are going to happen here we're hoping that in the next decade mm. india is going to be at the center of uh, some of the major sporting tournaments and uh, you know we wish to create the best hospitality experiences for fans fantastic Yannick, last question to you, same future, what do you see the future as? So I think from a fan perspective and from a fan code perspective on the content side, right, I think the hyper customization of content and your viewing experience, you know, it's really frustrating. Like yesterday as a fan, I was watching the Mumbai Indians, as you said, the SRH game, and at, at the break, uh, there was this great highlight package of SRH bowler, batsmen just whacking the Mumbai Indian bowlers all over the place. And as a fan, I was like, this is a terrible highlights package, right? I'm a Mumbai Indians fan. I want hope, right? I want to be able to see a customized highlight package, which actually gives me hope that Mumbai Indians can make it. They may be a fan of Klaassen who wants to see how he batted and how he performed over everyone else. So I think today with ML and AI, the ability to use technology to be able to create content which is customized to you individual fans and to be able to use data analytics to be able to feed that content to the right without having them to scroll and search i think wow. that really is the future of fan content and and that's where we hope as fan code to be able to take experiences to fans fantastic so very exciting times lined up for if you're a sports fan if you're not a sports fan i'm sure some of these offerings will click and we'll all find that sport that we are passionate about. Thank you so much, Vikrant, Monish, and Yannick for this lovely Thank panel discussion. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank lovely you to the audience. Video. Thank you. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It was great to have your insights on how to make sports more accessible using technology, Swathi, and that really is going to be a game changer. Well, Times Now Summit has always been the platform where India's political roadmap has been discussed, debated, and even decided. As India prepares for the largest election in the world to elect members of the 18th Lok Sabha, what are some of the pressing issues that need to be addressed? Well, there are multiple issues, Meghna, but I think this election it is all going to boil down to NDA versus INDI. At one end, you have NDA government talking about Aapki Bar Char so Par, while on the other hand, we have the INDI block. And it comprises of 40 political parties aiming to halt the engine of the NDA. But some would tell you that the going is tough for the opposition. 
Well, absolutely. In fact, our next speaker and his family have been long-standing supporters of the Congress party, but he has recently left the party to join the Shinde Shivasena camp. He's joining us today virtually to share his views on the topic, what is ailing the opposition. Please welcome uh, on stage uh, Member of Parliament, Sri Milind Deora, in conversation with our senior executive editor four times now, Padmaja Joshi. Over to you, Padmaja. Good afternoon, and thank you very much for joining us here on the Times Now Summit. Uh, Milind Deora has been kind enough to take out time. It's a very, very busy season for all politicians. First up, Mr. Deora, since the theme of this session is, what ails the opposition? Your opening thoughts. It's been about two months since you left the Congress party. If you were to take a bird's eye view now of the workings of the Congress, the opposition as a whole, what would you say really ails it? Firstly, Padmaja, thank you for having me. And I apologize for being unable to be with um, you in, 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 physically in, in New Delhi. Um, you know, the question of what ails the opposition in many ways, um, as someone who's been a member of the opposition for 10 years, I think one fundamental problem that the opposition has faced over the last decade, since 2014, after UPA limited office and was uh, replaced by the Prime Minister's um, um, uh, by, by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Uh, the opposition has failed to provide any constructive agenda, any constructive suggestions to the people of India, for the people of India. That coupled with the fact that the alliance that we see today in the country is extremely opportunistic. If I look at Maharashtra, for instance, the MVA, the Mahavikas Adhari, um, because Udhav Thakreji did not get the chief minister's chair in 2019 for the sake of power, for the sake of money. Shiv Sena and Congress did the unthinkable and joined hands. And I think the people see through that, that A, there is not a constructive agenda before the people of India and B, that the only agenda that is uniting all these parties together is to stop Narendra Modi ji from taking India forward. And I really believe that the people of this country, especially the voters, most of whom are young, we have the youngest electorate in the world. They want progress. They are aspirational. They want India to go forward with social media, with the advent of 4G and 5G. People have access to information around the world. They are aware of India's standing globally. And in that sense, to borrow your tagline, India truly is unstoppable. And in that sense, I think the NDA alliance is truly unstoppable. People often talk about Charso Par. I fundamentally believe based on my own analysis that I doubt if the Indy Alliance will cross even 100 seats. And that tells you the pitiful state of the opposition in the country. Too. That's a that's a big claim saying that all of INDI put together will not cross 100. Uh, would you like to put your money on any number for the Congress in particular? Like they're being widely mocked as saying, uh, you know, some people even said that I doubt they will enter double digits, cross even 40. Any number you are willing to wager? I wouldn't want to bet on a, a number, but what I can tell you as someone who knows Mumbai extremely well, who's fought for Lok Sabha elections from Mumbai starting in 2004, Mumbai is all set to elect all six of its MPs to the NDA fold once again. And I, 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 I really fundamentally believe that the people of Mumbai, the people of Maharashtra and the people of India are seeing through this opportunistic alliance where just a few months ago, for instance, the Congress was demanding, was calling what Aam Admi Party had done, the Delhi government's policy as corruption, and that it was calling for arrests and is now calling arrests unconstitutional, is calling arrests undemocratic. And the same applies in Mumbai and Maharashtra where till recently um, Udhav Thakre and the Congress were calling each other all kinds of names. And today they're working together and under just one objective, which is to stop the Prime Minister. 
and stop the prime minister from doing something positive for the country, to stop the chief minister and the Mahayuti government in Maharashtra from doing something positive for the state. So I think people will see through this. I think Mumbai is all set to elect six MPs. There's not even a doubt in my mind about that. And I honestly doubt, and we'll see that on counting day in June, but I honestly doubt and will be extremely surprised if the India Alliance crosses 100 seats. One more question on Maharashtra before we look at a national overview. We're talking on a day when the Congress and the Shiv Sena are at odds over the seats which have been declared by the Sena UBT. Now you've had, uh, you know, Sanjay Nirupam coming out and saying, Shiv Sena has declared their candidate on Mumbai Northwest. I was supposed to fight that seat. You've got even a Varsha Gaikwad who is unhappy with Sangli being given to the Shiv Sena. When you look at what's happening around you right now, is there a sense of despondency given the time and the years you and your family has given to the Congress party or a sense of, I told you so? Well, you know, to be honest, now I've moved beyond the point of I told you so. The Congress for me is the past. I'm looking towards the future. I want to contribute in a constructive, positive way. My politics, Padmaja, has always been constructive. Um, I've always wanted to represent Mumbai and Maharashtra. I've always represented Mumbai and Maharashtra and New Delhi. So I, I'm not surprised at what was the sense of despondency in the Congress. I warned the Congress party in 2019 that the MVA alliance is purely opportunistic, purely for the sake of money, purely for the sake of, for all the wrong reasons, and that eventually this will hurt the party's interests. Uh, the, the Congress, I think, refuses to see the writing on the wall. It's frustrating. For, it, it was frustrating for people like me. I have many friends who continue to be in the Congress who I know find it frustrating. But ultimately, as an Indian, rising above party differences, I think as an Indian, I, I'm sure everybody in your audience will agree with me when I say this, that the country wants a strong opposition. The country wants a strong opposition that is also constructive. And I think that is something at least I hope that the Congress would aspire to. That is something I hope this India Alliance would aspire to, to provide constructive suggestions on how we can take the country forward. We are at a unique time in India's history. There are massive geopolitical tailwinds. Um, the world is looking at deleveraging from China. There's a China plus one strategy economically. India has every opportunity before it to take advantage, to provide jobs for our people, to provide national security for our people, uh, to provide growth, economic prosperity. And it's unfortunate. It really hurts me, in fact, as an Indian, that uh, not one constructive suggestion from a party which has a very a, a very rich legacy also i mean when i when i left the congress party i made a statement and i said that this is the party under narsimha rao's leadership under dr manmohan singh's leadership that ushered in economic reforms mm. in 1991 let's not forget that and in 1991 the economic reforms today almost 33 years later who has been the biggest beneficiary of economic reforms the average indian you and i people have access to mobile services to better insurance uh, to better products and services because of economic reforms. And I can give you my own example that in 2016, when the country should, when the Congress party should have celebrated 25 years of India's economic reforms in 2021, when the Congress party should have celebrated 30 years of economic reforms, it shied away from doing so. It was embarrassed by its own legacy. So unfortunately, the, the party which brought in these constructive ideas to India has moved towards negativity and towards opposing its own legacy. And that's extremely unfortunate. You know, I have to say this. The last three answers, you've used the word opportunist for the Maharashtra Vikas Aghadi, and I assume by extension, the entire opposition alliance. Why is it that when the BJP ties up with Eknath Shinde and Ajit Pawar, it's called Chanakya Niti. When they get a Milin Deora and a Jyotiraditya Sindhya, it's a master stroke. But Uddhav Thakre alliance with Congress and Sharad Pawar, then it's opportunist. How, how are the two different? Either both of them are opportunist when, or when both of them are Chanakya Niti. Firstly, people from other parties have also joined the Congress. So people have different reasons for leaving a particular organization. Padmaja, in your industry, in the media, it's not that people don't switch from channel A to channel B. Ultimately, everyone, regardless of which profession you're in, whether you're a politician, whether you're a journalist, whether you're a professional working in another sector, you want to feel recognized, you want to feel rewarded, you want to feel empowered, and you want to feel motivated. If that, if those aspects are taken away in your job, 
and it, and the purpose for which you joined a particular career a particular profession those objectives no longer exist it's but natural for anyone to seek greener pastures and to seek a place a greener pasture doesn't mean a place where you may get a post a greener pasture could mean a place where you feel rewarded where you feel acknowledged for your talent where you feel acknowledged for your hard work and that's precisely the reason someone like me left the party i tried for 10 years during congress's most challenging period during its most difficult decade i stayed loyal to the party with no post mind you no post not uh, not being a legislator not being a mem- uh, uh, having holding a position in the party for much of that 10 years i stayed loyal to the party but i always hoped and i always tried to bring about changes from within at one point you reach a stage where you know it's not going to change and it refuses to change it refuses to see the writing on the wall and at that point you want to be able to contribute i'm also mind you 47 years of age from the age of 27 to 37 i was in parliament congress gave me that opportunity i'm grateful for that i paid it back from 37 to 47 when as i said i stayed with the party during its most difficult decade but i want to be able to contribute during these years and i'm and i'm glad that this is a party where today the the party that i'm a part of the leader who i work with he has a certain vision for mumbai he has a certain vision for maharashtra like the prime minister in the center he too is a self made man he too is a man who's come from the from literally from the ground he's a man who works night and day and he has a vision to take the city and the state forward and that augurs well with my core ideology which is to take mumbai and maharashtra forward i found that i was suffocated in the congress and that's why i had to leave so when you say opportunism i think there is a fundamental difference in wanting to be able to be in a platform which allows you to work which acknowledges your talent and joining hands purely for the sake of power and i think that is what the india alliance is doing not one constructive suggestion that the congress that aam aadmi party that shiv sena can offer this country only one suggestion let's eliminate uh, let's let's make sure that prime minister modi ji doesn't come back and look at the excuses for instance they talk about democracy when the supreme court for instance uh, strikes down electoral bonds at that point the judiciary is working very well for the opposition when the supreme court um, upholds 370 at that point they'll make a, a, a criticism that the judiciary is compromised when they win elections the evms are working fine when they lose ele- elections evm should be scrapped so this kind of hypocrisy this is opportunism in my opinion and this opportunism is what the people will judge in the months ahead in the weeks ahead and that's why i'm confident that indi will not cross 100 seats some of the words that you have used uh, you know at the time when you left the congress and actually before that as well you had been speaking out periodically emotional suffocated i didn't get respect from who an individual a system an organization who made you feel unseen and suffocated in the congress look i have moved beyond the congress there's no point now talking about the past um i'm looking towards the future as i said um i have no ill will towards anyone uh, it to me it looks extremely clear that narendra modi ji will be the prime minister of india once again in june what i can only hope for padmaja and i can only express this uh, hope to express this through your platform and i hope that people on the other side will listen is that india gets a strong and a constructive opposition to be a strong opposition to start with the opposition needs to be stop being destructive negative and offer constructive suggestions i still believe that there are people in the congress party many of whom are my close friends there are some people in the opposition many of whom i know very well and who i respect who have good suggestions who have good ideas i can only hope that the the respective parties including the congress allow those people who have their ear to the ground allow those people who have some domain expertise to rise to be rewarded to be acknowledged to be empowered so that their suggestions can come to the forefront and i hope that those who are only there to bicker and only there to present destructive and negative ideas and to be psychophants are pushed to the back that in my opinion will give india the constructive and strong opposition that she desperately deserves did you say psychophants is that the problem that there are psychophants and a coterie who are misleading the opposition or at least certain leaders of the opposition again i i don't want to help too deep into the congress's the the reasons for the congress's problems but yes the 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 i i i found 
uh, the Congress, uh, what should I say? I found it undemocratic. I found it unopen to constructive suggestions. There were many constructive suggestions I made from 2014 to 2024, all of which are in the public domain, all of which are on my Twitter timeline, all of them are on in the media, uh, all of which were constructive for the interest of the Congress party, for the interest of the opposition, and ultimately for the interest of India. Um, it's unfortunate that Congress missed that opportunity, and I can only hope going forward, regardless of how many seats they get, I don't think one should be very hopeful about the number of seats that the Congress and the opposition will get, but regardless of the number of seats that the opposition and the Congress get, I hope that they finally learn their lesson after 10 years and three successful de defeats. You know, I'm going three to be blunt. Defeats. You, I'm sure, has seen that, uh, you know, much, much circulated picture where in a frame, you, Jyotiraditya, Sindhya, Sachin Pilot, RPN Singh are all in conversation with Rahul Gandhi inside parliament. And of course, also because all of you practically began your journey pretty much together. 2004, you entered parliament, so did Mr. Gandhi. You had Sachin Pilot, all of you very young ministers, MOSs in the Manmohan Singh cabinet. And now it's, that picture has become symbolic of, you know, all people, friends, fellow travelers falling by the wayside and now talking about what went wrong. Do you think there was an over-reliance on the people in that picture? It was a my friends and pals kind of a setup which didn't work in the long run, trusting your inner coterie more than the organization. Again, I, 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 again, let me move away from that. But my simple point is that if one person had left the party, uh, we could call it an aberration. If as you mentioned in that photograph with five political leaders, if four or five of them had to leave, were forced to leave, it clearly means something is wrong organizationally, something is wrong ideologically, uh, something is wrong politically with that organization. It clearly means there's a problem. And different people left at different times. I can speak for myself. Um, I, I stayed loyal for 10 years. Um, I, I genuinely tried to bring about change from within. I was one of those who wrote a letter, what they famously called the G23, a constructive letter to the party, a private letter demanding certain reforms, demanding certain changes with the party's best interest in mind. Unfortunately, constructive suggestions, even, in the, even when suggested privately, were seen as revolt. So beyond the point, somebody has to ultimately ask themselves, who are they loyal to, to a particular party or to the country? What is their purpose in politics? Self-preservation or to serve the nation? And that's what I had. Those are the difficult questions I had to ask myself. But then I finally realized that ultimately my goal and the reason I entered politics at the young age of 27, the first time that I got elected in 2004, was to serve my city, was to serve my state, was to serve my country. And to bring forth constructive suggestions, frankly, to bring sides together, to bring sides that don't agree on issues. The politics that I have been raised seeing very closely by my late father, uh, you know, he was credited for bringing about the insurance bill in the country, which allowed the private sector to come into in, in, to enter the insurance sector. And he worked with then finance minister Yashwan Sinhadi, who was the finance minister under Atal Bihari Vajpayee. And my father was the chairman of the finance committee. That's what politics is designed to do. Bring sides together. We bicker, we fight, we, we, we uh, uh, you know, attack each other, especially during elections. But in between elections, during those five years, the people expect us to work together to get things done. And that is where I felt that there was a frustration within the Congress. I felt that the Congress had moved away from 2004 when I entered the party, where the Congress still held on to the belief that our objective is to bring people together, get things done for the sake of the country. After that, I found the Congress on a destructive and negative path, where the only goal is to oppose for the sake of opposing. Unfortunately, that is not my politics. Uh, you know, I was uh, looking at a few pictures of uh, when you had accompanied Mr. Gandhi, I think in 2018 and 2019 to the Silicon Valley. And in 2019, I think just before the elections, you had possibly gone to Singapore. Now, the reason why I ask you this is that many people have actually wondered what is the purpose of these visits? A similar visit was undertaken where bang in the middle of this Bharat Jodo Yatra, when all the tickets are being announced and everyone's pouring over lists of candidates, suddenly he went off to Cambridge. As somebody who's accompanied on such trips, can you 
Tell us what is achieved. Is the Indian electorate being addressed? Is there another kind of wider political messaging? What's the strategy there? Pandaja, I wouldn't know what the strategy is today. I know what the strategy was in 2018 when I arranged the first visit to the United States, to Washington, D.C., to Silicon Valley, to New York City. At that time, the intention was very clear to present a constructive view of India, to keep politics, domestic politics within India, but to present a constructive idea of India to the world, that we are one, regardless of our political differences, we are one. What has happened since then, I cannot comment on that. I have not been part of arranging those visits. And I personally believe that when someone goes abroad, when any leader for any political party, I've always followed that policy from 2004. There were many times in 2004 when as a member of the Congress party, we would go on multi-party delegations abroad and we would go for economic delegations, political delegations. I remember when the Indo-US nuclear deal was being dis discussed. There was a huge controversy. The, the BJP and the Congress weren't seeing eye to eye on it. But when we went overseas and we talked to people, we said, regardless of our political differences, we are united in what benefits India. So that has always been my philosophy. What is the Congress doing today? Who is organizing the visits? What is the agenda for these visits? I cannot comment on it. And the reason why this is pertinent is often these visits are called into question as some larger break India agenda. Uh, maybe partially because on some of these visits, for example, the one in London comes to mind a couple of years ago, where Mr. Gandhi had made comments about how there is no democracy in India anymore, the press has been sold out, the judiciary is under duress, as are all other institutions. Would you like to dispel some of the rumors about some great game which is anti-India being, uh, you know, fleshed out in those visits? Again, I don't know what, what I, I don't know who is organizing these visits today. I know who has been organizing them in the past few years. But all I can say is that under my watch, I always believe that under my watch, every political leader must present a constructive in agenda when it comes to India. We shouldn't, we don't need foreign powers to come intervene and guide us and tell us what's right and wrong for our democracy. I do believe that India is a healthy democracy. And I think that parties that are undemocratic themselves um, have no ability to claim to be able to strengthen or restore democracy in our countries. Parties that are undemocratic, parties that are uh, uh, mon monarchic in nature, how will they restore or strengthen democracy in our country? So I find this a pass and I find this is something which I personally think that this is, these are just excuses um, that the opposition seems to be making. It's election time. They have to make excuses. They have to set public expectations because they know what's going to happen in the next few months. And I remember in 2014 when the Congress got from 200 and I think six MPs um, uh, fell down to 44 MPs. The Congress blamed a whole set of people. 2019, it blamed a whole set of people, institutions. 2024, the same thing will happen. But as long as the Congress does not see the writing on the wall, as long as the Congress fails to reward, acknowledge, uh, bring people who have their ear to the ground, who are talented to the forefront, move towards a meritocratic system, the Congress will continue to make such excuses. Now, uh, other than being a politician, a former minister, you're also a very accomplished musician. For those who do not know, I actually want to play out a clip of uh, Milind Deora at uh, the Blues Festival a couple of years ago. Uh, you're also part of a band which is called Third Degree. First, let's take a look at that uh, performance by Mr. Deora.
Milan Deora, you know, from that lifestyle to this, your band is called third degree. Some people say working in the BJP Shiv Sena is in itself third degree. How are you going to balance the two? Well, firstly, I hope your audience hasn't left the room watching that long clip. They haven't actually. Uh, a dozen of them walked in. <laughs> well, music is a part of my life. Music will never go away. And as I mentioned to you earlier, I'm still the same person I always was. Uh, the, 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 the Shiv Sena led by Eknath Shindeji has, uh, he's, he's very clear in what he expects from me. My, he, he, he's very clear in that he's asked me to uh, represent Mumbai, to represent Maharashtra. Uh, shortly after I joined the party, I was in Davos. I saw how hard he worked to bring investments to, to Maharashtra, to bring jobs to Maharashtra. I saw the kind of competition in Davos where different states are competing. So these are areas, Padmaja, which I'm good at. And this is how I hope to serve my city, my state, and my country. Uh, music is obviously a passion that will never go away. Certainly, the system is certainly a very hardworking system. Um, it's a certainly a very um, a, a demanding system. We're obviously in the midst of the election period. So the guitar is, the strings are getting rusty right now. But I'm sure I'll have time in the months and years ahead to pick it up again. But, you know, the image of the Shiv Sena is, you know, it's a grassroots party, the shakhas, the rallies, and blues and jazz is a slightly more elevated pursuit. Don't you think that is going to be in the mind of the Sena voter? I don't think so. I don't, I don't see that at all. And I think that, um, you know, I think Mum the, the Sena represents in many ways Mumbai's ethos. And Mumbai's ethos is extremely diverse. Mumbai has thrived. Mumbai has become, has been and remained the economic capital, the cultural capital, uh, the creative capital of India because of its diversity. And every community, regardless of which language you speak, regardless of which community you belong to, regardless of which state you've come from, uh, the, 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 the Sena has always given that representation to people, believe it or not. And so, and I think Mr. Shinde is an extremely, what should I say, a, a, a very modern politician. He's somebody who has a very grand vision for the city. He has a very grand vision for the state. He's somebody, as I said, who's very demanding, very hardworking. Um, somebody who, who's cut from the same cloth as the prime minister. Uh, the prime minister was a chaiwala who rose to become prime minister purely based on his hard work and his dedication. The chief minister, for those who don't know, was an auto rickshaw driver, uh, a three-wheeler driver in, in Thani. And he rose based on his hard work to become chief minister of Maharashtra. So, so I'm, I'm excited by the prospect of working with a man like him in a party like the Shiv Sena. And they've given me a lot of space. And I think they want different opinions to come together. They want people from different backgrounds to come together. And you'll see many more people from different backgrounds, from different walks of life, from different communities, joining us, working uh, shoulder to shoulder with us in the months ahead. Final question. You're in the Rajya Sabha, yet you are taking public meetings in South Mumbai. Are you going to fight the Lok Sabha elections? Many Rajya Sabha members have. Are you going to do the same? Well, I'm, I'm you know, the, the Chief Minister has sent me to the Rajya Sabha. Yes, that's true. And I've recently been elected. I have yet, I've yet to take oath. Uh, I hope to do that next week when the Rajya Sabha term begins. It begins on April 2nd. But ultimately, the goal of this alliance in Maharashtra is to ensure that every seat goes to the NDA and every seat strengthens the prime minister's hand. So if the alliance, if the chief minister, if my party decides that I should fight the Lok Sabha election from South Mumbai, I'm more than ready to do so. Uh, this is a constituency where my family has, my family has been fighting elections, mind you, Padmaja, from 1980, nonstop. My father fought the, the, the Lok Sabha elections from 1980 to 1999. I fought the elections from 2004 to uh, 2019, four elections. So this is a constituency which we know very well. We know the back of our hand. Uh, we have a very uh, wide network uh, cutting across communities. Um, and so, as I said, if this is something that the party and the alliance wants me to do, I'm more than happy to do that. The ultimate goal, as I said, is to ensure that every seat in Mumbai, every seat in Maharashtra goes to the NDA, which I'm very confident will happen. And if I'm, if the alliance feels I'm the best candidate to achieve that objective, I'm more than ready and more than eager to do so. So I will take that as a yes. And let's hope maybe this time at the Dashera Rally, we'll have a blues and jazz festival as well. Thanks very much, Milan Deora. Blues and Pleasure jazz, but always. maybe the guitar. Thank you very much. Can we have a round of applause for the Member of Parliament? Thanks for joining us.
Well, thank you very much uh, to Mr. Devra and to Padmaja as well for the discussion. Let's now shift our focus from politics to policies. The Honorable Prime Minister has spearheaded big policy shifts that have seen the growth of the country in the recent years, uh, and uh, so much so that his image has evolved into a brand in itself. So how did brand Modi emerge, and what goes into creating this world-class brand? In fact, our next speaker has a very illustrious career that spans across decades. He's a luminary in the realms of public relations and brand management, known for his deep insights and dynamic approach that led Explore with him the intersection of business strategy of leadership and communication. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Managing Partner, Council of India, Sri Suhail Seth, in conversation with Consulting Editor for Times Now, Deepthi Sachdeva. Surely we can have a louder round of applause. Over to you, Deepthi. So Suhail is comfortably seated and I hope all of you are too. We are discussing brand Modi. Now brand Modi, many would say, where is the discussion on that? I mean, does that, Suhail, leave any scope for a discussion? Modi is a brand in itself. But is that fiction? Is that reality? How big is that brand? So, uh, do you want me to answer it this way or shall I just finish what I have to say and then? Up to you, up to you. <clears throat> what would you like? since we're a democracy. I think let me share my initial thoughts and then you can, uh, in your inimitable style, quiz me. Would that work? Absolutely. <laughs> good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, the good news is I don't have a teleprompter. So I'm actually looking into your charming eyes when I speak about a person who has actually captured the imagination, not just of India, but if I may add of the world. The man's name is Narendra Damodar Das Modi. <clears throat> Let me begin with an early morning anecdote of today. I got a call from an old Parsi friend of mine called Zubin Karkaria, who runs VFS. Uh, I don't know what it <clears throat> stands for, but I do know they do all the visas across the world. That company is a unicorn, and he asked me, what time is your afternoon siesta? I said, thanks to Times Now and the Times Network, there is no siesta today, because I have a talk at 3.15, which has been delayed thanks to Eknath Shinde's new friend, Milan Deora. So he says, uh, what will you speak on? I said, Brand Modi. He says, I have to tell you, he is the best encourager and bird keeper. I said, what do you mean? He says, for us at VFS, means for them, he has allowed them to fly with wings of confidence and with wings of courage. The hallmark of a brand is you never buy a brand. People tell you, no, a brand karite, no. You buy a benefit. You don't buy Colgate, you buy the whitest wash. It so happens that in your mind, the whitest wash is signified by Colgate, so you keep buying Colgate. Many of you who are young, some of the people in front uh, who are sporting recent dentures are not. You remember, some were bywords. When we wanted to talk about edible oil, we talked about Dalda. Today, when you talk about serious politics, you talk about Narendra Modi. When you talk about walking to nowhere, you talk about another young man who's not so young anymore. So the world changes. What is amazing about Narendra Modi, and I've written this, I first met Narendra Modi in 1999, <clears throat> when I was asked to handle the campaign for Atalji when he was staking claim for prime ministership. And from then till now, the hallmark of Narendra Modi is only one, consistency and focus. That's what great brands are all about. Brands are all about being consistent. You know that you will not be surprised with bad quality, you will not be surprised with unpredictability, and what's more, you will not be surprised with letting the customer down. No matter what you might say, and I hate all political parties, 
I think all political parties should be banned, but then what democracy will we have? I mean, Navika, poor thing, can't run India, even though she should. So what do we do? We are in a bind. Of all the choices that you have today, Narendra Modi is the only brand that has been made by himself, made for India, and made by Indians. Every other brand, more often than not, has been a brand out of legacy, has been a brand out of inheritance, and has been a brand which has been supported or substantiated by other factors. Narendra Modi has no lineage to talk about except the one he will leave behind. That's what great brands are about. Modi touches the hearts and minds of people, whether they love him or hate him. That's what great brands are about. You know what is the worst form of human antagonism? Is when you are indifferent to the human being. You can love a human being, you can hate a human being, but when you're indifferent, it's the worst insult to that human being. Today, Narendra Modi is the only political brand in India that is engaging every day. Whether you like it or not, he's in your face. Is that a good thing? Time will tell. He's there for a temple, he's there for a metro run, He's there to talk to, you know, religious communities. He's pumping flesh with the G8 leaders. He's organizing the G20. And he's working 18 hours a day. The last time he went to Bangkok was for a conference. That's the difference. That is the difference. Brands need to constantly work. They need to constantly innovate. They need to constantly recalibrate. Great brands are those that are often and always relatable to people and people's desires, people's wants, people's needs. Brands are not, as you and I think, some vacuous entity that is found on the top of a shelf. Which are great literature brands that you and I remember? If I were to look at Hindi literature, Dinkar, Premchand, Rabindranath Tagore, more recently in the world of theater, Vijay Tendulkar, Mahesh Dattani. Which are the political brands that you remember? Jawaharlal Nehru, Indira Gandhi, Rajiv Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi, Sonia Gandhi, Mulayam Singh, Jay Prakash Narayan. The list is endless. But which brand will be remembered for altering India and altering the way Indians are perceived? Brands must always fulfill a need. What was the need in 2014? The need was for India to rise from the abyss and from the nadir it had sunk to by being known across the world as a country that promoted crony capitalism, that engendered corruption, and that was all about nepotism. That is what 2014 was all about. From 2004 to 2014, you had a lady who was in power but not in office. You had a man who was in office but not in power. That's the irony. Today you have Narendra Modi who's in power and in office. There's another person who's out of power and in jail. But we will, we'll go to that later. He's also a brand. He's a disruptive brand. He's not a brand that you would take home to your mother and say, Isse mein shadi kar lu. So which are the brands that you would be proud about? Whether you like it or not, and I don't subscribe to a lot of the things that Mr. Modi may subscribe to. I've often said that the BJP has been the worst communicator of its remarkable achievements. And let me tell you, very few governments have achieved what the BJP government has achieved from 2014 till now. But all of that is covered by the din of what I call nonsensical surround sound, which deals with religion, communities, all of that stuff. But Modi will be remembered. He will be remembered for integrating Jammu and Kashmir. He will be remembered for making the Indian diaspora feel proud, no matter which country they are in, no matter which nationality they hold today. He will make them, and he has made them proud of their origins. He has given to the poorest of the poor dignity. Dignity is more important than wealth. And let me tell you about poverty. It was famously said that poverty is not about money. It is about the lack of opportunities. That has changed under Narendra Modi, and that should continue to change. 
And Narendra Modi's other great brand descriptor is decisiveness. But even more important than that is his unwillingness to listen to surround sound. You know, I was just telling some friends earlier, there's no point in being popular. You can never be popular with everyone or anyone. The moment you get, off, get up from the dining table, they will abuse you. So if you're looking for popularity, go to Big Boss House. But if you're looking to run the country, be like Modi. Because many decisions will seem unpopular now, but they are for the greater good for tomorrow. And great leaders plan for tomorrow. Poor leaders walk today. Great leaders plan for India. Poor leaders plan on dividing India. Great leaders want to embrace the idea of India. Poor leaders want India to be divisive, broken up into little pieces. That's the difference between Narendra Modi and whoever else that you take into account, which is why he will win elections, because he's a political person. And the last thing before I get into this Q&A with Dipti, Narendra Modi is a politician. He's not an activist. He runs a political party, not an NGO. He's concerned about the aspirations of 1.4 billion people. He's not concerned about the aspirations of 127 jokers sitting in some foreign university trying to understand what he's saying. That's the essential difference. So the brand will continue to embellish itself because it has the power of sustenance from you and me and the voters, the blessings or the curse. That's what real brands are about. Brands are the ones that make a difference. Brands are the ones that encourage you. Brands are the ones that inspire you. And most importantly, brands, great brands, are those that invigorate you. If you can't be inspired, you can't be invigorated, and you can't be encouraged, then what's the purpose of a political brand? Did Churchill win the war himself? No. Did Netaji not say? that I will give you freedom, give me your blood, sweat, and tears. So it is, history is evident. History is witness to the fact that great brands are the ones that engage with consistency and with focus. Great brands are those that listen, but they don't listen to everything because ultimately their desire is to get things done. Their desire is not to find fault. Great brands are about optimism. Weak brands are cynical. Great brands are about the future. Weak brands are about yesterday. And that's why I believe Narendra Modi is a compelling brand. Brand Modi is not an idea whose time has come. It's an idea whose time shall remain. Tomorrow, who knows? It might become a noun for great work. It might become synonymous with hard work and it will be a byword for being a true Indian. That's Narendra Damodar Das Modi. So what Brian Suhail said has done is to ensure that most of the questions that I prepared, no, he decided to you know, just go there, answer most of them by himself. So that is Brian Suhail said for all of you, ladies and gentlemen. But being a journalist, I will still poke him. We'll ask him questions. We'll also take a lot of your responses to it. Because a lot of what Suhail said does make sense. But then it makes you ask the obvious question. You know, one brand doesn't fit all. Many would say Suhail. Brand saturation, brand fatigue. Is this also a reality in today's Absolutely. day and time? You see him everywhere. He talks to you morning, day, evening, after, afternoon, almost every time. What, what does that lead us to? It's very similar to watching the news are every evening. We don't get tired, we watch it every night. It's the best network on the planet. We love all of you. News we don't get tired. We election. see Navika, we so see Ditti, we see Madha, we see Padmaja every day. We're not tired, we're invigorated, we're encouraged, we're inspired. <laughs> but now are... add Narendra Modi to that and then you can see how more inspired we are. But on a serious note, yes. There is brand fatigue. But remember, you're talking about 1.4 billion people, not people who have bunked office to attend a summit. I'm done. He's done? I, I, I couldn't believe that he's done, you know, because there's so much more to...
<laughs> Brad Modi Suhail, you know, le let's be a little bit more serious because this is also the challenge that I think the opposition today is facing. When you're looking at Brad Modi, that many say is getting even more powerful to what he was in 2014 to 2019 to now in 2024. You know, he began with saying, Bohat hua mahila hun parwar, ab ki bar Modi sarkar. Bohat hui mehengai ki maar, ab ki bar Modi sarkar. That's how the narrative began in 2014. 2019 was Balakot, Pulwama, nationalism surge. And you saw in him someone who could deliver. This time it's about Modi ki guarantee. Versus, where is the opposition? Is, is, there, is there any single brand that you see can even fight together? Is that, is that even possible? No, of course there are brands. To be fair, Rahul Gandhi is a pan-national brand. But often some brands are also there on the shelf because of longevity, not because of relevance. So he will remain there. But the point is, who will you buy? When you go to the store, you get a Johnson Band-Aid and another Band-Aid. And those Band-Aids will live all your life. But you have to decide that which Band-Aid is the right Band-Aid for your pain. And I tell you that Rahul Gandhi, with all due respect, and I have to say, after the Bharat Jodo Yatra, I said and I will say this again, that Rahul Gandhi, with all due respect, and I have to say, after the Bharat Jodo Yatra, I said and I will maintain, he did a great job of brand revival and brand redefinition. To give him credit. But, he lost steam. So come back to my original point. It is about consistency and it's about focus. One day he talks about caste census. The next day he talks about, you know, making aloo out of gold or whatever the hell. You know, now, now to even keep up with him. I mean, it's easier to keep up with Mahmood's films than to, you know, listen to all of this. So, I mean, every day he's splitting. Now you asked a very important question about Modi ki guarantee the slogans. Let me give you an example. It is published material. I have written about it September 2008. I went to meet Modi in his house in Gandhi Nagar. He was the chief minister. And he says, I want to show you a book that has come out, which my government has prepared. You know what that book was? On the gift city. 2008. We are talking about 16 years ago. Then he asked me, he says, Sohail bhai, kal kaha ja rahe? I said, Bambai. So Mr. Tata ko milenge? I said, boliye. He says, unko boliye ki ab I said, I will convey this to Mr. Tata. Nano happened, and Mr. Tata has admitted that in various interviews, it happened because of Narendra Modi. And today, Sanad has been converted into the Detroit of the West of India, thanks to Narendra Modi. So he's a man who gets things done. He's a man who makes things happen. The next speaker you have is Hardeep Singh Puri. Ask Hardeep. How many court cases were filed against Hardeep Puri's government, against Prime Minister Modi on Kartavya Path? Did it happen? It happened. You see, when karma is running and stray dogs are running, karma is not running. Karma is running. Karma is running. That's the hallmark of great brands. You continue to do your work. You can't be stopping to answer every diatribe which is either unsubstantiated or meaningless or purposefully distractive. That's not possible. Okay, now, just to push that point a little further, Sohail, sometimes what happens, you might have a good, decent brand, but you don't have the strategy, the wherewithal, perhaps, that many eyeballs, that can make that brand, even, you know, getting any closer to a brand like Narendra Modi. Do you think that also plagues the opposition? And the very fact today that you have a leader in Narendra Modi who is not just working on ground, he speaks to people directly, he coins these slogans, these acronyms, the government is all over the place, connecting with people, but the opposition somewhere is not visible. Does this mean that they are not working at all? Or you believe a part of that PR strategy also perhaps for the opposition has gone wrong? No, I think the opposition is working. But I don't know which country they are working for or in. They seem to be fighting the elections in Fiji or Greenland or something like that. But they are certainly not fighting election in India. Because if they were, Rahul Gandhi before his Bharat Jodo Nyai or Bharat Nyai Jodo, whatever the hell it is, he would have reached out to Mamta Banerjee. The first person who decried the Congress was their alliance partner Mamta, who said they will not even get 40 uh, seats this time in Parliament. This is your own ally disbelieving you. How the hell do you expect the voter to believe you? A, B. You never have alliance partners 
who have egos bigger than their ideologies. Today, an Akhilesh Yadav or Tejasvi uh, Yadav or, uh, you know, Stalin, each guy thinks he's born to be prime minister. Why the hell should they listen to Rahul Gandhi? Now let's get back to legacy. Indra Gandhi died on October 31, 1984. Rajiv Gandhi died in May 1991. Fair? 1991 till now. So let's imagine a person is 30 years old. He doesn't even know what Rahul, uh, Rajiv Gandhi and uh, Indra Gandhi have done. So he doesn't even have the context of legacy. He doesn't even have the context of history. That's the problem. And as you rightly said, I think, this is my belief, that the Congress needs a strategy, but the first leg of that strategy must be Rahul Gandhi must step aside. He is not someone who can inspire. He's not someone who can lead. He may be a very good human being. He may be very bright. But as of now, he's intellectually innocent. Until he proves us wrong, he must step aside. Because he will cause a lot of damage to the long-term benefit of the Congress party. And let's be fair. India needs an opposition. But it is not Narendra Modi's job to go to Khan Market every morning looking for an opposition to buy. Now, Suhail, even as you make that point, and our audience here, I'm glad they're having a good laugh on this. But just think of this. See, that you've spoken about Mamata Banerjee and a lot of other leaders. They say that Rahul Gandhi is the biggest TRP for Narendra Modi. The very fact today that you have a brand Rahul, perhaps not as strong as a brand Modi, that adds to brand Modi also. It, it gives him that bump, you know. So the very fact that you will have him being compared to an Arvind K. Jival, to an M.K. Stalin, you go down south, does that change the narrative? Especially, you know, in the southern part of the country. Which why, school? why does Brad Modi weaken when you come down to South? Which school did you go to? That, that is not a part of the question. No, no, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. If you went to school as you did, and you came first in class, and they, it was a class of 38 people, but 37 of them were such big duffers, would you feel happy coming first? I would much rather come first where I'm surrounded by geniuses and then beating them is fun. Can I tell you, Narendra Modi and Amit Shah every night must be having sleepless nights. Ki bhaiya, koi aadmi aisa paida kar do, jo hume thodi to competition de de. Because a dull competitor makes you also be complacent. You don't want to be complacent because you've got a dull competitor. Now, you guys are, you know, the numero uno television network. Now, can you imagine if you were the only TV network, would that be fun? For you, it would. For very gent, certainly. For revenue, yes. But it's no fun for, you know, competition. You need great competition. The fact that, and I'm not saying this, no one has paid me yet. The fact that Times Now Network has ruled the roost for so long is because you'll have a damn good brand. You have a good product. If you had a terrible product and great strategy, it wouldn't work. If you had a great product and no strategy, you would fail. That's the problem with the opposition today. So even if they have a great product regionally, they have a very, very poor strategic bent of mind. And you know why? They are planning for tomorrow. Modi is planning for 2047. When you plan for 2047, you play chess. When you plan for tomorrow, you play Kabaddi. That's the difference. Okay. What about brand BJP here? Where does brand BJP go? And uh, is there a danger, like, because you spoke about brand Indira also, when you have a personality cult and perhaps a brand becoming so huge that it subsumes almost everything. Today, today the government is just about Modi, Modi, Modi. So what happens when you have a brand that just becomes so huge, Sohail? What happens to the party? What will happen in a post-Modi era? I so totally agree with you. I've written about this. The BJP's fundamental problem is that it is getting into the same rut as the Congress. It is personality-driven. <clears throat> Having said that, the difference between the Congress and the BJP is that the BJP is still merit-driven. BJP is winnability driven. A lot of political parties are family driven. Ajit Pawar is putting up his wife in Baramati. 
I don't think either Hardeep Puri or uh, Ashwari Vaishnav will put up their wives as candidates. That's not the way the BJP functions. BJP, to my mind, is a merit-driven political party, number one. Number two, it's a grassroots party. Number three, it has the support, the guidance of the RSS. So there are enough checks and balances. It is not a party that is driven by a family that itself doesn't know where the hell it's going. That was quick. What happens to brand India and brand Modi? Which brand is bigger today? Obviously India, yeah. Brand India draws sustenance from the leadership of Modi. Modi draws <clears throat> his brand virtues from the legacy of India. Both are intertwined. It is true of all political leadership. Let's go into history. Let me do a nice history lesson for you because the next few speakers will be pretty, you know, they'll be very good actually. So let's go into history. Churchill, would you separate Churchill from what happened in England? No. Franklin Delano Roosevelt in the United States. Going to go back into time. Lord Nelson. I mean, these were the people who were intertwined. Shakespeare's political tragedies were basically his frustration with the reign of Elizabeth I. Elizabeth I defined the England of that time. So Napoleon defined what was happening in France. The Tsars defined what was happening in Russia. Then came uh, Lenin. Then came Stalin. You had Nasser in Egypt. You had, Sal uh, uh, I was about to say Salman Khan, you had Saddam Hussein in, uh, in uh, Iraq. <clears throat> so, it is very difficult to say, can you separate? Why should you separate the brands? Narendra Modi is the elected Prime Minister of India. He's not the nominated Prime Minister. He has not come through the back door. He has won an election. So, he and the aspirations of Brand India, if they are intertwined, it's better for the brand, Dipti. And it's better for both brands, because they will need each other for sustenance and for growth. Okay, even when you say that, I'm, I'm being informed that a lot of our viewers would also want to take questions. So we'll open up the session in just a moment. We'll get the mics to you where you are. But before that, uh, I just want to use this opportunity so well to you know, squeeze in one quick question. In spite of whatever we say, in spite of whatever is discussed here, why is it that for the Western press still, there is a problem with brand Modi. Is it because, you know, of the history? Is it because of the fact that they cannot digest the fact that India is on its way to becoming a superpower? Or India today has a voice? I mean, why? Why is the Western press still so against brand Modi? So again, <clears throat> without asking you which school, I assume you did read William Shakespeare. If you did, there's a play, Julius Caesar in which Mark Antony asks Brutus, why did you stab Caesar? Brutus's response is brilliant, Shakespeare. He says, it's not that I loved Caesar less, I loved Rome more. It's not that the Western press hates Modi less, they hate the success of India more. And the more you react, the more they will get under your skin. Treat them like the barking dog and treat yourself as the karma. You don't need to respond to every barking dog. If you say, but why did the New York Times do this? Why did the Washington Post? Ki farak pende hai? Kyo kilesh mol lende ho tusi? Kyo syapa le rahe ho? Onnu karan deo jo kar den. Why? You know, there's an old saying in Bengali. And Bengalis were always, you know, I'm more Bengali than Punjabi, but they're always self-victims. You ask a Bengali, Kya man dada, shop thika che? Ehi, kete ja che, rokto be roche na. Mean my neck is cut, but no blood is coming out. That is the situation with New York Times and Washington Post. America, neck kete ja che, kindo rokto be roche na. Ejo ne to apna dir pisho ne ache. Ignore koron. Okay, we can have a good laugh at that. <laughs> We'll get the mics coming to the audiences in case someone wants to take a question. Anyone? Okay, yes. I, I see a hand going up there on the left and the right both. If you can have the mics going there, please. And do remember you're asking your question to Brand Sohail Seth. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Go on, please. Thanks for the keynote, Sohail. Like, it was great. And 
I would say I resonate to most of it, but like the first question would be like when you say brand Modi or somebody as a leader and you're like setting him up to the one of the best standards, like how important is for a leader to choose a successor and where, where do you see him, let's say, on that path? Yogi Adityanath, Amit Shah, Nitin Gadkari, what's your name? Pranav? Pranav Virmani. Pranav Virmani, sub possible, eh? Jeet ke hao? Yeah, definitely, but like, when you, <coughs> like... Can I tell you, these are all old management notions. Will you please choose a successor? Have you asked Jamie Dimon that? Do you know who he is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you asked him that? Um, Deepak Parekh ran HDFC, I think, uh, longer than India's freedom struggle. Did you ask him that? Why? How is it relevant? Let me tell you, the BJP is a Carter-run party. They will have a succession plan in place. The only problem is they haven't had the time to share it with you. Once you're free and you tell them, they'll come and visit you and share the plan. Yeah, looking forward to it. Okay, a quick follow-up question before we take another from the gentleman there on the right who raised his hand. Uh, he just spoke about a number of names, Yogi Adityanath, Amit Shah and all. So are these equally big brands? You know, I want to take Or they you... all come under the umbrella of brand Modi only. So let's have a very interesting history session again. India has never predicted a future Prime Minister other than Jawaharlal Nehru. And let me take you through history today. If I miss one or two, don't... Uh, miss, miss, miss. Pandit Nehru died on May 27, 1964. Everyone thought that, uh, you know, Moraji would become or whatever. You had Gulzari Lal Danda as interim. You had Lal Bahadur Shastri. He died. It was not Indira Gandhi's turn. She became. Did you ever imagine that Narasimha would be Prime Minister? Did you ever imagine I.K. Gujral would be Prime Minister? I think even I.K. Gujral never imagined he'd be Prime Minister. <laughs> Deva Gowda slept through his Prime Ministership. Did you ever imagine Charan Singh would be Prime Minister? Chandra Shekhar would be Prime Minister? When Vajpayee became Prime Minister, everyone thought Advani ji would be Prime Minister. When Advani ji thought he would be Prime Minister, Narendra Modi became Prime Minister. Have you ever predicted a Prime Minister other than Nehru? No. So, jab hoga, to hoga, to quote Sam Petroda, hua, to hua. You must always keep the opposition happy. Okay, I just have time for one quick question. Can, can we have the, just the mic? Yeah, yeah. There? Yes. Ah, barakha. Quickly, because our next guest, the Union Minister, Hardeep Singh Puri, is also waiting, I'm told. Yeah, it was, yes. I, it was wonderful to hear Suhail Brand. And you can... See, we've turned him into all, uh, yes, a big brand already. already a big yes, brand, yes. like Modi ji. Uh, many of you wanted to know, everybody talks about Modi's successes. Anywhere, <coughs> anywhere, in one place, can you mention where he failed and you want to improve him? I think it's a very myopic way of defining great brands. You know, in every... In every packet of cornflakes or cereals, there'll be one ingredient that you may not like. But you don't define that cereal by that. Let me go back to what I have said essentially. You've got to understand the DNA of great brands. Great brands are about consistency, they're about focus, but most importantly, they're about getting things done. Atashi and whatever her surname is, I can never pronounce it. Marlena or Marlena or whatever. She says Arvind Kejival is an idea. But you know what? An idea, if it is not executed, no one sees it. It's like a ship in the night. It sails, but you don't see it. Modi's difference is he has been able to set an example of delivery. Modi's ministers, of which one of the most eminently successful minister here, Hardeep, whose wife is a far better author than most in this room, Lakshmi, let me tell you what they have achieved. And I've said this to Hardeep, I've said this time and time over again. The BJP's only failure has been in marketing itself. The Congress's only success has been in marketing its failures. <laughs> now figure that one out. So when I tell you, when I tell you that the Prime Minister does not need to do, as we would say in Ambarsar, Tindora Pitna, that's not his job. His job is to make sure that people live with dignity, he's done that. His job is to make sure that he replaces 
coal cooking ovens made out of mati with gas cylinders he's done that direct benefit transfer done that 370 done that i don't know how many of you go to srinagar as often as i do talk to every person earlier when you went to srinagar they would say aap hindustan se aaye today they don't say that because modi has made them indians he has not converted them into angry kashmiris <laughs> which the nehrus had done and i must say this let me also tell you i travel overseas once every two weeks nowhere and at no point in time has india been taken more seriously with greater panache with more pride than it has been taken today it takes a great leader to encourage his people to believe that they can conquer the world you know i started with that unicorn story about vfs today we are the world's largest providers of unicorns we have great authors we have great scientists we have sent people to the you know we have sent vehicles to the moon for less than the cost of a hollywood film would that have been possible if your leader said i don't believe in you and now i will end by just saying one thing you ask me the fundamental problem of the congress from its utterances the congress hates the idea of india they love india's idea but they hate the idea of india and they hate the success that indians are capable of today what modi has done is he's come with a giant human saw of encouragement and unshackled every indian he has made every indian believe in him or herself and he's told the world that if you're indian the world is your oyster for that and that alone we need to be grateful that a man like him passed the annals of india that apart you've got a great television network with the uh, with very powerful anchors such as yourself and navika and on that note i must leave because you mustn't keep a minister waiting no matter which government it is <laughs> fascinating conversation thank you so much suhail thank you thank you very much mr said for your wise words and sense of humor thank you deepthi well as india gets ready to cast its vote in the world's largest elections the nation is swept over with the discussions on what the results would be and what that would mean for india's growth story as well swati well meghna our next speaker is someone who has been an integral part of the government for many years additionally he is a seasoned diplomat thus bringing with him the ability to look at things with an international perspective as well and he is here today to talk to us whether अब की बार 400 पार होगा प्लीज वेलकम द मिनिस्टर ऑफ पेट्रोलियम नेचुरल गैस एंड अर्बन अफेयर्स टू द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया डॉक्टर हरदीप सिंह पुरी ही विल बी इन कॉन्वर्सेशन विद नाविका कुमार but first megna like thank to, you swati ma'am but before i could just sorry to interrupt you but a token of appreciation is a must when we have such a senior minister in our midst <laughs> as journalists we sometimes forget our uh, uh, <laughs> nice civilities uh, but very happy to have you uh, minister hardeep singh puri a big round of applause thank you so much sir and um, navika it's over to you thank you meghna thank you swati and uh, thank you very much uh, minister puri for joining us here at the times now summit the theme of our summit is india unstoppable what do you think makes india unstoppable if any one section of our society or any part of the ecosystem sought to claim credit for the unstoppable india i would find fault for that but i think starting with decisive focused leadership in the last 10 years programs which are anchored in development ensuring that the benefits of development percolate down to the farthest or those most vulnerable sections of our society and unleashing the inherent potential of india the brand which uh, your previous uh, star performer was um, outlining 
I think India collectively today is viewed not in terms of the 8.6% growth in the last quarter or the fact that you sent a vehicle on the South Pole of the moon or that you are preparing for other great achievements. I think India is defined by the collective ethos, the new spirit which has been unleashed for some time now, I want to give credit, but accelerated during the last 10 years. That is what India Unstoppable is all about. And I think um, not to try and um, lay it on in, at the start of a conversation, I think uh, a lot of people, distinguished members of the fourth estate, who have captured that story and who are focusing on that, that in and of itself is also a, you know, a force multiplier. Because large parts of India, large parts of India, the progress in tier two, tier three cities, you have to go there to, you have to see it to believe it. And I can see the growth coming from there. And I think that story is being captured. And the India unstoppable today is essentially good governance has been translated into good politics. Whereas on the other side, you have um, a counter narrative, you want to do a caste census, you want to go back to defining identity politics. Look, all that will remain because you had 190 years of colonial domination. You also have a past baggage which you have to overcome. But I think you're on the right track. I heard a um, famous, um, well, famous in the sense that he holds a position in an American universities say that all this 2047 talk of a Vixit Bharat is a lot of hype. There's the same guy who said we'd only grow at 5%. Now, I don't want to take issues with individual assessment because they're not worthy of, you know, being raised in a serious discussion. But you have to believe in India. And I agreed what um, uh, my friend Suhail said earlier. You know, that confidence which the Honorable Prime Minister has asserted for him, his leadership, for his people, and his belief in India. And it cuts across all sections. I mean, whether you are talking about the sporting arena, you are talking about the unicorns, you are talking about, uh, I believe you are no longer interested in the energy security issue. No, no, but I'll, I'll tell you, we, right we, used, now, to, we, we used to look down on PSUs. We used to look down on PSUs. Oh, these are government outfits. They work like nine to five. Look at the performance of my PSUs. I mean, mine in the sense, the two ministries I'm associated with. They've given a run to the private sector. And my God, somebody asked me the other day, ye to market uthi hai, isliye ye hua. Manika ji, I, I took an opportunity of a um, platform like this. I said market uthi hai 43% and all the PSUs, OMCs, organized um, um, oil marketing companies, they've registered performances in multiples of 43%, 120%, 160%. So there must be something going right. And my submission to you is, yes, it's that new sense of purpose, that new sense of determination, where we define our progress in terms of targets. All right, it's quite possible that some of those targets are unrealistic, but isn't it better for someone to be pushing you to achieve those targets rather than not have targets at all. Okay, so your target of uh, 400 up ki bar, 400 par, is that also unachievable? Look, that 400, agli bar, 400 par is a, both a description of the state of being in the state, in the op state of the opposition. It's also a BJP, NDA sentiment. But I would, you know, we are, what, 22 days away from the first polls, and I think more than 60 days away from the last Results. poll, which is on 2nd June. All I would say is let's not be um, too conservative in our assessments. I know you've had others on the show and say that we are not uh, cephalogists and we don't get into numbers. Well, I've tried to make an assessment on numbers on two occasions, 2014, 2019, I was right earlier. This time I'm watching something which is unbelievable. You see a groundswell of support for the party in areas which were hitherto regarded as being remote for us. 
West Bengal, the southern states. How much of that groundswell of support translates into seats remains to be seen. But, you know, if you get up every morning and you've got gifts thrown at you from the Opposition? other side. Yeah, yeah, these are uh, gifts which come our way. I mean, um, electoral bonds was one of them. Then you had... Uh, uh, you several... call that a gift? Absolutely. No, no, we suddenly discovered a party with 303 seats got 6,000 crores and a party with hardly any seats got 1,600 crores. Look, do you know of any system anywhere in the world? I've served in the United States for many years. I'm not naming any country. Any system where a democracy works without political funding? Now, how is that generated? I would have thought that a party which is in power, people naturally gravitate towards it. What would you rather have? They you would have a system where tax. The question is not about them funding the I BJP. I provoke you. Alone. I'm so happy. No, you are, you're provoking me. Yeah. Well, le let's try it the other way around. Okay. Let me try and provoke you. Uh, the, the charges against you and your government are that what gravitates towards you is fine. But what gravitates even more towards you is when you send your agencies to raid them. You raid them and within two weeks, within a month, more bonds come to you. I would be happy to get into an, any uh, exercise, a granular level with who did what and provided who in terms of dates. Okay? You look at any history. Let's look at the period when these bonds were introduced. Or now you look at the period going forward. What do you see? Do you see a genuine attempt having been made to drive this issue into a transparent semi transparent. System? Semi transparent. Well, look, ideal would be totally transparent. All right? Now you will have people coming in. Now, as far as the agencies are concerned, why do you want to beat around the bush? There's one man who says the agencies have been un un unleashed against me. Starting from November of 2023, He's been summoned by one agency on nine occasions. On You're talking nine about occasions. Mr. Kejriwal. Uh, you named him, I won't disagree. <laughs> no, all I'm saying is he's been summoned on nine occasions. Once I'm busy with this, once I'm busy with that. Are bhai, if you have nothing to hide, why don't you come and let's have a chat. Now, where does it say in our system that if you are either in power or you are in opposition and you are part of a culture of impunity, that you are immune from, uh, uh, from such investigation. I mean, look at what happened in West Bengal. I mean, there were empty flats where there were sacks of currency literally littered around. And why did those investigations take place? Not because the agencies wanted to investigate them. Those investigations took place because the courts ordered them. There was some recruitment scandal in which some teacher who was at number two was overlooked for somebody who was at number 16. That person went to court and that's how it resulted. Now I make but a... Kejriwal's case uh, hasn't no, gone. I, I am jumping from... I, and I want to ask you a very serious question. Germany and the United States have raised worries, concerns about the manner in which your government is going I, after which, which statement people are you holding constitutional positions. Which statement of the Germans are you referring to? The first one or the second one? The because first I, one. The second one, well, the I, second one well, was I think, after I think, their I, I, I think ambassador the second, was summoned. No, no, second one, uh, I think, places the first one in perspective. And then if you are having my friend Jai Shankar here, I suggest you ask him that. Because I can tell you... No, but... No, no. I know. I'll, I'll you've be been a diplomat. You, been, you know I, when there is a concern expressed, how serious it is. No, no. Hold on, hold on. You can express a concern on anything without knowing the full facts. You have an independent and a robust judiciary. How come they are not convinced? They, they, they are not asked, being asked to convince. Should we start looking into um, uh, acts of omission and commission by other countries? It's not my job. As I said, there is a designated department of the government which will deal with that. But... Can you have a situation, if we don't have a robust and independent judiciary, this favorite subject, electoral bonds, they just took a view on it. And I said, be my guest. You've taken a view on electoral bonds, but what is going to be the result of that? All right, you do away with electoral bonds, you do it. What will happen? Will the electoral funding stop? Or will you go into a more or a less transparent system? That is what I'm asking. 
a lot of us are in this business of wanting to do good and in the process we are not sure whether our actions result in something positive or negative today the government is sitting pretty because I think a lot of guys in the opposition and elsewhere again I'm choosing my words carefully are scoring self goals elsewhere and self the courts the courts were not convinced with your argument uh, of transparency or the semi transparency it took four hearings and four nudges from the Supreme Court of India and the Chief Justice I am, of I India. am, I am too well trained to, res to succumb to the temptation of commenting on something that the apex court says. I'll never do that. All I'm saying is, let me take you a step back. This story is just unfolding, okay? And I can predict a time, I'm speaking in my personal capacity, not as a cabinet minister. There will come a time you'll say, Yar, you know, I spent a um, larger part of my 39 years in the multilateral system. They're saying there, beware of what you want. You might get it. And I think a lot of our people in the opposition and elsewhere, they are asking what things, those will become a millstone around their necks. Because I'll tell you, whenever a government tries to reform, I read a brilliant statement by somebody today. What is holding India back? Why can't we grow on 9 to 10 percent? Yes, we can. We'll have to tweak. We'll have to reform. We will do that. But this is a government. The prime minister personally, other, he never says that this is the final position. Come and give me a good idea. We'll act on it. The semiconductor story, before that the other stories, the electric vehicle story, the green hydrogen, the uh, biofuel story. This is an Indian transition. And I think one country, one vote. I'm just giving you one, um, you know, instead election. of having elections every six months, if you have a system which is regulated once in five years, first part, then another one, all clumped together at an intermediary point transparent system of people wanting to do a contract. Aray, usne wo electoral bond diya, usko contract mila. Aray, check to kar lo, wo contract usko mila tender mein, because he was L1 or because of this. Aray, aap pata hai na, aap ke paas to ek state thi, 1600 crore aapko kahan se mil gaye. So listen, it's not for you and me to answer that. The fact that you are trying to take the country, it's electoral, it's democratic, functioning into a positive arena that is the story and I think this is what the Modi government has succeeded in along will come a Kejriwal make uh, uh, statements here and there he will say ki I have not been arrest I have not been convicted by the court are you court by the punch nahi de rahe nobody to tumhe summons kiya tum aai nahi aur ab wo kaya rahe nahi I've got relief you got no relief the point is I want to function I will issue dictates from sitting behind uh, the um, walls of a uh, Wherever he is, no, I am. Wherever I, he is, wherever he is, I don't know. I'm he's, not. In he's in custody. He's in custody of an agency. Yeah. Now the point that the point, operates under your government. No, my government, yes, but the point is not that. The point is, what is the combination here? Combination here is a man who got up. He was a regularly recruited officer of the Indian Revenue Service. Took a long sabbatical. Joined the Anna Hazare movement against uh, Bhrashtachar, sat on the stage, as Anna Hazare ji said the other day, hum to daru ke khilaaf te, ye sirf daru ke khilaaf nahi te, inho ne te kaha, mein kabhi rajnitik, rajniti nahi karunga, mein ye nahi karunga, mein wo nahi karunga, rajnitik dal bhi khola unho ne, uske baad jab mauka mela, to sharaab ka aisa ghutala kiya, ki where, Buy one, get one free. No, 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 no that is when he was made to appear, not by his own volition. The court told him to go there. And now it has reached this stage. And now you go back and play victim. He's argued my his concern, own case. My and concern. he says the Ghotala that is really happening is the conspiracy by the BJP to remove a popularly elected government to crush the Aam Admi Party. Wow, wow, wow. 
First of all, how arm is the army that requires a separate discussion. I mean, main gaadi nahi lunga, main muffler pehnunga, mere baal lal batti nahi hogi. The transition, I fast forward to Shish Mahal. Okay? Arm army to Shish Mahal. Then, secondly, and now this is a more serious... A story, a story done by Times I, Now. Why and do you Times think I'm saying it? I'm only saying things which you like. Obviously, okay. you broke the story. No. What, what did they do? His government had the audacity to lock up a young reporter of yours. I remember it was, I think, in one of the Punjab cities, a young girl. All she was doing is taking that camera and going and asking questions. And one way of dealing with it is don't answer the question, isko band kar do. I remember the, you know, the hue and cry, the furor that uh, arose after uh, two, three days, they kept her locked up. Now, I'm saying that here is the great lover of democracy, the great lover uh, of the people of Delhi who cares for their water situation. Oh, Ankil, jab bahar the, tab tumne pani ka kyun nahi kiya? Aur tum pehle gali dete de Haryana aur Punjab ko ke ye parali jalate hain, karte hain. Jab tumhari sarkar bani Punjab mein parali kyun nahi jalani band kari? So, you're dealing with a highly complex and I think, um, you know, Stage artists and actors have this great star quality that tell me, you know, I have a 22 minute clip which was recorded about two years ago where I talked about his connections with those who have no stake in the stability and integrity of India. And I took that out to say by what these people are saying now when he went to Chandigarh and Punjab for the first time before the election, whose house did he stay in? You document all his connection and his party's connection with those who have funding from outside with the intent of destabilizing India. It's all documented. K forces. And the K forces that you're talking about. K, K, to kai or may be aata, but as Surahil was saying, from the Pathrao industry now to you can't get a booking, uh, the flights are full. I was civil aviation minister. I know what kind of a, um, you know, a No, I was talking about the Khalistani force. Ah, those ones also. You know, the, the nutcases around. <laughs> well, well I, I want to, the question here by the opposition is, you have an attack on their governments, the manner in which uh, the Congress Sarkar in Himachal Pradesh is virtually being destabilized. Six of their MPs, three independents. Aapka import-export, import zada export kam ka business bohat chalta hai. Aap kisi bhi party se MLAs, uh, leaders le lete hain. Jin par aapne ungliya uthai hoon, unko bhi le lete hain. Uh, jin ko aap kabhi bohat se aarop lagate the, aap unko bhi le lete hain. Aapke paas ye washing machine ka brand kaun sa hai? Aapne yehi prashn meri senior colleague Nirmala ji se bhi poochha tha. मैं मैं उन्होंने जो कहा मैं उसके साथ सहमत हूं बट मैं कुछ और बताना चाहता हूं इन इंडिया देयर इज अ फ्रीडम फॉर एनी वन ऑफ अस टू मूव फ्रॉम व्हिच एवर सिटी वी लिव इन टू अनदर सिटी दैट फ्रीडम डज नॉट गेट कर्टेल्ड व्हेन यू जॉइन अ पॉलिटिकल पार्टी इवन दोस अक्यूज्ड बाय यू सुन तो लो नो नो सुन तो लीजिए पॉलिटिकल पार्टी क्या है देखिए आपकी बहुत अगर सख्त इडियोलॉजिकल लड़ाई है किसी पार्टी के साथ तो आप लगता है कि आपकी विचारधारा और राजनीति की दल विचारधारा नहीं है तो आप खुद ही नहीं आएंगे अब मैं 2023 की बात कर रहा हूं अप्रैल का महीना था जब मेरे कुछ मित्र लोग और मैं जलंधर में चुनाव के के बीच में थे तो एक रिंकू जी हैं जो उस समय कांग्रेस पार्टी में थे उन्होंने आके आम आदमी पार्टी ज्वाइन कर ली और आज उन्होंने बीजेपी ज्वाइन और कल कल मैं ये मेरा सौभाग्य था कि उनको मैंने बीजेपी में स्वागत कर लिया तो उन उनकी क्या एक्सप्लेनेशन थी उन्होंने कहा कि जब मैं आम आदमी पार्टी में आया तो मैं बहुत प्रभावित था कि दी आम आदमी पार्टी वांट्स टू डू दिस दे वांट टू डू दैट दे वांट टू रिमूव लेगेसी डंप साइड दे वॉन्ट टू इम्प्रूव मैंने देखा एक साल में हम हारा मुझे लगता है कि इनकी तो कोई इंटरेस्ट ही नहीं है एंड ही केम टू द कंक्लूजन दैट Vixit Bharat and Vikas would be better served if he was a member of the BJP. Now tell me, as Nirmala ji says, our doors are open. It's, they're not open to everyone. By the way, by the way, a lot of people have come to into the BJP. A lot more will come in the coming days. 
But we had a good look. He's a sitting MP. Without prejudice to anything else, we welcomed him yesterday along with another MLA. So the He's only not. employment exchange that is working in the country is the BJP's uh, employment, employment exchange em giving political uh, no, employment. No, 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 no. I think you're being a little unfair there. Uh, how many jobs we have created that we can have a separate session on. And I think one of the, uh, um, you know, uh, participants in a, in a discussion put it beautiful when he put it down to simple arithmetic. No, I'm saying something else. Wherever, whichever country in the world, when a political movement is gaining momentum, today the BJP is not only the largest party in India, it's the largest political entity in the world. It is only a matter of time where a lot of people from parties, left of center, right of center, will want to gravitate towards in, to the party for a number of reasons. One, they think they can contribute to its development effort and its uh, um, Samaj Seva, but also because they see a future for themselves. Now that, tell me, anyone sitting here, including you and me, if we were politically, I mean, I can't, I'm, I'm, I've been associated with the BJP and the ABPP for uh, many moons. But anyone else who wants to enter a political future, would you seriously look at the Congress party as a uh, possible outfit to which you would want to move to? Tell me seriously. I mean, I only hear of people leaving the Congress party. I mean, there may be somebody who goes there because the BJP is denied a ticket. Those may be isolated cases. But otherwise, people move towards where they see decisive leadership, they see good being done, they see development being delivered, and where moving forward, they will have a stake. Which other party in the country or in the world makes it possible for a common karyakarta to aspire one day to become chief minister? Last five that we appointed, last many we appointed, many of the people were, as you would call in politics, uh, backbenchers, or they were first-time MLAs, but they saw some talent there, they saw something, they were elevated. Other, other parties don't do it because they are parivar. I thought MLAs elect karte hain. Aapne high command se appoint karwa hai. No, 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 wait a minute. The party gets elected after that the party selects. Now if you are saying... Election or selection? Please election. Correct. First you have to get elected. Then you, we, like even in parliament, you, you bring in the MPs, they were, next time we'll have... Kitne bole aapne 407, kitne kuch number diya aapne? 400 par honge, humare jo... Deekho, NDA... Nee, nee, at the rate you are going, one nation, one poll, one party, you might have 543 seats. Inshallah, I hope that also happens someday, but I don't think this, that's the in, uh, intention. By the way, pa seat in parliament, mein, wo, uh, reservation ke saath, 33.3% badne wali hai. That's why we've built a larger parliament, a newer parliament, and sare saath so mein se 540 is a conservative step. Ab kyu piche hat rahi hai? Mr. Hardeep Puri, now uh, let me ask you, uh, you have to give me short answer. This is a short uh, answer uh, round. Uh, uh, trick question. Aapne bade answer ki aise. If I want uh, you to describe the BJP in just five, six words, how will you describe the BJP? A pan-India party committed to delivering development, to making India Vixit Bharat by 2047. Pan India Party South mein aap ho nahi? Koon kar hai South mein nahi? Abhi dekhte to jaiye. Karnatak mein thay, phir wapas a jayenge. Abhi mainne jo bola. Toad ke ke jeet ke. Toad ke ke jeet ke. Abhi ye toad na padega, nahi jee karna padega. Abhi to chunav ki baat kar rahe hum. 130 seate hain. Aur ye kehna ki wo nahi hai to uska matlab ye kya hoga? Main aapko... And what I've seen there, how much of that ground swell, that sentiment gets translated into seats remains to be seen. But there are still 22 days to go for the first poll and 60 for the next. You would be surprised. How will you describe the Congress party? It was a good idea at one stage. Helped in the freedom struggle, but soon will be referenced in the past tense. The Trinamool Congress. Hmm? The Trinamool Congress. 
why do you want me to comment on them you are why do you want me to comment on that you are an author no, 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 i i i you're say it has, it, it, has, it has it has it has some very bright people but yeah, i think the ones model you've imported or wahan abhi hai kuch no, no, wo bhi imported wo kya um, you know the honorable chief minister there also was belong to another party went there some of the other people came in also from uh, different places it's a new it's a new party relatively speaking all i would say is that their model of governance and what they do in terms of um, in election time is something that is deeply worrying and it's something which you can't sustain over a period of time these things will come to haunt them so let me ask you how do you see the bharat jodo nyay yatra the bharat jodo bharat yatra todo. one did you say todo or did you say jodo it was it's christened as bharat jodo nyay yatra no maybe meri hearing is a little impaired but i heard bharat todo yatra dekho jahan pe bhi ye yatra pahunchti hai uske pehle hi usi jagah mein halla mat jata hai aur realignments ho jati hain wo jo bharat ko jodne ka mohabbat ki dukaan kholne ka jo prayatn kiya i think this is also another exercise which um, given a little bit more uh, time will be referenced in the past tense do you do you underestimate the power of the opposition not at all i am deeply respectful of the opposition and i have always maintained and se seriously that the a rising bjp needs a good opposition one which is credible so that we are questioned on policies but instead of questioning us on policies and engaging in serious political discourse all they do is halla inside parliament and walk out i mean look if you were short sighted which we are not you would say they were acha hai ladte rahenge aapas mein karte we can pass any legislation we want no that's not what is required they should get up and engage us in serious debate whenever an important issue comes up in both houses of parliament they are conspicuous by their absence they do their discourse outside the gandhi statue outside but they say there is no dialogue and it is uh, almost a kind of uh, uh, dictatorship every, that you want in the country on every contentious issue that has come up in the last 7 years that i have been a member of parliament they have been invited of late last four five years they've ducked it on all occasions they've ducked it because their fault lines get exposed they've ducked it because they don't have a serious argument so all i'm saying is i mean if you look at 370 or you look at anything else do you measure this these legislations or these attempts by the government in terms of making india stronger or do you not and if you bring your own are ek kiya isse kya hoga isse bahut sare illegal log aa jayenge bahar se are bhai you had a citizenship um, act since 1955 wo sare logon ko mila ke karo to kitne logon ne apply kiya hazar ya 1600 i mean the fact is we had a partition in india the fact is a lot of people got left behind the fact is that in one of our neighboring countries the hindu population was 26% it's come down to 1% the fact is people have had to flee people who fled from afghanistan i had the privilege of bringing the granth sahib etc all those people have fled the gurdwaras were ransacked so do those people require a legitimate means an instrument to find residence here and what is the total number of people involved and you are hamari naukriyan chini jayengi this is kejriwal uncle total number of jobs may be 1000 aur ye to job seekers nahi hai ये तो पीपल है जो आपने वहां से फ्लैट किया और बिजनेस चला रहे हैं यहां पे सो यू नो दिस स्प्रेडिंग ऑफ द फॉल्स नैरेटिव दैट इज द वन पॉइंट व्हिच सीमेंट्स ऑल दोज मेंबर्स ऑफ द थिंग कॉल्ड दैट क्या वो घमंडी अलायंस क्या नाम रखा था आप ही ने रखा था मैंने, मैंने रखा था इंडी अलायंस घमंडी अलायंस दैट इज वन पॉइंट व्हिच सीमेंटेड देम एंड अदर देन दैट आई मीन दे वांटेड एक्स दे वांटेड वाई आपस में तो अग्री कर नहीं पाए और महाराष्ट्र में तो आपस में सीट्स भी नहीं एडजस्ट कर पा रहे हैं आपकी भी तो नहीं होगी हमारी हो जाएंगी हमारी हो जाएंगी नहीं हो तो उनकी भी जाएंगी नहीं उनकी भी जाएंगी तो देखेंगे उसके उसके बाद क्या होगा उसके बाद क्या क्या होगा होगा क्योंकि <laughs> देखिए ऐसा है ऐसा है कुछ लोग कहते हैं कि एक पार्टी है और मैं टर्बन वो कहते हैं 
we want an alliance aap akali dal ki baat kar rahe hain ha unhi ki baat kar raha hu we wanted alliance kya principle we wanted on principle kya principle we should be recognized as the sole representative of the sikh community are bhai tum kab se sole representative ban gaye bhai they want an alliance i mean अरे देखो तो सही देश में क्या हो रहा है यहां पे 303 सीटें हैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी की पंजाब में असेंबली में 117 सीटें हैं और कहते बीजेपी सिर्फ तेईस सीट लड़ेगी क्यों भाई ना द पॉइंट इज पीपल हैव लॉस्ट साइट ऑफ द ग्राउंड रियलिटी अच्छा बाय द वे आप आंकड़े मेरे को देश भर के पूछे पंजाब के भी पूछ लो क्या होने वाला है नहीं, मैं तो पहले पूछना चाहती हूँ कि आप चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं नहीं नहीं मैं चुनाव अरे ऐसा है मैं ये नहीं कहूंगा मैं चुनाव लड़ूंगा नहीं लड़ूंगा मैं तो कार्य करता हूं पिछली बारी 2019 में जब चुनाव हुआ तो मुझे आया एक दिन के आप जाके चुनाव लड़िए आई वॉज ऑलरेडी मिनिस्टर आई वॉज अ मेंबर ऑफ द राज्यसभा पर मैं कार्य करता हूं मुझसे अगर कोई कहता है चुनाव लड़ो तो मैं कौन होता हूं पूछना मैं चल, चला जाता हूं पर मैं कुछ कह रहा हूं आपने देखो देखिए पंजाब में जब कहीं मैं बीजेपी के तीन से ज्यादा कभी लड़ी नहीं मैं आप बड़े दावे से आपको बोलता हूं इस बारी डबल से ज्यादा सीटें बीजेपी की होंगी डबल डिजिट डबल से ज्यादा नंबर नंबर तो पंजाब जम्मू कश्मीर में अगर इतना कॉन्फिडेंस है तो चुनाव क्यों नहीं हो रहे भाई अगेन 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 होंगे इस समय क्या नहीं हो रहा इस समय इतने फेज में क्यों हो रहा है इसमें ये कर यू गॉट द रॉन्ग नंबर हेयर ऑन दैट वन मैं आई थिंक जम्मू एंड कश्मीर में भी होने चाहिए होंगे बट आई मीन डेजिग्नेटेड एजेंसी टू टेक दैट कॉल इज नॉट मी लेट मी लेट मी ऑल्सो आस्क यू आप सिखों की बात करते हैं आप दूसरी कम्युनिटीज की बात करते हैं कि हिंदू पाकिस्तान में कम रह गए लोगों का कहना है कि दिस सी ए की जो रूल्स नोटिफाई हुए हैं द लॉ वॉज पास लॉन्ग गो द रूल्स है नोटिफाइड नाउ ओनली बिकॉज The BJP loves to do this communal agenda and polarization politics. communal agenda or kya kar rahe aap keh rahe The fact of the matter is, in the neighborhood, because of the partition, the, com- the, the communities, they were not all Hindus, they were Sikhs, they were Jains, they were Parsis. They got they got left behind and if they had been allowed to live in peace fair enough they could have come here without that piece of legislation also then they would have applied in the normal course india is a great country it's got this tradition of what's it called non refoulement we don't turn people back but you give some of them aaj kyu hue rules notify aur 6 mahine pehle kyu nahi aaye but this is not a question abhi kya kehte hain 6 mahine baat karne the i i don't see any 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 um, issue there बट कर दिया ना टाइम से जैसे जैसे टाइम से आपने पेट्रोल के प्राइस भी कम कर दिए चुनाव अनाउंस होने के दो दिन पहले मैडम हमारी पेट्रोल की प्राइस आई एम सो हैप्पी यू कम बैक टू एनर्जी सिक्योरिटी पेट्रोल की प्राइस पिछले तीन साल के दो साल का रेफरेंस पीरियड इट वॉज अ लोएस्ट इन एनी कंट्री इन द वर्ल्ड अभी आने से पहले बिकॉज देवर चुनाव से पहले एंड वीव हैड दिस कॉन्वर्सेशन प्रोबेबली एवरी कॉन्क्लेव एवरी प्लेटफॉर्म दैट वी सेट ऑन आपने क्या किया दो रुपए क्यों की सिर्फ uh, uh, नहीं मेरा सवाल है कि दो दिन पहले चुनाव से क्यों करते हैं जब आप नहीं, 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 कल्चर नहीं, में बिलीव नहीं, नहीं, नहीं करते ऐसा ये बात नहीं है ये बात नहीं है देखिए ऐसा है नवंबर ट्वेंटी वन में तेरह और मई दो हजार बाईस में नवंबर ट्वेंटी वन थ्री इयर्स गो ओके मई ट्वेंटी टू टू इयर्स गो तेरह रुपए सोलह रुपए कम की थी उसके बाद क्या हुआ अंडर रिकवरीज हुई अभी जब इनके प्रॉफिट बढ़ते शुरू हो शुक्र है अभी दो रुपए कर दी क्योंकि अभी पेट्रोल क्रूड कच्चे तेल का दाम फिर 86 सिक्स रुपीज हो गया देखिए जब तक मैं पेट्रोलियम मिनिस्टर नेचुरल गैस मिनिस्टर हूं मेरी कोशिश यही रहेगी माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी के इंस्पिरेशन के साथ कि दाम नीचे आते रहे लेट वो एल का भी इलेक्ट्रीफाइड पेट्रोलियम गैस का भी एल का भी पेट्रोल का भी डीजल का सब दाम नीचे आएंगे और If we are able to navigate, बढ़ेंगी दाम नीचे आएंगे ना दाम नीचे आएंगे और इंडिया ऊपर बढ़ेगा भारत ऊपर बढ़ेगा आपने इस बात का जवाब नहीं दिया कि वन नेशन वन पोल वन पार्टी वन पार्टी तो ये तो आप जोड़ रही हैं वन नेशन वन पोल अब देखिए ऐसा है द आइडिया इज नॉट टू हैव एन इलेक्शन एवरी सिक्स मंथ बिकॉज एवरी सिक्स मंथ एवरी इलेक्शन के पहले यू विल डू अ टाइम्स नाउ समिट 
देन यू से चुनाव आ रहा है और फिर आप पेट्रोल का दाम नीचे कर रहे अरे भाई अगर चुनाव हर छह महीने आएगा तो हम क्या करेंगे अगर आप नवंबर 21 और मई 22 के बाद देर वॉज नो इंक्रीज दैट इज द गुड स्टोरी कि बाकी दुनिया में दाम बढ़ते गए इंडिया में देर वॉज स्टेबल एंड आफ्टर नवंबर 21 another reduction in may 22 and another 2 rupees reduction now that is the story graph is coming down you want us to see what you want us to see but we are seeing something else uh, that's the difference in perception but the question will always remain and this is something that even at international platforms is uh, discussed you are a powerful party you have uh, uh, the largest uh, political party in india but do we as a democracy run the risk of completely eliminating the opposition because ya to wo jail mein chale jate hain himan soren jail arvind kejriwal jail ya to aap sarkare tod dete hain ya aap bas en masse logon ke mla le lete hain logon ke mp le lete hain pehli baat to powerful political party hoti kya hai powerful political party wo hoti hai jiske karyakarta khub मेहनत करते हैं जहां पे नेतृत्व जो है फोकस्ड होता है टारगेट सेटिंग होती है एंड योर पॉलिसीज गुड गवर्नेंस बिकम्स गुड पॉलिटिक्स एंड आप उसके बेसिस पे उस प्लेटफॉर्म के बेसिस पे चुनाव जीतते हैं दैट इज गुड पॉलिटिक्स एंड दैट इज व्हाट इज अ पावर ऑफ अ पार्टी एक जमाना ये भी था कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी के लोकसभा में दो एम थे हम कहा दो से उठते 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 कहा आए विवर इन कोलिशन दूसरा आई थिंक कोई किसी को लेने नहीं जाता निर्मला जी ने बोला ना आपको शीशा डोर्स और ओपन एंड डोर्स आर ओपन टू पीपल हु वी थिंक कैन ब्रिंग सम वैल्यू अब उसमें से कोई एक आएगा उसका केस था किसी के खिलाफ पहले अब यह बताइए हमारे पास आने के बाद किसका केस खत्म हो गया है आप बताइए कि किसको आपने इन्वेस्टिगेट किया जो आपके यहाँ आ गया भाई अभी तो अभी तो गेम शुरू हुई है लॉट ऑफ पीपल का आप ये वॉशिंग पाउडर और वॉशिंग मशीन की पता नहीं ये सुहेल जी ने आपको कौन सी ब्रांड की ये ऐसा कुछ नहीं है हमारे यहाँ मैं बता रहा हूँ कई लोग आए आए थोड़ी देर चिंत, उनको चिंता में आए फिर थोड़े निराश हो गए फिर चले गए वापस देखो ये डेमोक्रेसी में दी ओपन डोर पॉलिसी विल ऑलवेज रिमेन बट दी पार्टी बाई इट इज ग्रोइंग From strength to strength, I don't remember the exact figure, but I think it was 22 crore. हमें वोट पड़ी पिछले चुनाव में और आने वाले चुनाव में और भी पड़ेगी 50 करोड़ नहीं 50 करोड़ नहीं बस total electorate कितनी है 97 crores है कितनी turnout होगी क्या मिलेगी with the grace of God अच्छी वोट पड़ेगी उसमें Well, so uh, in the end, let me just ask you uh, if you were to give a newspaper headline. on the 4th of june what would it be it's a little early for um, a 4th of june headline because i think uh, all of you who you run plan news ahead, you plan ahead na aapki vision to 2047 tak ki hai main to sirf 4th june ki baat kar raha hu i think the headline will get better and better between now as i said 60 days are left uh, uh, for that uh, thing to happen more than 60 days after all we are on the 28th of march now and the headline will have to be on the 4th 4th ko to result aayenge 5th ki headline न्यूज चैनल डू आपके सेम डे यू आर यूज टू न्यूज पेपर बट वी रन चैनल ऑल आई कैन से इज दैट एज यू गो फॉरवर्ड फ्रॉम हियर आई थिंक यू शुड शेड योर रेटिसंस गेट यूज टू द आइडिया दैट द बीजेपी विल वर्क हार्डर एंड हार्डर एंड लुक आई डोट वॉन्ट टेक आई एम नॉट द वन टू सजेस्ट फॉर अ मोमेंट दैट वी वुड बी शुड बी कम्प्लेस सम ऑफ अस गेट कम्प्लेस इट्स अ ह्यूमन फ्रेल्टी बट आई थिंक वेन यू start preparing the headlines on the fourth evening and the print media on the fifth morning it will be a transformational moment in the evolution of india's democracy you'll say democracy has arrived and it's anchored and bjp is taking it forward to 2047 well ladies and gentlemen unstoppable hardeep singh puri really talking big on unstoppable india thank you very much minister puri for thank joining you. us at the times now summit
Thanks much, Minister and uh, Navika, ma'am, for that very interesting conversation. And I think every conversation makes us think, Madhav, that, you know, this is getting better. Look at the confidence of the BJP. But on the other side, obviously, we are also looking at a lot of other semantics into this, uh, you know, big summit. So now, the last decade, remember, has seen the growth of brand India, ladies and gentlemen, on the global stage. So besides our economy also, we've showcased our prowess in culture, in politics, science, technology, and a plethora of other areas, Mother. Absolutely, Deepthi. But how much of brand India is linked to brand Modi? Our speak on the session, brand India, is one of the nation's foremost creative minds. He's a national award-winning writer and a Padma Shri recipient. Through his multifaceted pursuits and content creation across the fields of poetry, cinema, advertising, and social communication, he has emerged as an iconic socio-cultural voice. Please put your hands together for the writer, poet, and communication expert, Prasoon Joshi. Please also welcome our moderator for the session, Padmaja Joshi. Ladies and gentlemen, I request you to please remain seated. Uh, we are just, in fact, awaiting our next guest to be in the house in just a moment. But like I said, you know, Madhav, right in the middle of the election season, you have a lot of netas who make a lot of claims. There's also discussion on brand Modi versus a lot of other things that the opposition possibly could bring to the table. And uh, it's anyone's guess whether this is going to be Char Sopar or not. But a lot of people say that there is no interest in this election. But I, I disagree with that, Madhav. Well, every election is an election. It's being contested. There is one alliance against another alliance. Is it one man against an alliance is, of course, mm. a question. But at the end of the day, an election is a battle of ideas. Mm. And that's the churn that we are seeing in the Times Now Summit. The one thing that is, of course, undisputed is that it's India unstoppable. And that's the theme of our summit. And that's the message that is coming out, whether you talk to those in the field of economics, of business, of politics, or of those who are part of the administration. That's the undeniable message coming out of the Times Now Summit. Oh, yes. Even our audience, I hope and I believe, is going to be unstoppable because this is an India on the rise, an India that is not just argumentative, an India that is thinking, an India that is exploring, looking at different avenues and different nuances, remember, to every election that we are at will Times Now will continue to bring. We are just standing by to have uh, Prasoon Joshi in the house in just a moment. And do remember, we are also, in fact, standing by to listen into what uh, ministers like Ashwini Vaishnav will be saying a little later, also Anurag Thakur in the house. And Ashwini Vaishnav, again, is someone who is a change maker in more ways than one, Madhav, because at a point when you used to talk of the rail mantrale, I, I still remember those images of a Lalu Prasad Yadav, you know, feeding chara, and, you know, every rail budget, it was like, ki Bihar ko kya mila, isko kya mila, isko kya mila. So that was the kind of conversation to the fact that we are talking of Vande Bharat trains, we are talking of digital India, and so much more. Well, absolutely. And in fact, uh, it's not just railways. In fact, uh, Petroleum Minister uh, Dharmendra, I mean, uh, Hardeep uh, Singh Puri uh, has been with us. We also have Dharmendra Pradhan, who's also mm. going to be joining us. Anurag Thakur will be with us and also... Uh, we will have uh, series star Priti Sanon, who's also going to be with us. All right, please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for Prasoon Joshi, who's joining us now in the hall. And uh, we welcome him upon the stage along with him. will be Padmaja Joshi. Over to you. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. For Prasoon Joshi, a man of words, I think I should speak very less in this session because here you have a magician of words sitting with us and we are talking about a topic which is close to all of our hearts and his especially, uh, Brand Bharat. The fact that we are sitting in a five-star hotel today and we are talking about Brand Bharat. Let me just throw it open to you. Bharat, Brand Bharat, what does it mean? Has it changed? Is it even relevant? The floor is yours, sir. Brand Bharat. When you say brand Bharat and you try to limit it to a brand, I am not that comfortable with just saying brand Bharat. Because, Bharat is Satya. 
और सत्य जो है वो धरती से उगता है ब्रांड उगती नहीं है ब्रांड बनाई जाती है लेकिन सत्य उगता है तो भारत सबसे पहले एक सत्य है इंडिया इज अ ट्रूथ जो जमीन से धरती से उगता है जिसका एक कंटिन्यूम है जिसका एक सिविलाइजेशनल कंटिन्यूम है तो उसको सिर्फ ब्रांड कहना शायद पूरी पूरा न्याय नहीं होगा उसके साथ सो वन थिंग इज दैट इट इज अ ट्रूथ विच आई कॉल क्योंकि वो जमीन से उगता है अगर आप ब्रांड की बात करते हैं मॉडर्न कॉन्टेक्स में तो ब्रांड बनाया जाता है उसके लिए काम किया जाता है और उसके लिए काम करना चाहिए एंड टूडे आई एम हैप्पी दैट वी हैव बीन एबल टू स्ट्राइक दैट बैलेंस बिटवीन दिस भारत एक सत्य और भारत एक ब्रांड सत्य जो कंटिन्यूम है जिसको हमें लेकर चलना है और ब्रांड जिसे हमें बनाना है ब्रांड में देखिए एक तरह का प्रिटेंस भी है कि हम दुनिया के सामने क्या प्रस्तुत कर रहे हैं क्या कह रहे हैं वो जरूरी बातें दोज आर इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स बट वो ही सिर्फ बातें नहीं है जो हमारा रियलाइजेशन है जो हम हैं सच में उसे कभी नहीं भूलना और जो विश्व की आज जरूरतें हैं उनके साथ तालमेल बिठाना एक बैलेंस बिठाना एक रिदम बिठाना दोनों बहुत बहुत जरूरी चीजें हैं और इसके लिए सबसे पहली जरूरत यह है कि हम अपना माइंडसेट बदलें मुझे लगता है कि ये जो आज जिस 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 आज हम ब्रांड भारत पे इतनी चर्चा कर पा रहे हैं देश के बारे में इतनी चर्चा कर पा रहे हैं क्योंकि आई थिंक देर इज बीन अ हार्डवर्क देर अनडिनाइबल हार्डवर्क आप पोलिटिकली एग्री करिए डिसएग्री करिए पर काम जरूर देखिए मेहनत दिखती है जब आपके स्टेजेस पे मैं एक दो और भी कॉन्क्लेव अटेंड किए हैं जब आ, मैं हमारे देश के आज लीडरशिप को देखता हूं तो एक चीज बहुत क्लियर होती है स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम आर ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर टू यू नो हमारी जो फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर हैं उनको मैंने कई स्टेजेस पे अभी देखा है निर्मला जी को या आपने जयशंकर जी को देखा हो या आपने अश्वनी जी को देखा हो There is one thing which is clear. You can आप argue कर सकते हैं views के ऊपर जो भी आपकी आपकी विचारधारा है जैसा भी आप सोचते हैं But hard work तो दिखता है पसीना दिखता है मेहनत दिखती है काम दिखता है So I think today we are in the state to talk about brand India because there is hard work. And that hard work is not only in them, in people. आज आप लोगों को देखें उनमें भी आपको hard work दिखता है Everybody, I am in I dabble into at least two parallel professions in 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 the advertising world and the film world i can see the youngsters are so focused today about results and what they really want to do i have never seen like them meandering the the age of meandering is gone the fuzziness is gone so there is a certain focus to our country today and that is a uh, i have at least in my lifetime not seen this much of focus but attitudinal change abhi bhi kahi baki bacha hua hai for example hum aaj bhi agar aapki ek gaadi kahi kharab hoti hai remote village ke paas kahi to aap dekhte hain kisi ne wo gaadi theek kar di aake to hum kehte hain bada jugadu hai jugad i have a serious problem with that word jugad nahi hai wo innovation hai जब तक हम अपने ही लोगों को की जो प्रतिभाएं हैं उनको छोटी संज्ञाएं देंगे तब तक हम बड़ी बात नहीं कर पाएंगे क्योंकि अगर यही बात कहीं और से आती ऐसा ही कोई कृत्य कहीं और हो रहा होता सो वी वुड हैव सेड दैट हाउ इनोवेटिव दिस पीपल आर द यंगस्टर्स ऑफ दिस कंट्री आर वेरी इनोवेटिव बट वी कॉल देम एंड डिसमिस दैम से जुगाड़ू है ना ये माइंड चेंज होना पड़ेगा फिल्म इंडस्ट्री में मैं देखता हूं भाई कब तक हम लोग अपने देश की गरीबी बेचेंगे आज भी एक्सोटिका के नाम पे हम अपने देश की वो चीजें दिखाने की कोशिश करते हैं भाई था या होगी वो रियलिटी लेकिन आज जरूरत है शाबाशी की क्योंकि अब पीछे बार बार इस देखिए निंदक नियरे राखी है हमारे कहा गया निंदक को पास बैठाना चाहिए 
लेकिन सर पर नहीं चढ़ाना चाहिए वो सिर्फ निंदा करना उसका अगर काम है और निंदा से आपको समाप्त कर देना उसका काम है तो ऐसा निंदक नहीं चाहिए आपको और चाहिए क्या फिर आप ये पूछेंगे हमें चाहिए क्या हमें आज चाहिए हमारे देश में जामवंत चाहिए हमें हमारे अपने अपने जामवंत चाहिए आज हमें और जामवंत कौन है मोटिवेशन जो दे हनुमान जी को जब अपनी शक्तियों पर संदेह होने लगा तो उनको यह बताना कि तुम कितने शक्तिशाली हो वो जामवंत जी ने किया है और वो हमें जामवंत चाहिए आज अपने जो हमें यह बताएं कि तुम्हें पता है तुम कितने शक्तिशाली हो तुम्हें पता है व्हाट एंड पीपल थिंक दैट यू नो व्हाई आर यू रिमेम्बरिंग योर पास्ट व्हाई यू ऑल द टाइम टॉकिंग अबाउट इट बट आई फील इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट हमारे जामवंत हमारे सामने खड़े हों और जो भी आज जामवंत का काम करता है मैं उसको नतमस्तक हूं क्योंकि हमारे युवाओं को वही चाहिए हमारे देश को वही चाहिए हमारी इकोनॉमी को वही चाहिए कि हमारी शक्तियों का भान कोई हमें कराए हमारी भुजाओं पर हमें नाज कोई कराए क्योंकि हमें बार बार ये बहुत बता दिया गया कि तुमसे भाई नहीं होगा नो अनुजा जी एक यू नो वेन यू लुक एट अ प्लॉट Very few people can imagine the house. Some people get discouraged. बड़ा मुश्किल होता है घर बनाना कैसे ईंट लगेगी पत्थर लगेगी कॉन्ट्रैक्टर कहां से आएगा क्योंकि उनको डर सा लग जाता है उससे चलो भाई बना बनाया फ्लैट ले लो अपने बस का नहीं है और कई बहुत अरसे तक हमें यही बिलीव होता रहा कि हम प्लॉट का घर नहीं बना सकते कोई और बनाएगा कोई और आएगा बाहर से जो हमें बताएगा ये प्लॉट को घर में तब्दील किया जा सकता है but the truth is that today our, we have in our in front of our own eyes apni aankhon ke samne hum desh ko banta hua dekh rahe hum dekh rahe hain ki wo digital power aam aadmi tak pahunch rahi hai hum dekh rahe hain ki chandrayaan ho raha hai ye sirf aaj kagzi baatein nahi reh gayi isliye i think we should give an applause to all the people who are contributing who are our jamwans today who is that jam इन आर हमारे अभी के परिपेक्ष में हमारे हनुमान जी के जामवंत कौन है हमारे अर्जुन के श्री कृष्ण कौन है देखिए हम सबको अपने अपने जामवंत ढूंढने होंगे अपने अपने प्रोफेशन में अपने अपने परिवेश में अपने अपने घरों में हमें उनको इनकरेज करना पड़ेगा हमें उन लोगों से दरकिनार होना पड़ेगा जो हमें बार बार ये एहसास कराते हैं कि आपसे नहीं होगा आप ही कर सकते हैं आप ही करेंगे आपने ही किया है आप पहले कर चुके हैं यह बात बताना जब हनुमान जी को जामवन बताते हैं कि तुम कह रहे हो कि तुम समुद्र पार नहीं कर सकते तुम जब छोटे से थे तो सूरज को निगल गए थे मैंने एक गीत भी लिखा था रंगदे बसंती में कि अभी अभी हुआ यकी कि आग है मुझ में कहीं हुई सुबह मैं जल गया सूरज को मैं निगल गया रूबरू रोशनी रूबरू रोशनी तो वो हमको ढूंढने पड़ेंगे और हमें उनको निंदकों को आप पूरी जगह दीजिए उनका सम्मान कीजिए और आपकी फर्टर्निटी से खासकर मैं कहूंगा कि निंदक आपका काम है निंदा करना कीज करिए और एवरीबडी नीड्स कंस्ट्रक्टिव क्रिटिसिज्म अपनी गलतियों को जानना भी जरूरी है लेकिन अपनी गलतियों को इसलिए जानना जरूरी है कि आप बेहतर हो सके आपकी गलतियों को जो भी बता के आपको समाप्त करने की कोशिश कर रहा है वो आपका हिताशी नहीं है सो so, ये डिफरेंस बहुत जरूरी है कि दैट दीज मोटिवेशनल पीपल हु आर अराउंड अस एंड देर आर सो मेनी वेल विशर्स ऑफ इंडिया एंड आई कैन टेल यू टुडे दो वेल विशर्स आर गेटिंग टूगेदर वो धीरे धीरे जुड़ रहे हैं वो खामोश हो गए थे वो धीरे धीरे आगे आ रहे हैं क्योंकि उनको यकीन है कि आने वाला कल इंडिया का कल है इंडिया का या भारत का देखिए ये एक सीमेंटिक्स का मैं समझता हूं जहां पर जो आ जाता है सहजता से आना चाहिए मैं मैं भारत का समर्थक हूं मैं मैं समझता हूं कि भारत जो शब्द है उसमें एक सुहास है गंध है खुशबू है मेरा मेरा पूरा अस्तित्व उसमें समाया हुआ है और वो लेकिन उसको असहजता से थोपा जाने की जरूरत नहीं है वो अपने आप ही आ रहा है देखिए 
भारत शब्द धीरे धीरे आ रहा है और कहीं अगर किसी के मुंह से इंडिया निकलता है तो ये हमारे कहीं सबकॉन्शियस में है कहीं हमारी इस न्यूरोलॉजिकली वायर्ड इन अस टू स्पीक बट जो मेरा यकीन है वो भारत में है क्योंकि मां को मां कहने में मैं यकीन रखता हूं Conceptually, what do you think is the difference between India and Bharat? And the reason why I ask you this is there has been a push of late. When the Prime Minister, when our Prime Minister was sitting at G20 summit, उनके name plate पे Prime Minister of Bharat. Now that was a very conscious change. When the invitation went out to the delegates, it was from the President of Bharat. Why is this being done consciously? What is achieved? सत्तर साल हम इंडिया के नाम से जाने गए, तब भी एक एडवांसमेंट्स हुई हमारे देश में कई बदलाव आए इंडिया मॉडर्न हुआ तो अब 2024 में 2023 में जाकर के व्हाई इज देयर दिस कंसर्टेड एफर्ट टू ट्राई एंड पुश आर आइडेंटिटी ऑफ अ कंट्री एज भारत देखिए मैंने लिखा था एक जगह उखड़े उखड़े क्यों हो वृक्ष टूट जाओगे उखड़े उखड़े क्यों हो वृक्ष टूट जाओगे जितनी गहरी जड़ें तुम्हारी उतने ही तुम हरिया हो गए धरती के अंतस में जो गहरे उतरेगा उसी के नैनों में जीवन का राग दिखेगा जिन पैरों में मिट्टी होगी धूल सजेगी उन्हीं के आके एक दिन सारा विश्व झुकेगा तो उखड़े उखड़े क्यों हो वृक्ष सूख जाओगे उखड़े उखड़े क्यों हो वृक्ष सूख जाओगे जितनी गहरी जड़ें तुम्हारी उतनी ही तुम हरिया होगे तो ये जड़ों तक पहुंचने का एक पेड़ की जड़ें अगर अपने अंतर तक नहीं उतरी हुई है तो वो हरिया नहीं सकता है अपनी आइडेंटिटी अपनी पहचान को पूरी तरह से मानना समझना थोपना नहीं समझना आत्मसात करना उसे पी जाना उसे जीना उसमें कई चीजें ऐसी हैं जो हमें प्रयासों से करनी पड़ेंगी और प्रयासों से करने की बात यह कि आप मां को मां कहना शुरू करते हैं चलिए यहीं से शुरुआत करते हैं तो देश को भारत कहना शुरू करते हैं ये शुरुआत होती है दीज आर ऑल जेस्टर्स सिंबलिज्म जिसे आप कहते हैं वो हमको कहीं ना कहीं एहसास कराता है कि मैं कह सकता हूं भाई कई लोग तो ऐसे हैं जो कहना चाहते हैं लेकिन कह नहीं पाते कितना कितनी हमारी कलोनियल पास्ट कितना हमारे अंदर उतरा हुआ होगा कि हम जो चीजें खाना चाहते हैं वो नहीं खा सकते जब मैं एक पिक्चर लिख रहा था मनीकरणी का उसके दौरान मैंने कई चीजें देखी तो ये ऐसा लगता था कि एक एफर्ट है कि हमें अपनी अपने पहनावे पर नाज ना हो हमें जो खाते हैं उसके बारे में कॉन्शियस हो जाए जो जैसे हम बोलते हैं उसमें कॉन्शियस हो जाए When I came into advertising world, उस वक्त कॉपरेट वर्ल्ड में बोर्ड रूम में हिंदी बोले जाने की संभावना ही नहीं थी मेरे जीवन के दस साल इसमें गुजर गए कि मैं लिंगो जिसे कहते हैं आप वो जो वट साउंड कूल उसको पहले समझू क्योंकि हमारे देश में कहीं ना कहीं एक, एक ऐसा कुकून एक आईलैंड स्टेटस में जिंदगी चल रही थी जो आम आदमी से कटी हुई थी आप सोचिए आज भी पद्मजा जी आज भी मुझे बड़ा आश्चर्य होता है एयरपोर्ट पे मैं कभी बार कमेंट सुनता हूं किसी के कि देखो कैसे कैसे लोग आज हवाई जहाज में चढ़ने लगे कैसे कैसे लोग जो है एयर ट्रेवल कर रहे हैं कैसे कैसे लोग अरे भाई आपके लोग हैं हम हैं वो हमारे अपने लोग हैं आपको लग रहा है कैसे कैसे लोग कैसे कैसे लोग फाइव स्टार जाने लगे है बड़ी शर्म की बात है ये कि हम अपने ही लोग दिस इज द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ द कंट्री दैट वी ग्रजिंग आर ओन पीपल कमिंग अप वी डोंट वॉन्ट टू शेयर वी थिंक वी स्टिल वॉन्ट टू बिलीव दैट दिस इज अ प्रिविलेज पीपल्स प्रिविलेज एंड इट्स टू स्टे लाइक दैट एंड देर आर सो मेनी ऑफ देम हुआ ग्रजिंग दैट अब कहीं कितनी गहरी दासता की जड़ें होंगी कि हम अपने ही लोगों को तरक्की करते हुए देख के ये कह रहे हैं कि कैसे कैसे लोग पर जब आप कहते हैं कि आप 
जड़ों की बात करते हैं द कॉन्ट्ररी ओपिनियन टू दैट इज वी आर मूविंग टूवर्ड्स एन एज ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन यू नो इंग्लिश इज अ ग्लोबल लैंग्वेज वी आर ऑल ग्लोबल सिटीजन आज मैं न्यूयॉर्क में हूं कल मैं वैनकूवर में हूं परसों मैं सिडनी में हूं कल मैं लखनऊ में हूं तो आप इज दिस अबाउट रिटर्निंग टू योर रूट और टेकिंग टू स्टेप्स बैक बिकॉज हमें बताया जा रहा है ग्लोबलाइजेशन में इंग्लिश इज योर लैंग्वेज ऑफ करेंसी कहा आप हिंदी को माउनी में फंसे हुए हैं कोई मुझसे कहता है कि ऑफ कोर्स वी 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 यूज इंग्लिश वी वर्क इन इंग्लिश वी वी पास आर एग्जाम्स ऑल्सो लॉर्ड ऑफ एग्जाम्स इन इंग्लिश पर मुझे ये कभी कंफ्यूजन नहीं रहा इंग्लिश मेरा स्किल है हिंदी मेरी भाषा है आई कैन बी वेरी गुड इट माई स्किल मेरा स्किल बहुत जबरदस्त हो सकता है लेकिन भाषा वो है जिसकी चोटी मैं खींच सकता हूं वो मां की तरह है जिससे मैं लड़ भी सकता हूं जिससे मैं रूट सकता हूं मैं वो मुझे मना लेगी मैं उससे रूट सकता हूं वो मुझसे रूट सकती है ये भाषा और का रिश्ता होता है मैं ये नहीं कहता कि अंग्रेजी से किसी का ये रिश्ता नहीं होगा पीपल हु माइट हैव दैट रिलेशनशिप विद इंग्लिश आई डोंट हैव दैट रिलेशनशिप विद इंग्लिश इंग्लिश इज अ फेसिलिटी फॉर मी इंग्लिश इज अ स्किल फॉर मी थ्रू विच आई रीच आउट टू द ग्लोबल ऑडियंस एंड आई थिंक वी शुड ऑल लर्न द स्किल it's not that we should but it not at the cost of sacrificing your language aapki apni bhasha ko sacrifice nahi kar sakte aap uske liye wo balidan agar aap mujhse mangte hain global hone ke liye meri bhasha ka balidan meri meri sanskriti ka balidan agar mangte hain to wo balidan dene ko main taiyar nahi अभी दो महीने पहले जब राम मंदिर की प्राण प्रतिष्ठा थी तो आपने कुछ पंक्तियां सुनाई थी आपने कहा था देख रहे हम राम को आते जन सफल हो रहा हमारा हाउ मच ऑफ अ पार्ट ऑफ द आइडेंटिटी ऑफ भारत इज सिंबल्स लाइक दैट ऑफ प्रभु श्री राम लैंग्वेज यू ऑलरेडी स्पोकन ऑफ एंड व्हाट आर दी अदर सिंबल्स दैट आर इम्पोर्टेंट फर्स्ट अबाउट द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ मंदिर लॉर्ड राम इन द इन शेपिंग आर आइडेंटिटी एज भारत मुझे तो मैंने तो आ, हम नहीं थे तब भी राम थे हमारे बहुत से सोचने वाले नहीं थे तब भी राम थे और हम नहीं रहेंगे तब भी राम रहेंगे राम तो एक एक सतत प्रवाहित हैं वो तो एक तरह से इटर्नल है एंड आई थिंक बिफोर पीपल स्टार्टेड टेकिंग हार्ट स्टैंड आई स्टिल फील इट्स वेरी अनकाइंड इतने इतने ब्यूटीफुल हैं राम इतने ब्यूटीफुल हैं इतने खूबसूरत हैं मतलब सुदर्शन तो है ही उनका सब कुछ अगर हमारे जीवन में राम अगर आइडियल बनते हैं देखिए किसी भी समाज का जो की धुरी जो होती है वो कहां है अगर राम में हमारी धुरी है हमारी ही नहीं विश्व की धुरी है मैं एक कॉन्सेप्ट की तरह से बोल रहा हूं तो बहुत फायदा है आप बिल्कुल जो नफे नुकसान से की तरह भगवान को भी देखते हैं उनके लिए कह रहा हूं मैं तो नहीं देखता मेरे तो आंख से मैंने कहा ना कि प्रेम अश्रु छलकाओ सारे जन्म सफल हो रहा हमारा तो मैं तो प्रेम अश्रु छलकाता हूं मैं तर्कविहीन होता हूं पर जो तार्किक लोग हैं उनके लिए मैं कहता हूं कि समाज के आदर्श कैसे देते हैं नाम समाज को जोड़ते हैं देखिए आज परिवार टूट रहे हैं भगवान राम के आदर्शों से अगर समाज ब... बुनता है उनका ता, ताना बाना बुनता है तो आप अच्छे भाई बन जाते हैं अच्छे मित्र बन जाते हैं अच्छे बेटे बन जाते हैं अंततः क्या होता है समाज का ताना बाना मजबूत होता है ये ये कॉन्सेप्चुअली भी अगर आप समझेंगे तो आपको लगेगा कि हाउ कैन समबडी डिनाई दैट सो फॉर मी आई थिंक देर देर सर्टन थिंग्स शुड बी बियॉन्ड डिबेट एंड ऑल ऑफ अस शुड क्लोज अर आइज and be even if you are not spiritual at least if you are very very logical even logically think that this is something good happening here these are good energies which are flowing so i think uh, uh, politicization of it and uh, even if there is you see politics and you don't agree with it go beyond it your eyes should be able to see beyond it mm. i think the people hum indonesia jaate hain jab wahan pe dekhte hain भगवान राम का जो रामलीला होती है वहां पर और भी कई देशों में मैंने देखा है दैट्स बियॉन्ड यू नो बॉर्डर्स इट इज इमोशनल कल्चरल नैरेटिव 
बहुत सी चीजें उसमें इवन इफ यू आर नॉट स्पिरिचुअल फॉर द वंस हु आर स्पिरिचुअल वेल राम इज देयर राम इज देयर वो कबीर के साथ भी थे वो गुरु गोविंद सिंह की रामायण में भी हैं वो दादा ने कितने उर्दू पोइट्स ने जिक्र किया है तो मुझे नहीं लगता कि राम तो जोड़ते हैं राम तो आपको विवादों से ऊपर उठाते हैं वहां उसको नियत क्या है आपकी देखिए जाकी रही भावना जैसी जैसी आपकी भावना है प्रभु प्रभु मुहूर्त देखी तिन तैसी तो आपको वही दिखाई देता है तो आपकी आंखों में अगर धूल है तो भैया आईने साफ मत करिए आंखों में धूल है आपकी और थोड़ा रोना चाहिए थोड़ा रोना बहुत जरूरी है मैंने लिखा था गाना एक है तू जरिया मैं जरिया आपने सुना होगा कोक स्टूडियो में है वो रहमान जी के साथ मैंने किया था तू जरिया मैं जरिया और उसकी कृपा दरिया दरिया है जो अखियां निर्मल दुनिया निर्मल तो अगर आपकी आंखें निर्मल हैं है जो अखियां निर्मल दुनिया निर्मल छलका छलका छल 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 तो खूब रोना चाहिए आंखें धुल जाती हैं साफ हो जाती है और प्रेम से रोना चाहिए और आप देखेंगे ये सारे विवाद सुलझ जाते हैं क्या आप भगवान राम के लिए भारत के लिए कुछ पंक्तियां सुनाना चाहेंगे नहीं मैं भारत के लिए यही ढूंढ रहा था कि मैंने एक बहुत पहली बार मैं पढ़ रहा हूं इसको और क्योंकि आपका ब्रांड भारत के ऊपर है ये एक नई कविता है कभी मैंने नहीं पढ़ी है और कुछ ही दिन पहले लिखी है तो मैं आपको पढ़ते सुनाता हूं यह रथ सूरज का निकल पड़ा है रथ सूरज का निकल पड़ा है अंधकार से जाकर कह दो रथ सूरज का निकल पड़ा है उसके पैरों में मिट्टी है मस्तक उसका अग्नि जड़ा है उसके पैरों में मिट्टी है मस्तक उसका अग्नि जड़ा है अंधकार से जाकर कह दो रथ सूरज का निकल पड़ा है घोड़े दौड़ रहे हैं रथ के घोड़े दौड़ रहे हैं रथ के नमन कर रहे कंकर पथ के घोड़े दौड़ रहे हैं रथ के नमन कर रहे कंकर पथ के धूल समर्पित होती जाए धूल समर्पित होती जाए दूर क्षितिज से दिशा बुलाए हाथ जोड़कर लक्ष्य खड़ा है रथ सूरज का निकल पड़ा है इसकी मैं आखिरी चार पंक्तियां पढ़ देता हूं सत्य सारथी बन जाए तो सत्य सारथी बन जाए तो पहिए चक्र सुदर्शन होंगे सत्य सारथी बन जाए तो पहिए चक्र सुदर्शन होंगे काल रात्रि का चूर्ण उड़ेगा पाउडर हो जाएगा पूरा रात सत्य सारथी बन जाए तो पहिए चक्र सुदर्शन होंगे काल रात्रि का चूर्ण उड़ेगा नव प्रभात के दर्शन होंगे जीवट अपना बहुत बड़ा है रथ सूरज का निकल पड़ा है सो वेरी ब्यूटिफुल कैंपेन जो आपने अभी हाल ही में किया था टॉकिंग अबाउट भारत जो भारत की आइडेंटिटी है आईरोनिकली इट वॉज अ सेफ्टी कैंपेन एंड एक वक्त था हम लोग जब बैठते तो पता चलता है कि आप ऐसे अपनी बेल्ट लगाए और दो द्वार इधर पे एयर इंडिया के लिए मैंने किया जी हाँ जो एयर इंडिया का आपने कैंपेन किया आई वॉन्ट अ व्यूअर्स टू टेक एंड ऑडियंस प्रेजेंट हियर टू टेक अ लुक इफ यू हैवेंट ऑलरेडी सीन इट्स अ वाइडली पॉपुलर एंड वायरल कैंपेन एक बार वो हम कैंपेन को Namaste. Welcome aboard Air India. Kindly pay attention as we take you through the safety instructions. Note that the location of the safety equipment on this aircraft may vary from other aircraft. Take it as an odi. Fasten your seat belt. Insert the metal tip into the buckle and pull the strap. To unfasten. Was this a conscious effort that you are going to show all the different aspects of India in this advertisement? No, look, this was a very functional task. That how to do safety video. I mean, how to put a belt on, how to put a exit door. 
तो मुझे लगा कि इसमें भी हम भारतीयता ला सकते हैं हमारे पास हमारे जो डांस फॉर्म्स हैं वो इतने ब्यूटीफुली नैरेटिव कहानियां बता सकते हैं तो वो ये बात मैं एक और कहना चाहता था इसके माध्यम से कि ये मत समझिए कि हमारी संस्कृति में पावर नहीं है और वो मॉडर्न चीजें नहीं कर सकती या आज की फंक्शनल चीजें नहीं कर सकती अगर आप ये जो मैं शुक्रगुजार हूं सारे लोगों का जिन्होंने इस पर काम किया है भरत जी है मेरे साथ उन्होंने इसको डायरेक्ट किया उसके अलावा जितने भी डांसर्स हैं जिन्होंने किया एयर इंडिया के जितने भी लोग इसमें जुड़े हैं कि, कि एक ये चीज कहना कि हम एक फंक्शनल चीज अपने कल्चर के माध्यम से आज अगर जरूरत है उसको कह सकते हैं और एक भरतनाट्यम में आप कह सकते हैं कि सीट बेल्ट कैसे बांध दिए जरूरत यह है कि वही मैंने कहा कि ना कि हम स्वयं पर अपनी भुजाओं पर नाज होना कोई ना कोई हमारे जामवंत हैं जो हमें बता रहे हैं कि भाई आप कर सकते हो आपने किया है देखिए विश्व के सामने हम आज जाते हैं वी टॉक अबाउट कि भाई आज डाइवर्सिटी एंड इंक्लूजन की बहुत बात होती है खासकर आई ऑल्सो वर्क इन अ मल्टी नेशनल कंपनी एंड आई कैन टेल यू दैट दैट्स मोस्टली टॉक्ट अबाउट टूडे डाइवर्सिटी एंड इंक्लूजन टूडे एंड वेन वी टॉक टू इंडिया यू डोंट रियलाइज दिस इज द कंट्री I also worked on G20. I developed the whole identity and the uh, the, the look and the whole lotus and. वहाँ पे हमने बात की वसुधैव कुटुंबकम की. वसुधैव कुटुंबकम ये देश कहता है भाई कब से कहता है कब से कहता है कि वसुधा पूरा पूरी जो पृथ्वी है वो कुटुंब है ये देखिए ऐसा लगता है जब हम इन बातों की बात करते हैं ना आजकल तो लोगों को लगता है संस्कृत की बात कर करी जा रही है. पुरानी बात की जा रही है बड़ी शर्म की बात है अगर आप ऐसे सोचते हैं तो ये कई बार हमने सोचा है एकम सत विप्राह बहुदा वदंती भाई आज हमारे यंगस्टर्स कहेंगे कि भाई ये संस्कृत में बोला जा रहा है तो मुझे सुनना ही नहीं पर आप सोचिए कि इस देश की सोच कैसी थी एक ही सत्य है बुद्धिमान लोग उसे तरह तरह से व्यक्त करते हैं मतलब इंक्लूजन हमने इंक्लूजन की बात कब की थी और देखिए कहना एक बात होती है जीना एक बात होती है ये भारत ने इंक्लूजन और डाइवर्सिटी को जिया है हमें कहने की आवश्यकता नहीं पड़ी हमारे कार्यकलापों में हमारे रोजमर्रा की जिंदगी में परिलक्षित होता है रोजमर्रा की जिंदगी में अभिव्यक्त होता है व्यक्त होता है हम जीते हैं डाइवर्सिटी एंड इंक्लूजन को हमारे यहां आज सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट की आप बात करते हैं और अभी अंग्रेजी में बोलूंगा तो ज्यादा अच्छा लगेगा आपको वी टॉक अबाउट सस्टेनेबिलिटी एंड एंड सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट नाउ व्हेन यू कम टू इंडिया एंड वी आल्सो टॉक अबाउट ह्यूमन सिविलाइजेशन ह्यूमन 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 वर्ड वी यूज दैट क्वाइट ऑफन टूडे या वी हैव इंडिया हैज नॉट यूज ह्यूमन वर्ड सो मच आई टेल यू वाई we use the word srishti we do not think that human is at the center of the world and everything else is for our consumption we never felt that the whole world and the whole universe is for us to consume we felt we are part of the creation srishti srishti ka ek hissa hai hum bhai hamare liye nahi hai sab kuch ki hum kha jaye isiliye humne development कि पहले हमें सस्टेनेबल लगाने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ी विच साउंड लाइक एन आफ्टर थॉट टू बिगिन विद डेवलपमेंट मीन सस्टेनेबल फॉर अस बिकॉज वी बिलीव इन सृष्टि वी डोंट बिलीव इन ह्यूमन ह्यूमन अपने आप को सुपीरियर समझे और सारे प्रकृति का भक्षण कर दे सबको खा दे तो फिर उसको रोकने के लिए आप तरह तरह के लॉज बनाए ऐसे भारत नहीं सोचता है मैं उत्तराखंड से आता हूं किसी ने मुझे एक बार कहा कि ये जो डेवलपमेंट हो गया बहुत वहां पर केदारनाथ की घटना के बाद देखा देखिए ये हमारी हमारी संस्कृति को ही भूल गए थे हमारे यहाँ कहते हैं कि ये जो पूरा कई किलोमीटर तक का एरिया है यहाँ पर जोर से नहीं बोलना चाहिए वन देवी नाराज हो जाती है वन देवी नाराज हो जाती है उसको क्यों बोला गया क्योंकि उनको पता था कि दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर सस्टेनेबिलिटी दैट This ecosystem is delicate. 
तो जोर से बोलना भी नहीं है तोड़फोड़ करने की तो बात दूर गई दिस वॉज इनग्रेन्ड इन द कल्चर ऑफ दिस कंट्री दैट्स रीजन वी डिन डू नॉट हैव टू टॉक और वी नेवर हैव टू टॉक अबाउट सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट आज भी हम एडवेंचर स्पोर्ट्स बाहर से लाए हैं हम प्रकृति पे विजय करके छाती ठोकने वालों में से नहीं है हम प्रकृति को नमन करने वाले से लोगों में से हैं हम प्रकृति को बांधने से खुश नहीं होते हम प्रकृति के सामने उपासना करते हैं हम उसके सामने खड़े होकर नतमस्तक होते हैं और कहते हैं ए वृक्ष तेरा धन्यवाद तूने हमें फल दिए ए नदी तेरा धन्यवाद तू हमें हमें पानी देती है और जब उसमें उतरते हैं तो एक बार आंख बंद करके उसको नमन करते हैं ये संस्कृति है इस वजह से वी डिड नॉट हैव टू टॉक अबाउट सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट इट इज इन ग्रेन्ड वेरी मच इन आवर वैल्यू सिस्टम दिस प्राइड हैज टू बी ब्रॉट इन टू आवर यंगस्टर्स व्हेन दे आर ट्रैवलिंग अब्रॉड व्हेन दे हियर द वर्ल्ड डाइवर्सिटी एंड इंक्लूजन दे शुड नो एकम सत विप्राह बहुदा वदंती दिस कंट्री ऑलवेज बिलीव्ड इन सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट व्हेन दे हियर दैट शुड नॉट साउंड फॉरेन टू देम इट इट the whole world behaves as if everything has to be taught to us women empowerment this country never never debated about the voting rights of women never ever don't you feel that so many country debated about it it means somewhere i'm not saying their human exploitation has not happened in the country of course we have to take cognizance of it and take measures but at the same time let's remember our jambans as a final word you know this is an ongoing project of trying to inculcate this lost pride like you say and if i may request you to be the jamwan for this audience if you were to give us lines which can be our motto and our mantra for the next 10 20 years what would they be maine pehle bhi kaha hai ki ek aasma kam padta hai aur aasma mangwa do एक आसमां कम पड़ता है और आसमां मंगवा दो हैं बेसब्र उड़ाने मेरी पंख ये नीले रंगवा दो सो मच पंख ये नीले रंगवा दो निकल पड़ा है भारत मेरा अब तुम जय जयकार करो लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन आई प्रेजेंट टू यू मिस्टर प्रसून जोशी थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू पदमजा फॉर ऑलवेज a great session thank you very much thank you mr joshi and fadnaja and on that note we would uh, like to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors for times network presents times now summit powered by purna record india driven by maruti suzuki co powered by dream sports knowledge partner amrita vishwavidya peetham associate partner lic international partner deakin university associate partner flana advisory banquet partner brand buzz ventures ladies and gentlemen it's time to take a short break grab yourself a refreshing cup of chai or coffee and we'll reconvene here in 10 minutes there are mind you some power pack sessions that are going to take place after that we will have ashwini vaishnav union railway minister union minister for information and broadcasting anurag thakur and of course uh, city star uh, kriti sanon who will also be joining us post this tea break
Welcome back to the Times Network presents Times Now Summit. I hope you're feeling refreshed after your cup of chai and coffee and uh, we can get kick-started now, Madha, with uh, a lot of other speakers who are still waiting here. Uh, remember, it's been a power pack day of discussions, a lot of conversations, a lot of ideas, but there is more to come, like they say. We'd like to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that it is important to us that you, the audience, continuously keep sharing your thoughts with us. And the best way to do that is pick up your phones, use the hashtag TN Summit 2024, also the hashtag that you can use, Times Now Summit 2024. Put out your views, your thoughts. Let's make this go viral. And uh, when you're talking of you know, using your mobile phones, Mother, the first thing that comes to us is Digital India. Well, absolutely, and not just Digital India. What's going to be very interesting is going to be how India has been pushing ahead in the area of semiconductors. And that's going to be one of the important thrust areas as far as the next guest that we're going to have. In fact, uh, the Indian IT industry has been pushing forward. We've seen the Prime Minister launching a landmark semiconductor manufacturing policy in the year 2022. And in fact, uh, uh, very, very significant that we're going to be having Union Minister Ashwini Vaishnava, a very short while from now, talking not just about railways, where we've seen a lot of transformation that you were talking about earlier, Deepti, but also the area of semiconductors. Absolutely. And, you know, semiconductor conversation, I think, is pretty interesting. It's new to us, but we are looking at it having a lot of potential. Also, there is that first fabrication facility in Dholera that's being, uh, in fact, laid by the Prime Minister on the 13th of March. So what really is that all about? What does this do to us? How does this change maybe perhaps India's future vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, us looking at China at one point in time, Madhav. So I think that would be interesting to hear from the minister. Well, absolutely. And to share his views on India's role actually in the emerging semiconductor global supply chain, please welcome the Minister of Electronics and IT, Railways and Communication Government of India, Sri Ashwini Vaishnav. Of course, he will be in conversation with Navika Kumar, group editor, in a short while from now. Yes. So we are just waiting uh, for the arrival of the uh, minister into the hall. He, remember, is already here. And uh, the audience is actually waiting, I think, with a lot of attention, which is interesting. Because Ashwini Vaishnav, again, uh, Madhav, uh, is, is a very promising uh, minister. We've seen a lot of traction for a lot of things he does. He's kind of taken uh, to the social media by storm. I see him putting a lot of Instagram videos, especially of, you know, Vande Bharat and a lot of other things that he's doing himself. You've seen him in the railway compartment in the engine. So I, I think he drives that conversation uh, pretty steady for us. And that's why it, it's an audience that's actually waiting. Not just that, he's also it. someone who's driving the bullet train, for oh, instance, yes. from uh, Mumbai to Ahmedabad, the first bullet train. And in fact, uh, uh, we are told that it's just uh, years away from completion. And that itself will be a landmark uh, project because it will be the first time that uh, the Indian uh, government would have implemented such a massive project. Of course, requires huge amount of uh, investment, but also the benefits from such a project will be looked at very closely because there are ambitious plans of replicating that in different parts of the country. We've been talking about Vande Bharat, of course, another very important scheme, which has, of course, uh, received a lot of accolades from different parts. And, of course, uh, there are various aspects of uh, the IT ministry itself that have been under discussion. Why this entire conversation surrounding semiconductors is very significant is that it is an industry that provides so much more than itself. It can actually be the base for a lot of economic growth, a lot of economic development, uh, you know, when it comes to a country like India. And that's why efforts have been made, how successful the government has been in terms of establishing various such semiconductor plants across the country and, of course, has more ambitions in terms of implementing that is also very, very significant. Oh, yes. And uh, he's not just a man of numbers, but he's also a man of, I think, images. Because I'm saying this because, you know, he puts out these images, he takes on this stage, and, and he actually gets down to explaining to us in brass tacks how things really work. And I think within minutes, we'll have the union minister right here inside the hall, and uh, he'll be speaking on the semiconductor industry boom, what does this mean for us as a country, how ready we are. And uh, we'll also put our hands together to welcome him in just a moment, and I'm just requesting all the audiences to continue to remain seated in case you haven't muted your mobile phones, please do that. And um, we are actually looking at the minister arriving into the hall in just a moment, Ashwini Vaishnav. And yes, we will also invite our uh, group CEO, Mr. N. Subramaniam, who's going to be here with him in just a moment. Naveka also walks in right now. And, uh, 
Yes, so let's put our hand together first up to welcome uh, our group CEO of the Times Group, Mr. N. Subramaniam, who's here. And um, he welcomes the minister once he's here. We see Ashwini Vaishnav, the man again wearing multiple hats, the man who is the guru man right now, Mother, when it comes um, to a lot well, of stuff. Well, it's the engineer's hard hat. I think that's the most significant yes. one in this context. We'll also and, uh, ask you which is the hat he loves to put wear. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, yes. for Mr. Ashwini Vaishnav, Union Minister for IT Telecom as well, uh, IT Communications, I beg your pardon, as well as uh, Railways, who's now joining us here. Uh, in fact, I request Mr. Subramaniam Group, uh, CEO of Times Group, to come on stage and felicitate the Honorable Minister with a token of our appreciation. Thank you so much, Mr. Subramaniam. I now invite Group Editor-in-Chief of uh, Times Network, Navika Kumar, on stage for the interaction with Union Minister Ashwini Vaishnav. Thank you very much, Madhav and Deepti, and thank you, Mr. Ashwini Vaishnav, uh, a very busy minister, so many portfolios, uh, running literally all the trains uh, and uh, the entire internet. Uh, our phones, everything. Mr. Ashwini Vaishnav. I'm not on the phone. Yes, that question is pending for a long time. But I want to begin with the fact that the theme of our Times Now Summit is India Unstoppable. How would you tell India today, all our viewers, our audiences here, on the five big reasons why you think India is unstoppable? Last 10 years of our country have been historic. If you look at any sector, I'll talk about three sectors. Railway, 40,000 kilometers electrified in 10 years. Compare that with the 20,000 kilometers done in 60 years before that. Right? 40,000 in 10 years versus 60,000 in uh, uh, 20,000 in 60 years. 31,000 kilometers of new railway tracks constructed in just in a time frame of 10 years. 15 kilometers per day is the pace at which we are constructing. That was 4 kilometers per day. Absolutely sector after sector, dedicated freight corridor. 2014, the number of kilometers that were commissioned and operational was zero, zilch. Today it is more than 2,700 kilometers Actually functional, 400 trains running on the system daily. Electronics manufacturing, practically negligible 10 years back, and today $110 billion worth electronics manufacturing. Apple alone is hiring more than 1 lakh persons are employed in the factories of Apple, manufa Apple iPhone manufacturers. It's an absolute fundamental change semiconductors, which the country dreamt of since 1962. Now we have four units where the construction is going on. Sector after sector, if you look at it, the work which has happened, the momentum which is there in our economy, it's phenomenal. I can say with a 95% confidence interval that in the coming 10 years, the country will grow at a Consistent growth rate of 6 to 8 percent real growth in the coming 10 years. So uh, definitely that means it's unstoppable. It's unstoppable because we have a great captain. We have a great leader who is thinking of 25 years ahead, who has a 10-year legacy in central government and a total of 27 years of total legacy in governance and a 25-year ahead action plan. That's our Prime Minister Modi ji. And that's why India is unstoppable. Mr. Ashwini Vaishnav, uh, you are the poster boy, literally, of the semiconductor uh, masterclass that you've held. And uh, semiconductors can be a game changer as far as uh, India and its uh, economic position, as well as its position of uh, attracting investments in the country is concerned. Can we, can we be an alternative to China or... Uh, once again, the question many are asking, this time around, can we capitalize on the opportunity? Absolutely, yes. Emphatically, yes. This will be a reality. 
in the coming five years, Bharat will be among the top five semiconductor destinations of the world. I can say that with very high level of confidence. See, when we started the semiconductor program, the first thing that our Prime Minister said was, look at the entire ecosystem. Don't just look at setting up the plant, look at setting up the entire ecosystem. Second thing he mandated on us, look at minimum 10 years program and ideally a 20 years program. Don't look at a one year, two year or this scheme, that scheme, this financial year, that financial year. We stuck to those two principles. We practically, I must have personally met about 45 company CEOs and CTOs. We asked them every detail that is needed for setting up this new industry. And we did a lot of homework, practically. So I remember the first few meetings with the CTOs. They would say that, no, you don't have this, you don't have that. And we worked meticulously on every possible item. There are 250 odd chemicals and gases which go in semiconductor manufacturing. And some of the names are tongue twisters. Very difficult to even pronounce the names. So it's very, very complex industry, but the hard work is paid off. We have four units where manufacturing, the construction work is going on. And the construction work was also done in record time. Micron plant, June 23, the uh, agreement was done. September 23, within 90 days, construction started. The two plants of Tata and the plant of CG Power, again, within 18 days, of approval, construction actually started on the field. It's a pace which is what making it unstoppable India, right? Well, Mr. Ashwini Vaishnav, uh, you've been a career bureaucrat, went to the private sector, uh, became an entrepreneur, and then made your foray into politics. The question I want to ask you, pehle kaha jata tha ke governments are, you know, laid back working, um, uh, things happen at their own pace. Uh, file pushing is the way governments run. You've been a part of the Modi Sarkar. I want to ask you, what would you say and how would you describe Modi's cabinet and Modi's government? Look, Prime Minister Modi ji ka vision, desh ke liye jo sankalp, the way he's thinking about the country, it's a phenomenal thing. It's something which I don't think any other country is as blessed as we are. I don't think any other country in the world has a leader who is thinking of 25 years ahead, who is taking inputs from more than 15 lakh people to create a vision for 2047, who is actually implementing, uh, uh, breaking down that vision into implementable portions, executable portions, then giving those targets to the ministers and also taking the private sector, the stakeholders, the civil society, everybody together to make sure that our vision, the way we would like to see our country in 2047, that is realized. Where would you find this kind of leadership? And the person, this leader works almost 20 out of 24 hours in a day. No Saturday, no Sunday for him. Absolutely no holiday for him. I don't think at least in whatever interaction I've had with Honorable Prime Minister. I've never seen him taking even one hour holiday, forget one day holiday or few days. I think there are other leaders who are frequently visiting uh, all kinds of places and being seen with. Uh, this is a person who is committed to the country, who's just thinking of the country 24 hours. Rashtra Pratham, Sadev Pratham. That's the only thing he thinks. And that's what he's working on. And we are all fortunate that we are able to uh, contribute in our own way. Yes, when Ram was making his setu, there was a role of Gilhari. So, we are also fortunate that we are able to contribute in our own way. Yes, when Ram was making his setu, there was a role of Gilhari. It's a very powerful Gilhari. It's also running railways, it's also running telecom, it's also running IT. It's a very powerful and very powerful Gilhari. But the question is, सवाल ये भी है आपने कहा कुछ लोग हॉलिडेज लेते रहते हैं कहीं जाते हैं वो आई यू रेफरिंग टू आप सब समझ गए समझने वाले समझ गए नहीं आप अगर बता देते तो जनता अच्छी तरीके से समझ जाती 
बहुत सारे लोग हैं देखिए विपक्ष में अगर हम बात करें विपक्ष की एक देश को पूरे देश को जिस तरह से इतनी लॉस्ट अपॉर्चुनिटीज रही और उसके बावजूद भी वो सुधरे नहीं उसके बावजूद भी सुधरे नहीं अगर हम इफ यू लुक एट आर कंट्रीज इकोनॉमिक हिस्ट्री फ्रॉम 1947 टू 1990 और लेट्स से फ्रॉम 1950 टू 1990 बिकॉज शुरू के तीन साल समझो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बनाना है उस सब में निकले द फर्स्ट फोर डिकेट्स फॉर लॉस्ट डिकेट्स प्रैक्टिकली लॉस्ट डिकेट्स पूरे देश को अपने एंटरप्राइज को पूरी एनर्जी को देश की क्रिएटिविटी को यूथ के टैलेंट को सबको एकदम मकड़ जाल में बांध के रखा ऐसे बांध के रखा कि कोई प्रोग्रेस कर ना पाए जो प्रोग्रेस कर रहा उसको नीचे दबाओ मतलब सारी दुनिया सोचती थी कि इस देश का इतना पोटेंशियल है लेकिन कांग्रेस की सरकारों ने चार जनरेशन चार डेकेट्स तक पूरे लॉस्ट डेकेट्स रखे बाद में परिवर्तन आया थोड़ा सा कुछ रिफॉर्म्स हुए फिर श्रद्धे अटल जी के टाइम में और बहुत सारे रिफॉर्म्स हुए फिर दस साल का पीरियड आया जिसमें जो कुछ किया कराया था वो सब भी एक प्रैक्टिकली एक फिर एक लॉस्ट डिकेट किया 2004 से 2014। 2004 में जब अटल जी ने जिम्मेदारी सौंपी थी डॉक्टर मनमोहन सिंह जी को कांग्रेस की सरकार को इतनी हेल्दी इतनी रोबस्ट इकोनॉमी थी मैं एक छोटा सा क्विज आपके सामने रखना चाहूंगा दो में जब श्रद्धे अटल जी ने When he handed over the responsibility to Dr. Manmohan Singh ji, our Bharat's ranking in the world was how much? Guess it, right? Eleventh. Who said? Let's give it to them. Eleventh rank. Now I'm going to ask, in 2014, when the Prime Minister of the country, Narendra Modi ji, how much was the ranking in the world? ग्यारह सबके लिए ताली बजाओ सब सही बोल रहे हैं ग्यारहवें तो, रैंक पे 2004 में ग्यारहवें रैंक पे 2014 इसका क्या मतलब है भाई इसका मतलब पूरा 10 साल वेस्ट हुआ हुआ ना वेस्ट और मोदी जी ने 2014 में ग्यारहवें रैंक पे जिम्मेदारी ली आज कितना है पांचवें नंबर पे ऑलरेडी हम पहुंच गए पांचवें नंबर पे पहुंच गए और ये मोदी की गारंटी है कि दो हजार तक हिंदुस्तान दुनिया की तीसरी सबसे बड़ी आर्थिक ताकत होगी आप देखो जितना आज जितना काम कर पा रहे हैं 11 लाख करोड़ का इन्वेस्टमेंट हो रहा है कंप्लीट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को रीबिल्ड करने में जब पांचवी आर्थिक ताकत इतना कुछ कर सकती है आप इमेजिन करो जब तीसरी बड़ी आर्थिक ताकत होगी कितनी देश में क्षमता होगी जो काम कर सके और देश को एक ऐसे फाउंडेशन दे सके जो दो और दो के बियॉन्ड भी देश के काम आए ये है मोदी जी का प्रभाव सो लेट मी आस्क यू टूडे द प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज ऑल्सो ट्वीटेड सम एमिनेंट लॉयर्स हैव ऑल्सो रिटर्न अ लेटर द क्वेश्चन दैट इज बीइंग आस्ट एंड द प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज ट्वीटेड अबाउट द प्रेशर दैट इज बींग पुट बाय the Congress party on the judiciary. I want to get a perspective on what is the Prime Minister hinting at and where, where do you think the pressure is being put on the judiciary? Uh, is it just because, uh, because even uh, the Congress party has come out and said that uh, after the electoral bonds issue which has gone against your government, uh, this is a deliberate a psychological warfare that has been launched on the judiciary. But this is new for the Congress. The whole Congress has been filled with this thing. They killed the Constitution. They killed so many institutions. They put so much pressure on the judiciary. You, I am sure you would all remember, Congress used to say, we need, Congress needs a committed judiciary. What does the committed judiciary mean? अब ये बताओ कांग्रेस का पीरियड था जिस पीरियड में जुडिशरी में जो व्यक्ति चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया बनना चाहिए था उसको नहीं बना के किसी और को बनाया वाई दैट्स वॉट कांग्रेस की जीन्स ऐसी है कांग्रेस का कल्चर ऐसा है कांग्रेस में ये है कि किसी भी इंस्टीट्यूशन में इंडिपेंडेंस नहीं रहनी चाहिए अगर आप अभी 
मिस नीरजा चौधरी ने अभी एक बुक लिखी है प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स पे उस बुक को आप पढ़ो पहले ही चैप्टर पहले ही चैप्टर में इतनी स्ट्रांग सामने आता है कि किस तरह से कांग्रेस के गांधी परिवार ने क्लियर डिस्कशंस होते थे कि कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन को कैसे सबवर्ट किया जाए आई मीन दैट्स दी वे कांग्रेस इज दैट्स दी वे कांग्रेस माइंड सेट इज तो आज वो फिर प्रेशर डाल रहे हैं ये उनका काम है ये उनका उनका नेचर है लेकिन मैं आपको विश्वास दिलाता हूं एक चीज का ये देश हमारी डेमोक्रेसी हमारे देश में आज जो एक पॉजिटिव माइंडसेट है आज जो एक अंदर से आत्मविश्वास है इस देश को कांग्रेस की कोई भी गलत भावना इस देश को हिला नहीं सकती इस देश के कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन को टच नहीं कर सकती इस देश के इंस्टीट्यूशंस को कांग्रेस में आज इतनी ताकत नहीं है कि वो किसी भी इंस्टीट्यूशन के साथ कोई भी छेड़खानी कर सके बट द चार्ज ऑफ द कांग्रेस पार्टी इज दैट इट इज योर गवर्नमेंट दैट इज सबवर्टिंग इंस्टीट्यूशंस, एस्पेशली द मिस ऑफ एजेंसीज अगेंस्ट ऑपोजिशन लीडर्स एस्पेशली इन द रिसेंट टाइम्स uh there has been hemant soren a, a sitting chief minister who's had to resign has been put behind bars delhi chief minister arvind kejriwal sitting chief minister has been put behind bars and today he's argued his own case saying this is the bjp's conspiracy to crush the aam aadmi party jahan pe money trail well established ho ek congress ke mp ke yahan se 350 crore rupaye कैश मिलता है 350 करोड़ रुपए कैश मिलता है और वो कांग्रेस कहती है कि एजेंसीज का मिसयूज यूज करो अरे भाई इतनी हिपोक्रेसी पब्लिक लाइफ में ये कांग्रेस के ही बस की बात है और किसी के बस की बात नहीं है एंड अरविंद केजरीवाल वो तो कह रहे हैं एक रुपया भी नहीं मिला उनके घर से मनीष सिसोदिया के घर से संजय सिंह के घर से फिर भी अरेस्ट कर लिया कोर्ट ने एक के बाद एक जब मिस्टर संजय सिंह और मिस्टर मनीष सिसोदिया के हियरिंग्स हो रही थी क्यों उनको पीछे रखा है बार वाई वाई द कोर्ट हैव नॉट इंटरवीन देर दे हैव नॉट इंटरवीन बिकॉज दे मस्ट हैव सीन समथिंग विच ऑब्वियसली इट्स अ जुडिशियल प्रोसेस गोइंग ऑन वी शुडेंट बी कमेंटिंग ऑन दैट बट टूडे वी हैव अ फ्री एंड फेयर जुडिशरी वी हैव एब्सोल्यूटली एब्सोल्यूटली रोबस्ट जुडिशरी सो लेट द जुडिशरी डिसाइड लेट Kejriwal ji also put his point of view in front of the judiciary let the prosecution agencies let them put their point of view doodh ka doodh pani ka pani ho jayega mr vaishnav uh, the question is that your government in terms of governance in terms of the promises that they had made claims that it has done very well economic indices of course support the theory ram mandir ka promise tha aapne pura kiya article 370 tha aapne pura kiya अगर आपका रिकॉर्ड इतना अच्छा है तो फिर एजेंसीज की जरूरत क्यों पड़ती है इलेक्शन के समय और दूसरी बात इतने सारे इंपोर्टेड लीडर्स दूसरी पार्टियों से लेने की जरूरत क्यों पड़ती है देखिए जब लेकर स्कैम में इन्वेस्टिगेशन चालू हुआ था कौन सा इलेक्शन था देखो आप नविका जी किसी चीज को कॉन्टेक्स्ट में देखो जब मिस्टर हेमंत सोरेन के करप्शन के केसेस चालू हुए कौन सा इलेक्शन था जब मिस्टर साहू के पकड़े गए 350 करोड़ कौन सा इलेक्शन था जब बंगाल में 50 करोड़ रुपए कैश पकड़ा गया गरीब बच्चों के जो कि एग्जाम देके अपने सरकारी नौकरी को ढूंढ रहे थे तब उनसे पैसे लेके एक टीएमसी का मंत्री पचास करोड़ रुपये कैश पे बैठा था तब कौन सा इलेक्शन था इलेक्शन के साथ कैसे जोड़ते हो भैया आप कोई जोड़ने की बात नहीं ये तो एजेंसीज अपना काम इंडिपेंडेंटली कर रही है लेट देम डू और अगर आप अगर ये कहते हैं कि करप्शन को करप्शन को बनाए रखो ये तो नहीं चलने देंगे मोदी जी ने क्लियर भ्रष्टाचार के विरुद्ध लड़ाई का एंड ही हैज टेकन टेकन अप दिस मैटर इन अ वेरी स्ट्रांग वे करप्शन के विरुद्ध लड़ाई के लिए हमेशा बाहर आए और मजबूत एक्शन लिया लड़ेंगे ऑल्सो द क्वेश्चन विल बी वाई Uh, is absolutely no action being taken against those who either come into your party or are part of your party and have cases from the past koi aisi baat nahi hai judiciary agency sab apna kaam independently kar rahi hai 
but there are people who you have accused in the past who are now part of your political party and therefore aap dusro ko hypocritical kehte hain thoda apni party par bhi dekh lijiye absolutely not main aapko ekdam clear kehta hu ki kahin par bhi agencies kaam karne ke liye puri tarah se free hai aur kar rahi hai freely kahin independently kaam kar rahi hai isme koi do raha nahi so i i want to ask you bharat jodo yatra do you think it has and this is the 2.0 that i'm talking about pehli yatra jab hui rahul gandhi ki to aap karnatak telangana haar gaye dusri uh, jo bharat jodo nyay yatra hai iske baad kya impact rahega hum rajasthan bhi jeete chatisgarh bhi jeete madhya pradesh bhi jeete humne telangana mein vote share double digit se zyada mein leke aaye karnatak mein vote share bahut zyada difference nahi aaya hai aap एक हम लोगों को एक वो हमेशा ध्यान रखना चाहिए कॉज एंड इफेक्ट कॉजेलिटी और को रिलेशन में बहुत बड़ा डिफरेंस होता है कॉज एंड इफेक्ट देखो आप अननेसेसरी चीजों को कोरिलेट मत करो बहुत सिंपल है आज देश में लोगों ने अपना क्लियरली अपना मन बना लिया है आप छोटे से छोटे गांव में जाके देखो मैंने काम किया वेस्टर्न यूपी में तीन लोकसभा में काम किया और अभी मध्य प्रदेश में काम किया और उड़ीसा में जमीन में मतलब जमीन के साथ जुड़ के कुछ काम किया बहुत ज्यादा मेरा राजनीतिक अनुभव नहीं है इसलिए मैं इतना आपको नहीं कह सकता लेकिन जितना देखा है एक चीज स्पष्ट सब तरफ से आ रही है एवरीवेयर वेर एवर यू गो वन थिंग विच पीपल आर सेइंग वेरी एम्फेटिकली पचास साठ वर्षो में जो चीज उन्होंने सोचा जनता ने जन जन ने सोचा था दो थिंग्स आर नाउ एक्चुअली डिलीवर्ड इन एवरी household in the country and that is without any discrimination abhi thode din pehle madhya pradesh mein tha garib se garib ghar mein ja ke aap baat karo adivasi gharon mein jao aap wahan pe baat karo logo se log spasht kehte hain the kind of facilities which have come in the last 10 years unthinkable ek maa boli ki hum sochte the ki gas ka chula matlab bhopal mein indore mein jabalpur mein jo bade संभ्रांत परिवारों में गैस का चूल्हा होता होगा लेकिन आज मोदी जी ने हमारे घर तक लाके दिया है नल से जल समथिंग थिंग्स विच वी इन सिटीज वो अज्यूम टेक फॉर ग्रांटेड उसका कितना बड़ा महत्व है गांव में आप गांव में जाके पूछो आई विल रिक्वेस्ट टाइम्स नाउ से आप अपना एक डेलीगेशन भेजिए एक पूरी टीम भेजिए गांव में एक्चुअल में किस तरह से काम हुआ है उसको देखे मतलब गांव के लोग आश्चर्य करते हैं कि नल से जल कोई सोच भी नहीं सकता था वो चीज आज उनके घर तक पहुंच रही है दीज आर थिंग्स विच आर रियल नविका जी दीज आर थिंग्स विच आर देयर ऑन द ग्राउंड केवल टहलने से लोगों का आप मन बहला नहीं सकते आपको लोगों के लिए हार्ड वर्क कड़ी मेहनत कड़े संकल्प दृढ़ इच्छा शक्ति एग्जीक्यूशन के साथ काम करना पड़ता है तब जाके देश का विश्वास आता है वो विश्वास आज मोदी जी पे वो विश्वास आज मोदी जी पे वन है और इसीलिए इतने एकदम क्लैरिटी के साथ हमारे काम के दस साल के मोदी जी के काम के बेसिस पे आज हम वोट मांगने जा रहे हैं पब्लिक के सामने मिस्टर वैष्णव यू आर समबडी हुज गॉट बाई पार्टिसन सपोर्ट इन योर इलेक्शन टू द राज्यसभा द बीजेडी सपोर्टेड यू द बीजेपी ऑफ कोर्स सपोर्टेड यू वैष्णव जी ने क्या जादू किया देखिए बहुत सारी चीजें होती है जो पार्टी अपने अपने लेवल पे फैसले लेती है मैं सार्वजनिक जीवन में जो भी मेरे सार्वजनिक जीवन के फैसले होते हैं वो पार्टी लेती है मैं एक कार्यकर्ता हूं एक डिसिप्लिन कार्यकर्ता हूं जो पार्टी तय करती है वो मैं कर लेता हूं और बीजेडी के साथ अलायंस की बात क्योंकि आप ओडिशा से राज्यसभा मेंबर हैं क्योंकि आप ओडिशा में काम कर चुके हैं आप ओडिशा काडर के ऑफिसर भी रह चुके हैं आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क यू there was a conversation of an alliance between the bjp and the bjd and then it fell through why dekho mujhe anubhav kam hai isliye main shayad uh, i wouldn't like to make a very uh, big statement here but conceptually uh, when a ruling party and the principal opposition party conceptually alliance between these two combinations is very difficult looks very improbable so i think i think uh, we'll uh, contest all the seats in uh, we will contest all the seats in both the lok sabha as well as the 
uh, uh, as well as the assembly. And we will come back, we'll uh, come out, we'll emerge as a very, uh, with major gains. So you can only take uh, members of parliament, leaders from that political party, but you can't have the party as an alliance partner. Why I said you have alliance between ruling party and the principal opposition party in the state is something which is very improbable. But Britu Hari Bhattab, BJD ke saath the itne saal, unhe aap le sakte hain. देखिए भारतीय जनता पार्टी एक विचार एक कमिटमेंट एक आइडियोलॉजी पे चलने वाली पार्टी है ये एक एक पार्टी है जिस पार्टी में हमेशा राष्ट्र प्रथम सदैव प्रथम के प्रिंसिपल को मान के चले ये एक पार्टी है जिसने आज नहीं अपनी शुरुआत से उन्नीस में जनसंघ के समय से जनसंघ के समय से अंत्योदय को अपना मूल मंत्र माना है वी हैव ऑलवेज कंसिडर्ड इंक्लूसिव डेवलपमेंट एज अ मेजर गोल इस फिलॉसफी में जो भी विश्वास करे उन सबका स्वागत है जो इस आइडियोलॉजी में बिलीव करे वो सबका स्वागत है मैं तो कहता हूं आप भी ज्वाइन करिए बहुत अच्छी पार्टी है <laughs> मैं मैं जहां हूं खुश हूं एंड आई वुड इनवाइट मोर एंड मोर पीपल टू ज्वाइन टाइम्स नाउ बट द क्वेश्चन दैट आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क यू इज Would you recommend uh, career politics uh, to professionals? आप एक professional थे uh, अब politics में है आपका experience कैसा रहा Politics uh, और public life अपने जीवन में कुछ ऐसा करने का मौका देता है where you can give back to the society. See, कोई भी व्यक्ति we are all creatures of our society. Whatever we are, we are because what our country has given us, what our society has given us. what our educational institutions have given us so we must give back to the society and political life gives a very large canvas where you can do a very big change very fundamental transformative change in people's lives so i would actually uh, very strongly recommend that all the professionals must do must give us even if they give a small fraction of the time they must give a small fraction of the time for the society and do something very regularly whether in terms of thinking whether in terms of executing whether in terms of connecting with other people whether in terms of actually collecting the feedback from the ground e whatever you want to do please do but always think of contributing to the society but uh, many people many professionals uh, feel scared that if they don't have antecedents in politics survival could be difficult because uh, Politics uh, is a difficult stream to be in. Uh, how has it been for you? Uh, is it is there any special skill set that is required to become a politician? Look, Modi ji, very clear. One thing we explain to people: don't think anything of becoming something. Think of doing something. He is always he is very clear in his mind when he tells us: always think of something you want to do. Think of doing something. ये मत सोचो कि आप ये बनो वो बनो इफ यू हैव दैट माइंड सेट इफ यू थिंक ऑफ थिंक ऑफ आर लाइफ इन दैट वे देन एवरीथिंग बिकम्स वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड इज पॉलिटिक्स स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड फ्रॉम द इनसाइड लाइफ में क्या चीज स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड होती है हर चीज में कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी होती है हर चीज में डिफिकल्टीज होती है डिफिकल्टी सामने आए उस डिफिकल्टी को फेस फेस करके उसमें से सोल्यूशन निकाल के आगे बढ़ना चाहिए इज देर एनी कॉमनैलिटी बिटवीन professionalism in the private sector and the way governments run agar man mein seva ka bhav ho if we think okay we have to contribute to the society we have to contribute to nation building i think whichever profession we are it's one and the same whether in uh, media house if you can think of how do you contribute to building the country building the nation i think that's exactly the same thing that uh, we are doing in the government what's what's the targets when you have one on one meetings with the prime minister or when you meet in a group of ministers meeting the prime minister uh, is it always work oriented target oriented um, you know also some political objectives that are there or are there any sessions uh, that are had with the prime minister where you talk about how to change mindsets how to take the country forward do these discussions take place dekhi once we are uh, working in a team 
and uh, the way our prime minister is he goes in good details he's a very detail oriented person and in my uh, professional as well as personal life i have not seen a person who is as intent listener as our prime minister modi ji is he can take a very very complex subject and very intently he'll get engrossed in that subject and deeply think about it and come up with things that we would have not even thought of i have multiple examples for example in semiconductors when we went to him uh, for uh, the structure of the india semiconductor mission we sought a meeting of about 45 minutes he actually spent almost 3 hours with us going in every detail and at the end of the meeting he said dekho desh ne bahut baar ye prayas kiya hai aur aaj jo paristhitiyan hain un paristhitiyon mein successful hone ki probability zyada hai sambhavna zyada hai har cheez ko dhang se soch ke 360 degree soch ke इंडिया सेमीकंडक्टर मिशन का स्ट्रक्चर बनाओ जिससे कि सक्सेस मिले ही मिले इतना डिटेल में जाते हैं स्टेशंस की बात थी स्टेशंस की बात में ढाई घंटे के प्रेजेंटेशन के बाद में पीएम साहब ने कहा कि नहीं है नहीं चलेगा देन ही कॉल कॉल्स मी अप लेट इन द नाइट और बोलते हैं कि नहीं तुम्हारा जो डिजाइन था ये डिजाइन आज के लिए ठीक है पचास साल आगे की सोचो दैट्स वॉट आर प्राइम मिनिस्टर इज ही गोज डीप इन डिटेल्स इज अ वेरी इंटेंट लिस्नर he'll always encourage you to think long term he'll always ask you to check whether all the stakeholders have been taken on board or not he is a person who will say that isme technology ka bhi dhyan rakhna hai aur ek sadharan se sadharan nagrik ka bhi dhyan rakhna hai isme financing ka bhi dhyan rakhna hai desh ke upar ya iske users ke upar koi bojh na pade uska bhi dhyan rakhna hai very comprehensive way of thinking it's a it's a real pleasure working with him i must say at least my little experience it's a real pleasure working with him so uh, as a minister in the modi cabinet are you confident of the target that has been set ab ki baar 400 par bilkul ab ki baar 400 par hona hi hona hai and that is based upon the work which has been done dekho 10 saal ki legacy desh ke samne hai 10 saal ki legacy pure desh ke samne isse pehle gujarat ki legacy already thi गुजरात प्लस देश के प्रति जो मोदी जी ने जो काम किया है वो देश के सामने आज और अगले 25 साल का क्लियर विजन अगले 25 साल के लिए क्लियर रोड मैप वो क्लियरली सामने आप मुझे बताओ आज अगर विश्व के टॉप 10 इकोनॉमीज को अगर आप सामने लेके देखो लिस्ट बनाओ क्या कोई एक भी देश है जो आगे पच्चीस साल की सोच रहा है कोई नहीं सोच रहा है कोई एक लीडर है जो इतना फॉरवर्ड थिंकिंग हो कोई नहीं है ये आज देश का जन जन पहचानता है जनता में एक ऐसा स्ट्रांग विश्वास है मैं आपको बताऊं सहारनपुर जिले के छुटमलपुर गांव माइनॉरिटी पॉपुलेशन वहां पे मैक्सिमम है क्लोज टू सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट पॉपुलेशन माइनॉरिटी है उस गांव में जब मैंने जाके अपने साथियों से मैंने पूछा गांव के जो निवासी थे उनसे सबसे पूछा कि भाई आपको घर मिला हाँ मिला क्या आपके प्रति कोई भेदभाव हुआ नहीं कोई भेदभाव नहीं हुआ वहां मैंने माइनॉरिटी परिवार के एक माँ से पूछा आपको गैस का सिलेंडर मिला हाँ मिला क्या कोई भेदभाव हुआ नहीं भेदभाव नहीं हुआ ये जो सबका साथ सबका विकास सबका विश्वास सबका प्रयास ये जो मोदी जी ने मंत्र दिया है इसको वो पालन भी करते हैं इसीलिए आज एक करोड़ देशवासियों के मन में एक विश्वास है एक आत्मविश्वास है कि केवल मोदी जी ही उनके बारे में सोचते हैं केवल मोदी जी ही देश को एक जो भारत का स्वप्न है उस स्वप्न को सपना सच करने में एक ही व्यक्ति है जो इसके लिए सक्षम है इसीलिए बहुत ही स्पष्ट तौर पे कहा जा सकता है कि अब की बार 400 पार है लेकिन साउथ ऑफ इंडिया इट इज द सेम कंट्री बट tamilnadu you've never won a seat kerala you've never won a seat uh, telangana you have a very little presence uh, karnataka where you had a larger presence you've lost the state government andhra pradesh you don't have a seat aap 2019 se pehle ke discussions dekho chunav se pehle ke bengal mein you haven't won ye lo saab 18 seat hai 
उड़ीसा में कभी आपने एक सीट जीती दो सीट जीती ये लो आठ सीटें देखो नविका जी जब देश में विश्वास आता है जब जन जन में विश्वास आता है उसका रिजल्ट इलेक्शन के रिजल्ट्स में एकदम स्पष्ट तौर पे परिणत होता है आप सबके सब आप सबके सब जितने मीडिया चैनल्स थे बताओ मध्य प्रदेश चुनाव के बारे में क्या बोलते थे छत्तीसगढ़ चुनाव के बारे में आप बताओ आप क्या बोलते थे रिजल्ट आपके सामने देखो ऐसा नहीं है पब्लिक बहुत समझदार है वो सब जानते हैं सब समझते हैं और जनता का जो विश्वास है ना वो विश्वास कड़ी मेहनत से जीता जाता है आपने ईवीएम हैक कर लिया भाई यही ऑपोजिशन 2004 से 2014 में जब कांग्रेस की सरकार थी तब क्या ईवीएम से नहीं होता था चुनाव वही ईवीएम है जो तब थी और अब मैं एक इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इंजीनियर हूं मैं समझता हूँ ईवीएम क्या होती है वही ईवीएम है भाई देखो जब एक वो हिंदी में कहावत है ना खिसिया नहीं बिल्ली खंदा नोचे खंबा नोचे तो ठीक है उन लोग जब वो मेहनत नहीं करना चाहते तो किसी न किसी को दोष तो देंगे ही देंगे दोनों लोग भाई दोष मेहनत नहीं करते इतनी लंबी यात्रा भारत जोड़ो यात्रा मणिपुर से ले भाई गाड़ी में बैठ के <laughs> क्या यात्रा यार आप भी क्या बात करते हो <laughs> लेकिन महाराष्ट्र में जब क्लोजिंग हुई थी तो सारी ऑपोजिशन पार्टी इकट्ठे एक प्लेटफॉर्म क्या नविका जी बंगाल में टीएमसी और कांग्रेस साथ है क्या क्या अधीर दादा बोल रहे हैं और क्या राहुल जी उसका जवाब दे रहे हैं क्या ममता दीदी बोल रही है और क्या उसमें कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी कौन है भाई साथ अभी आप देखो महाराष्ट्र में हर कोई अपने अपने हिसाब से लिस्ट निकाल रहा है ये घमंडिया गठबंधन एक फिक्शन है इस फिक्शन को आप कितने दिन चला पाओगे भाई हवा में बना हुआ बुलबुला कितने टाइम चलेगा आई यू अंडर एस्टिमेटिंग आई एम नॉट अंडर एस्टिमेटिंग एनी बडी आई एम लुकिंग एट दी कॉन्फिडेंस आई एम लुकिंग एट दी ट्रस्ट दैट पीपल हैव इन नरेंद्र मोदी जी and that is the only and only factor which will give us the results which will give the country the results that the country is looking for so then what next for uh, ashwini vaishnav uh, are you getting ready for uh, the next stint in the Dekhye, modi cabinet ye sab nahi sochte hame aaj hamare samne jo kaam party ne diya hai pradhan mantri ji ne diya hai us pe 100% focus karna chahiye 100% डेडिकेशन के साथ उस काम को करते जाना चाहिए really? आप वैसे तो दो हजार सैतालीस की सोच दो हजार सैतालीस देश के लिए सोच रहे हैं इस देश को बनाने में कई लोगों का सहयोग रहेगा आपका भी सहयोग रहेगा सामने बैठे हैं उनका भी सहयोग रहेगा जो टीवी पे सुन रहे हैं उनका भी सहयोग रहेगा जो नौजवान आज कॉलेज में है उनका भी सहयोग रहेगा सबका सहयोग रहेगा ये सबका साथ सबका विकास की सरकार है हाउ विल यू डिस्क्राइब नरेंद्र मोदी इन फाइव वर्ड्स देखिए मोदी जी देश के बारे में इतना स्पष्ट तौर पे सोचते हैं देश को विकसित देश बनाने का उन्होंने स्पष्ट एक संकल्प लिया है और उस संकल्प को वो सिद्ध करके रहेंगे राहुल गांधी <laughs> पांच क्या एक शब्द ही बहुत है उनके लिए <laughs> एक शब्द क्या बताएंगे छोड़ो रहने दो <laughs> दुनिया ही उनको सीरियसली नहीं लेती भाई आप क्यों सीरियसली ले रहे हो आपकी ऑपोजिशन है आपने कहा आप अंडर एस्टिमेट नहीं कर रहे भाई उनको अंडर एस्टिमेट कोई नहीं करता है हर कोई समझता है वो क्या है आप कुछ कुछ पॉलिटिक्स सीख गए नहीं मैं नहीं सीखा अभी अभी <laughs> बहुत काम बाकी है वेल well, अश्विनी वैष्णव क्लियरली ऑलवेज अ प्लेजर स्पीकिंग विद यू एंड द वे यू टेक क्वेश्चन क्लियरली uh we cannot call you a new entrant to the field of politics ashwini vaishnav has come a long way thank you very much for joining me here on this very great platform of times now summit uh, and we hope we'll keep welcoming you back every time thank you very much navika ji thank you very much times now for having me here thank you and ladies and gentlemen presenting to you ashwini vaishnav union minister a big round of applause Thank you so much Ashwini Vaishnav ji and Navika ma'am for this uh, conversation and this tells you that if you have your heart in the right place what all you can achieve and um, wishing all the very best 
to uh, Ashwini Vaishnavji for that big semiconductor project, remember, that India is wanting to embark on. Now, remember, a true testament of our theme today, that is India Unstoppable, has been India's very successful presidency of the G20. And during that presidency, remember, the New Delhi leaders' declaration was something that was unanimously adopted by all the G20 members. Further, you had the G20 achieve 87 outcomes, 87 of them. 118 adopted documents, you had a marked increase from the past, and the entire spirit of Vasudev Kutumbakam, that is one earth, one family, one future, resonated across the globe. It's time then to hear from our next guest, who again needs no introduction, he's a man who's an integral part of that success story. He's been living that dream for the longest time. He's going to be talking to us shortly about how this India unstoppable momentum can really be carried on. And uh, I think no prizes for guessing who we are talking about. This is the G20 Sherpa, Amitabh Kant, who's going to be on the dais and in the house in just a moment. And he's going to be in conversation with Madhav. And uh, I'm just requesting all our guests to continue to remain seated as we await Amitabh Khan there walking into the hall. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for him. Madhav on the dais with him. Many thanks for that, Deepthi. Mr. Khan, thanks so much for joining us uh, on the Times Now Summit. And let me begin by asking you, I'd like to hear your thoughts on your vision for the country's growth story in the upcoming years. And more crucially, you know, following the G20, following several events that we've seen, how do you perceive it being received globally, having served in the Niti Aayog and several such important areas? How do you look at it in terms of how it's perceived now? Uh, so, Madhav, uh, first and foremost, I think we've, uh, uh, you know, Last three quarters, we've had 8.3% uh, growth rate, which is the highest for any large economy in the world. We are the fifth largest economy. We are going to be the third largest economy by uh, surpassing Japan and Germany by 2027. Uh, but more important than that, I think uh, what comes out very clearly is that uh, India has done huge amount of structural reforms, whether it was GST, IBC, lowering of corporate tax, ease of doing business. We've also digitized our economy enormously, and we've built massive amount of infrastructure in terms of housing, electricity, in terms of uh, uh, water supply to our citizens and road construction. Now, also we've done a lot of work on climate change. You know, all this has the message which has come out, out across the world is which I saw during G20 when I was negotiating that uh, the stature and standing of India has gone up enormously and that enabled us to straddle many world of uh, we could get G7, we could get emerging markets, we could get Russia, we could get China all of them uh, to broadly agree on all developmental issues you know from growth to sustainable development goals to multilateral reforms to uh, women-led development to digital public infrastructure and also on uh, the critical issue of Russia-China uh, and sorry the Russia-Ukraine issue which where the United Nations have not been able to bring out a consensus para India was able to do this so I think the stature and standing of the Prime Minister the stature and standing of India uh, the fact that we are the fastest growing nation all that has added great weight to India's uh, stature would you want to share with us how you managed to do that? I believe there were several Sherpa meetings just ahead of the Delhi Declaration. Any uh, secrets on how you managed to get that uh, declaration and that consensus that you can share with us? Yeah, so it was very challenging. It was very complex. Uh, we had to take all the Sherpas because uh, we had faced uh, huge uh, challenges in the earlier meetings. We could not arrive at a consensus. So we had to take all the Sherpas uh, 80 kilometers off in uh, uh, that ITC classic hotel which is in new district locked them up and uh, we had to take away their mobiles when we started negotiating so 16 drafts failed actually uh, on the Russia Ukraine crisis it was the 17th draft which worked we had to do 300 hours of non-stop negotiation we did about 250 hours of bilateral discussions only after that 
we could succeed. And I think uh, in that, really, we demonstrated India's great ability uh, to bring everybody to the table because every time we failed, we came out with a new draft. We kept coming out with a new draft all the time. So we showed great innovativeness and that a lot of that uh, was possible because of the stature and standing of the Prime Minister because he had, his stature had gone up very, has been enormous and that really helped us to clinch the deal. How close was this to the actual declaration because I believe the negotiations went on until the very last minute. Yes, yes. The leaders had already come in and uh, negotiations were going on. Uh, we had to negotiate with Russia in the end and finally we had to negotiate with China and USA in the morning of after the leaders had come. It was only by, while the leaders summit was going on, we were negotiating separately with Russia. With Russia, we were negotiating with USA, we were negotiating with China separately in the neighbor room, neighboring room and then we finally succeeded at about 12 o'clock. And then the Prime Minister announced that we had arrived at an agreement. So it was a thriller almost. But it was a phenomenal story of great success. But were you stressed at any point of time that, hey, this may actually not happen? When even so close to you know, the leaders arriving, there was no consensus? No, was we felt at least 12 times I felt that it was not possible. It was not feasible at all. Uh, you know, we almost had to give up at times, but we just kept on spirit. The Prime Minister's message was very clear that we have to be uh, you know, ambitious, we have to be decisive, we have to get a consensus, so we kept going on and on. And we finally achieved success, which really demonstrated India's great ability to bring everybody to the table. Right. Uh, moving, coming back to the issue of economic growth, you know, one of the things that uh, we've seen, for instance, opposition come out and criticize it, saying that, hey, it's an arithmetical certainty, so on and so forth. But the larger question, of course, is whether this is really sustainable over the next few years. Uh, 8.4 percent, I beg your pardon, certainly of course above expectations, but sustaining it over the next few years, do you see that as a challenge as well? No, no, India must grow at higher rates. India must grow at, uh, our ambition must be to grow at 9 to 10 percent per annum, year after year, year after year, for three decades. You know, um, that should be our ambition, because uh, if, uh, you know, earlier Korea, Taiwan, recent times China have all grown at those rates. And it's important that uh, we, we've carried out a number of structural reforms. We've done a huge amount of digitization. All this will pay us rich dividend in the coming years. We've laid the seeds, the platform for huge growth in the coming years. And I think, to my mind, we'll only accelerate the pace of reforms uh, further. Post-election, you'll see many more reforms. India will accelerate the pace of growth. And I think we'll... We should export much more. We, should, we will see growth coming in from urbanization. We'll see growth coming in from manufacturing. We'll see agriculture productivity getting enhanced. All these areas are very key areas uh, for growth in the coming decades. In next three decades are going to be your Amrit Kal period for you to grow. And we should, you see, we should have a long-term perspective that we are going to grow. And our ambition should be that by 2047, not merely not merely that we should be a $35 trillion economy, but we should be able to raise the per capita income of every single individual uh, to $18,000 plus. From $3,000, we should take the per capita income to $18,000. So that we have lifted the whole boat of community. Every single Indian must be a rich Indian by that time. We should do a lot of uh, major reforms in the next few years. And I think the key challenge there is that while the central government has done the reforms, the next round of reforms must be carried out by the state governments. Right, because you know, this is a very interesting point that you make on per capita income because you know, there are those who talk about uh, a billionaire Raj. There are certain politicians who have commented on that as well. And uh, you know, there are studies that have been done by PKT and others that they say that actually they believe or they argue that the disparity in incomes has also grown and they say it is even larger than the disparity during colonial era. How do you view that uh, no, no, uh, kind I've, of project? Uh, I've implemented uh, the aspirational district program and uh, these are the 115 of the most backward districts of India. But the Prime Minister called them the aspirational districts of India. We looked at health outcomes, uh, education outcomes, we looked at nutritional outcomes and within a very short period we were able to transform these districts because of good governance, because of competition, because of data because we were making the districts compete with each other. And most of these 115 districts became better performing than some of the best of districts in those states. 
uh, and these are very far flung uh, districts uh, so like namsai like riboy you many of these districts names you would not have heard of but they transformed themselves so i i'm of the view that we need to we are now we have taken that aspirational district program the prime minister has taken it to the aspirational blocks so the amount of focus being laid on ground level transformation which country in the world has seen 40 million houses being built which country has seen 110 million toilets being made which country has seen 253 million households getting piped water connection uh, which country has seen 88,000 kilometers of roads being made? No country in the world has seen this kind of transformation it's at the grassroots level. So the, the benefit of, I mean, which country has seen 110 million women getting cooking gas connection and not, are not cooking through firewood? The transformation at the grassroots level has been enormous. I, I think one hallmark, I mean, and I'm saying this as a civil servant, that one hallmark, and I've put in about 44 years of service now, one hallmark of this government has been really top-class implementation on ground. So implementation, implementation, and implementation has been the focus of this government on ground. Right. One of the departures, many would say, in fact, in, in this year's spending on infrastructure is at 11.11 lakh crores. And that has been sharply rising over the last few years. Do you see this as being a big game changer? And do you see this uh, in a sustained manner continuing over the next few years? No, this has been a game changer because we've taken our uh, capex spend as a percentage of GDP from 1% to 4%. And there has been a huge, from uh, 1 lakh to about 11 lakh crores, is a huge jump in terms of uh, capex spend. And that is why we've been able to create some top-class infrastructure in terms of roads, uh, in terms of uh, uh, housing, and many other areas of growth. But the important thing is now that we've done the capex spend by the government, and we've also reduced the corporate tax. The government's, if you look at India's balance sheet, the corporate balance sheet have never been better than this. The bank balance sheets have never been better than this. And we are at the tip of the private sector investment now kicking off. And once that kicks off, then you will see 10 years of continuous growth by the private sector. The government capex will then be replaced by the private sector capex spend in many areas. Right. You've also said recently that India will grow if the states grow. Yeah. What are the specific reforms or, you know, policy implementations that you envision states need to grow, uh, bring in to grow at a faster pace and perhaps bring in or change, you know, existing other bureaucratic red tapes or systems that exist? So, you know, like uh, central government scrapped rules, regulation, procedures, act, and, uh, you know, we did away with 1500 laws. No other country has done this. Similarly, the states, you know, when we were in the socialistic era, they built up rules, regulation, procedures. All the states need to, we need a huge cleaning up at the state level now. You need at least 12 states to become champions of growth. They need to grow at 10% plus. I mean, it's not just that the southern and the western part of India, but also in the eastern part of states. These are the populous states. You need Jharkhand, you need Chhattisgarh, you need... Uh, 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 Bihar, all these states to grow at high rates, much like the transformation has taken place in Uttar Pradesh, where a huge amount of infrastructure work has been done, the quality of life has, livelihoods have been improved. Similarly, in all these states, they're all mineral-rich states of India. If these states start firing and they grow at 10% plus, India will grow at 10% plus. So the real story now in the next five years will be transforming states into drivers of growth. No, with a huge young population, certainly that is perhaps achievable is a view that has been expressed by several, including you. But there are also several who say that is this 10% a realistic target, particularly when the global scenario is nowhere close to that kind of a figure, double digit growth. No, so there will be challenges. I mean, there are huge challenges in terms of uh, uh, global slowdown of growth, in terms of our penetrating uh, global value chains, etc. But irrespective of the challenge, our ambition should be that. It's, uh, we should not peg our ambition at 7%. Our, our ambition should be to grow at 9 to 10%. And therefore, we should constantly on a daily basis carry out reforms. Uh, Post-elections, you should see herald a huge range of reforms across education, across health, across nutrition. And the states need to do that. The level of governance, the level of implementation which has been done at the central level must now get implemented at the state level. If the quality of governance and implementation improves at state level, then you'll see massive transformation in India's growth story. 
Right. One of the big uh, success stories has been that of startups. From about, I think, 300 uh, uh, startups to becoming the third largest startup ecosystem globally with over 1,12,000 startups. However, there are certain startups that have also faced setbacks in recent years. And, you know, big question over there is how important do you think there is corporate governance, other such aspects that need to be looked at to ensure that these startups don't fail because you know we've seen what's happened as far as regulatory issues with Paytm for instance recently how do we avoid that from happening see first and foremost startups will fail don't worry about startups failing and all Indians especially sitting here in this room and those watching must understand that uh, there has to be failure if you don't fail you'll never succeed in the startup movement 90% of the startups fail even in Silicon Valley don't worry about that but to be able to create a good ecosystem, we need a lot of self-regulation among startups. If government gets into regulating startups or regulators get into st regulating startups, it will not be a good thing. And therefore, you've had many cases of bad governance within startup. The case of Baiju, the case of housing.com, many housing uh, or startups, many other startups. Uh, you know, it's an example of there is a need for good governance. And to my mind, it's all about self-regulation. If you have self-regulation, uh, it's very, very important. Today's startup is tomorrow big company. You know, uh, Infosys was a startup once upon a time, which went on to become such a big company. And these startups have the potential to become large companies. So they must have audit. They must have good financial management. They must professionalize as they keep growing and in, be very clear that not only are they there to do, do innovation and disruption, but they are there to become big, large conglomerates of the future for India. Oh, one issue that comes out of this is that a lot of these startups see foreign funding. And, you know, then when we see uh, issues like this coming in, there are concerns expressed about whether there should be increased domestic funding as far as such startups are concerned. How do you see this? Do you see this as an issue of concern necessarily? No, this is a matter of concern. If 75% of the resources coming into India for startup is coming from abroad, Indian insurance companies, Indian pension funds, high net individuals, you and I, everyone must start take the risk and spend do due diligence and put money into India's startup movement. There's no reason why India's insurance companies and pension funds and high net individuals should not put money into India's startup movement. If Indian resources get into India's startup movement, India's startup movement will only grow, it'll only blossom, it'll become 100. Our target must be that by 2030, from being the third best startup ecosystem, we must become the number one startup ecosystem. And that would require us to get a lot of Indian resources into the Indian startup movement. Right. Could because, you, you yeah. know, deep, uh, we need the next big of disruption in deep tech. You know, in areas of a uh, uh, whole range of battery storage, electric mobility, artificial intelligence, uh, you know, biopharma, all these are new cutting edge areas of growth and those areas require a lot of patient capital. You need long term money. So we need a fund of funds for that, but we need a lot of India's private sector money to get into the startup movement. So there's a lot of opportunity there, but, huge there's, also, opportunity. but there's also risk. Huge, yeah, yeah, huge, of, huge opportunities, but you'll have to take risks. And therefore, what the fund of fund does is that it supports the venture funds. You know, a number of venture funds spend money into the startup movement, but a part of that risk is taken by the fund of funds. And therefore, we need a fund of funds for deep tech startups. Right. R&D is another area where uh, many have observed India perhaps can do better. Uh, in fact, it's stated that India needs to take measures to boost R&D investment to at least 25 to 3% of the GDP. What do you see uh, as far as the potential benefits if we actually get to such a level? And can we get to such a level of so spending India needs to do two things. One is... Uh, the government has already come out with a one lakh crore scheme, which is one of the biggest schemes announced in the budget uh, for R&D. And therefore, the private sector now to, needs to step in the act and work with the government on utilizing this one lakh crore scheme for R&D. Secondly, I, my belief has been that all R&D centers that we create must be in Indian universities and colleges, in IITs, in IIII. And if uh, across the world, when you see, you look at all the major innovation centers, if you look at all the R&D, that happens in universities. Young college students then go and work in these R&D centers. They do their startups. That's how Silicon Valley became a great place because of Stanford. 
and that's that's how disruption takes place and to my mind all this r and d centers that we have put up need to be linked with the uh, universities and colleges and the third big thing to to my mind is really ensuring that all indian companies all indian startups register the patents in india and patent register registration trademark registration is very very critical this has been hugely speeded up in india the time being taken is as quick as in usa and japan and we need to ensure that all indian entrepreneurs all indian startups do patent registration right we've seen a lot of work happen on skill development and that's perhaps very important in terms of people getting their employment we also are looking at a situation where you know we are seeing a youth come in from villages to cities it's been happening over the years but still about 65% of our economy is based or uh, population is dependent on agriculture uh, if you have to see all this rapid change happen if the demographic dividend has to actually real results uh, we will have to see our a uh, skill development programs ramp up drastically and also our cities better place to receive these huge population of people who are coming in whichever part of the country you look at no it's an important question because by 2047 india will be providing 30% of the skill manpower to the world and that why, that is why skilling has been laid such a focus in both by the skill development ministry and also by the new educational policy the important thing is that we need to change much of our course curriculum in this, in many of our colleges and universities so that we we need about a million plus product developers we need prompt engineers we need data scientists we need machine learners we need artificial intelligence engineers these are in short supply the demand is for new cutting edge areas of growth and therefore in all these new areas of growth we need to produce many more in, you know data scientists machine learners artificial engineers so that we are not able to we are able to provide them not merely for our startups and for our corporates but also for the world community that is those are the areas where the world will grow in the coming years those are all sunrise areas of growth you, you need you need a huge amount of expertise and knowledge now for artificial intelligence for battery storage for electric vehicles our course curriculum needs to be restructured for that yeah and the sectors that you particularly mentioned you know how can we drive that manufacturing growth is of course been an issue of much debate you know are these pli schemes enough what more needs to be done to drive that kind of manufacturing growth that perhaps would take the economy that much further in your view so let me first of all say that the production linked incentive scheme was aimed at only one objective and that was to produce global champions because india needs many more large companies we need 10000 more large companies when large companies big companies come in they produce their own chain of tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 manufacturers when maruti happened you had 10000 more tier 2 tier 3 manufacturers who become supplier to maruti and therefore it's very important that we have large companies because they will then create the tier 2 tier 3 manufacturers second important thing is that indian companies should not look at the domestic market of india the market is not just india the market is the world we should look at look at i mean uh, many when an american company starts they look at the world market the chinese company looks at the world market we should look at the whole world as a market and therefore the market is not the 1.4 billion people of india the market is the 5 billion people of the world uh, and they will be who are moving they are moving from poverty to middle class now india has done a huge amount of dis disruption at population scale for india we need to carry our digital public infrastructure we need to carry all our uh, you know new startups like Uh, you you look at what we've done in fast payment what we have done in wealth creation by taking stock market to tie to tie three cities what we have done in uh, providing insurance in one minute flat on our mobile nowhere in the world does this happen we need to take all this to the world now rest of the world must benefit from what india's innovation has done right uh, you've expressed concerns in the past about us laws subsidizing domestic green hydrogen production you've called them against being free markets uh, also of course the is increase that the us has you know has geopolitical implications in terms of how it could impact on other countries such as russia and saudi arabia's production so my question to you is how do you assess the impact of this on global stability and security no so the important point mother was that i said this in the context of the world 
moving from fossil fuel to clean fuel. Now, even if we were to put all our electricity as renewable energy, you need, there are hard to abate sectors like steel, cement, uh, refinery, fertilizer, where you need uh, clean energy. Now, that, those things can't run on electricity. We import gas, we import fossil fuel worth about $180 billion. Our objective is that we should produce green hydrogen from renewable energy and decarbonize all these sectors like steel, cement, and uh, refinery, etc. The cost of green hydrogen is $4.5. Our ambition is that by the time we become 100, we should bring it down to $1 per kilogram. Now, what has happened in the United States is that they are, through the Inflation Reduction Act, they are doing protectionism by saying that we will support only green hydrogen made in the United States. You can't have decarbonization and climate action across the world if you say that I'm going to support only things which are made in the United States of America. You need a global policy for that, and that will impact green hydrogen in Australia, in Korea, in India. Now, United States is a free market believer, but it is doing protectionism of the highest kind for green hydrogen and for clean technology. It needs to spread out its market across the world to enable the world to produce clean energy. But do you see this kind of hypocrisy also when it comes to issues relating to climate change? Because, you know, countries like India are given very tough uh, emission targets, but do you see the West actually living up to what it should be doing? That's been a criticism in the past. So a classic example of that are all the, you, if you look at it, India is the only G20 country which has achieved its NDC target nine years ahead of schedule. We have achieved 187 gigawatt. None of the G20 countries have been able to achieve their, uh, you know, NDC target which they had committed to in, 20, in 2021 at Paris. So India is a leading achiever in climate change. No other country has been able to do what India has done in climate change. Right. I also also ask you a simple question, you know, and this is a question just as a pure citizen. You know, last few years we've been seeing Delhi, the national capital. I know it's not strictly your ambit, it's more related to the environment. But we're looking at a kind of inertia of Delhi being the most polluted city in the entire world. And this happens year after year for the last five to six years. If you ask the state government, they'll say, ask the center. If you ask the center, they'll say, it's the state government that's not doing it. Rapid implementation of electronic vehicles has not happened. There's not even a ban on new diesel vehicles registration in the national capital. Now, these are some things that can immediately, of course, cause some kind of impact on ground. And also, of course, states need to be sensitized. Some amount of work has happened. Some states have been sensitized. Some have not been. There is a political fight over it. Unfortunately, our own brand of the national capital and the health of our citizens of Delhi, you know, suffers as a consequence of this. As someone who's been in administration, what's the solution for a deadlock that we're seeing on this? No, I entirely agree with you on this, that uh, uh, irrespective of who's responsible, I think post-election there should be a major priority for both the state government and the central government. Our target must be that we should actually electrify all our two-wheelers, three-wheelers, and all the buses in Delhi. And it's not merely Delhi. I'm talking about all the major metros. I'm talking about even a city like Bhagalpur, which is the most, uh, which has the worst clean qual air quality today. So all these cities need to be cleaned up. And I think we should demonstrate our great political and ad administrative will to clean up these cities and improve the quality of life of our citizens, not merely not merely by going electric of two-wheelers, three-wheelers, but also by ensuring that we are able to create an economic model uh, for a lot of uh, 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 agricultural waste which comes out and which is then burnt and which pollutes, and also for ensuring that uh, Delhi is turned into one of the cleanest cities in the world. Clean uh, public infrastructure, for instance, public transport, electric buses. Now, these are things that we hear, but actually... No, I think a lot of action was taken on that. Uh, for many years, the Delhi government didn't procure buses, but then the central government bought 5,500 buses, uh, which was pooled together. And those, that demonstrated that if you pooled, much like LED, which was when we pooled it, we brought the prices down. When we pooled 5,500 buses, the price of an electric bus was actually cheaper than the combustion bus. Oh. The next round of 10,000 buses is being done by the Ministry of 
housing and urban affair and the third round will be many more than uh, will be 20,000 and therefore my view is that that will make India the manufacturing center for electric buses in India. We should keep pushing for large scale reform in many of these areas. Right. But uh, just, just sticking with Delhi for a minute, one of the things that's also uh, talked about, we saw a rapid change in the national capital, you know, in the 20, early 2000s, the 2010 uh, era, etc. during the Commonwealth Games, of course, scams were also there. But there is a sense that infrastructure growth of the national capital region, a lot of central government push has been there, but from the state government side, it hasn't been as much as it was in the past. Do you see a marked change in the last few years? No, uh, I, my personal view on that is that the central government will have to take the, will have to work with the state government to really make India, Delhi a top class city. I think during the G20, the lieutenant governor took the lead and really transformed it, irrespective of, uh, you know, the, sta the state government, LG took a lot of lead and helped us to transform Delhi and made it a top class city during G20. But that has to be, as he, as he himself said, will be a continuous process in keeping Delhi a top class city. Right. Mr. Gant, also key priorities from here on for India's growth journey. How do you role, uh, look at India's role evolving particularly in international forums in coming years? So my view on this is that uh, your international uh, stature is a function of your economic growth. And my view on that is that India's growth story has to be uh, very long term. We should not look at it as a short-term perspective. We should look at a 30-year perspective, which the Prime Minister has talked about, the Amritka period. And if you have to achieve that 9 to 10 percent growth, you have to do several things. One of which is we have to do very sustainable urbanization. You know, you will see 500 million people getting into urbanization, so you have to do sustainable urbanization. You have to do manufacturing on a large scale to create new jobs. And you, that means that you will have to take population away from agriculture into manufacturing. And third, that you will have to export in a very big way. And export, you know, every time India has grown, it's grown because of exports. So India's exports will have to be grow in a very big way. And fourthly, as I said, uh, the real action will have to be now in the states to grow. In a, the states, you need 10 to 12 states growing at 10% plus. You know, if states grows, India's grows. And do you see that transformation happening from those states which are not considered the traditional strong, you know, manufacturing hubs? As you said, it's not just the, maybe the so this western and southern last states. few elections have demonstrated that good governance is good politics. And I think uh, good governance, by good governance I mean that good implementation also. And the central government has demonstrated that good governance is good politics. And therefore, this message of uh, good governance and good politics from the central government must spread to all the other states of India. The Prime Minister, interestingly, you know, recently uh, in the run-up to the elections a few months ago said that there are four castes that he's focusing on, when there's this huge political debate about which caste, etc. Uh, he said, for me, it's only the poor, it's women, it's farmers, uh, etc., and the youth, who are the four castes that would be focused on, as far as he is concerned. Do you really see this reflected so far in the policy priorities of the government, and how do you see this further from here on being reflected? So, you know that Prime Minister is talking about 2047. Uh, Prime Minister is talking about a growth agenda of Amrit Kal. The Prime Minister is talking about leaving no one behind, and he's talking about Vixit Bharat. Whereas some other people are taking us back into the caste era, which is very tragic because India can't be divided on caste anymore. India's, it's a very aspirational young India. And the aspirational young India wants to grow, it wants to prosper, it wants to get into new areas of growth. And therefore my belief, my belief is very important that, you know, this theory of uh, women-led development, which we brought in into the G20, the fact that transformational work has been done, you know, when uh, bank accounts were opened, only 18% of the women had bank accounts. Today, 90% of the women have bank accounts in India. The transformation that has been done through is being done through uh, drone didis that you form self-help groups. And today, in the morning, I met a, uh, a Kisan didi who's actually getting, earning about 
5,000 rupees a day because of that scheme. So you are transforming India through women. And similarly, because it's a young India, you need to transform the youth of India through skilling programs, which is now being done. And you need to enhance agriculture productivity and ensure that the farmers of the country benefit. And that will happen through dairy, that will happen through floriculture, that will happen through horticulture, and many of the allied activities which will ensure a higher earning for our farmers. There's also a question of Atmanir Bharat. No one can deny that, of course, self-reliance is important. But there are those who will question, how is the Atmanir Bharat focus of this government different from the, say, self-reliance that was propounded by previous regimes, in your view? So uh, this government's uh, view is that in many areas, uh, let's look at defense, for instance. You know, uh, we, were, we were importing all defense equipments till now. The government today says that so many equipments have to be made in India. And that has led India not only to use uh, many of our startups, the IDEX program, etc. We Last year, we've done 16,000 crore worth of exports of defense equipments. And over a period of time, we'll put, end up producing national champions who will do defense manufacturing. Now, when you do defense manufacturing, you are actually giving... Uh, rise to many new areas of growth, like the United States, internet came out of defense manufacturing. So once you do defense manufacturing in India and make India the defense manufacturer, you'll cut down huge imports, first of all. And secondly, you will give rise to many new technologies within India. And this is seen across sectors that where we are importing nation, we are increasingly becoming a um, manufacturing nation. And we are now exporting those technologies to the rest of the world. And there are those who say that, you know, even this push for economy, as far as our policy is concerned, this Atmanirbhata cannot go without a similar push as far as our culture, as far as our own, uh, uh, you know, civilizational past and heritage is concerned. How do you see that push of the government coming in? So one thing I've seen that in the last uh, few years, we, I see a huge amount of national pride. I mean, there's a, there's a feeling that uh, we should not ape the West. There's a huge feeling that we should work on our strength, our own culture, our own civilization, our own strength, and there's a massive nas national pride to be able to achieve that. That national pride I'd never seen before. Right. Thank you so much, Amitabh Gant, for talking to us uh, so candidly and uh, taking us through several aspects of the Indian economy. Thank you so much, sir, for speaking to us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Martha. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kant and Madhav. Let's have a big round of applause for the man who's actually led that transformation when it comes to the big G20 journey. And um, OK, I think we should get ready for our next guest. We've been waiting to hear from him. Remember, uh, this is the union minister, Anurag Thakur. And as we go along the day, talking about India Unstoppable, it is time to hear from him now for our next session. We will be joined by one of the government's most energetic ministers, uh, someone who handles multiple portfolios. Remember, it's Anurag Thakur. It's often said that every business is a digital business now. But it could soon be changed to say that every business is also about artificial intelligence business. This is the new talk of the town. Should we be scared about AI, deepfake videos? A lot of that conversation uh, you know, is being driven right now. So should there be a worry of deepfakes using AI that has grown e exponentially? Do you remember the government has also spoken about this concern in the run-up to elections, that we all must be aware about this concern. How can this be addressed? So we will ask that question to the minister once he's here. I'm told he's in the house, and he should be in any moment now. And he's going to be speaking about that interpretation of regulating information in the age of AI. And that's where this conversation will be driven towards. He's also the INB minister. And uh, again, like I said, when you have ministers in the house, there will be political questions. He's hit out earlier at the Aam Aadmi Party, at Arvind K. Jiva, a lot of other issues that he's going to be speaking about. There has been a transformational change also in the sports ministry. Remember that he looks at very, very closely. So we will welcome the uh, Minister for Information, Broadcasting, Youth Affairs and Sports, Anurag Thakur, in the house any moment now. I'm told he's already in and should be here amongst us shortly. And uh, 
having these conversations spearheaded is going to be our uh, group editor-in-chief, Navika Kumar, any moment now. As always, in case you haven't used the hashtag TN Summit 2024, I urge all of you to use that hashtag. Put your comments, your feedback on the social media and share your feedback. Remember, it's that feedback of yours that uh, essentially drives a lot of these conversations. A lot of our viewers have been speaking about what we've done through the day, what essentially could we do better the next time around. So do keep that uh, feedback coming, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we'll also have Anurag Thakur with us in just a moment. I'm told he's just going to take another few minutes. He's just... He's just been here now for a while, and um, we've been seeing significant sessions. We are also, in fact, going to be having uh, Kirti San joining us at the end of the day. We had Kangna yesterday, and it'll be interesting to see the kind of um, you know, impact that cinema also has in today's day and time. We talk of the soft part. What more can India achieve uh, through the cinema, again, is something that I think most of us are interested in. And for all of um, our guests still at the doors, I request all of you to please come in, be seated. We are just expecting the Union Minister Anurag Thakur to be in the house any moment now. The conversation is going to be about AI, about deep fake videos. Not sure how many of you have actually you know, encountered this yourself, but we've seen a lot of chatter about it. So should you be concerned? What is it that the government is doing to control that, to ensure that there is a level playing field? to also ensure that there is no you know, disinformation that is penetrated, particularly keeping in mind the all-important Lok Sabha elections. We will hear from the minister very, very shortly. And like I said, it's been two fascinating days of bringing together multiple sessions uh, for all of you. You've been a fantastic audience, and uh, you know, I hope that you've enjoyed this as much as we've enjoyed this in bringing to you from a variety of speakers, right from union ministers, to people who are influencers, to people who are uh, digital content creators, to a lot more of them. And um, any moment now, at the back, if I may request all our guests to please take their seats and continue to ensure that your phones remain in the silent mode, if possible, please. And uh, we are just awaiting the union minister, Anurag Thakur, to be in the house. Okay, any moment now, I'm told that he's just going to be inside here. So we'll quickly recap what has happened through the day. As far as this big conversation goes, you've heard from Rajnath Singh to Hardeep Singh Puri to also uh, Ashwini Vaishnav. And um, important is also, I think, what Piyush Goelji said. He remembers he's going to be contesting the elections, and that's exactly what we asked him about this entire journey from the cabinet, from the Rajya Sabha to the uh, Lok Sabha is contesting that big battle this time around. And um, Anurag Thakur is our next speaker. He's in the house, ladies and gentlemen. We continue to expect your patience. And for all of the guests who are still not on their seats, request all of you, please, to remain seated. And uh, we are just moments away from beginning this conversation that's going to be led by Navika and Anurag Thakur just joins her any moment. Now for the moment, Madhav is here. Madhav, it's been an interesting conversation that you've had with Amitabh Khan. Well, yes, and he's, of course, uh, someone who's seen government policy at mm -hmm. the highest level. He's been, of course, associated with the Niti Aayog. He's someone who's led India's diplomatic initiative in terms of G20. And yes, Mr. Anurag Thakur now. In fact, a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for the Union Minister for Information and Broadcasting, Mr. Anurag Thakur, who is, of course, now on stage. We also uh, welcome on a stage, in fact, uh, Mr. Subramaniam, who will join us on a stage as well and uh, will give a shawl to Mr. Anurag Thakur, would like to invite Mr. Subramaniam, a group CEO of uh, Times Group, to join us on stage and present a token of our appreciation. Mr. Subraman is just joining us uh, very shortly and uh, will be presenting that token of uh, appreciation. So I request you to join us on stage, please, and uh, present. I would request.
Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you Union Information and Broadcasting and Sports Minister, Mr. Anurag Thakur. Anurag Thakur, you are ready to fight for the chunaav. The ticket has come to you. The party has given you a target. 400 pounds. Do you have a target? पहली बात तो जहां मेरी बात है सबको नमस्कार मैं चार बार का लोकसभा सांसद हमीरपुर हिमाचल प्रदेश से हूं आभारी हूं मोदी जी का अमित शाह जी का नड्डा जी का जिन्होंने पांचवी बार फिर भरोसा दिलाया है और चुनाव लड़ने के लिए भेजा है मैं आपको विश्वास दिलाता हूं पिछली बार से भी ज्यादा रिकॉर्ड मतों से जीत कर आएंगे और जहां तक आपने पूछा अब की बार कैमरामैन फोकस करो आई एम सुपर कॉन्फिडेंट अब की बार 400 पार जब इतना आपका इरादा मजबूत है जब इतना कॉन्फिडेंस आपके पास है तो फिर कांग्रेस की सरकार हिमाचल में तोड़ क्यों रहे हैं देखिए दो बातें इरादा मजबूत है निश्चित तौर पर जो कहा वो किया तोड़ने का काम नहीं देश को आगे बढ़ाने का काम जब हम आए थे तब लड़खड़ाती चरमराती अर्थव्यवस्था थी इंडिया वॉज अमंग्स द फ्रेजाइल फाइव इकोनॉमी ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड टुडे वी आर द फिफ्थ लार्जेस्ट इकोनॉमी तो नाविका जी लड़खड़ाती चरमराती से पांचवी बड़ी अर्थव्यवस्था बनाया है केवल यही नहीं और क्या 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 एक ही बार बता दूं अगर आपकी अनुमति हो तो बिल्कुल इंडिया अनस्टॉपेबल है टाइम्स नाउ समिट का थीम तो तो एक अनस्टॉपेबल अनुराग ठाकुर भी सुन लीजिए <laughs> चौहत्तर एयरपोर्ट 2014 में थे आज 150 एयरपोर्ट हैं मात्र पांच शहरों में मेट्रो थी आज 20 शहरों में मेट्रो है उस समय तीन मेडिकल कॉलेज थे आज सात मेडिकल कॉलेज है पचास हजार सीटें उस समय एमबीबीएस की थी आज एक लाख सीटें एमबीबीएस की है उस समय इकतीस हजार सीटें पोस्ट ग्रेजुएशन की थी आज पैंसठ हजार सीटें हैं उस समय मात्र सोलह आईएम थे आज तेईस आईएम एम है उस समय बारह आईआईटी थे आज उन्नीस आईआईटी हैं उस समय सात एम्स थे आज बाईस एम है उस समय छियानवे किलोमीटर नेशनल हाईवे थे आज डेढ़ लाख किलोमीटर नेशनल हाईवे उस समय तीन किलोमीटर ग्रामीण सड़कें थी आज छह लाख पचहत्तर हजार किलोमीटर ग्रामीण सड़कें हैं उस समय कोई चंद्रयान मिशन नहीं था आज चंद्रमा पे भी तिरंगा झंडा है और यही नहीं उस समय एक भी वंदे भारत नहीं थी आज इकतालीस वंदे भारत है उस समय बीस हजार किलोमीटर रेलवे लाइन इलेक्ट्रीफाइड थी आज इकतालीस हजार किलोमीटर इलेक्ट्रीफाइड रेलवे लाइन है उस समय आवाज दबाने का काम होता था स्वतंत्रता है अभिव्यक्ति की भी और अपनी क्रिएटिविटी की भी उस समय एक राष्ट्रीय ऑपोजिशन पार्टी थी कांग्रेस आज इंडिया अलायंस है ये भूल गए देखिए पहले तो मैं आपको थोड़ा सुधार दूं इंडी अलायंस जो अहंकार और घमंड से भरा हुआ है अगर वो इतने पाक साफ होते इतने ईमानदार होते तो अपना नाम क्यों बदलते काम तो वही है केवल नाम ही बदला है क्योंकि टू घोटाला था कॉमनवेल्थ खेल घोटाला था अंतरिक्ष घोटाला था देवास घोटाला था अगस्ता वेस्टलैंड घोटाला था कोयला घोटाला था और नेशनल हेराल्ड घोटाला था सबमरीन घोटाला था घोटाले पे घोटाला था घोटालों का बोलबाला था और आज वो चेहरा लेकर नहीं जा सकते थे इसीलिए यूपीए का चोला उतार दिया और घमंडिया गठबंधन ने इंडी अलायंस नाम रख लिया लेकिन उसमें जोड़ा कौन चारा घोटाले वाले लालू जी जमीन के बदले जॉब वाले तेजस्वी और लालू जी जिनका एक नहीं अनेक नेता आज जेल में है पार्षद से लेके विधायक से लेके शिक्षा मंत्री से लेके स्वास्थ्य मंत्री उप मुख्यमंत्री से लेकर कट्टर बेईमान अरविंद केजरीवाल भी आज जेल में है इनको जोड़ा है और ये वो अरविंद केजरीवाल है नाविका जी जो उस समय कहते थे याद करिए सब लोग जी दो की बात यह अपनी बेटियों की कसम खाकर कहते थे राजनीति में नहीं आऊंगा फिर आए फिर कहा कांग्रेस से हाथ नहीं मिलाऊंगा पता नहीं हाथ तो कितना मिलाया गले जरूर लगाया है और ऐसा गठबंधन बनाया है कि चोर चोर मोसेरे भाई एक ही मंच पर इकट्ठे होकर नजर आए हैं आप मुझे बताइए 
शीश महल घोटाला तो किसी और ने नहीं ये आपका ही चैनल का बहुत बड़ा काम है जो आपने इनके भ्रष्टाचार को उजागर किया आपके एक नहीं तीन तीन पत्रकारों को धक्के देकर आम आदमी पार्टी ने अपने दफ्तर से निकाला था नाविका जी आज आप वो सवाल नहीं पूछती हैं लेकिन देश याद रख रहा है आप मुझे बिल्कुल याद है हमने आ, आपके पत्रकार भावना गई थी आपको याद होगा पंजाब के उपचुनाव में जलंधर में गया इन्होंने कहकर आपका रिपोर्टर बुलाया लेकिन एक महिला पत्रकार को जिस तरह से अपमानित आम आदमी पार्टी ने किया लॉकअप में रखा बेल मिलने के बाद भी 24 घंटे लगे छोड़ने के लिए शौचालय तक उनको इस्तेमाल नहीं करने दिया आप सोचिए महिला पत्रकार के साथ क्या दुर्व्यवहार किया होगा ये लोग आएंगे साथ साथ ये भ्रष्टाचार के दलदल में डूबे हुए लोग हैं इनके पास अपनी उपलब्धि कोई नहीं जाने के लिए मैं तो कहता हूं आप आइए अपनी उपलब्धियों के साथ हमारा मुकाबला कीजिए लेकिन इनके पास उपलब्धि कोई नहीं सुबह गाली मोदी जी को शाम को गाली मोदी जी को रात को गाली मोदी जी को अब तक 120 गालियां निकालने का रिकॉर्ड बनाया है अब शब्द कहें लेकिन देश की जनता की ताकत देखिए जितनी गाली इन्होंने निकाली है उतनी बड़ी जीत नरेंद्र मोदी की हर बार करके दिखाई है अनुराग ठाकुर जी भावना किशोर के साथ जो हुआ और जो जंग हमने लड़ी हम हम खूबी उसे जानते हैं मैं ये नहीं कह रही कि जो तब हुआ हम उस पर कायम नहीं है शीश महल की जो बड़ी स्टोरी थी वो टाइम्स नाउ और टाइम्स नाउ नव भारत ने की थी लेकिन सवाल ये है कि टाइमिंग टाइमिंग ऑफ अरेस्ट चुनाव से पहले आप हेमंत सोरेन को जेल में डाल देते हैं झारखंड के मुख्यमंत्री थे आप चुनाव से पहले अरविंद केजरीवाल को जेल में डालते हैं दिल्ली के मुख्यमंत्री हैं एक ने रिजाइन कर दिया जेल जाने से पहले एक ने अभी रिजाइन नहीं किया जेल जाने के बाद भी लेकिन समय और टाइमिंग ये महत्व रखते हैं कहीं आप विपक्षों विपक्षी आवाज तो नहीं दबा रहे भारतीय जनता पार्टी वो राजनीतिक दल है जिसने जनसंघ के समय से लेकर अब तक अभिव्यक्ति की आजादी की लड़ाई लड़ी इंदिरा गांधी की इमरजेंसी के खिलाफ अगर कोई राजनीतिक दल खड़ा हुआ था तो उस समय भी हम थे और आज भी अभिव्यक्ति की आजादी फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच के हम पक्षधर हैं और आगे भी रहेंगे इस बात का मैं आपको विश्वास दिलाता हूं जहां तक बात आती भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ क्या करना है चलिए मैं आपके करोड़ों दर्शकों से तो यहां नहीं पूछ सकता लेकिन इस हॉल के अंदर जितने बुद्धिजीवी बैठे हैं आप सबसे पूछता हूं कि भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ लड़ाई होनी चाहिए कि नहीं होनी चाहिए क्या भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ कार्रवाई होनी चाहिए कि नहीं होनी चाहिए अगर होनी चाहिए तो टाइमिंग क्या होता है जिस देश में चुनाव एक साल में आठ आठ राज्यों में आते हैं आप मॉडल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट में घिरे रहते हैं हम वन नेशन वन इलेक्शन करवा के देश के हजारों करोड़ रुपया बचाने की बात करते हैं उसका विरोध ये सारे राजनीतिक दल करते हैं क्योंकि उनको पता है इलेक्शन कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट लगा रहेगा तो नाविका जी जैसे लोग सवाल पूछेंगे अरे भाई इलेक्शन आने वाला था कार्रवाई क्यों की अब मैं याद करूंगा मध्य प्रदेश का चुनाव हो तब कार्रवाई करो छत्तीसगढ़ का हो तो कार्रवाई करो क्या करें नाविका जी महादेव ऐप घोटाला भूपेश बघेल ने किया था छोड़ देते हैं चुनाव के समय अभी कार्रवाई हो रही है अब भी हो रही और देखिए हुआ क्या है मनीष सिसोदिया जी जेल में गए क्या उस समय कोई चुनाव था सत्येंद्र जैल जी जेल गए क्या कोई चुनाव था संजय सिंह जेल में गए क्या कोई चुनाव था इनके पंजाब के स्वास्थ्य मंत्री दो महीने में सरकार बनने के भ्रष्टाचार के चलते इस्तीफा देना पड़ा इनका पार्षद जेल में इनका विधायक जेल में क्या तब कोई चुनाव थे तब भी चुनाव नहीं था लेकिन सच्चाई यह है कि इनका भ्रष्टाचार था भ्रष्टाचार है और इस भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ पहले भी कार्रवाई हुई और जांच एजेंसियां आगे भी कार्रवाई करती रहेंगी चुनाव का इससे कुछ लेना देना ही नहीं है आप एक बात तय कर लीजिए कि भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ लड़ाई होनी भी चाहिए कि नहीं होनी चाहिए हमने वायदा किया था देश से कि कांग्रेस के भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ हम जंग लड़के आए हैं देश को कहा था मोदी जी ने ना खाऊंगा ना खाने दूंगा दस साल के बाद मैं मोदी सरकार का मंत्री आपके सामने खड़ा होकर कहता हूं दस पैसे का आरोप भी भ्रष्टाचार का कोई मोदी जी पर नहीं लगा पाया ईमानदार थे ईमानदार हैं और ईमानदार रहेंगे दस साल हो गए लेकिन टू जी का केस कहीं आगे नहीं बढ़ा हाई कोर्ट ने अब इजाजत दी है कि सीबीआई अपील कर सके लेकिन जेल अभी तक कोई नहीं गया है पहले के जो केस थे उसमें आपका सब... ये सपना भी पूरा करेंगे अब उसके लिए दस साल और लगेंगे नहीं 
ये तो कानूनी प्रक्रिया देखिए निर्भया केस हुआ 16 दिसंबर 2012 को रेप की घटना दिल्ली में हुई पूरा देश आग बबूला था नया कानून बनाने की बात हुई कितने वर्ष लगे कितने वर्ष लगे नाविका जी दो तीन वर्ष लगे दो तीन वर्ष आठ वर्ष लग गए मुझे लगता है उसके बाद भी लेकिन जो कानूनी प्रक्रिया वो अपना काम कर रही है लेकिन मैं आपको थोड़ा सा पीछे ले जाना चाहता हूं टू जी घोटाले की पूरी जांच और कार्रवाई और उसका क्लोजिंग कौन करके चला गया था पहले बताइए जरा देश की जनता को किस हफड़ा दफड़ी में कांग्रेस ने पूरा केस का ही बेड़ा गर्क कर दिया क्योंकि मनमोहन सिंह जी की सरकार में पूरा शेल्टर मिला था ए राजा एंड कंपनी को और ये दक्षिण भारत में मैं कहना चाहता हूं कि इंग्लिश में कहना चाहता हूं एट दैट टाइम द शेल्टर वॉज गिवन बाय देन यूपीए गवर्नमेंट टू प्रोटेक्ट मिस्टर ए राजा एंड अदर्स हुर इन्वॉल्व in the 2g scam and today if the permission is granted we can commit to the country that there will be a transparent probe and there will be action taken as per the law aap jab power mein aaye the aapne 2g ghotala commonwealth game ghotala robert wadra ka dlf aur aur tamam dusre ghotalon ki baat ki thi inme se ek bhi ghotala kahi conclusion par nahi pahuncha hai koi jail nahi gaya hai इसीलिए नाविका जी देखिए बहुत आपने अच्छा सवाल पूछा जेल गए केजरीवाल मैं चाहता हूं आप इस प्रोग्राम के बाद एक बार बताइए कि कब कब कितने कितने समय के लिए डेट रॉबर्ट वड्रा ने ली ईडी के सामने पेश होने के लिए अगर ईडी उनके घर चले जाए तो आप कहते हो घर चले गई अरविंद केजरीवाल को हमने नौ बार समन दिए दिए कि नहीं दिए जी नौ बार समन दिए क्यों नहीं आए बड़ी नैतिकता की बात करते थे राजनीति में आने से पहले कहते थे सोनिया गांधी जी को गिरफ्तार करो दो दिन का रिमांड करो इंटेरोगेट करो सच सामने आएगा अब अरविंद केजरीवाल सच सामने लाने के लिए कभी पेश तो हो जाए मैं इसलिए सब कह रहा हूं कि बोलता है कुछ है करते कुछ हैं अगर नौ ईडी के समन के बाद भी वो नहीं आए तो ईडी को उनके घर जाना पड़ा अब गए वहां पूछताछ की फिर गिरफ्तार किया अब आप कहते घर जाके गिरफ्तार कर लिया क्या करते हैं क्या करना चाहिए मुझे बताइए भ्रष्टाचारियों के साथ क्या करना चाहिए लेकिन आज वो कोर्ट में अपना केस खुद आर्ग्यू कर रहे थे और उन्होंने कहा ये बीजेपी की कॉन्स्पिरेसी है कि वो आम आदमी पार्टी को क्रश करना चाहती है क्योंकि चुनाव में तो आप आम आदमी पार्टी को हरा नहीं सके उनकी बात में कुछ दम है नाविका जी दो में अभी हाल ही में देश का सबसे बड़ा प्रदेश उत्तर प्रदेश में विधानसभा के चुनाव हुए आम आदमी पार्टी ने कहा हम सरकार बनाएंगे अरे सरकार तो छोड़िए साहब जमानत नहीं बचा पाए सारी सीटों पे जमाने जब्त हो गई सब सीटों पे जमाने जब्त हो गई उत्तराखंड में कहते सरकार बनाएंगे सब जगह जमानत जब्त होगी जो इनका प्रदेश का अध्यक्ष था छोड़ के भारतीय जनता पार्टी में आ गया कि बहुत फ्रॉड पार्टी है ये एक ही सीट जीत पाए जलंधर की वो भी एम छोड़कर आ गया कि हम इनसे मुक्ति दिला दो जहां भगवंत मान जी अपनी लोकसभा की सीट जीते हुए थे पहले मुख्यमंत्री बनने के चार महीने के अंदर उपचुनाव हुआ वो भी सीट हार गए अब आप मुझे बताइए इसमें मैं क्या कर रहा हूं ये तो जनता इनको चुनाव हरा रही है ये बड़ी बड़ी बातें करके गुजरात गए थे मध्य प्रदेश गए बाकी जगह गए क्या मिला राजस्थान गए मुझे बताइए ना जरा देश को पर उन्होंने आपको भी हराया दिल्ली में भी पंजाब में भी हराया उनकी सरकार है दो स्टेट में भाई ऐसा है ये लोकतंत्र है जनता ने उनको वोट दिया है कि हम इसका स्वागत करते हैं जनता ने देखा कि मुफ्त में बड़े बड़े वायदे किए गए बड़ी बड़ी बातें की गई आज जनता अपने आप को ठगा हुआ महसूस कर रही है और अभी लोकसभा का चुनाव होने दीजिए तेरह सीटें हैं पंजाब की आम आदमी पार्टी को उसमें क्या मिलने वाला आपके सामने आ जाएगा बड़ा जीरो लगने वाला है वहां पर एक मैं चैलेंज करती हूँ आपको आप आज कह रहे हैं चार जून को मैं फिर से इंटरव्यू बड़ी जल्दी आम आदमी पार्टी के पक्ष ले लिया आपने चैलेंज करते हो कमाल है मैं देश के आईएनबी मिनिस्टर को बोल रही हूँ आप रिकॉर्ड पे कह रहे हैं जीरो आएंगी तो मैं तो अगर जीरो नहीं आई तो इंटरव्यू देंगे मैं ना, अभी भी कहता हूँ जिस तरह से दो में दो में आम आदमी पार्टी को जीरो सीटें दिल्ली में आई थी इस बार पंजाब में भी उनको जीरो सीटें ही आएंगी आप जरा पंजाब में जाइए तो सही मैं पंजाब से आती हूँ सड़कों मैं तीस साल वहां पे रहा हूं आप तीस साल नहीं रहे होंगे 
मैं पंजाबी ठेठ बोलता बोला मेरे ना पंजाबी मैं तीस साल दिल्ली में रही हूँ आपकी सरकार नहीं रही मैं यही कह रहा हूँ सरकारें आने जानी अलग बात होती है नाविका जी वायदे करके भूल जाना ये फर्क पड़ता है देखिए इन्होंने बड़ी बड़ी बातें की किया क्या लेकिन मैं आज आपके कैमरा पे कहता हूं मैं आपके कैमरा मैन को कह सकता हूं कैमरा मैन फोकस करो चार करोड़ पक्के मकान बनाए जिसमें से तीन करोड़ रजिस्ट्री बहनों के नाम पे हैं पक्के मकान बारह करोड़ शौचालय बनाए जिनको इज्जत घर कहते हैं बहनों का मान सम्मान बढ़ाए तेरह करोड़ घरों को नल से जल दिया आजादी के बाद केवल तीन करोड़ थे तेरह करोड़ घरों को नल से जल दिया है इक्यावन करोड़ बैंक खाते खुलवाए दस करोड़ रसोई गैस के सिलेंडर दिए और आज वो गैस का सिलेंडर पांच सौ तीन रुपए में मिलता है उज्ज्वला वालों को पचानवे प्रतिशत घरों में बिजली पहुंचा दी है और अस्सी करोड़ लोगों को मुफ्त में अनाज दिया साठ करोड़ लोगों को पांच लाख का इलाज भी मुफ्त में दिया ये मोदी की गारंटी है और आगे के लिए भी गारंटी है कैमरा मैन अच्छे से फोकस करो क्योंकि अगला सवाल जो मैं पूछने वाली हूं उसका जवाब मुझे फोकस्ड कैमरे पे चाहिए आ, ये सवाल आज अरविंद केजरीवाल ने उठाया उन्होंने कहा ईडी ने कोई पैसे का ट्रेल नहीं निकाला आम आदमी पार्टी तक बल्कि जिन शरद रेड्डी की बात की जा रही है जिसका मनी ट्रेल की बात की जा रही है उसने बीजेपी को इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड्स के तहत पचपन करोड़ रुपए दिए मैं धन्यवाद हूं आपने सवाल पूछा कम से कम जनता को क्लैरिटी हो जानी चाहिए पहली बात तो मनी ट्रेल की बात सारी ईडी वहां पे बताएगी क्या क्या है आज कोर्ट में केस है इसलिए मैं ज्यादा उसमें नहीं कहूंगा लेकिन इतना जरूर कहूंगा ये वही अरविंद केजरीवाल हैं जो सत्येंद्र जैन को क्लीन चिट देते थे संजय जैन को क्लीन चिट देते थे जो मनीष सिसोदिया को क्लीन चिट देते थे और कहते थे मेरे यार होली के समय जेल में मैं बाहर हूं ईश्वर ने उनकी भी सुन ली इस बार होली में साथी थे और और ये क्लीन क्लीन चिट देते थे आज खुद क्लीन नहीं है जो नैतिकता की बात करते थे आज अनैतिक कार्य करने के बाद जब जेल में है ईडी की गिरफ्त में है तो नैतिकता कहां गई अरविंद केजरीवाल जी की जो कल तक कहते थे कुर्सी छोड़ दो आज फेविकोल का जोड़ है कुर्सी नहीं छोड़ पा रहे हैं नाविका जी एक बात तो ये आगे दूसरा है आपने शरदचंद्र रेड्डी की बात कही और आपने इलेक्ट्रोल बॉन्ड्स की बात कही यहां पे आपके उद्योगपति में देखता हूं कि बहुत बड़े बड़े बैठे हैं वर्षों से आप लोग भी राजनीतिक दलों को चंदा दे रहे होंगे पहले कैश में ही देते थे ये भारतीय जनता पार्टी जिसने कहा पोलिटिकल फंडिंग को और क्लीन एंड ट्रांसपेरेंट करना चाहिए हम में दम था हम इलेक्ट्रोल बॉन्ड्स को लेकर आए और कहा कि सत्ता पक्ष को दो भी विपक्ष को दो जिसका नहीं भी संभावना है कभी सत्ता में आने के उनको भी दो क्योंकि पॉलिटिकल फंडिंग है चुनाव लड़ने के लिए पार्टी चलाने के लिए उसके लिए है अगर हमने गलत काम करने ही होते हम लोग काहे के लिए इलेक्ट्रोल बॉन्ड्स लाते हैं कोई नहीं लाता हमने कहा लाने के लिए और जब सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने कहा हमने कहा बिल्कुल सच सामने आना चाहिए आपने देखा हमारे पास तीन सीटें हैं अठारह राज्यों में सरकारें हैं उसके बावजूद हमारा चंदा मात्र छह करोड़ है ममता बनर्जी की एक राज्य में सरकार है सोलह सौ सो करोड़ रुपया चंदा है एक राज्य में और जहां तक शरद रेड्डी ये शराब के व्यापारी के साथ साथ फार्मा से लेके बाकी इनके कई काम और होंगे ये कोई गुप्त खाते में पैसा नहीं दिया कि आके किसी को कैश दिया है इलेक्ट्रोल बॉन्ड दिए हैं ऐसा कैसे होता है कि शरद रेड्डी केजरीवाल को पैसे देते हैं तो वहां मनी ट्रेल आ, नाजायज पैसों की निकलती है आपको देते हैं तो अच्छा, जायज पैसे मैं इतने कहूंगा क्या उनको इलेक्ट्रोल बॉन्ड्स दिए हैं कैमरा <laughs> सवाल सवाल ये भी है शरद चंद्र रेड्डी की बात को अगर मैं आर्ग्यूमेंट को आगे लेकर जाऊं तो लिकर स्कैम के बारे में कहा जाता है सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने जो वर्डिक दिया उसके बाद विपक्ष कह रहा है कि ये इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड भी एक सबसे बड़ा स्कैम है इस पर क्या जवाब मुझे लगता है जब 10 वर्षों की मोदी जी की उपलब्धियों के सामने विपक्ष बौना नजर आता है तर्क खत्म हो जाता है नाम बदल कर भी जनता उनको स्वीकार नहीं करती है तब फिर एक बार झूठे आरोपों की बौछार होती है मैं इतना ही कहूंगा 2001 से 2024 तक 
जितना इन्होंने अपशब्द अभद्र भाषा का प्रयोग अशोभनीय शब्द कहे वो सारे मोदी जी के पक्ष में ही गए झूठ के पांव नहीं होते और विपक्ष आज भी जितना मर्जी प्रयास कर ले दुनिया के सर्वाधिक लोकप्रिय नेता पिछले चार वर्षों से भारत के प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी हैं और आज जब दुनिया कोविड के संकट में थी तब कहती थी भारत में भूखमरी और महामारी से मर जाएंगे आज मैं गर्व के साथ कहना चाहता हूं नेता ईमानदार था और हमें अपने नेता से पूरी उम्मीद थी तो आज महामारी से भी बचाया भूखमरी से भी बचाया और आज दुनिया कहती है उम्मीद कहीं दिखती है तो मोदी में उम्मीद कहीं दिखती है तो भारत में सवाल यह है कि आपके पास इतना बड़ा अलायंस पार्टनर है ईडी और सीबीआई का कि लोग कहते हैं कि आप रेड करवाते हैं किसी एजेंसी से और उसके कुछ हफ्तों बाद कुछ महीनों बाद आपके अकाउंट में इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड्स आ जाते हैं अब जस्ट बिकॉज वो इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड्स हैं तो वो जायज हैं ये या ये कहीं ना कहीं डर और धमकाने का ऐसा है एक अलग कार्यक्रम में माननीय अमित शाह ने बहुत क्लैरिटी के साथ बताया था कि बिल्कुल झूठे आरोप इनमें को सिर पैर ही नहीं है कोई दूर दूर तक लेना देना ही नहीं है चुनाव के समय चंदा है और हमें नहीं सभी पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज को आया है और ये बिल्कुल झूठे आरोप हैं मैं आपके चैनल पे कर बिल्कुल झूठे आरोप हैं जिनका एक भी कोई तर्क और तथ्य नहीं दे पाया राहुल गांधी ने भारत जोड़ो न्याय यात्रा की और मणिपुर से महाराष्ट्र तक गए महाराष्ट्र में बड़ी इंडिया अलायंस की रैली भी हुई मैं पूछना चाहती हूं कि कहीं आप ऑपोजिशन को अंडर एस्टिमेट तो नहीं कर रहे नहीं कम से कम मुझे खुशी इस बात की है विदेश यात्रा की बजाय आजकल भारत यात्रा भी कर रहे हैं नहीं तो हम तो विदेश यात्रा की कहानी आपके माध्यम से सुन रहे थे प्राप्त क्या हुआ अल्टीमेटली तो रिजल्ट आता है मध्य प्रदेश से गुजरी मध्य प्रदेश हार गए छत्तीसगढ़ से गुजरी छत्तीसगढ़ हार गए राजस्थान से गुजरी राजस्थान हार गए अब पूरे देश में गुजरी आप समझ रहे हो क्या क्या हारने वाले हैं लेकिन कहीं ना कहीं अगर सारी पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज एक प्लेटफॉर्म पर यह कह रही हैं कि बीजेपी कहर बरसा रही है ओपोजिशन को जिंदा ही नहीं रहने देना चाहती और तमाम वो एजेंसियां तमाम वो अपने पावर का इस्तेमाल कर रही हैं तो कहीं ना कहीं बीजेपी डरी हुई है क्या बीजेपी डरी हुई है मैं पहली बात तो आपको कह दू नाविका जी ईडी सीबीआई और जांच एजेंसियां स्वतंत्र हैं और ये भ्रष्टाचार करने वालों के खिलाफ कार्रवाई करती हैं ये पॉलिटिकल सिनेरियो क्या है कहां चुनाव है कहां नहीं इस पर उनको कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता है ये अपने सबूतों के आधार पर अपने समय सारिणी के आधार पर कार्रवाई करती हैं पहली बात तो ये इसका हमसे दूर दूर तक कोई लेना नहीं स्वतंत्र है दूर दूर तक कोई लेना कोई देना नहीं, नहीं। क्योंकि आपके नेताओं के यहाँ तो जाती नहीं इसीलिए दूर दूर घोटाला करेगा तो जाएंगे करेंगे नहीं तो क्यों आएंगे पहली बात ये दूसरा आपका सवाल क्या था ये आपके पार्टनर है सबसे बड़े नहीं वो तो मैंने क्या ही दिया नहीं तो सवाल तो यही है कि आप उनकी आवाज बंद करना चाहते हैं और आपके आरोप लगाए हुए लीडर्स अगर आपकी पार्टी ज्वाइन कर लेते हैं तो वहां नहीं जा, वहां जाना बंद हो जाता है नहीं नहीं ऐसा नहीं है नाविका जी कोर्ट में केस जब चलते हैं उसका ट्रायल होता है उस पर सबूत दिए जाते हैं उसका निर्णय आता है और भारत के लोकतंत्र में हमारी जो पूरी व्यवस्था है इसमें कोर्ट्स एक ओपन कोई भी जा सकता आप में से कोई जा सकता है कोई और भी जा सकता है आप मुझे बताइए इन्हीं कोर्ट्स में जाके अरविंद केजरीवाल जी ने आज तक कितनी बार जो झूठे आरोप लगाए उस पर कितनी बार माफी मांगी बताओ मानहानी के दावे तो कई बार उन्होंने माफी मांगी है नितिन गडकरी जी से अरुण जेटली जी से विक्रमजीत मजीठिया जी से बाकी से ऐसे पांच लोगों के नाम में कम से कम गिना सकता हूं जो व्यक्ति बोलता ही झूठ है फिर कोर्ट में जाके माफी मांगता है जनता के दरबार में उसका चेहरा पहले बेनकाब हो चुका है सबसे बड़ा झूठा अगर दुनिया में कोई है तो उनका नाम श्रीमान अरविंद केजरीवाल है लेकिन और मैं क्या नहीं सबूत है आपका रिकॉर्ड कहता है नहीं नहीं सबूत क्या है सबूत क्या है कोई मनी ट्रेल अरविंद केजरीवाल तक मिली नाविका जी अब चैनल पे मैं मेरा काम नहीं है ईडी सीबीआई का काम है अगर यही था 
तुम मनीष से सोदिया जी जेल में है कि नहीं है शराब घोटाले में है कविता जी जेल है शराब घोटाले में है संजय सिंह जी जेल में है शराब घोटाले में है अब इनके कौन कौन से घोटाले सतेंद्र जैन से लेके बाकी सब आपके पास हैं अगर ये जेल में है कोर्ट में जाने के बाद भी इनको कोई राहत नहीं है तो इसमें मैंने कुछ करना है कि कोर्ट ने करना है मैं और आप तो एक चैनल पे डिसाइड नहीं कर सकते किसको बेल मिलनी किसको जेल मिलनी है कानूनी प्रक्रिया है और देश का कानून तय करता है यह अनुराग ठाकुर नाविका कुमार जी तय नहीं कर सकती आज प्रधानमंत्री जी ने ट्वीट किया है और कहा है कि कांग्रेस पार्टी कहीं ना कहीं आवाज दबाने की कोशिश करती है लोगों की और खास करके ये इस कॉन्टेक्स्ट में क्योंकि बहुत से सीनियर लॉयर्स ने भी एक पत्र लिखा और कहा है कि जुडिशरी को दबाया जा रहा है जुडिशरी को डराया जा रहा है मैं इसका परस्पेक्टिव समझना चाहती देखिए जब चुनावों में हार दिखती है तो कांग्रेस ईवीएम पे ठीकरा फोड़ती पहले कह देती है ईवीएम से हारेंगे लेकिन जब जीते तब कभी नहीं कहते ईवीएम ठीक थी अब जिस पार्टी ने 60 साल सरकार देश में चलाई हो वो सभी संवैधानिक संस्थाओं पे प्रश्न चिन्ह खड़ा करते हैं आफ्टर ऑल दीज आर ऑल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बॉडीज इफ दे डोंट हैव ट्रस्ट एंड द पार्टी हु been in power for 60 years there's raised a lot of question mark on the timing and also on the allegations they have made judiciary judiciary ke upar are wo party keh rahi hai jahan par indira gandhi ji ne 1975 mein jo kiya wo desh bhula nahi hai judiciary ke samne jo indira gandhi ji ne awaaz dabane ka kaam kiya janta ne uska muh tod jawab diya hai आज एक बार फिर कांग्रेस इन संवैधानिक संस्थाओं का आवाज दबाने का काम कर रही है प्रश्न चिन्ह खड़ा कर रही है और जो जुडिशरी के खिलाफ जो बार बार बयान ये राजनीतिक दल दे रहे हैं ये निंदनीय है अशोभनीय है इनको माफी भी मांगनी चाहिए और हिंदुस्तान का जुडिशियल सिस्टम बहुत बढ़िया है और एक मैं उदाहरण आपको देता हूं आप जब मोदी जी सीएम थे कांग्रेस ने फर्जी केस उनके ऊपर किए नाविका जी उस समय भी नरेंद्र मोदी जी जांच एजेंसियों के सामने जाकर पेश हुए कोर्ट केसेस में लड़ा उन्होंने तब भी कहा था मुझे जांच एजेंसियों पर भी भरोसा है मुझे देश के न्यायालयों पर भी भरोसा है ये वो व्यक्ति है जिसके ऊपर पूरी कांग्रेस की सरकार उस समय लगी थी उसके बावजूद उनका विश्वास संवैधानिक संस्थाओं में पूरा था लेकिन जो लोग स्वयं कभी राजनीति में साठ साल रहे सत्ता में रहे आज उनका विश्वास क्यों नहीं ये अपने आप में प्रश्न चिन्ह खड़ा होता है कि जब राजनीतिक लड़ाई हार गए अभी हारे कहा चुनाव कहा हुए हैं अरे एक के बाद दूसरे इलेक्शन में हार रहे हैं तो इस चुनाव को आप मान रहे हैं कि आप जीत चुके हैं देखिए मैं जनता की आवाज को सुनता हूं आज जब मैं दक्षिण भारत जाता हूं उत्तर भारत जाता हूं कल मैं जम्मू में भी था देश के किसी कोने में जाता हूं तो लोग कहते हैं माई चॉइस मोदी 2004 में भी ऐसी कुछ आपकी पार्टी को खुशफहमी थी इंडिया शाइनिंग था देखिए गलत फहमियां तो आप लोग कई बार पैदा करते हैं 2014 में भी की आपने 2019 में भी की आप लोग 2014 में कहते थे भाजपा पूर्ण बहुमत 200 आ जाएगा तो बड़ी बात हो जाएगी नाविका जी दो जीती पूर्ण बहुमत 30 वर्षों के बाद देश की जनता ने पूर्ण बहुमत किसी को दिया तो मैं आप सबका धन्यवाद दू वोटर्स का भारतीय जनता पार्टी को दिया फिर 2019 आई तो सबने कहा पांच साल मोदी सरकार रहेगी अब कौन वापस रिपीट करेगा कहा 200 सौ भी नहीं टच कर पाओगे यही चर्चा थी लेकिन देश की जनता समझदार है देश की जनता ने 303 सीटें हमें जिताई और एक रिकॉर्ड बनाया और अब की बार 400 पार ये देश के कोने कोने से आवाज है ये कोई अहंकार नहीं है नाविका जी ये मैं इसलिए कह रहा हूं अहंकार नहीं है जब आप काम करते हो तो आपका कॉन्फिडेंस बोलता है हमारी कमिटमेंट थी हमारी कैपेबिलिटी थी हमारी कॉन्शियस सदा क्लियर थी जो हमने देश के लिए काम किया इसलिए आज हम आज हम पूरे आत्मविश्वास के साथ कहते हैं कि जिस व्यक्ति ने देश का भलाई के लिए पाई पाई बचाई भी देश की भलाई कराई भी जिसने अपना पल पल और क्षण क्षण देश के लिए जिया है अपनी मां के देहांत के दो घंटे बाद देश के लिए फिर काम करना शुरू कर दिया 
ऐसा प्रधानमंत्री देश ने पहले कहीं नहीं देखा मोदी जी ने करके दिया तो विश्वास क्यों ना हो क्यों ना हो ईमानदार सरकार हो उपलब्धियों भरा आपका दस वर्ष का कार्यकाल हो दुनिया में योग से लेकर आयुर्वेद आपने दिया हो इंटरनेशनल सोलर अलायंस दिया हो ग्लोबल बायोफ्यूल अलायंस दिया हो इंटरनेशनल बिग कैट अलायंस दिया हो और यही नहीं जी ट्वेंटी का सफल आयोजन किया हो और अब 2030 में यूथ ओलंपिक्स और 2036 में समर ओलंपिक्स की भी कमर कसली हो तो तो 2036 तक यही रहेंगे भाई मैं तो दो तक सोच रहा हूँ क्योंकि दो तक जो पच्चीस वर्ष का कालखंड है ये मोदी जी ने देश के लोगों को कहा है कि हमें जन भागीदारी से जन आंदोलन बनाना है इस अमृत पीढ़ी के जिम्मे काम लगाया है कि आपको विकसित भारत बनाना है कोई गलत बात तो नहीं विकसित भारत बनाना डू वी ऑल वॉन्ट डेवेल्प इंडिया डू वी ऑल वॉन्ट वॉन्ट टू प्रोग्रेस देन वी वॉन्ट टू सी दर्ड टर्म ऑफ प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी एंड इन द नेक्स्ट थ्री ईयर्स वी कमिट यू इंडिया बींग द थर्ड लार्जेस्ट इकोनॉमी आप तीसरी बार जिताइए हम अगले तीन साल में दुनिया की तीसरी बड़ी अर्थव्यवस्था भारत को बनाएंगे और जो 18 साल से ज्यादा की उम्र के हैं वो 18वीं लोकसभा चुनने जा रहे हैं 1.8 करोड़ न्यू वोटर्स हैं 18 18 18 ही बनता है और मैं आपको कहना चाहता हूं अंक बड़ा शुभ होता है अठारह वाला नौ जो है ये सिद्धि तक ले जाने वाला काम है संकल्प हमने ले लिया है सिद्धि तक अठारह साल से ज्यादा वाले पहुंचाएंगे तो जो लोग कहते हैं Uh, कि अगर तीसरी बार भी मोदी आएंगे तो पुतिन बाबा जैसी हालत हो जाएगी भारत की उन्हें क्या जवाब देंगे देखिए जब उन्नीस से लेकर 2014 तक कांग्रेस के 60 साल राज रहा नेहरू गांधी परिवार की चार चार पीढ़ियां राज करके चले गए तब क्या हुआ जी गरीब मां का बेटा देश का प्रधानमंत्री बने तो उनको स्वीकार नहीं है ये कैसे चलता है नाविका जी 2014 का चुनाव थे उन्होंने कहा ये मोदी देश का चुनाव जीतेगा ऐसे कहते थे लोग कहते थे गंदी नाली का कीड़ा नीच और कहते थे चाय बेचने वाला है क्या देश चलाएगा लेकिन ये लोकतंत्र है भारत का भारत की जनता ने देश बेचने वाली कांग्रेस को नकार दिया था ईमानदार चाय बेचने वाले को देश का प्रधानमंत्री बना दिया और आज उनकी ईमानदारी ही ये मोदी की गारंटी है कि ईमानदारी से सरकार चलाते नहीं सहते वो बेमानी को राहुल गांधी कहते हैं कि आप पिछड़ों की मदद नहीं करते आप किसानों की मदद नहीं करते आप यूथ को जॉब्स नहीं देते आपने कुछ सही किया ही नहीं अच्छा वो आप ऐसे सवाल पूछता रहा करो मुझे उपलब्धियां बताने का मौका मिलता है नहीं राहुल राहुल गांधी नहीं, राहुल जी पूछे तो मेरे लिए और अच्छा है ना राहुल जी से बड़ा वरदान भाजपा के लिए क्या हो सकता है देखिए देखिए अब किसान की बात ले लेते हैं किसान हमने कहा हम किसानों की आय दुगनी करेंगे कांग्रेस के समय स्वामीनाथन कमेटी की रिपोर्ट आई इन्होंने नहीं कुछ किया हमने लागू किया लागत प्लस 50 परसेंट मुनाफा यानी कि डेढ़ गुना दाम हमने दिए कांग्रेस ने 2004 से 14 तक साढ़े पांच लाख करोड़ की खरीद की एमएसपी के अंतर्गत मोदी सरकार ने अठारह लाख चालीस हजार करोड़ की खरीद की है सबसे बड़ा किसान आंदोलन भी आपके समय सुनिए ना सिन्नाविका जी सुनिए आंदोलन पर अभी लंबा सुनना पड़ेगा साढ़े पांच लाख करोड़ की खरीद की इन्होंने दस साल में हमने साढ़े अठारह लाख करोड़ की की है इन्होंने सत्ताईस हजार छह सौ बासठ करोड़ रुपया बजट था दो हजार चौदह में आज एक लाख पच्चीस हजार करोड़ रुपए का कृषि बजट है भारत सरकार में इनके समय ना किसान सम्मान था ना निधि थी हमने तीन लाख करोड़ रुपया किसानों को किसान सम्मान निधि में दिया है छह हजार रुपया साल का दिया है इनके समय मुआवजा नहीं मिलता था फसल बर्बादी पे हमारे समय एक लाख चौवन हजार करोड़ रुपया मुआवजा मिला है फसल बीमा योजना के अंतर्गत इनके समय कृषि की सिंचाई योजनाएं पूरी नहीं होती थी हमने पंद्रह हजार पांच सौ ग्यारह करोड़ रुपया पिछले साल कर्ज किया इनके समय सात लाख तीस करोड़ रुपया दो में बैंकों से मिला था किसानों को हमने पिछले साल 21 लाख करोड़ रुपया दिया है तीन गुना ज्यादा दिया तो राहुल गांधी को कन्विंस क्यों नहीं कर आप मुझे आंकड़े पूरे क्यों नहीं बताने देते नहीं, पर आप राहुल गांधी को कन्विंस क्यों नहीं कर पाते अब या तो मेरे आंकड़ों से आप या तो स्ट्रैटेजी या तो आप मेरे आंकड़ों से बोर हो जाते हो लेकिन सच्चाई यह है कि आंकड़े सच बोलते हैं मैं कह सकता था मोदी सरकार ने बड़ा काम किया आप कोई एक कांग्रेस का नेता यहां पर लाकर बैठाओ जो इतने आंकड़े दे जाए उपलब्धियों भरे हमने काम किया इसलिए जुबान पर हमारे आंकड़े हैं और किसानों के लिए 
हमने लगातार काम किया है क्यों नहीं कांग्रेस सम्मान निधि शुरू कर पाई हमने तो नमो ड्रोन दीदी को लेकर बहनों को भी लखपति दीदी बना एक करोड़ बहनों को लखपति दीदी बना दिया और अगले पांच साल में दो करोड़ बहनों को और लखपति दीदी बना देंगे वहीं पे किसानों के लिए हमने नमो ड्रोन दी थी यानी कि ड्रोन के माध्यम से आप पेस्टिसाइड्स और आप अपना खाद और यूरिया इसका स्प्रे कर सकते हो किसान की लागत भी कम होगी मुनाफा भी ज्यादा होगा हमने ई नैम जैसी योजना लेकर आए ई नेशनल एग्रीकल्चर मार्केट प्लेस जहां मंडी में आप देश में कहीं पे भी माल बेच सकते हो हमने एक लाख करोड़ रुपया एग्रीकल्चर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फंड के लिए लाए जिनमें से पैंतीस करोड़ हमने अब तक दे दिया है फंड बनाने के लिए राहुल गांधी क्यों नहीं आपसे इम्प्रेस हो अरे राहुल गांधी जी वो हैं जो कहते हैं मैं आलू इधर से डालूंगा सोना उधर से निकलेगा ये राहुल गांधी हैं अब बताइए राहुल गांधी का मैं क्या जवाब दू कांग्रेस उसको झेल नहीं पा रही है तो आप क्यों झेल रही हैं कांग्रेस बिल्कुल झेल रही है उनके लीडर है उन्होंने भारत जोड़ो मैं भी बहुत मान सम्मान करता हूँ बहुत मान सम्मान करता हूँ मैं राहुल जी का आप व्यंग कर रहे हैं मैं बिल्कुल ही मान सम्मान करता हूँ बड़े नेता है कुछ लोग आपकी भारतीय जनता पार्टी की जीत में जितनी हमारी ताकत लगती है उतनी उनकी भी लगती है अनुराग ठाकुर जी मैं आपसे पूछना चाहूंगी आप कहते हैं आप अभी सवाल मेरा आपसे है क्या राहुल क्या राहुल गांधी जी अमेठी या रायबरेली से लड़ेंगे आप बताइए आपकी तहकीकात सारे तंत्र आपके पास हैं आपको पता होगा आपकी आई भी बताती होगी आपकी पॉलिटिकल टीम्स बताती होंगी हम तो सिर्फ पत्रकार हैं क्या आपको लगता है राहुल गांधी अमेठी आप आएंगे रायबरेली आप आएंगे अरे देश का सबसे बड़ा राज्य अस्सी लोकसभा तो आपने भी कैंडिडेट नहीं होता अस्सी लोकसभा सीटें हैं अस्सी में से दो उम्मीदवार कांग्रेस को नहीं मिल पा रहे ये स्थिति आज उस दल की हो गई जो कभी अपने आप को सबसे पुराना और सबसे बड़ा राजनीतिक दल कहता था ये लोकतंत्र की ताकत है कि आप गरीब परिवार से आए व्यक्ति को गाली निकालोगे उसके काम को अगर नीचा दिखाओगे तो जनता जवाब देना जानती है जनता ने पहले भी जवाब दिया आगे भी देगी तो आप प्रिडिक्शन के मूड में है तो आपने अपनी तो चार पार बता दी कांग्रेस की कितनी सीटें आएंगी देखिए मैंने तो अपना ही मैं लेखा जोखा रखता हूं दूसरों को तो आप जितना बांट दीजिए इनमें जितना देना है आपस में बांट लें वैसे वैसे भी चोर चोर मुसेरे भाई इकट्ठे हुए हैं नहीं पर ये टिकटों का वितरण नहीं नाविका जी ऐसा है देखिए आप पॉलिटिकल सवाल पूछिए क्या इन्होंने सीटें बांट ली पंजाब में गठबंधन है कितनी सीटें इन्होंने कांग्रेस को दी कितनी कांग्रेस ने आम आदमी पार्टी को दी नहीं पंजाब में उनका गठबंधन नहीं है नहीं है तो कैसा गठबंधन है कि पंजाब में है ही नहीं लेकिन देश में गठबंधन है दिल्ली में है लेकिन बाकी जगह नहीं है और मुझे तो गठबंधन की परिभाषा कभी समझ नहीं आया थोड़ा समझाइए मुझे मैं कौन होती हूँ पांच बार आप चुनाव जीत चुके हैं मैं क्या आपको गठबंधन यही जनता नहीं समझ पा रही है कैसा गठबंधन है जो चुनाव से पहले नहीं चल पा रहा तो बाद में कितना चलेगा ये टिकाऊ नहीं पूरी बात बता दी बिकाऊ है <laughs> अनुराग ठाकुर जी साउथ ऑफ इंडिया 130 सीट्स पिछली बार उनतीस थी तब कर्नाटका में आपकी सरकार थी इस बार क्या आकलन है आप इसको कैमरा फोकस <laughs> आज तक का सबसे बड़ा नंबर भारतीय जनता पार्टी को दक्षिण भारत से सीटों का हमारी 400 पार करने में मदद करेगा चाहे वो तमिलनाडु हो कर्नाटक हो आंध्र प्रदेश हो तेलंगाना हो केरल हो या गोवा हो यहां से हम रिकॉर्ड सीटें जीतने वाले हैं आप कहीं पर लिख लीजिए हमारा वोट शेयर भी रिकॉर्ड होगा हमारी सीटें भी आज तक की सबसे ज्यादा होंगी 29 से कितनी आगे जाएंगे मैं कहता हूं रिकॉर्ड होगा और मैं आप रिकॉर्ड ऑन रिकॉर्ड कह रहा हूं कि हम रिकॉर्ड साउथ इंडिया में बनाने वाले हैं क्योंकि मोदी जी का देखिए इन्होंने कभी दक्षिण भारत उत्तर भारत अलग अलग नहीं देखा है कांग्रेस तो लुक ईस्ट पॉलिसी के हिसाब से काम करती थी हमने एक्ट ईस्ट पॉलिसी से काम किया लाखों करोड़ रुपए के काम हमने नॉर्थ ईस्ट में किए पचास साल पुराने प्रोजेक्ट को हमने अब पूरा किया दक्षिण भारत में लाखों करोड़ रुपए हमने खर्च किया लेकिन हमने कोई एहसान नहीं जिताया उनका अधिकार था उनको दिया है मोदी जी ने ग्यारह दिन अगर अनुष्ठान किया प्राण प्रतिष्ठा से पहले तो दक्षिण भारत के मंदिरों में जाकर जो उन्होंने करना था वो किया एक अन्न का दाना भी ग्रहण नहीं किया लेकिन उस समय भी क्या रिस्पांस मिला और उसके बाद अभी जो उनका टूर तमिलनाडु वगैरह का हुआ है 
केरला का हुआ कमाल की रिकॉर्ड भीड़ थी उससे दो दिन के बाद मैं तमिलनाडु में था मैं चेन्नई में था मैंने दो प्रोग्राम किए मैंने कहा ना आपको जैसे मैंने कल जम्मू में सुना माय चॉइस मोदी चेन्नई भी कहता है माय चॉइस मोदी तेलंगाना भी कहता है माय चॉइस मोदी कर्नाटक भी कहता है माय चॉइस मोदी केरल भी कहता है माय चॉइस मोदी इसीलिए हम सबकी चॉइस मोदी चार जून को ये सारे सवाल पूछूंगी और ये सारे क्लिप्स आपके सामने रखूंगी देखिए चार तारीख को मेरा... फोकस बहुत तेज किया मैं आपसे पहले क्षमा चाहूंगा चार तारीख को मेरा अपना रिजल्ट आ रहा होगा मैं सेलिब्रेट कर रहा हूँ जनता के आशीर्वाद के बाद चार के बाद की कोई डेट ले लीजिए आप एक घंटा बोलेंगे मैं आपकी हाजिरी देता पांच तारीख को हम आपके साथ रूबरू होंगे लेकिन पूछना चाहती हूँ अनुराग ठाकुर पहले कार्यकर्ता फिर सांसद फिर यूथ बीजेपी के आप प्रेसिडेंट रह चुके हैं फिर मंत्री अब स्पोर्ट्स आई कौन सा रोल बेस्ट लगा कौन सा काम सबसे अच्छा लगा आपके शो पे आना है वेल well, इसके लिए आपको अवार्ड मिलेगा क्योंकि आप जिस शो पर हैं उसी को अच्छा कहेंगे पर पर्सनल लेवल पे पूछना चाहती हूँ सेटिस्फैक्शन और सबसे अच्छा काम कहा मिला देखिए मैं इसको बहुत सीरियसली उत्तर करना चाहता हूं क्योंकि भारत के युवाओं के बीच में आपको कोई भी जिम्मेदारी मिले छोटी हो बड़ी हो काम कोई छोटा नहीं होता जब देश के प्रधानमंत्री ने स्वच्छता अभियान चलाया हाथ में झाड़ू पकड़ा तो महात्मा गांधी के बाद उस तरह के किसी नेता ने अगर झाड़ू पकड़ा तो नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने स्वच्छता अभियान चलाया जन जन के बीच में विश्वास पैदा किया हमारा देश हमें स्वच्छ रखना है आज वो युवाओं के बीच में भावना है काम कोई मिले उसको 100 परसेंट कमिटमेंट के साथ करें मैंने अपना 100 परसेंट देने का प्रयास किया मैं कहीं पर भी रहा बीसीसीआई में रहा आईयूए में रहा मंत्रालय फाइनेंस में रहा या यूथ में या आईएनबी में मेरी जो क्षमता है मैं उतना काम करता हूं और इतना आज आपको वायदा कर रहा हूं आई स्टैंड कमिटेड फॉर द प्रोग्रेस ऑफ द कंट्री आई स्टैंड कमिटेड फॉर द नेशन बिल्डिंग प्रोसेस आई विल बी ऑलवेज देयर आगे भी आज भी समर्पित था आगे भी समर्पित रहने वाला अनुराग ठाकुर थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस ऑन द टाइम्स नाउ समिट लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन आज नाविका जी वैसे अनस्टॉपेबल थी सुबह से मैं टाइम्स नाउ देख रहा हूं नाविका जी रुक ही नहीं रही वेल इंडिया इज अनस्टॉपेबल अंडर प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी एज यू सेट सो टाइम्स नाउ इज ऑल्सो अनस्टॉपेबल थैंक यू वेरी मच मिस्टर अनुराग Thank you Mr Thakur and uh, Navika for that powerful discussion our final session of the day is with a talented persona an all-rounder a national award winning actor entrepreneur for the beauty label hyphen the tribe and a producer at the blue butterfly films which is her own venture and she ladies and gentlemen is here today as a part of a film that's a perfect mix of comedy fun drama and of course a very seasoned crew it's a charming journey of three protagonists aimed to both entertain and inspire audiences and mother who are we talking about well to talk on the topic of steering success navigating with the ideal crew please join us in welcoming on stage kriti sanan and she will be in conversation with padmaja joshi Uh, Kriti Sanan is going to be with us in a short while from now, and in fact, uh, uh, Kriti Sanan, of course, has made a mark in a wide range of films from Bareilly ki Barfi, Luka Chupi, and Mimi, amongst others. For in fact, uh, she won a national award for that role there in Mimi, Deepthi. Oh yes, requesting all of you please to continue to remain seated and do not forget the hashtag, ladies and gentlemen, is. Times now summit 2024 that's the hashtag you should be using putting out your views and making this uh, viral we already have seen a lot of videos and conversations going viral whether it's a kangna ranaut whether it's what shruti irani said or what anurag thakur ji also just mentioned about it we are just moments away from getting kirti into uh, the hall requesting all of you please to continue to remain seated anyone towards the gate please take your seats uh, it's a request request yes request everyone to please settle down uh, we'll just be beginning the session a few minutes from now all those on the left side of the hall if you could please sit down uh, it, we would really like to start the session at the very earliest kindly settle down so that we can begin in a few moments from now we'll be seeing kriti sanan come on screen uh, come on stage and in fact on screen she's also the first actor to have portrayed a humanoid in the movie mai 
tere baato mein aisa ulujh jia and she's become the first actor to actually do that the first female actor to do that ladies and gentlemen please welcome on screen kriti sanon with a huge round of applause you know i have to say i suddenly realize it does nothing for your self confidence to walk in the, with somebody who's towering above you looking very stunning to be honest you're in flats i'm in heels no. otherwise we might be matching height for a change well being able to wear those heels is a life skill in itself so well <laughs> tops to you for that <laughs> yeah that that's true kriti sanon is here with us she's had a spectacular year already and we are only in march right now so you've had teri baaton mein aisa uljha jiya you have gone viral with your songs um you already have another film coming out crew and you have managed to become an entrepreneur and producer as well at the ripe old age i won't take i won't name i won't tell you what her age is but let's just say she's fairly young only now what are you on like what are you trying to do over here you are making two films just at the beginning of the year and you're running a business on the side also you are a producer also what's going on with you kriti i'm basically hyphening everything to my life that i like that i'm passionate about and uh, nicely plugging my brand in also <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah i think i've always felt like um there is no end to dreams you know you should just like um find your passions find things that you really love doing and uh, follow them and and hopefully make a career out of them because that's when it doesn't feel like work every day um and uh, every time someone used to ask us you know while we were growing up uh, aapko kya banna hai you know aap bade ho ke kya banna chahoge or even your occupation you know and and you just have to normally fill one thing and say one thing and i was like why you know why can't it be many more things why can't i be an actor and a producer and an entrepreneur and maybe something else tomorrow so so i think yeah we we kind of limit ourselves usually and uh, if we think in if we really love doing what we do then we can just do whatever else we want to do in life so are you going to add more feathers to your cap other than an actor producer entrepreneur running hyphen uh, you know we are in the middle of I know you don't want to make political statements but who knows we are having so many people you had Govinda joining the Shiv Sena today is that the next step that you are going to take See I never fun. I've never thought of that I never think of like okay kal ko main ye bhi karungi jab tak andar se nahi aata hai na ki ye main bahut passionate hu uske liye ye mujhe karna hai dil se karna hai uh, tab tak nahi karna chahiye so jis din dil mein kuch aur naya aaya karne ko to us din maybe next and something something more so one should keep like shifting the gear as i say uh, you know once in a while mm. uh, and and challenge yourself and do things that you haven't done before mm. uh, but it all has to come from passion mm. you know i was reading about your uh, you know your schooling your college uh, actually when i was researching you uh, there was there was a pap website that i came across and everyone calls you engineer like the paps when the paparazzi they call you engineer engineer pose for the camera yeah sometimes they say engineer sanin <laughs> engineer san engineer sanin like kriti sanin engineer oh, sanin engineer yeah. sanin so engineering living in patpar ganj and then you get into bollywood isn't there a time when you look back and you say like this looks impossible you know the bollywood which is known only for the families the big names you know your your star kids and suddenly this engineering student from patpar ganj like patpar ganj to yahi hai <laughs> या आई मीन बहुत पहले अगर मैं देखूँ तो या आई हैड नॉट रियली थॉट इट वुड बी पॉसिबल और यू नो वन आई वॉज ग्रोइंग अप एंड आई वॉज फाइव एंड आई यूज टू लाइक कॉपी माधुरी दीक्षित एंड सी ऑल हर स्टेप्स एंड जस्ट कॉपी देम चने के खेत में नो नो अखिया मिलाओ कभी अखिया चुनाऊ चोली के पीछे क्या है ऑल्सो या बट आई यूज टू फॉलो दो स्टेप्स एंड यू नो आई यूज टू लव डांसिंग एंड तब कोई पूछता था कि आप बेटा आपको बड़े होके क्या बनना है तो एक पॉइंट था जब मैं बोलती थी एक्ट्रेस बनना है बट वो फिर चेंज हो गया टीचर बनना है कुछ और बनना है बहुत सारी चीजें हो गई लाइफ में सो आई हैड या आई हैड नेवर थॉट 
that I would be able to make it till here. But but yes, I did dream big. Mm. Whenever I used to dream, it was never like, it was like, you know, I used to dream. I used to actually at a point dream of getting a debut film with Salman Khan. Uh, and I used to daydream about it. So my dreams were really big, you know, they had no control over them. Um, and uh, there were people who would be like, you know, it's too big a dream. And um, there are so many people in M Mumbai, you know, who've come from like nowhere and they don't have any connections, any, you know, like you said, family name. And it's very hard to make it because it's f the city is full of people uh, who some may be more talented than you are. Mm. And, you know, how do you get there? But um, yeah, thodi kismat hai. I do believe in destiny, mm. um, and the rest is definitely belief, which you know um, never lets you give up. I think that is you have to be consistent, and you have to keep believing in yourself, and keep getting better at what you do. Mm. Um, I have never really learned acting, or you know, I was never into theaters. I used to always choose dance over theater, mm. um, so I never thought I could act till I started doing some TV commercials, which happened by chance. Um, and I realized I liked being in front of the moving camera and I had that thing, that acting ka kida in me. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm gonna grow and I'm gonna polish this. And uh, with auditions, with, you know, working, I think that's what I used to, I think being an engineer, we ask a lot of questions and that's our way of growing. That's our way of, you know, um, finding all the answers. Uh, and I was a studious, nerdy kid, you know, and I used to really, even in my acting, even on my films, my directors used to make fun of me sometimes, ki, ye bade sawal hai. Uh, but today I feel like, you know, that's the reason why I've grown. And I, I think you should never be stagnant and you should keep growing and keep getting better at what you do. Everything is around you, just absorb, you know, and as an actor, that's what I did. So yeah, back then, that Kriti, I, I also didn't know if she would be here today, sitting in front of you, in front of all these lovely people. Mm. Um, but yeah, never give up, I would just say that. Uh, you know, the film that your uh, release coming up next, you've got like legends working with you. We were just talking earlier that it's almost like, you know, there, there are like three women who have been so successful in like five, six years apart. I mean, there's Tabu, there's Karishma, uh, Karina Kapoor Khan, and then there's you. What was it like to work with both of these ladies? You're coming on the back of your own successes, and they are also bringing a whole lot of their own, you know, history with them uh, onto the film set. You know, um, it was, I think that's what excited me, firstly, to be a part of this film, uh, apart from the story. And of course, uh, you know, the script is really funny, and it's very, very well written in terms of every character is very well written. It doesn't happen very often that people write like, you know, equal strong parts for three women, uh, belonging to actually three different decades, you know, um, and coming together and, and just, just doing a lot of fun and comedy together. Comedy is not written much for women, I feel. Um, and this is one of the rare scripts that I came across. Um, I've been a fan of both. I think they both are such powerhouses of talent, they both have lived their lives the way they wanted to, you know, not followed any rules. Um, they're just so spontaneous and just so talented. And I feel that's what makes my performance also shine brighter. You know, whenever you have a great actor in front of you, it really, really helps you perform better. And this film is all about chemistry. It's all about the, uh, you know, chemistry of the three of us and the madness that we bring together. Um, and it was uh, a lot of fun and actually a great pleasure working with both of them. Like I was in my, in some moments I was like, oh my God, I'm acting with Geet, you know? <laughs> and, and in the other moments, Tabu ma'am would just like, I would be like, it would be hard to control my laughter because she just does something so spontaneous, mm. you know, in between the scene, which you don't expect. Mm. And that's her, she's magical. And, uh, were there any like any conflicts because you know always we're told you know all these especially and this is I, I i don't know if it's a stereotype or it actually happens but usually it's always projected you know there are rivalries especially between the actresses and then you've got three big names working together how does that dynamic you actually know i don't inside? understand why when women come together we expect cat fights and when guys are together there's bromance you know 
आई डोंट नो आई थिंक भाई होते आई थिंक नहीं आई तो फील लाइक आई मीन वेमेन वेन दे टॉक इट्स गॉसिप एंड वेन मेन आर टॉकिंग इट्स फैक्ट सो आई डोंट गेट दिस एट ऑल इट वॉज नथिंग लाइक दैट इन फैक्ट I feel the three of us more than anything else used to talk about food because hmm. all three of us are foodies. Um, uh, we've also posted some videos yeah, of eating pizza. Yeah, there was that video. Yeah. You guys eating pizza. Bebo and Did I were actually eat that pizza. Or yes, just... of course. Bebo and you I were literally like competing. No. Bebo and I were literally competing in the number of slices, and she didn't want to up my slice because then she would feel guilty. So every time I would take a slice, she would take a slice, hmm. and we reached, I think, nine slices. Yeah. Nine slices each. Each. Did you work out for nine hours after that? It's impossible. No, to... and it was really funny because the scene that we were doing next was when Tabu Mam and Beba were supposed to pick me up. So they were like, "Tu kam ka." <laughs> so, uh, do you find this? Uh, you know, you've 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 been in the film industry for over a decade now, right? No, it's actually going to be ten years now in May. Okay, so ten years you've ten been years, here. Ten years, yeah. Do you think that? there has been a dramatic change you know earlier i remember even a multi hero film used to be like oh ye to blockbuster aa rahi hai but the women were always incidental maybe once or twice there used to be you know a film written entirely for a woman you know maybe there was a chameli earlier on with karina kapoor etc but now to have not just a film revolving around a woman but three women what have you seen changing in these last 10 years from your personal journey in the hindi film industry i think the kind of roles written for women are definitely getting better uh, stronger um i think there are also more number of films written where uh, a female is leading the film um so yeah there's definitely been a shift and a positive one um uh, the films doing the kind of numbers that that male centric films do is still probably not there mm. uh, but at least people are taking the risk and you know putting their money on these scripts on these films mm. um and hopefully if the audience comes to the theaters like they do uh, then there would be a day where where even women centric films would be like bigger budget mm. um but yeah definitely i feel there's been more material there's also been women choosing stronger roles and not wanting to do just um just the song and dance and, and be happy with it of course you can also do that i love dancing mm. you know but sort of mixing it up with doing stuff that you really really mm. um dig your teeth in and you know you really go deep into mm. so uh yeah there are characters whether it's um like mimi yeah whether it's mimi the kind of character but then it did come to me after 8 years so i had but to wait for 8 years. years didn't you think it was a huge risk for you know somebody who's just been in the industry for 8 years to play a surrogate mother i mean at that point you want to be doing the glamorous roles the meaty roles and 8 years into the industry how did you suddenly end up playing yeah i mean mother? i think um, i always find it um exciting when i when someone challenges me and does ki ye to nahi karna chahiye to ye to nahi कर सकते हो एंड आई आई कैन डू इट वेन आई वॉज डूइंग बरेली की बर्फी ऑल्सो पीपल वे लाइक यू डोंट लुक लाइक दिस स्मॉल टाउन गर्ल हाउ यू गो नो फिट इन डू इट यू नो योर मोर ऑफ अ ग्लैमरस अर्बन गर्ल बट दैट्स हाउ दे सीन मी यू नो सो दैट वॉज एक्साइटिंग टू ब्रेक द मोल्ड विद मिमी देर वर पीपल हु लाइक लाइक यू लाइक यूर सेंग यूर सो यंग यू नो वाई वुड यू वॉन्ट अ प्ले अ मदर एंड ऑल्सो वाई वुड यू वॉन्ट अ डू अ फिल्म विद you know in su- from such a small town and surrogacy as a subject is taken as something very serious mm. so there were people and there were friends who were like are tum to bahut arty ho gayi ho mm. you know <laughs> and um, little did they know that the film actually had so much comedy and so much heart into it uh, and that's what attracted me to it so i was i was actually excited because i was looking for something like that i was hungry as an actor i wanted a film where you know i could have that graph of, of showing so much mm. uh that i could do you know uh i always say ki ghada jitna bada hota hai utna hi bhar sakte hain to agar mera character mujhe itna hi dega to main itna hi kar sakti hu agar wo zyada dega to main zyada kar sakti hu so i was actually looking for that zyada bada wala ghada you know and mimi happened at that point but i always believe that everything happens uh at the right time for a reason for good so maybe that film came to me when i was actually ready and and look at the dividends it paid off to win a national award yeah. again at such a young age congratulations for that by thank the way thank you so much thank you thank what you. was it like you know when you're rubbing shoulders 
winning a national award, uh, started out to be an engineer. What did your parents say? I always find these stories the most interesting. Mother, your mother's been a professor, your father's a chartered accountant, and there you are getting a national award. What, what was their first reaction like? I mean, when, when they got to know that I had won a national award, I feel like that moment when I told them uh, was probably uh, my most surreal moment, I would say. Because the, the pride that I saw in their eyes, you know, those happy, watery eyes. I think uh, every child wants to see that kind of pride in their, in their parents' eyes. Uh, my mother was uh, in a salon when I told her that I'd won a national award and she uh, uh, firstly couldn't believe and she thought it was a prank. Mm -hmm. And then when she actually believed, she came like in wet hair and she literally, I was in a meeting and she literally came dancing like that, mm -hmm. you know, and to, and then we all celebrated with just like family and few friends. Um, they accompanied me to the uh, uh, Rashtri Bhavan. Award. Yeah, Vigyan Bhavan when I uh, won the award. And they saw me win it, you know. And that moment of them sitting there, you know, of me before my award came. I was constantly looking, kaha bete, kaha bete. You know, those precious moments are what, what you do everything for. Mm. So, uh, yeah, that is something Joe ek picture ki tarah mere dimag mein hai jo hamesha rahegi as an outsider how different is your experience when you speak to your contemporaries now who have been you know maybe to the manner born if they are say when you speak to uh, a karina kapoor khan how different was different was your experience uh, has it changed at all we hear a lot of stories or other just read the stories of pe how people have struggled etc how difficult was it for you to break in I always uh, believe that everyone has their own journey and their own pressures, you know. So uh, my first film was Hero Panti, which was with a star kid, Tiger Shroff. We both were getting launched together, but we both had different pressures, you know, where he had the pressure of being compared to his father. Um, uh, I had the pressure of, I hope people notice me and I hope people know my name, where people know his name before he's even launched. Um, and I was like, I hope people do know my name at some point and I hope I get my second film and I hope I get my third film, you know, and I'm, I hope I'm here to stay. So there are different pressures that everyone goes through. I think eventually talent is what, what, uh, you know, sticks through. Um, and yes, being an outsider, of course, it takes a while for people to know your name, to know, to match your name to your face. Um, for the longest time, they were like, Are, wo Tiger Shroff ki film mein thi. you know, uh, at the airport. That's how they used to address sometimes. Um, the kids of uh, Ashwini Ayer Tiwari, my uh, director of Bareilly Ki Barfi, they used to call me Tiger Didi back then. Tiger Didi? Yeah, <laughs> because they didn't know my name. That's what I'm saying. It takes a while for people to register who you are when you don't come from a film background. Mm -hmm. But then if you keep at it and... Uh, once you do start feeling like an insider because you've done that much work, you've had a body of work that, that sort of justifies why you're there, mm -hmm. you know, then it sort of is, is all the same, I feel. Uh, but those initial opportunities, those initial, um, you know, frustrating moments of not having the kind of opportunities in front of you that you really want, you know, uh, those you go through, but then... But then that's why I'm proud of the journey that I've had because I know that it's not been that easy. And you work with quite a few star kids. In fact, I think your what, third or fourth film was again with Varun Dhawan and with Shah Rukh Khan himself, Dilwale, right? But Shah Rukh Khan is an absolute outsider and the best example of uh, what insider-outsider debate we keep having, it doesn't matter eventually. Mm -hmm. But what was it like? I mean, you know, you've had Hero Panti. Then your two films after that, you are doing a Dilwale where you again have a Varun Dhawan and you have Shah Rukh Khan himself. How does it all feel? And at what point did you say, you know, I don't have to like prove myself anymore. Now I'm as much a part of this industry as anyone else. Was it the national award? Was it before that? What point did you think, ha, I belong? Uh, I belong, wali feeling to aa thi pehle. But this, I don't, I've always um, been someone who wants to be known for my work who wants to be known more as an actor than the star. Uh, you know, that's always been inside me. So I was really hungry to always find roles and prove myself and, you know, make people um, feel like, oh, I can act. You know, when they were like, oh, you can only do urban roles, do a Bareli ki barfi, do something different. 
um, do so take up something like a mimi, you know, which. So I think the validation that mattered to me the most was the kind which came ki achhi achhi actor hai, you know, achha kaam karti hai. Uh, that mattered the most, and I and I have to say that um, post the national award is when that feeling really sunk in. You know, that's when I really felt like, okay, you know, now I've proved myself. Now this is the biggest validation ever, and um, now I can just have fun and do things that I really want to do, and not worry about proving to the people. Um, my audiences do love me; they've connected with me. Har tarah ki validation aa gayi hai. So, bas abhi, I just want to work and I just want to do the kind of work that I really want to do. Take risks, not be bound by, you know, uh, feeling like, oh, this is not safe or that's not safe or, you know, maybe uh, let's take the um, more taken path, you know. So, that's what happened. I think the National Award made me feel like, okay, abhi kuch prove karne ki zorat nahi hai. Ab ho gaya, no more tiger. Yeah, tiger. but I still, I'm still the person who's very uh, restless. But now I'm in a happy, restless space where I'm happy, but I still want to do more. I still want to push the envelope, find something else, um, surprise the audiences, do something that I haven't done before. Hmm. Nice. Looking forward to crew doing exactly that, that what comes of this happy, restless space. I'm being told that there are people in the audience who uh, want to ask questions, so I shouldn't hog all the time. But before that, we had our viewers. Uh, who have tweeted in questions, who put questions on Instagram. I will take the first few questions from uh, the, the people on Instagram. If you want to ask your questions, meanwhile, in the audience, please raise your hand. The mic will reach you. Just uh, put out your name and a short question. Um, so Varun from Delhi says, how do you view failure and what role has it played in your journey to success? I think failure teaches you way more than success does. Success just makes you confident, gives you a lot of um, confidence to keep going and, and, you know, to not be afraid. But failure is what really teaches you uh, what not to do, to be grounded, to uh, not ever take your successes too seriously. Um, but at the same time, I think the industry that I'm in, I, I've, I've also realized that both failure and successes are temporary. They don't stay so what happens after the failure and how you pick yourself up and how you get going again is what matters the most um the films that didn't work you know sometimes made me a better actor because it was the journey that was uh, what made me a better actor not the result you know so um yeah i think failures are important they're important to a bring you back to reality to teach you a lot um to teach you to not what uh, what not to do hmm. Uh, what doesn't work for you mm. and also sometimes it's okay if it's not worked you know as long as the journey has been great aman asks <laughs> what is your crew that you can never do without my crew that i can never do without i mean definitely my family i can never do without uh, but apart from that my team mm. uh, i am a total loyalist i i like having my own people and my own crew like next to me, you know, who've seen me go through my ups and downs. Uh, my hair makeup stylists have been like constant for about eight years now. Um, so yeah, I, I really, really believe in my crew and my team. Do you still have your Patparganjwala crew? People you still hang out with? And do, uh, they, do they relate to you differently now? When, when you meet them now, is there a difference in the way you interact with them or it's the same old? There are some people who it's the same with every time, you know, and there are some people who you see change through, you know, uh, with time and who now behave differently with you and they treat you as the star and not the person that they used to know. Mm. Uh, but I think uh, I like being in touch with the people who I feel like are still the same. Like I have two of my um, best friends from college who I always make a point uh, that I meet them. This is the only trip that I've made to Delhi and not met them and they will kill me, I know. But um, yeah, they've been exact same with me, you know, through my journey. Uh, their behavior has not changed one bit and that's what I love. I love that our girls' night that happens is still the same. I'm still the first one to pass out uh, and nothing has changed. What are the two things that you always do when you come to Delhi? Everyone has some things about Delhi, which you can never get in Mumbai. They'll be like, you know, the gold gappe is not the same, or the chaat masala is not the So what are the two things you're like, Delhi ja ke ye do to karne hi karne 
I mean, I love having Golgappas in general. Hmm. So Golgappas are my favorite. And New Friends Col- Colony ka ek Albeek Shorma hai. Albeek, of course. So that I calling. love, that huh. I love, which I've told my team also. I was like, how could you not make me have it this time? So when I'm going to the airport, I'm having that in my car. Great. Well, Albeek has got an <laughs> advertisement from Kriti Sanan. I always you? promote them. They should start sending me free shormas now. <laughs> they should, they should. Are there, any, are there any mantras or philosophies that you live by, says Sambhav from Jaipur? I think the one philosophy that I live by and I genuinely believe is that everything happens for good. Mm. You know, I really believe in it. Um, things that happen in your life and the things that don't happen in your life mm. are for a reason. So I, I feel like the films that didn't end up happening in my life were probably not meant for me. The doors that did not open were probably not meant for me. Uh, God has a better plan is something that I really believe in. I have to say the viewers of Times Now are very intense people. Why is everyone asking such intense? Not a single fun question has come so far. All right. Bareli Ki Barfi is my all-time favorite movie. How much do you resonate with the role, says Srijita from Kolkata? The role of Bitti, right? Yes. How much do I... I resonate uh, a lot with her mindset. She's someone who was brought up in a very, very different environment. Uh, Bareli Me, Chote Se Ghar Pe. Um, but wo man se jo uske uh, jo uske man mein aata tha wo wo karti thi uh, aur she used to really ask some big questions of like you know uh, agar hum ladka hote to ye sab theek hota you know to uh, cigarette peeta hai ladka hai you know it's okay uh, der raat tak bahar ghoomta hai ladka hai so uska jo ye mindset hai of equality of what real feminism is uh, that is something that i really related to okay kriti has to go and meet her fans and friends in Delhi. So I'll be able to take just a couple of questions very, very quickly, please. Very, very quickly. Uh, that gentleman there. Your name, sir? Quick question. Is that mic working? Boli, boli, sir. TV pe nahi aayega na, aise bol denge to. Problem hai. Ah, hello. Ah, ah, mera naam Sanjeev hai. Main ek chota sa sawal puchna chahta hu ki jo hamare desh mein jo chal raha hai abhi, jo abhi ke jo sanskar hain, us sanskar se sambandhit jo aap koi film banane wale hain, jisse ki jo bache hain aajkal ke, wo sanskriti aur sanskar ko aur achhi achhe tarike se samaj sake. Sir, I am just an actor who is acting. The film is made, the producers, writers, directors. So, I play the character. So, you have to take something in front of them. Okay, note to all the producers and directors watching. Ashish Ji here wants you to make a script and quickly get it to Kriti, which will resonate with you today. Very good, sir. Final question from that lady here. Very quickly, please. Hi, good evening. Um, such a wonderful pleasure seeing the two of you, both of you on stage. Um, Kriti ji, my question is, um, so you've seen all these, um, you know, uh, Bollywood actors, um, actresses, uh, you know, entering the foray of politics. Um, I mean, obviously, we would like to see more, especially women, um, you know, Bollywood actors to be at the forefront of politics, but do you think uh, the janta in general is resonates, you know, you see all these glamour TV and then, you know, politics of seas and ball game all together. So do you think the public will resonate more with Bollywood people entering politics, number one? And number two, do we see you somewhere, sometime in the future, you know, being an active politician, hopefully? I mean, I know I'd love to see that for one. So thank you, thank you, you. ma'am. Thank you so much for the question. Um, I don't know if people resonate with Bollywood actors. I think when you, when you resonate with a politician in general, it should be the mindset of the politician and what the politician believes in uh, and what the politician does. You know? So I don't think it matters if it's an actor or a non-actor. I think it's, it's more the mindset that one needs to resonate with. And as 
for me, I would just say that as of now, there's no plan. And it's not something that I really believe I should be doing because um, I, I feel I should do something that I'm really passionate about and I feel I'm good at. And uh, yeah, I don't want to risk all of you. So no. All right. On that note, if you ever decide against it, Kriti from Patpar Ganj, you can <laughs> reach out for any possible poll slogans. Thanks very much, Kriti. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so Thank much you for so joining much. us. Thank and you. best of luck. A round of applause. And everyone, please go and watch our upcoming film. Thank, Thank you so Kriti much, forward. everyone. Thank you. Thank you for being a lovely audience. Thank you, Padmaja, for that insightful conversation. Diti. I request all of you to continue to remain seated. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be marking the end of the fourth edition of the Times Now Summit. It's been two fascinating days of landmark discussions dedicated to shaping the action plan for India's progress with participation from leading voices that we have seen across political, social, economic, and business landscapes. We have had over 40 sessions that directly related to assessing current scenarios, discussing challenges and shaping the roadmap for the future. Now, this has been a pivotal platform to elucidate on how today India is unstoppable. Yes, and we'll also like to take this opportunity to thank our partners for their invaluable support in making this possible. Times Network presents Times Now Summit, remember, is powered by Pernod Ricard India, driven by Maruti Suzuki. It's co-powered by Dream Sports. Knowledge partner, Amrita Vishwa Vidya Peetam. Associate partner, LIC. International partner, the Deakin University. Associate partner,